Good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to the Blast Premier Spring Groups 2024. I'm Maniac. I have been your host and I will still be your host for a couple more days. I have by my side my esteemed colleague, Jacob Pipvinike. How friend? are you doing friend? this morning? No, I made a mistake once. You're not a friend? You're not going to get me anymore without oh, one. Oh, okay. I extended the olive branch and you took a big shite on it. So from now on, you're my colleague. Oh, you're, you're a good <laughs> colleague too. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited for some cool games today. Uh, I think we, we got through the hard part of the group stage so far. From now on, we only have teams qualifying or teams being eliminated. So it's going to be incredible fun to watch Counter-Strike the next couple of days. Definitely a whole lot on the line. Remember, we're trying to find six teams for our spring finals in London. By the way, tickets are always available on Blast.tv. But before we dive into our next game, let's maybe have a look at the groups and how things have shaped up towards this competition. We start with Group A, of course. And I think that the talk for us, the main focus point is going to be Falcons and the Counter-Strike that they have shown here. Um, they were a very anticipated project. A whole lot of people were wondering what Counter-Strike they would play, the individual levels. And I think it's fair to say they left a relatively positive impression in spite of being sent to the showdown. Yes, I would agree with that sentiment. It started out a bit rough for them. I think the first game against Australis, all of us, uh, myself included, thought that was going to be a close one. I think we all had Australis, you know, maybe winning that one on paper, but it wasn't really a close game. It wasn't really a good performance from the Falcons. They ended up losing 2-0, and then we thought to ourselves, hmm, maybe they're not ready yet. Against OG, they made minced meat out of those guys. That was to be expected. And then, as you said, the positive, it came against Vitality yesterday. They put up a masterful fight against the best team in the world. They took Nuke in double overtime. They pushed them on the second map, and they played good Counter-Strike. So mm. yes, I agree with you. Given where Falcons are at this stage, I think they left with a positive impression. And I'm not that surprised because, again, I understand that they're putting together a new team. This isn't just Ents, and I think all of the public discourse and the interviews from Snappy, everyone is trying to sell this idea. However, I still believe that whenever you have a core of Madden, Sampias and Snappy, who we have on camera here or rather on shot, you still have a little bit of an identity that's left. You don't have to rebuild completely from the ground up. You have two pieces, two elements that you need to integrate. We can start with Majisk, and then once again, I'm going to reiterate how valuable and quality this player is. It is beyond reasonable, unreasonable how strong he is. He did life very complicated for Vitality in that best of three. And, and we know you can basically just plug him in any position, any anchor position, he's going to deliver you some impactful Counter-Strike. Same on the T side. I don't think it's a problem to, to integrate Majisk. I think it's a, it's a luxury, if anything. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think Majisk integrates himself into whatever team he decides to join. Uh, I think a, a great sentiment and a great illustration of how good he is and how valued he is. I think he could pick any team in the world and join it instantly. I don't think anyone would say no sense. to Magix. I think that was the case as well when he wanted to leave Vitality. He was in the best team in the world. He was in the major winning Vitality and he decided to leave. And trust me, he had offers from a lot of different teams. Everyone wanted him because, as you said, he's mm. a beautiful, beautiful Counter-Strike player. Well, that's it for Group A. We're going to keep our eyes peeled for Falcons and their future. For Group B, we'll go quickly through that. Unfortunately, Spirit couldn't really show up with the full lineup, and we understand they were under limited circumstances. They did their very best. They had a, an interesting game versus Liquid, and that's about the best we could have hoped for that. Game Legion, I'll still give them a little bit of a shout out because in, on top of beating FaZe the first time around, they could have gotten destroyed on, on the second rematch, and that's not what happened. They still pushed phase to map number three. They pushed phase to that Inferno, where there was a little bit of a differential of level. We're going to argue. We're not going to really argue with that. Let's move on to Group C. Now, there's another team in here that we wanted to put under the microscope just a little bit, and, and the tone is going to be slightly more somber. The hell is going on with Complexity? Complexity here is a story of an almost good map that then turns into an avalanche of a cat catastrophe after this, complexity just fell apart after their first map versus Navi. Yeah, and honestly, it sucks, man, because they were getting so good. The beginning of CS2, we saw them at Sydney, we saw them at the Fall Finals at Royal Arena. We've seen them play good Counter-Strike, quality Counter-Strike. We had conversations three months ago, Matthew, you and I on a segment, arguing that they could be looming in to be a top five team in the world. They were close, you know, breaking the door in towards that. That's how good they were playing. And ever since, it's just been a disaster for complexity. Mm -hmm. They finished the year placing fifth to sixth, seventh to eighth at low tier tournaments. They then come into the group stage right here after a bit of a break. And as you said, first map against Navi, it was looking beautiful up until the point they were up 12 to nine. And from that point and onwards, complexity didn't play Counter-Strike at this group stage. I don't know what's up with these guys. It's supposed to be the best team of NA, but they're struggling massively right now. Yeah, and I'm getting stressed and worried for them because I feel like the coming months or let's say weeks of Counter-Strike are going to be make or break. We have so many important rendezvous that's coming.
coming yeah. up in the calendar of Canon Strike. Katowice, of course, the RMR then trying to qualify for the Copenhagen Major. I don't know the way this team is looking like right now, whether or not they could stomach fail on fail on fail. I think they immediately have to grab somewhat of a more decent result because it feels like it's just the cracks are starting to show. I mean, there's, there's no changing now. That's the thing for complexity. Of course They're not. stuck with the, the roster they have for now, at least for Katowice and, and for the Major, I assume, as well, or the Armour. Let's see if they make the Major, even with the way they're playing right now. However, I think there's a couple of players who are looking to either step up or get cut, uh, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it anymore. Holzerg is a player that we had under the microscope. He's been decent within complexity. He's had times where he's been doing a good job. Lately, though, it's been rough for, for Mr. Holzerg. So there's a couple of players right now where I feel like you're looking towards them, you're looking towards complexity. Either you step it up right now mm -hmm. or you get cut after the Major. I agree with that. That sentiment we're going to move on to a group d the last group that we had here in copenhagen and and sink our teeth a little bit into the cloud nine topic because that one as well brings frustration to me it has brought frustration to me for quite a while i was one of the most hyped and vocal people out there when this project came together i was very excited with it the departure of shiro left me wanting left me wondering boomage comes in and they have my attention they have my curiosity i know what boomage can do it's going to free up electronic i could kind of start seeing it but at some point, there's these two massive elements that need to be discussed. First of all, without an actual dedicated alper, it is going to be limitations to the counter strike you can play. I don't care if Vumic is having a highlight here and there. And second of all, where the F is Axile? What is going on? How long are we going to give him until he can produce a better counter strike, which he had us used to for so long? What is going on? 2022, he was the top five player in the he world. He was. I think everyone agreed to that. Shiro, for that matter, as well. Cloud9 had everything they needed in order to be a, a world beater, to be completely honest. I'm just pissed that we never got to see Shiro and Boomich play on the same team. I'm just pissed we never got to see a Cloud9 where the roles were laid out to perfection. Because I agree with you, it's something we've been discussing, it's something we've been talking about. Not having an AWP player within your lineup, it was ridiculous from people to say that, yeah, in CS2, the AWP is not as efficient, it's not as hard-hitting as it used to be. Of course, people needed a couple of months before they got used to it. Of course, the AWP players needed to get used to the new smokes, the way the flashes were interacting with the game, and of course, the Molotovs as well. All these small details it's something that you as an AWP player will get accustomed to. For some reason, Cloud9 made the decision that, nah, we don't need that. We think the Fire Rifle setup is going to be just fine, and they're paying the price right now. Sign an yeah. AWP player until you do. I don't give a damn about it. I don't even know if they made that decision. I think they just had to kind of roll with it, and now they're stuck no, in their position. No, listen, listen, I don't, I, don't, I don't buy into that. I don't buy into that at all. <laughs> I, I set him up. I'm so sorry. You did, you did, because you are a team with, first and foremost, Cloud9, they got the money for it, of course. But second of all as well, you have all the elements. You have the electronic, you have Exile as well. You have some of the best players in the world. Perfecto. You know, one of the best role players in the world. You got everything you need. You just lack one ingredient. And instead of putting that ingredient into the bowl and make that beautiful dish together, you just exclude it. It's like not solving your goddamn french fries. Why would you? Well, that's a very good question. I am, I'm going to go back to my kitchen, try to figure out what to do with my french fries. In the meantime, maybe we can have a look at some of our traded play of the day and see the ranking that came out of yesterday. Jacob, calm your nerves. Take me through number three. I'm happy. Number three, no other than Mr. Rain coming in with an M4A1S play. Rain has been playing good Counter-Strike so far. I expect him to do it again today. It's a beautiful little sequence with the M4A1S and that shot right there in Echo. That is just nasty. That's mean. Jacob said Magis can replace any anchor in the universe. Rops might be the only exception to that rule. A phase again. He's coming up with some of the highlights this time around. That's on Inferno with the silencer. Always a little bit of movement, a little bit of finicky here and there. That is Rops in a nutshell. Great cross replacement. Beautiful play from Rops. Some call it a traded play of the day. I'll call it money see play of the day because every time this kid shows up on a server, he will deliver at the very least one highlight. And he has a habit of winning. AWP on the B bomb side on Vertigo. Look at the way he's trying to dodge <laughs> flashes that doesn't even exist. It's like he's making the shots harder than they are just for the fun of it, right? Because I'm that good at playing Counter Strike. Oh man, I wish I could just be money for like just one day and That'd get nice. to play Counter Strike. I can you imagine just playing face set, having a good time, just one day. Like, just give me like four hours. Give me four hours of like with his wrist knowing how to play the A to P like that. Oof, I would enjoy myself. Anywho, that's never going to be my life. That's okay. I'm fine with it. I'm fine where I am. But you know what? We got to check before we dive into the game is our little predictions. I don't really know where we're standing. Not good. Yes, Not yesterday good. we took some risks. Not all of them. Uh, no, actually, we didn't took any risk yesterday. We were very safe. That's today that we're taking risk. And Jacob, no, is, you don't know what's is, going I on. No idea. But oh, little buddy, we went deep today. We went deep. We tried all the way. We Wait, are what? into the rabbit hole. Yes, indeed, Jacob. I, I decided that... You know what? If we're going to lose, might as well go out in a blaze of glory and really trying. How could you? How could <laughs> Navi over G2? 
Well, I'm Big not the only one. Face? I, I'm not the only one. No, Look at this. We have three out of four. Right. The other guys are idiots. We're not. We're supposed to be the smart ones, and then you buy into their game. That's not smart, Matthew. That's not smart. Oh my God. I'm sorry. We we should have probably had a briefing before we uh, get in into this. Uh, show me the schedule. You're making it hard for me to be uh, happy today, huh? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my very best yeah. <laughs> to set him off like a like a time ticking bomb over here. But no, we're gonna be cool. Hey, look at this, Jacob. That's the schedule. That makes me happy. You like this schedule? Yeah. You know, big versus VP as the last game. Phase versus Liquid, of course. We have G2 versus Navi, and we are gonna start with Astralis versus Vitality. So take a minute, take a deep breath. We're coming back. We're diving into a beautiful game of Counter Strike. You know how they say you should start your sport session with a little bit of warm-up? We don't want any of that BS here. We are starting straight on the treadmill, 20 kilometers per hour, Usain Bolt out there. It's Astralis versus Vitality to kick things off on this Saturday. Vitality coming here with the crown of best team in the world, definitely closed 2023 in a beautiful way with the double-double out there, but still showed some sign of weaknesses here. It hasn't been perfect. They had to remind themselves of the Counter-Strike that they need to play in order to maintain their position because against them comes Astralis. The super team, nobody really labels them as such, but I do think that the term is actually apt. They have taken everybody by surprise. They've destroyed Falcons. They pushed Vitality to three and made them look like clowns on overpass. Astralis mean business, and I didn't think things would click so fast. No, it's been a, a quick rise for Astralis, obviously. I think the reason why we are a bit surprised, at least coming from a Dane as well, is that Astralis have the past 
let's say three years, condition us to be, you know, okay with it's failure. It's Pavlov out there. They've conditioned us to be okay with being mediocre. They conditioned us to be okay with a roster that, you know, on some positions made sense and on some positions you'd think to yourself, why don't you make that roster change? However, when you look at this lineup, I think every single role, every single player makes an awful lot of sense. The only question mark this is Stair. I yes. guess he's still new. The rest of the guys are proven world-class Counter-Strike players. And for the first time in many, many years, I'm proud to say that I think Astralis have everything they need in order to be a team that can win trophies. Yeah, you should, bro. It's also kind of your project. Is it? Not at all. <laughs> absolutely not. What, what I that. wanted to point out is these numbers here. I think the profile of these numbers is exactly the winning formula. To a little difference here, tidbit, you can imagine device a little bit higher up, but sure. you need to have four players delivering, and then you're going to have Stair, who's going to fill in the gaps here and there, trying his very best in a versatile position. You know what it looked like? It looked like Prime Heroic right there, where all the players, every single player could chime in once in a while. I'm not okay, saying okay, that Astralis I see what you are mean. heroic. They're not playing the same brand of Counter-Strike. I think Astralis have way more individual talent. Look at that. Four players within the top 20 players mm -hmm. in 2023. You sign Yappy, you sign Stappy, or Stown for that matter as well. You get them he both. Did it. You get them both into your lineup. You have quality on every single mm. position. Some of the best players in the world, so there's no excuse anymore for Astralis. In fact, it is, it is the top team that has the most top 20 players yeah. in Counter-Strike currently. I, I made a little bit of a ranking when I had some time on my hand, and they actually are at the very, very top. You can have the likes of Phase and G2 with three players, but Astralis have four players from the top 20. Yeah. So that also means a whole lot of demands and expectations. One player that I personally have my eyes absolutely set on and will scrutinize is Stone. Because I think his trajectory in Heroic is one that is a little bit divisive. You have probably one camp who's saying, well, you know what? He he missed the occasion. He kind of fumbled the bag in some of these big finals, okay. this big late playoffs run. Sure, he could be a star, but he could never be a superstar. And then you have the other camp who says, well, he was being dragged down by his team. Like people in Heroic were also kind of shitting the bed at some point. It's not his fault. He could play in a better team. He could have better results. This is the best opportunity he will ever get to prove his value beyond doubt. With BlameF, with Device, he could put his hands on trophies in that lineup. It's fun that you say it because it resonates with me when you describe it the way you are, yet I, I can't help to think when you're saying it that he's been the best Danish player for the past two years. You can argue BlameF is in the conversation, you can argue that since Strong Device came statement. back he's into okay. the conversation as well, but no doubt Stown has been the most consistent and the best Danish player we had to offer over the past three years. He was in Heroic that was winning trophies once in a while, that was the ranked number one in the world, that was in a major final and he was the catalyst behind most of those high performances. I agree, certain games, certain tournaments, he would fall out, he perhaps wouldn't perform to the same high level, but over the course mm. of the past three years, he's the best Danish Counter-Strike player we had to offer and that's a statement in itself. So now maybe the conversation should be who's beside him and when you think that he went from, from Kaden as a leader, as a sniper, to Device now being yeah. his AWP and I cannot understate how incredible it is that Device could leave our community, leave the game for a while, come back and make it look like he didn't skip a beat. Rem remain the reliable sniper, the clever sniper that we know. And yesterday, or not yesterday, rather the day before when they played against Vitality, the amount of time he grabbed Zaiwu immediately at the beginning of rounds, you look at this overpass, mm. and it's open kill on open kill on open kill. The head-to-head -head is obviously going to be in favor of Zaiwu. We're not trying to make a no, case no. that he's stronger right now, but what he's capable of doing here, and the fact that he is basically a zero mistake machine, I'm, I'm still in awe of Device. I'll turn around the coin, because you're saying, you know, must be nice for Stown to play next to Device. I think for Device, it's nice to have Stown <laughs> next to That's him. That's fair. Because Device is not the type of AWP player, as you said, who's going to create the game on his own. He has that ability sometimes. He's not the Monacy, he's not the Saivu. He doesn't have that high, high X factor. But as you said, and as you described, he doesn't make many mistakes. Mm. He doesn't set a foot wrong. So he's aware that he needs players around him that can win certain rounds where he's not going to be available. And then he will step up when needed the most. So for Device, it's very nice to have players around him who can now enable him to be the best again. We talk about having players around you, and this is very much the perspective that we're taking on this Astralis team. It's a team, it's a full roster, and Bayman have had a couple of thoughts with James Banks about it. In terms of this, right, does this feel like you have now five stars on the team who can get the job done? Because even like Stay, it may not look at him stat-wise, but the impact he had, the closing he was able to do for you guys was huge. Yeah, I think anyone in the team right now can win games. I don't think it relies a lot on me, honestly, to individually be the guy. Uh, uh, shooting uh, 30 or whatever. So yeah, I think anyone in the team can, can step up and win the games. Would you say that this right now is the best team you've ever played on? Yeah, I mean, not result-wise, yes. Yet yeah, because, yeah, yeah. But we, don't, <laughs> we haven't really played that much, but yeah, just looking at like the individuals in the team, yeah, mm -hmm. I would probably say that it's most uh, firepower I ever had. Now, you took down Vitality already. The rematch is always harder, but the veto has changed a lot. Was this what you expected from him? Yeah, I think it was pretty obvious, honestly, because 
they, they're gonna they'll be like oh they we're gonna they're gonna expect us to think that they're gonna pick the same map as they beat us on last time so yeah we kind of expect them to to mix it up and, and pick the other one do you think though this will be a harder fight this time I think you always have a little bit of a disadvantage when you just won a match against someone and then they have like because they're gonna go in and watch the demos and see like what they're gonna change and everything so yeah i think uh, you probably have a disadvantage when you're playing against the same team again at, at least when you won yeah of course, beating Vitality once around was already an impressive feat, and this would be instrumentally impressive for Swalis to make it twice in one tournament. Blame Effort's Apex, our leader, head to head right there. But I'm going to start you on, on the Vitality uh, topic, the Vitality train, okay. Jacob. Just original temperature check. We've seen them falter to Astralis, react against Falcons. What do you make of this team so far in Copenhagen? I think I, I kind of got what I expected from Vitality. Of course, them losing to Astralis was a bit of a disappointment, but it was one map where it looked really rough, and then another map where it, it was okay. I don't see Astralis uh, as a team that you can just roll over if you're not in your A-game. And I don't think Vitality is currently playing their A-game of Counter-Strike. I think they've learned from working with Last Rubble. They learned from working with Sonic. They're very much onto the whole thing of don't peak too early. Don't mm. come into the season from the get-go on firing on all cylinders because you have Katowice coming up. You have the Armour. You have the Major. That's when you need to be at your peak. So considering that right now I feel Vitality are balancing their work effort, you know, they're balancing the output, I think they're doing okay what they could do better. Okay, I'm, I might be a little bit more critical than you are, yeah. but I see where you're coming from. I do think that there were some alarming signs in that first series versus mm -hmm. Astralis. I think we saw better against Falcons. And if I'm not mistaken, Apex thought pretty much the same when he talked to James Banks. Each other, we, we, we fucked up so many rounds that, uh, that um, we shouldn't have lost, like big advantage situation, etc. A round that we usually play pretty well as a team. Like we played like individual there, and uh, they, they took the advantage of it uh, because they are strong individual as well. So for us today, it's gonna be able to being able to respect our DNA, focusing on our game, and trying to get the best mentality uh, of all. And uh, I think if we have all of the things, we have really high chances to win. In terms of the chances to win, the veto changed a fair bit, right? You've gone for Inferno. They've stuck with the Mirage, but we're gonna see Nuke as a decider in there. How confident do you feel with that compared to where you're at with, like, say, the overpass that went so badly? I don't think it was the map at that day, to be honest. Uh, as I said, we lost a 5v3, uh, 1v3, 1v2. So, you know, CS is not uh, sometimes only about the map, even though we got uh, we lost 13-4, uh, it was about uh, the way we played. So, um, today, yeah, we changed our map pick because we picked three times Vertigo in a row, so sometimes you have to change. Uh, Inferno is definitely a strong map for us. Uh, we also expected the Mirage, so let's see how it goes, but uh, I expect a good fight. It was a good fight last time, but I expect uh, us to win this one. See, I do agree with Apex what he's saying right here. They did mess up a lot of rounds they were supposed to win, no doubt about it. I just want to make a point when you come into a season like this, Astralis, new roster, high expectations, they don't have time to build up their season. They have to hit the ground running from the get-go. Mm. They've been boot camping in the hotel. We're staying in Metro for two weeks. They are hardcore practicing right now, trying to make up for lost time, trying to make up for the fact they're a new team. Vitality have the luxury of don't having to do that. They have the foundation. Yes, they got to integrate Messi. Maybe he's still not there 100%, but they have the luxury of being the best team in the world where they can slowly, surely ease into the season, then peak later on. And I think that's the point I want to make right here. If Astralis want to beat the best team in the world, now's the time. Okay, I see where you're going and I agree with this. What, what Apex is putting into light here as well is some mistakes were made in that first mm. series that will never allow you to be the very best. And this is where I talk about alarming signs. Uh, we can even roll out some of these clips, actually. We, we kept them in, in the storage uh, on that map of Overpass versus Astralis. Apex is talking about 5v3s being lost, 1v3s being lost. That is exactly what I realized this morning when I was watching the game again look at this it's a five versus three situation device easily make three kills here when there is such disconnect between the two prong of attack apex from long his two teammates from bathrooms not connected at all device has the uh, possibility to handle it that was a 5v3 at zero two and then you fast forward you go into here where uh, vitality is taking some space on the a side they get the kills and suddenly it's 1v3 chaos on the team speak not realizing bathroom is open behind you and yabi wins a one versus three with a one to six score line so i agree there's always two sides to a coin you can say Astralis peaking immediately surprising us incredible level from the get-go but you also have to admit that Vitality that's the best team in the world don't lose these rounds no I agree it wasn't beautiful at all for Vitality this was the one map where it really looked 
bleak it looked poor i think spink said in the interview as well that it felt almost funny to be on the team speak because it was so it was an out of body experience for him we don't okay. normally see vitality play at that level so i 100 agree what we've seen from them has not been at their top level at all however i'm not worried at all you know i'm not worried for this game i'm not worried for the future i think allowing vitality once in a while to have a bad game is also okay we're not looking at an astralis from 2018 where they had to win every single game okay i'm with you how about this how about we don't look at scores only and wins or losses mm -hmm. but we look at attitude and yes. behavior and i think this is where vitality painted two very different pictures already it's not like the falcon win was easy peasy lemon squeezy clean that's not what happened they were pushed i had worries i had doubts throughout this series but i saw that they were much more ready to fight to get into battle to get dirty in some of these rounds Whereas against Australis, it felt like whenever shit hit the fan, if you pardon my French, it got a little bit more individualistic. It got a bit more shy. That is the image. That is the contrast that I want to talk about for Vitality. And, and, and one of them leads them to potentially early exits in tournament and the other makes them world beater. I agree. I agree with that 100%. You can argue there was more at stake uh, going up against Falcon. Yes. Vitality they could have gone to the showdown. They could have been eliminated had they lost that game. Whereas against Astralis, it was not as important, so to speak, to win the game. And, and there's also something mentally in that regard. We also did see Apex be super frustrated against That's Astralis. Right. He was out of the body, almost like the old Apex, you know, who couldn't quite control his emotions. We didn't see that Apex against the Falcons. That was more the enabling, you know, the, the, the happy Apex the loud Apex, the guy who would always scream, who would try to enable his teammates to play better, animate the team as well. So I think there's a difference in between the two attitudes, as you're saying, and I think we're going to see the better one for Vitality today. Oh, you think today is... Uh, I think today is, today is this because we're looking more at a backs against the wall situation, just like against Falcons, and the showdown is behind the door, and the spring finals is on the other. Is this why you think that Vitality actually today gives the best? I mean, Vitality is... is they're the better team, right? They are, okay. they are the better team. There's there's no way around it. Maybe Astralis with time will be at a level where we can have a, an argument that who knows if Astralis is going to be a team that can win trophies. I do think for now, though, for Astralis to win twice in a row against a team like Vitality, that's a big task. As they were also saying in the interview, one thing is winning the first game. When you then replay the mm. same opponent, the losing team will always learn a little bit more. They always have a little bit of a different approach to the game. There's something to be said about that. So I do feel that however, as much as I would like Astralis to see them win as much as I would like another top team out there. I don't think they're good enough to take down Vitality once more. I think the conversation can be spurred around the maps as well, because Vitality is not yet a perfect product. It's still a fairly new roster with Mezzi, and you can imagine they didn't get all the reps they wanted on all the maps. Now, Astralis could punish that in the first best of three round. We're talking about a very strong Mirage, and we're talking about an overpass where I still maintain that they have one of the best defense that's possibly put out there in the market. When you have Device and Blame if yeah. on the A side and Stone as a rotation, holy hell, that, that's an overpass <laughs> defense right there. Now we have different maps. It's a different veto. Apex went a different way. He went for the Inferno pick. And then you have Nuke as a potential decider. So I think if Astralis were to beat Vitality once again yes. with a different set of maps, this would set an incredible precedent, and I think this might even change how we look at Astralis moving into Katowice, moving into the Major. I 100% agree. That, that's what I need to see in order for me to believe in it. You're asking me, do I think they can do it right here, right now? Yeah, there's a chance. Yeah, there's a chance that Astralis is winning, but I'm not believing in it. I'm not trying to sell the audience, sell it to you, that they're supposed to beat Vitality at the current state. I see the way they beat Vitality the first time around as the potential of Astralis. They have the potential to beat the best team in the world. They can be a, a team that is contesting for trophies. They can go into the Major with realistic expectations of making the playoff. Hell knows, maybe even going to the final on home turf. But I need to see it more consistently before I can start selling the audience on that year. I love that we had a, a little shot of Messi right there before going to Exters. I also think he's someone that we're going to keep an eye on. He's had good times, bad times. And I'm not only talking about events to events, but from days to days. The Messi that was against Astralis was very much lack of confidence. Yeah. He was very much out of his depth. And we have here a uh, day two versus day five comparison. And it's very much night and day. I think on day five, this is very much the Messi that you hoping to see he doesn't have to be a Zaiwu, he doesn't have to be a Sphinx, but he cannot be a liability. He has to have a couple of these rounds here and there when he has an impact on the game profoundly. Can I just make an argument that Messi and potentially Stair, they are potentially the two least hard-hitting players on the server. Let's put it that way. The two worst players on the server, if I may say, but they are good 
Counter-Strike players. It's a testament to the quality that we have on the server. Saivu, Device, Stown, Blamef, Apex, the best in-game leader in the world. What you're about to witness right now with the casters is some of the best players in the world taking on the server, fighting for a spot at the Fall Finals. Sorry, at the Spring Finals in London. There's so much quality, no weak links, that if Messi is supposed to be the weak link, then you have a very good game on your hand. Well, you know what? I would not have put it any other way. The quality that we have on Counter-Strike makes us all blessed this morning, and I will happily and gracefully let Anders and Henry G take us through the game. Thank you so much, boys. Excellent analysis work as usual. Yes, indeed, the long road to London is coming to a close. We need to decide who will be our first team qualifying for the finals. And it's an absolute blockbuster fixture here. Astralis taking on Vitality, a rematch where Astralis actually had the upper hand and made them look pretty average in the last outing. But I think the guys covered it well. Apex looks frustrated. Messi didn't really turn up to that series. I expect Vitality to bounce back and be the first team to make it to London. Ooh, that's a strong prediction. But I do like it. The odds are in your favor, Henry, or on GG Bet. Uh, yes. Vitality, they are. You mean they're the number one team in the world. It's hard to pick otherwise. Myself? Who have you got? I've got Astralis to win this one. But you were, you were saying before we came on, on camera, you feel like Astralis, they could return to world dominating form. Yes. You feel like they can do damage at the major, maybe even win it, Anders. That's what I said, and I'm going to stick by it. Uh, it's a bit of a tradition. You make the major predictions early. You do it before anyone really knows what's going on. That's what I've done once again. We are getting into it now. We're live. Astralis versus Vitality. This could be one hell of a game. We're going to start on Inferno as well. It's a rare map nowadays with Astralis starting on the CT side. Vitality, they will be on the T side. And look at this already, a little bit of action. Blame F making the jump down. He's going to go peek at everyone, is there? Yeah, it's not worth re-peeking that. Certainly not. But the aggression continues on the Astralis side. Stown, Blame F, Redding, and willing to take more fights here. Down at the bottom of the apartments, Blame F. Wow, this is confident. That is assertive. He will be answered back by Zai Wu. Down to Mezzi to try and stay alive now as well. Dissuades the CTs from their push, and they will reset the round as we enter a 4-4. Four four. Plenty of time here, but no utility. Just a note on the T side. That really is so much confidence that it almost got him killed at the end. He maybe could have backtracked that one, but he was just... He was in the moment. He was in the zone, and he wanted to fight even more. Now, just under a minute. They're going to start to wrap around. They're going to watch Arch position. And Stown, he's reading it. He knows, but if they can find Simon, Oh, with the back turn. Oh, no. Oh, he's still got one. Kill. He let go of one bullet. And it was enough to take down Stown. Otherwise, this is a very, very different round. Good go, though. Gabby, not really done yet. Finds Apex. Mezzi and Spinks left with a bomb freshly planted. They have plenty of time here, Astralis. Looking for the retake, but Spinks missing a couple of shots. Stare, instant shot down, and now they know where Messi is. They're gonna come try and hunt him down and go for that defuse. No kit currently picked up, so Messi, he's got a chance at it. He might be able to, oh, Device, able to find him just barely, and runs for the corner, instantly going for the defuse. Yeah, he's got more than enough time. It's absolutely under control. Exciting round. A good way to kick things off here. First round on Vitality's pick and his device to win out the clutch versus Mezzi there. Good effort by Vitality after losing this first frag to Blame F, who looked ultra confident, Anders. Pushing down middle. Uh, interesting timing here. Zywoo, I don't even know how he got that shot off in time before Yavi took him down. But the headline is Astralis take the pistol, but the bomb was planted. Vitality will have the option here to bring out the Galils, maybe an AK or two, and an array of utility to boot. So uh, we'll see what they've gone for. And it is going to be the, the Galil approach here and the Galil is looking fantastic in CS2. It's a real meta weapon right now, especially in these sort of scenarios. Allows you to have a bit of firepower and some grenades behind it as well. As we see Astralis try and build some momentum. They've got three M4s. Will be a very difficult round to hold on to. It's going to take some novel ideas to come out on top. And we've got one. Yabby boosted up on the atrium towards quad. As we enter a very Interesting scenario now. Going through that mid-control. Expect some smokes down towards Arch and players to enter through the apartments. Well, you've made this point many times, Henry, that if you lose this second round on the CT side here, you might almost be worse off. It might even be a worse position than just outright losing the pistol round. So we'll see if Astralis can find a way through. It's only Stown that has no helmet on at the moment. So he's going to be particularly vulnerable to the Galils. Everyone else, they're going to have a chance to fight it, but they've let them down into the pit. There's nobody really covering this. This could be a disaster oh. already. It's a good thing, but it doesn't really matter. It's too late to get completely wiped out. Vitality, what a round. 
the absolute perfect approach to destroy this particular setup. Astralis trying to have that front-facing setup. Three players top and middle, but oh, vitality of the apartments pop. Three players in towards the pit. Yabby completely destroyed, outpositioned as we have a five versus two. Astralis haven't found a single kill as of yet. It's going to be Blame F and Stare cowering in the corner that, at the back of the B-bomb site. That, that, we said it with Vitality, they really is the antidote to the kind of setup that Astralis were running. And we've not the first time that we've seen it, but that is the big vulnerability when you're playing that double quad position. Blame F trying to hold on to the M4. Looks like he might be able to. Oh, I said that too soon. Spinks will find it. What an insane round. They're right back in. Now, they're actually in a lot of trouble, Astralis. Yeah, significant victory for Vitality at this stage. You can see they've got a lot of awareness as to what they're up against. Wow, Apex has a lovely kill with the Tech 9 as well. Now, this is actually worst case scenario now. After winning the pistol, losing to the second round force by on the CT side of Inferno, you're only going to get $1,400. So it's difficult to even get a helmet out there, Anders. They're going to have Deagles. Kevlar, one HE grenade to try and fend off a very strong vibe of Vitality. Now, Danes over the years are known to have dangerous, almost dastardly Desert Eagles. We'll see if they can deliver the goods here. They'll play quite a defensive setup. Pretty Imagine. traditional as well. 3 2, no one aggressive on the CT side, just holding the choke points. It would be a massive relief for them if they can, if they can have one of those Deagle rounds here, but. Against any team of the world, I mean, right now, Vitality, they're so, so well disciplined. I just don't think it's going to be particularly easy to try and find a round like that. Hey, it won't be easy, but it's certainly possible. Apex setting up the initial mid utility. Smoke down toward Darch, Molotov towards Quad. Trying to flush out any close range players at this stage. You can see we've got Mezzi keeping a watchful eye over the banana area, but this will be an A finish. 50 seconds remaining. Got a group up, contact play towards Short and try and trade out the kills, but there is a four-man setup from Astralis here. They've got no further utility on the defense, but those Desert Eagles, can they land the shots? They're so close right now. If you miss anything, you're going to be dead right away. Yabby, good shot. Here's down in the corner. He's going to get run down. So a, a bit of danger at one point. You can see Apex also got tagged, but ultimately they make their way through. They get the bomb planted. So I think any fear of losing the round has been washed away here by Vitality. And the best they could do is, you know, stick around. Might even want to save the armor and the deagle, to be honest, because they're not going to have anything next round. They're going to have diddly squat. That will be $1,900 into the bank accounts. Uh, it's that sort of round where you have no choice but to take a full eco. So 2-1 for Vitality, presumably 3-1. Stare looking for an exit. There's no real reason to hunt him. He knows he's just got a desert eagle. Everyone could exit through the apartments and down second middle. I was just confirming there's no antics going on, no nonsense. He can stick in the pip with the bomb planted in the back there. So well handled, even walking into the stack there. Vitality, good protocols, good trade potential. Lovely shot from Zaiwu as well. Uh, Astralis made things interesting. They got a couple of kills at the Desert Eagle, but uh, didn't quite have enough to work with there. Very well played from Vitality, and as mentioned, has to be the full eco now from wow. the Astralis boys. That's a new meta for the fist bump. Yeah, that was a guided fist bump. Yeah. He wanted to make sure he hit it, so oh, I could appreciate that. It's good to be efficient. So I've never seen that before. Don't expect much. We have got a single flashbang for Stown. You're normally going to be grouping up as a five. Pick your time. Pick your poison. Go for the swing and see if you can find a few frags here. Now, it's not a foregone conclusion. We've, we've commentated plenty of rounds in CS2 where the CTs just have the USPs and they somehow come out on top. It can happen. Nip lost to Glocks. They actually did. Yeah, against G2. <laughs> a B rush. A second round team side. That was side. painful. Yeah, that, that one, you don't love to see it. Got one flashbang on Stown, so yeah, it could be a bit of a setup. Obviously, like you said, it's very unlikely. Don't expect a lot to happen here, but they've bought just enough to make it interesting. Hello. Gonna go for a little bit. Yes. Oh, step with another headshot. That's really sick. Mezzi out of the round. Three versus three, and Saiwu doing some maintenance work out here. Just throwing away the rifle so they can't pick them up. Oof. Got the Zeus up and towards those apartments, courtesy of Device. Great shots from Stair. He really has looked quite impressive this tournament. Clutch potential has been absurd. 
I don't think I've ever seen a Zeus actually be important in a round. It'd be so funny if they actually ran back into it, but I feel like they're going to recommit to this position. So it's on stair to find more Deagle headshots in the back line. He's already Molotov into a bit of an awkward one, and Flames knew exactly where to peek that one. Well played. USP on the other side. I don't think they could do much of anything here. So hey. patience for Vitality. 20 seconds left. I guess that's maybe... Oh, no! Right through. Flames going down. Nobody there to really cover him. That's awkward. Yeah, certainly throws a spanner in the works here, Anders. Stown maybe can do something with this. It's a maybe with bated breath. As he somehow recovers the AK-47, his chance is increasing now. Maneuvering on the bomb site and doesn't have the Kevlar. Still an expensive round. Impressive performance there from Astralis, finding three kills. Maybe a fourth there with Stown getting the AK-47. But so far, so good. After losing the pistol, it's Vitality. They go up three to one. Now, if you are just joining us, wondering what the bloody hell's going on today, we've already seen this match. Yes, this is the group final, a rematch where Astralis actually took a 2-1 series uh, about four days ago. And uh, for now... This series decides who will be the first team making their way towards the spring finals happening over in London in June. Uh, if you lose this game, you're not out of the tournament. There will be a play in bracket tomorrow. Yeah. You get another shot at it still. But this is, I mean, this is, has all the makings of a really, really interesting game. And the fact that it's a rematch, I think it's just all the more interesting. I think they, uh, I think Bank said in an interview, um, talking to, was it Blame F, saying like, the rematch is always harder? I think that's probably true. Uh, yeah, because uh, lessons have learned. There were certainly mistakes made from Vitality. Um, I feel like Apex looks ultra tilted and frustrated. I feel like um, yeah. the, the, the whole pressure, the situation of them being undefeated, I think it was playing on their minds a little bit. I'm actually kind yeah. of not happy, but kind of I think it's good for the team that they got this loss out of the way. Uh, going into the, the Major and Katowice and stuff, they don't want to be thinking about the win streak. They don't want to no. be considering that the entire time. So uh, a good way to kind of get that conversation done and dusted and a statement required here as Apex will be making his way through and towards the B-bomb side. It's Stare continuing that strong form. Can he find a secondary kill here? I say he probably can. Zaiwu will answer back, but it's the man advantage for Astralis. Three versus two. The Wu ready and waiting towards the ruins. And he sets them up with a very, very important frag. Oh, yeah. He is firing on all cylinders at the start of this game. And that's a big problem for Astralis here. A missed shot. It's a rare one. He misses again. Pulls out the Deagle. And now he's pressured in the corner. They're going to find a way to eliminate him. He is 7-2 and two right now, Sai. I thought he was going to be able to win that round every single time. But instead, it's a good retake for Astralis. And a critical round for the Danes. If they don't win this one, they're falling so far behind. He is human after all, it would seem. He barely. can bleed. Just barely. And uh, yeah, that's one of the few rare misses you're going to see from Zai Wu. Like, after getting that kill towards Ruins, you're just kind of setting yourself up. Oh, he's going to win this. There's no way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a couple of misses there. And uh, Astralis, hold on. You're, you're dead on. It's their opponent's pick. They had a good start. It was slipping away. And now they close the gap down to just one round, three to two. Uh, Vitality with more than enough cash to rebuy into round number six. Here we still have the AWP on Zaiwu, T side Inferno. Device versus Zaiwu. What a tantalizing battle that is. And we're going to see it here on Inferno, an old classic map. There's a few people out there that would say T side Orping on Inferno, not super viable. Wait till you see what Zaiwu can do with the weapon. Yeah. Who can blame him for trying? Blame F thought he had the advantage because there was a shot mid-air there, but the MP9 makes up for its smoke up. See if you could get that AK picked up. Yeah, there we go, shuffling out, even stealing, I think, another grenade in the mix of it. Good work on Stare, honestly. All right, then. Well, a four and four, especially on Inferno, favors the T side. You just stretch very thin on the defense. Device playing on the front foot towards short. Is anyone watching the apartment? I believe Yabby is, yes. So he's got that AK-47. Vulnerable to flashes, though, of course. Good incendiary allows Stown to have a little pick for information, but Flames, his days are numbered. Need a nice trade here. Sphinx will find it, and Device under a lot of scrutiny as he tries to reposition with the orb. 
They've got to be careful that they don't walk out the middle like that. Apex really close now. I think Stown wasn't ready for it. it. Looked like he was looking a little bit deeper, but he still gets the shot and it's device to take down Saiwu. So speaking about that battle this time, it'll be device to come out on top. Spinks, 30 seconds here. One versus three. He crouches into the shot. And again, got to remind you, Spinks has been amazing. This God. tournament so far, he defeats Stown. It's still on. It's not done yet. 20 seconds. He's setting up a smoke to try and create a little bit of a distraction, I believe. Flashing his way through. He thinks the AWP's on the other side, but Device, I think, cleverly has picked up the AK. It's not going to matter. A jump on over Spinks. No! Oh, oh, oh. What? A clutch! He continues to deliver round after round. Spinks has been one of the absolute best players at this tournament. A three versus one knockout clutch as he destroys Astralis. Every single woo was spot on, buying himself a bit of space and time. Fantastic smoke to make things uncomfortable. The jump up to the hay bales, isolating each 1v1 and the jump off as well. The dismount and his spots the CT with 10 seconds remaining. You don't even need that bomb plant. He'll just take all of you down with the AK-47. That is a significant round as Vitality bounce back. Sphinx biting back. That's huge. I can't believe it. You, you know, there was a lot of pressure on him. But you wonder if in the moment, if Astralis should have played this 2v1 a lot more passively. Or in the 3v1, right? It feels like... They, they could have run down that clock. They could have forced the plan. But they gave him three different 1v1s. Like, he... He created them as well with the smoke and the utility, like a nice Molotov down towards oh, the pier, flashes the orb out. He then gets a bit of space to flash the bombsite player off, smoke goes down. It was perfectly played. He couldn't have done more. And look what it's done to Astralis. They've been absolutely dumpstered financially. They're down to just pistols, no Kevlar, no nades. That was such a huge round. Sphinx goes nine and two. And Astralis have got an A stack going on here, all five players. Call this round done, I'm afraid. Yeah, nothing much else to say. I mean, yeah, they, they gambled. The A-bomb site turns out to be the wrong call. It'll happen every once in a while. But yeah, it's going to take a couple of rounds of victory to forget about that Spinks one versus three. That'll stick in their minds for a little bit until they can get some revenge, hopefully, for, for themselves. A five to two Nilao is what they're going to be building here. So on the last outing, well, like we said, Astralis took the series 2-1. to one. The first map was Mirage. Astralis took that 13-10. We then had Vertigo, or well, Vitality, bounce back. Uh, that's their go-to pick. He mentioned the interview. Doesn't really want to rely on picking that every single time. Uh, so that's why Inferno's out here today. They won 13-6 on Vertigo, and then Overpass is where they got absolutely destroyed by Astralis. 13-4. It is a, an old staple for the Danes, playing Overpass. Yeah, true. And, uh, yeah, Vitality didn't have fun, so uh, they definitely made sure they got rid of that one today. We've got Inferno, Mirage, and Nuke in the series, and Vitality off to an absolute flying start, to say the very least. I hope that Apex has learned some more phrases in Danish. If, if not, I, I'll I'll teach him at some point. Like I'm happily gonna. That, that was one of the best moments when they were obviously playing uh, up against Falcons. I I really enjoyed that. What did he say again? Can you just uh, remind Holding me? Keft. Holding Keft. Yeah. Holding okay. Keft. That just means shut up. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> keep, I guess more precisely, keep your mouth shut. Okay, it? that so, makes yeah. more sense. All right. But, Pretty um, cool. All right. Can Vitality. Keep the dra gravy train going. We've got a bit of aggression here. Yabby down at that bench, and they don't seem to be considering it as an option. Lovely swing. Assertion here from the young Dane. They are going to see a second kill come through as well. He's absolutely manhandling them out there. Maybe we'll pull one back with the MAC-10. And this is a round Astralis need to convert. They've got themselves the man advantage. Rifles across the board here. Residual utility available, but zywoo has got that AWP. They're missing flames and spinks at this point, but they have got plenty of time on the clock. Mezu with the bomb in second middle. Two players bottom of banana right now. Zywoo trying to initiate the next maneuver with a potential pick towards banana. Good smoke, though. Very powerful smoke. Yeah, well timed. What a task for Stead to pick up as a, you know, as a younger player who, you know, still very inexperienced compared to everyone else. You know, he's anchoring the B-bomb site alone all of the time there. Not going to be an easy thing. But look at Device. He's snuck out. He's ready to try and flank them here. I think Vitality is sort of being pressured, pushed really towards the B-bomb site. 
And device. I mean, this this should be a one round. He's seconds away from being right behind them. They're already rotating everyone else over. A little bit of a lineup. Oh, <gasps> the seat spun on around. Oh my god. I could feel my toes curl, and I bet device could as well. Saiwu leaning his gaze towards device. It'll be Apex to pick him off. Still, this round is done. There's only 10 seconds left, but imagine a spin around from Saiwu. That could have got the kill. They could have even escaped to the A bomb site. Just when you think he's outmaneuvered, outpositioned, he's going to be shot in the back. Zaiwu, the Spidey sense starts tingling. The 180 comes through. Thankfully, the shot doesn't connect. Could have been an absolute disaster if device is found and they actually make it in towards the B bomb site. But it will be Astralis bouncing back, courtesy of two lovely kills there from Yabby. As mentioned, just a confident push, shutting down their default. Anything they had in mind, then he set piece. Completely eradicated at the start. Fancy footwork from Device as well. Good backstab. Secured the round. Thanks. So I will a couple of misses today. Hasn't really had a problem fragging out though. Seven to four. Yeah, and even in games that are somewhat mid by Saiwu standards, he's still probably better than everybody else. Oh and, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and the problem is, even when he's having those games, like we saw on Nuke, suddenly he just has a round where he completely goes nuclear, and it, you just you can't keep up anymore. So watch out for those. Watch it's out for device as well, Anders. He's got a auto shotgun. Let's go. And I dare say it's about to find its first kill of the round. Here it comes. What Sphinx? How does he get the double kill? Get the replay ready. Is that just they lined up for him? Because it felt like the same bullet that came out of his AK found the, the dome of two. Ah, oh, that's a terrible scenario now for Astralis. They, they can't find any momentum, Anders. Every round they win, it's answered back straight away. It's going to be six to three. And to be honest, that's a bit disappointing, right? Because when you have that three-man se three setup at the front of mid like that, yeah. You're supposed to at least be able to trade out some of the kills, but they like you could see Device was kind of hesitant for a bit, wasn't really going for it, probably didn't get the information that someone was already fighting a little bit towards Boiler, but either way, that was, um, yeah, three people, and they don't even get to coordinate any kind of uh, an attack towards the incoming T. So, honestly, I think a little bit disappointing. Um, first round is probably more so than anyone else. Blame F and Stair, going to be saving on the other side. And Vitality will make it out. That's six and three. And uh, unfortunately, with two weapons saved, they're going to get $1,900 into the next round. There was that disgusting sequence from Sphinx. He is having a lights out superstar performance here on Inferno, ladies and gentlemen. One of the absolute best riflers in the world right now, Anders. I know that's a pretty sensational so. statement, but uh, it's true. And uh, we're getting into the dying stages of this first half. It is the first map. We've got another plethora of uh, matches to bring you today. We've got Na'Vi versus G2 after this one. Liquid oh. phase and Virtus throw big. For Let's now, go. it's up to Astralis to try and do something with the two safe rifles and three pistols. They've made a call. They're galloping through CT spawn here. They were leaving B, but they've, they've decided against it. Back we go. Ooh, okay. Hard to know what is informing these kind of calls. Could just be a bit of a feeling. They've left device alone over on the other side. Has a deagle to try and defend with. Speaking of later today, it'd be quite fun to see Twists playing up against his old teammates in uh, in phase. That kind of... Oh, um, that that's game of the day. Yeah, that, that'd be really interesting. Liquid versus phase for a spot in London. Yeah, that's going to be the third game. That's uh, scheduled to start at four, but we do have an accelerated schedule here, so just make sure you keep your eye on HLTV. Either way, for now, this round's coming to its logical conclusion. We've got that B stack, bear in mind. Device would have to find at least two kills uh, for this retake to be possible. He's in a position to get one and fade away, but likely be traded out. Bear in mind, he has no Kevlar. Very good with the Deagle. That should have been his. There, Not were some, it up. there were some helmets out there showing. Yeah. Like I said, don't get me wrong, very difficult shot, but by, by his standards, he'd be like, yeah, I can hit that. I can get that one. This is uh, one of the humbling experiences I sometimes have, because obviously, I, the, the life that I live, I end up playing, or something like casting more Counter-Strike than I'm really playing. So sometimes when I sit back down and I play and I, I think, 
I know how this shot's supposed to work, but then when I actually have to do it, it's obviously such a different experience. So sometimes you get a bit uh, blind to how difficult some of these shots oh, yeah. actually are. That, that's an incredibly difficult one. It's just that you had a bit of time. You had a good, like, half a second to adjust, try and find the head. I don't think it would have had a massive knock-on effect either. Uh, we've got round number 11 coming up next. Here we go, though. It's going to be Apex trying to find his last remaining players. Sphinx to an absolute legendary plays out there. Flames will close things out. Everyone goes down. And Good. Vitality really are running away with this first map now. Including the two rifles. So even exactly. if they lose a couple of players, so worth it for Vitality to do it. Yeah, we're going to need a tactical timeout here. That was the moment from Device. Maybe he could get one. As I mentioned, doesn't really have a massive knock-on effect. He would have been traded out regardless. But uh, yeah, the scoreline getting a bit problematic. I will say that much. Vitality looked way too comfortable. And bear in mind, they lost the pistol landers. Yes. So, but they've lost the pistol and only really given up two rounds since. Yeah, Astralis might be out of luck this time. We've gone seven to three. It's round number 11. The, the money should be okay after that eco. We'll say he picks up to these days. He looks a lot calmer today, I'll say that much. But I guess it's easier to stay calm when you're up seven three. Yeah, that's, that is a good point. He was sort of speaking tactics with his hands. Very, yeah. very apex approach to the game. Interpretive dance. There's a wall here, and I need you to go behind the wall and find the kill. <laughs> what so the penultimate round. Stare with the MP9. We've got a bit of aggression. Don't pull that trigger, Zaiwoo. Don't you dare. How does he do it? Flame F just throws himself in. And Zaiwoo knew. It was one step ahead. You all knew he was going to hit it. I knew it before I said it. You but uh, it. there it is. Another opening frag. Another disappointing start to the round for Astralis. And now they need to make up for it. They are at least getting a little bit of damage through the smoke. I say a little. So I was down to 47. But plenty of the round left to be played. You can see the grenades. They're almost non-existent, Anders. They've got... Three flashes on the CT side, but they have got down. Device working in tandem. Pulling this round back in their favor. Zaiwu, he is low. He might have to push this smoke, takes even more damage as he segregates it to the T stairs. Well, what a bounce back this is. Down. Looked like he was done for. And now they've got the Tower of Terror stacked over towards B at the half four. It's going to be good for at least one kill. This should secure the round with this one interaction, unless something goes horribly wrong. It would, it would be a disaster if they don't get a kill here. The duo they're up against, though. Sphinx and Saibu, I was really worried. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. The tower plates worked out, just stacked vertically on top of each other. Absolutely uh, well played. They need these last two rounds, right? They, if it's 7-5, it's still not a really a great first half for Astralis, but it's something they can fight for. Oh, absolutely. Uh, especially with the round starting off like that, the fact that they bring it back is... Wonderful work from Stown, especially. Device charming in. And a nice little stack. There was no way Vitality were going to flush that one out. Very good call from Astralis. Final round of this first half. First map. Money strong on either side. Vitality haven't really had to eco at all. As we see Zywe back on the AWP once again. No opening kills this time. Who will be picking up this last round? 8-4. Is a possibility as Apex will find the first. Leaps above the half ball. Should be able to convert the second here. Oh, but the hat trick! That's more like it from Apex. A real captain's performance as he single handedly manhandles the B bomb site. And you're right, might as well throw it at half time at this point because there's no <laughs> way they're bringing it back. Absolutely not. They're, they're taking a while to get the bomb over here. I don't even really mind that they're doing that. You know that Astralis have to make the move. They have to run. They have to do something to try and get closer. Apex looking for his fourth kill right here. Yabby, if he's distracted by a second, he might be dead. He's trying to crouch into it. He'll finally take down Apex, but it is so late in the game to try and make this back. It's a two versus five for Device and Yabby. Fresh new teammates here, but... This is too much. Retaking the B-bomb side's already hard. Even if it's a four on four, you might be in trouble. Mezzi flashed for the minute. It doesn't really matter. Flames spinning around and now shooting with the back. Device goes down eight to four at the end of the half. A fantastic beginning for Vitality. And Device, there's a lot of voices on the team. Like, 
uh, Stan just said, him and Yabby speak a lot about the team, blame us, the IGL. You obviously give a lot of input and insight. So what's your angle been like for working on building this new roster with Blame and two new players? I mean, for sure, I feel like naturally I've taken maybe a little step back on, on some aspects of the game. Uh, I think I also I'm a little bit more calm doing that now mm. uh, with the quality we've we've gotten. It feels natural I also do think CS2 plays a little bit differently with the orbing style. I think everyone kind of needs to figure out how to be as impactful as they were before and not just go with the rifle, which is kind of exciting sometimes to just think like, yeah, fucked up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, sure, I mean like, I'm just really happy to be uh, a part of the team together with the two new guys. I think they have like a lot of potential and a lot of quality coming from their like philosophy of CS and we're trying to make it all come together and make everyone feel as they are 20% of the team. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to achieve like uh, team success and not just a uh, glimpse of it. Everyone needs to find their groove and their role. And some people take a step back on some maps and have a more influential role on other maps. And I think that that's just where we kind of need to find out uh, how everything comes together as a unit. Has it been overblown the way people have talked about the roles with the with, with Stan and Jabby coming into the team? Or is it actually quite a big challenge to try to build a roster with them? I think they've changed a lot, but I think what goes like unsaid is like Stan who has transitioned into a completely different role. Yeah, yeah. And I think he's just killing it. Like he has been a part of why I think uh, Stan and Yabi both have like some of the same roles and they can like have some sense of security in how they play because he's changed everything. Mm -hmm. So a uh, big credit to him. I think he's doing amazingly. And, and as you said, of course, it's both new roles, but it's also how you play those roles. I think like, yeah, playing, uh, let's just say Thor on Nuke, can be played 20 different ways. So it's also about fitting into the entire structure and not just holding that position. So I think it's, as I said, a little bit like the philosophies coming together and understanding how you move as a unit around the map uh, that makes or breaks how your role is played and how good it's played. And I think that's just something that naturally takes time. So yeah, it's just a work in progress, but it's also a really exciting work in progress because we have so much quality. The long road continues to London as we will see Spring Groups 2024 come to its conclusion here. A couple more days to go, Anders, and we need our first team. It's looking good to be Vitality, at least in this first map. They've posted themselves an 8-4 scoreline. Astralis had their moments, but Sphinx absolutely dominated them, posting 13 frags and some spectacular moments. It's been such a joy watching Sphinx play Counter-Strike for the last couple of days. Like, it's just been a real treat. So hopefully we could get more of it. Now they're on the CT side and Astralis. A long comeback ahead of them if they want a chance to win Inferno here. It is picked by Vitality, but still, I'm sure Astralis would love the extra buffer of just having the map because Mirage, I mean, it's not going to be a walk in the park either. It's going to be, ooh, they're wrapping around really quickly. Look at it. Already towards the arch position. Mezzi just kind of spotting them out a little bit in Cyber. Almost getting the headshot, missing a couple there. And now he's been put under some pressure, but he's got some backup towards the library position. Apex shooting with the back. He's missing shots too. What's happening? Where are the bullets going? Vitality finally with another kill and finally back in a three on three. Yeah, a couple of misses here, but they're making up for it now. Just down. Three versus one. They were going for that creamy banana split there. But Astralis have been shut down, torn limb from limb. Vitality's round to lose now. 45 seconds. Stan does have the bomb. It's a good move. He knows that they push in library. He spots Sphinx at the corner. He knows there could only be one at B. But we have got Sphinx in this transitional position. Yeah. He can make it to either bomb site. He can back up flames. The bomb likely goes down. For Stan at this stage, that's his only objective. And it looks like that one's going to be completed, no problem. Uh, because that means they can force find the second. Even this is okay. Yeah. Get that bomb planted, and at least you've guaranteed a force fight. There is a, a slight chance he can win this. If he had 100 HP, I'd be saying, yeah, I'm believing. Maybe there's a chance, but 
It's a slither of Hopeless Down now. They don't That's have a kit that helps, but obviously it's only a factor if you can get one or two kills here. If he just dies, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, if he gets a couple of kills, maybe they actually flash themselves. That was a bit awkward. Maybe there was a chance that he could have got one of those, but I think he's been zoned out now. Still, good shot there. 10 second defuse happening. Stown trying to get the reloads. Oh, it's another 10 seconds. They came off the defuse. Finally, the shot for Flames, but you can sense. I don't know why they stopped defusing. And the flash, the team flash there, oh, a couple yeah. of really <laughs> awkward moments. But Vitality win it, it's all good. I mean, yeah, it, they win the round, but you're right. They, they could have fallen apart there. Stown had an opportunity. As mentioned, if he had more HP, you, you never know. But uh, it is a decent round overall. Vitality close it out. Honestly, not, there's no way Stown could have known, but once they reset the defuse, he can actually wrap around the other way and yeah. probably win the round there. The thing is, though, as we mentioned, Anders, all he had to do was get that bomb planted. Yes. It would lead them to the second round four spy, which means they get two AK-47s, two Galils. So they've opted for more firepower rather than resources in terms of utility. CTs, feeling what they're up against here. Maybe baited in by the Desert Eagle. Want to go for a push. They're actually thinking better of it. Falling back here, they just check second middle. Had a quick peek and saw nothing. So they're going to transition players over toward that B bomb side. Yesterday, we saw a couple of second round AWPs. Now we're seeing a second round scout out of Cyber. I think that's kind of interesting. I like it. Makes me, makes me want to see some cool headshots. Well, you're about to. It's Flames. It's currently alone in towards B. We've got Apex rotating in from spawn as they let themselves known, given that the fact there's AKs ready in towards B. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to bait out whatever utilities on this side of the map. There's one minute remaining. And they decide to focus their efforts elsewhere. One smoke, two flashes. But as mentioned, in terms of firepower, Astralis have got them beat. Let's see if they can actually stop the streak here. Vitality looking way too good here on Inferno. Smoke from Saibu. They almost have to push through it. He just put it down at about 40 seconds. Yeah, they have no choice. They want one more smoke left on Blame F. Cy with a little bit of trouble. Oh, Mezzi, not the best spray there. They're going to spin around for it, and they get the kill on Cy with the meantime, but 28 seconds and Sphinx. He'll find one of them. They're not out of the woods yet here. Astralis, three versus three. They need the bomb plant. Oh, Javi, you've got to be wondering, why am I not moving forward? Both of them bumping into each other inside of the smoke. I don't think they realize Apex shooting Blamer for the back, and now they know that someone is up, and maybe Apex did have a clue. He seems to be looking for it. Yabby still gets the headshot, two versus two, but they've got a combined 15 health left on Astralis. The grenade in the corner. I can't believe that doesn't get the kill. It's so close. And now it's on Sphinx to try and save the day once again, looking for okay. the second player to watch the library. He does not have the kits up. 10 second defuse. Has to bait him into it right now. Yabby, he's waiting. He hasn't quite bought it. And even if Sphinx gets the kill, it's still Astralis to win the round. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Well played to Astralis. They get the job done. Sphinx will go down as well. Very, very important round there. Comes down to the granular detail. I thought There's, the grenade had him. I know. It looked like that was going to be enough at this point, but uh, a couple of awkward interactions. Zywoo got some nice tags there with the scout, but mowed down in the end with three players waiting to enforce that library. Yami did a great job passing no! Apex like ships in the night through that library smoke. And that is a massive round, because as we mentioned, you lose to that second round force by. On the CT side, you're not going to have a whole lot left. Especially with all five players going down. So this is where this game starts to get interesting now. Oh, nice scout tag. 50 damage towards down. Confirms the force by. Astralis know what they're up against here. It's more of the same as we saw in that first half. Desert Eagles from five sevens. They have got a smoke or two. A couple of flashes in the mix. Mezzi tucked away in the apartments. Five seven, perfect weapon for the job. Got that one tap potential if you're close enough. Great round for Blamef to have this Mac 10, right? That means they should be able to scout out a stack without the possibility of losing too much. And maybe for Blamef to get some kills, he's 3 and 11. Yeah, true. Yeah, it looks like they've made the right call. Because, like we said, there's only one player on this side of the map that's Mezzi. Head of a player. Unlikely to win his first duel, though. Down he goes, had no helmet. And that's round. It's a B stack otherwise. So, Astralis, little do they know, it's a wide open bomb site. Nothing Vitality can do but sit back and wait. Yeah, and, you know, fair play to them. Might as well keep the rifles or 
the one rifle. And the Deagles into the next round. It makes sense. Six to nine. Okay. Yeah, now we got a game on our hands. We're getting there. We're slowly building into it. I was... I was feeling like this was going to be a little bit too one-sided. My talent was starting to run away with it a little bit too much. Binks is just... He's hitting too hard. They can't... Stop. He's 16 and... Or 17 and 6. They can't stop him, but... Um, Astralis making a pretty good case for themselves at the moment. Yeah, I'm liking this. All five players survived the round. He says... They're going for a bit of a hunt. Ooh, I don't... Matt Henshaw. Bit risky. That smoke should dissuade them. CTs just want to hold on to that. Kevlar Deagle combo. Only one player going down. Do they dare push for that smoke? Surely not. You can hear them spamming, trying to take down residual vitality players here, but they'll get a second bite of the cherry going forward in terms of having those Deagles and Kevlar. It would be an eco otherwise. So uh, you take this all day long, a fighting chance of the Zybu scouts as well, the objective for him. Uh, not necessarily go for all the headshots, to try and get as many tags as you can, spam the smokes and uh, try and weaken. The Astralis players on the other side here, but Vitality can't really purchase anything on top of these saved pistols. Nine to six should become nine to seven, but uh, we'll see what Zaiwu has to say about that. That's a shot you would expect Zaiwu to hit, I suppose. Still a difficult one, but doesn't quite connect this time. He took the extra hundredth of a second to line up for the headshot. I thought he had it as well for sure. A little bit scary here, actually, Apex. He's going to get traded right away. And they're going to get the bomb planted, but there was a moment there, a real moment where they could have lost another player. That would have been awful for Astralis. Could have been a two versus three the other way with the player still left on the A-bomb side. But um, it's all in the past now. That uh, 97 scoreline is going to be fulfilled. And the, the money troubles will kind of continue to plague Vitality for a while unless they can really start winning rounds. Astralis... We'll see if they want to send out the Mac 10 to do a little bit of work, but I mean, it's not that much that they're fighting up against. It's not super critical that they do a lot of damage here. They know that it's Vitality to invest into it next time. All right, there we go. The scout's getting something. Can we f get another headshot? Mac 10's running down. This is all or nothing. Blame F will find a kill. His fourth of the game. Don't usually see Blame F, um, you know, a little bit muted. No, that's certainly true. It's taken a while for Astralis to get on their feet, but they're clambering to do so now. Round by round, starting to look more and more convincing. It was Stair with the fantastic start. Yabby has had notable contributions as well with 15 kills, 12 deaths. He's had that great aggression on the CT side, especially that's like ready to get stuck in, finding the important shots and recovering desperate rounds. Vitality, speaking of aggression, we'll see if Sphinx wants to present any of his own. Certainly does and gets caught out. Now, it will be an equal trade. Favors the T-Cyber device. He knows Flames is around here. Surely gets his kill. Absolutely nails the shot. As they take the man advantage here in round number 17, they're going to pick up the pace and challenge Mezzi in towards the pit. Oh, they're kind of going hard at the only place where they have any defense at the moment, but it doesn't even matter. Yabby. Oh, the railgun for an AK taking down a couple of players. Yeah. Mezzi was just a spectator and all of that. Saw the Molotov flying in, didn't even have a moment to respond before Yabby helps himself to another two kills here. 17, there's one behind Sphinx at this stage. I mean, they're not all in the same position, but that's sort of technically a four-man setup at the A-bomb site that gets slowly crushed with only one kill in return. That's going to make you a bit nervous, right? Can't really stack more than four people at the A-bomb site. Yeah. It's not looking great so far in the CT campaign. Winning the pistol four in a row, Astralis. Firing on all cylinders now. The Danes trying to sniff out the in-game lead-up of Vitality. Yeah. Saying his prayers in the chapel. Drinking some wine. And that was a great shot from Stair. Good trade. Oh, from Device as well. Just uh, a signature shot. Yeah, well and truly. And Yavi as well. Really nice work with the AK. Pixel perfect precision. Round 18. And it has to be somewhat of a partial buy here. They are accumulating the loss bonus, but there's a saved M4. Still a possible round. Maybe a much needed one for Vitality just to find something here on their CT campaign. Blame F. Still happy to take this challenge, but to his demise, it's Apex with the first, but still solid trades continue to be delivered here. 
by Estrella as Flames will tuck himself in behind the half ball. A desperate scenario, he's only got that 5-7, the wall bangs are coming through. Down to 17 points of health, he needs Spinks to back him up here. Yeah, and understandably he doesn't want to stick around because there could be another grenade coming. He doesn't know if they have another HE or Molotov and it's not worth it to die in that fashion. Okay, quite the battle. Again, Blamef struggling to find his groove. Looked like he could have maybe had that one. He was sort of setting himself up for it. They are rotating a third player over to the bomb side. It gets a bit interesting now. Spinks still has the M4. We know how good he could be. He might be alone in the back here by the boxes, but challenge down on the other side. Good precision on the M4, and they just wipe out that defense. Flames gets a headshot, but that's about it. They tie up the game, Henry. It's going to be 9 to 9. Oh, God, this game is right back on. I really thought this was a done deal on Inferno. It looked to me like Vitality had done plenty enough in the first half with Spinks just completely ripping Astralis apart. This is really good fundamentals of Counter-Strike from Astralis right here. The spacing's excellent. The trading is world class. The individual aim is looking really strong across the board. Three players surviving once again. Even after losing Blame Earth, there's good comms. Stown not wasting a second there to make sure he gets the trade and continues to be the tip of the spear. Sure, one player goes down, but look, great comms, great awareness. Nothing too flashy from a strategic point of view, but it is going to be very well done. As you will see, Astralis now with a huge lead. That was the partial buy, however. And we should see a stronger buy overall. Vitality, how let it slip away. You're dead on after giving up five in a row. Astralis are on fire. Sending in manpower over towards B once again. D Molotov. Flames tucked behind the sandbags. Apex is trying to hold them at bay. Good utility. He's done some damage here, but Stown still happy to take the fight. Yeah, he is. You could hear the jump in. They run right into the Yechi. But a lot more damage has been dished out by Vitality. So it's not all that bad. Game is tied up. But yeah. um, we'll see. Yavi has been playing like a superstar on his T-side campaign up against Mezzi, who's gone a little bit quiet since they switched over to the defense. Zaiwu patrolling Arch. You can see he's got... A teammate tucked in, Spinks towards Cubby. They will transition back towards the bomb side, though. Unclear as to where Astralis, Astralis want to finish up, but they still have almost all their utility enders. They've got a, a plethora of smokes. Yeah. They've actually got five smokes still. That is wild. Could be a really hard decision for Apex to make at the moment. Oh, could they even try and grenade him out? I don't know if they have another HE. I was going to say they could double nade the, the, the coffins here, but... Looks like it's going to be more regular. I like this from Mezzi, though. Pushing up. You saw Device do this a great effect. See how long he wants to keep going. They're rotating over. They have the right read. They know what's coming. Vitality, but they have to hold on to the ball. There it oh, is. Oh, my God. Flames will do just exactly that. And low on health already. Yabby with a bullet to the face. He's going to be absolutely dead. Flames doing so much work on that defense early on. The double kill plenty enough. They did a lot of damage on roots. They were fending them off with the incendiaries at the start. Perfectly placed grenades to do about 50 damage to two players at that point. Flames with the OP bounce flash from first orange is there. Times it to perfection. Destroys about three players of it. Manages to pick up two himself. Taken down by the Tech Nine, but so much damage output there from the CT defense. A relatively clean finish. And it will be Vitality to snatch the lead back. As we enter the latter stages here of the first map of Inferno, this is the pick of Vitality in this rematch. We're looking for our first team to make their way towards the Spring Finals in London happening in June. It means you skip an entire event, you skip the showdown. Yeah. It's a big deal in this circuit as Device forced to take the challenge, takes 40 damage for his troubles here. AWP of Zywa as well, loses vision. HE grenades won't hit the target. That was five in a row for Astralis just now. So yeah. Vitality is so happy to be back on board. Remember, they won the pistol here uh, coming into the second half. So they, they were probably expecting a lot more. They were expecting to have won the map already. But Astralis have clawed their way back into the game. Here we go. Spinks just wide swinging that one, but not quite able to get another kill. Blame F will pick it up. He felt like he was detected. They just go straight up direct grenaded him yeah if as long as he just gets one with that challenge it's absolutely fine it's not ideal but he'll take it on the low hp zaiwu 
One of his stronger positions here, backed up by Apex. We need Mezzi to start performing here on this A bomb site. Zywu surrounded, surely done for. He's got players everywhere. It would take something unbelievable for him to stay alive in this round, but it's Astralis answering back straight away. Disallowing any chance of vitality, building a momentum here on their CT campaign. Great rap on the bomb site, good trading in general, and it's going to be a timeout called by Vitality. And you know, in the middle of all that chaos, it was Blame F who got four of the kills. He just kind of stretched them out across the map, but that's really sick. This first one, fine again. He's been struggling individually. Yabby picks on that one, but everything else is Blame F. He spins around, he gets Apex, he gets Flames, and then Saibu there. Really important round. They're doing a great job of like really segregating the A bomb site. You can see there's no crossfires being set up. They're all isolated, one on one jewels. Uh, they're looking very uncomfortable on the CT side. They can't really find their footing here. And in terms of cash handers, be interesting to see where they're at. As we mentioned, it's ugly. they've got loss bonus, of course, but all five players went down there. They had to reinvest with the AWP. Uh, it begs the question as to whether they can even get a full buy out there as uh, we enter a 10 10 scenario. And they're having the same experience that Astralis had on their CT side, right? You win a round, you instantly lose. It's just a terrible feeling. We are talking about it when Astralis were there, and they didn't enjoy it either. So they've sacrificed all helmets, which is fine. They're up against AK-47s, but one kit, enough utility to win a round, but we do need to see someone take these matters into their own hands. It's going to be Mezzi, as mentioned. Hasn't really got anything going on the CT side so far. He's been on 10 frags for a while. This time looking for a quick pick. Not going to get it, though, but the sound cues convey Zywu into an opening frag. So a couple of protocols in place there. They had the flashbang to look for the opening pick at the bottom of the stairs. And then if someone did hear Mezzi falling back, Zywu's there to find the first kill. It's Yabby as well, who's been unbelievably good here in the first map. 20 kills. Silence here on number 21. And Apex, this time, has got control of Banana. He's sick of them executing on the bomb sites with full control. Yeah, who could blame him? It's not been a fun time trying to defend this one. You're right, Abby's quietly climbed all the way up to match the output to Spinks at the moment. That's pretty sick. 50 seconds on the clock here. Still a three-man setup at the A-bomb site. I don't mind it. Apex has another smoke that he just threw down. So that's a problem here for Astralis. That'll really bleed the clock down quite low. They don't know if there's another smoke or a monitor behind, so they, they might be put under some pressure right now. Need a couple of them landing. My God, they've taken a lot of damage. 30 seconds left, and Flames stuck in this corner, just looking for it. Bomb out, they stared to go down. They didn't quite check it. 20 seconds now, a four versus three, but the bomb is being planted now. There's still a chance for Astralis to upset this round. Oh, there absolutely is, especially with Device Alive, with AWP and the post plant. He'll land a shot, that's into the thigh of Mezzi, but they've still got the four versus three advantage. Zywu will find his rival. And now this retake is looking very possible for Vitality. Stown has to go above and beyond for Astralis. His first kill has to connect, gets a headshot. Blame F. He's had a quiet performance so far, but maybe he can save the day. The bomb is ticking at some pace. Low HP on a couple of these players. He finds the first. It should be enough. Blame F. Not going to save the day. I don't think there's any time. He finds the clutch. It's an absolute disaster for Vitality. The four on two collapses as Blame F roars into action at the back of the bomb site. Oh, you can see the frustration on Vitality. They had to find him. They had some extra pressure. The only defuse kit they had was on Flames, and he was in the back dark. The, the kit, it's not that far away from the bomb, but still, it's another bit of distance you have to run, right? And they couldn't even find Blame F here. The pressure was on. They couldn't send one guy with a kit defusing while the other one fights Blame F. They had to go fight him to get the kit and then come back for the defuse, and it was all too much at the end. Astralis building an insane comeback here on the opening map against Vitality, the best team in the world, and they are putting them to the test right now. Zywu looks stressed, man. That was a uh, bit of open runway there. Yeah. Four on two, felt like he was going through the motions. It's down. He sets up lame up. He just had to find one kill. The time was ticking at some pace. And it all falls apart. They can't, it seemed that like they were scrambling as well. They couldn't decide who was going to be on the bomb, who was going to be hunting him down. It's kind of the worst of both worlds. No one was even near the C4. They didn't even have time to defuse at the end. I think if they would have had another kit on one of those two players, they would have gone for the one guy defusing, one guy trying to hold off Blame F to put some pressure on him. But they couldn't do it. They just didn't have the opportunity. My God. 11 to 10, ladies and gentlemen. It's a one round lead for Astralis, but they're two rounds away from winning. And again, 
The economic situation for Vitality is dreadful, to say the least. Desperate times here. And times of austerity. First shot. Rattles off to Vice Connect to find Apex, but not quite the kill. Takes him down to 48. Well, there it is. They'll convert it either way. And that last round, that clutch from Blame F. Y you mentioned he was on like four kills and ten deaths to begin with. Now, slowly but surely, building his way into it. He's kind of neutralized his scoreboard at 13-13. One of the uh, biggest clutch of the game. And now finding his second frag at this particular round, which is going to be for map points. What a reverse sweep this is. Yeah. Hand grenade to take down Apex. Through the smoke, they just absolutely land a touchdown. Spinks is setting us up for a bit of a highlight. <laughs> he was looking for the headshot. I love it. Bit of showmanship. See if you can do what device couldn't from this position. He lands the headshot. Let's see. Spinks, Kitty Green, and back. Oh, it's just so much. They're overwhelming him. And they'll power through Cyber as well. 20 seconds. They don't know about Mezzi in the corner, but they can trade their way through. It's a five on three. Honestly, great work from the last three members of Vitality. They do a lot, but it's not enough. It's 12 now. Astralis, one step away, Henry. Yeah, absolutely true. That was the partial buy, but still a pretty convincing finish, even with some nice Deagle shots landing. Apex can feel this one slipping away. It was a stage where it felt like everything was going in their favor. And it was just an open net. A chance for them to close things out, get us to Mirage. Astralis' pick. But this second half has been an absolute disaster. They've won the pistol and won follow-up round since. Can Astralis close things out right now? Maybe not. Apex with the first, but Stair... Oh, my God. He's going to get the knife. Yes, he is. Oh, my. That's the first knife of the tournament, I think. Flames will go down. It's still the advantage of Vitality. Bear in mind, 12-10. It is the most dangerous scoreline at this tournament, at least. No one can seem to hold on to it and close out the game. But maybe Device can. Back towards B. Two players here. They are missing Blame F, but that's absolutely fine. He'll come join the squad. They've got a minute to work with. Utility available. And Sphinx started to leave the bombsite here, leaving the in-game leader essentially alone. If you would have kept going Apex, you would have found Device with no backup. A little bit of wallbang back and forth, but Stairs taking a lot of damage for it. Device has managed to just walk on that ball in the sights. Go straight for the plants and Apex. Unable to find the shot through the smoke. Now he's in the corner. They've already won this once. Four versus three. Double set up towards Banana. It's going to be really hard to clear out. They do have a smoke and a Molotov. So if they know that they're out there, they can try and see if they can block them off and just go straight for the defuse. This time they have two kits as well, Henry. This is doable, but... Oh! Clipping Messi. Oh! oh the sky device. He can't miss a shot right now. A double kill for him. And two players left. Another flick comes through. Device has rocked them. What a way to close things out. One of the best to ever do it. Device with four sensational kills of the AWP. It looked like Astralis were down and out, but their T-side campaign on Inferno was one of the absolute best you're ever going to see. A fantastic display and fundamental counter-strike with everyone standing up and delivering. If this last round does not encompass exactly the story of this game, on one hand, an Astralis ready to pounce, fierce with individuals, very sharp device, beautiful on the 4K to close it out and make it to 13. And on the other, a vulnerable, scrambling Vitality who in spite of being in winnable, winning positions, somehow fumbled the bag here and there. This last round had the entire story in itself. Yeah, it was re re rewriting itself, sorry, from, from start to finish at that point. Of course, device finishing off the game with a beautiful 4K with the AWP. I think that T side coming out of Astralis, it reminded me a little bit of what they had going for them as well five six months ago when burp was still part of the lineup the inferno t side the cords coming out of blame if the efficiency in the executes and the ability to win three v force two v force and turn around rounds that were not necessarily liking the, the the way they were looking out for astralis look at this round line history right here as well the t side coming mm. out from astralis they never allowed vitality to win two rounds in a row i think three or four rounds they won from being down 3v5 or 3v4 they constantly kept converting those situations a beautiful display by the individuals of astralis very very beautiful from astralis i i do want to take a minute to pinpoint that this was one of the most moderate mid performance from zybu i've seen in yeah. quite a long yeah. time 
And, and this in itself is relatively extraordinary, but we have to be honest and point it out when this happens. He had a great start of the game. He went very quickly up to seven. And then from this point, he disappeared. And not only did he miss shots here and there, I don't think he missed a million, but he was very passive. I don't think I've seen him take a whole lot of risks. He let the game come to him. Okay. This this is the worst of what I like to see from Zaiwu. This is, uh, luckily enough, it's it's one out of the 30 game, one out of 40 game. But if you are a detractor of the guy, you're looking at this game and say, what the hell went wrong? Because this was far from a superstar performance. Listen, I agree with you. There's no beating around the bush. Zaiwu did not play a ga great game of, of counter strike. Couldn't really get it going. However, I will also also credit some of that to Astralis, the way they're approaching the okay. game. There was a couple of rounds where we and I were looking in the green room thinking they're not going for him. He was standing on the A bomb side. They were killing everyone around him and they wouldn't fight Saiwu before he was left alone by a 1v3. He was constantly being smoked out. He constantly had to retake that smaller bomb side as well. He could never get into the game. As you said, maybe not proactive enough, maybe not assertive enough in that regard. That's, That's my him. issue. But in the retake scenarios, it's not like Vitality and his teammates made it easy for him and it's sure as not like Astralis made it easy for him. They were constantly zoning him out with flashes, with utility, and they didn't make the playing field for Saibu look great. And the city side started really wonky for Vitality when you see here the force by coming out of Astralis. As you mentioned, great utility usage, that split towards A long. Here, I think there is a massive Unloosable. mistake being Unloosable. made. I mean, the position is known. Apex knows someone was behind. Flames peaks without Apex being ready. The trade comes from Yabi. And that, that's really where Counter-Strike is sort of beautiful in itself. We'll see here no kit on Spring, so unfortunately he can't things, turn things around. But this is the beauty of Counter-Strike. You're looking at a favorable three versus two situation with one information. In fact, both information's known on the side of Vitality. You are nine to four scoreline. You're about to kill the force buy from Astralis. Okay. You're about to go into 10 to four in Taiko against you and put money. And it flips immediately on its head. And you lose this round and it... The, the game just starts slipping away. I call for it again because I want to see it one more time. There's, there's a, a, an unexplainable situation right here. Trades back and forth. Sphinx is being baited for. That's nice. Again, you find yourself in a favorable position. Apex gets in right here. Look at this position. He's aware there's a player in library. They're not communicating. Apex and Flamesy is not communicating. While Flamesy is peeking out, Apex is in the middle of nading the bomb site. What should have happened right here was they should have peeked together. Mm. They should have killed Yabi. Maybe Yabi would have gotten one kill, but then you leave yourself in a 1v2 against a player stuck on the bomb site with no HP. That was simply unlosable from Vitality. And you're right in saying that that's the difference between them winning and losing the game. They would have gone up 10 to 4. It would have been an eco against them. It would have been 11 4 most likely for Vitality. That's killing the game. That's right. winning the game right there. A simple communication issue cost them a lot. And it is the same scenario that we had in their first match between Astralis and Vitality, which is Astralis playing very good Counter Strike. And we're not standing here trying to take anything nope. away because nope. this was splendid from Astralis. But it is also a Vitality losing situations they shouldn't. We can have a look at Blame. 1v3, of course, it, it comes to mind. It's a situation where Zywu starts finally getting a little activated, gets a first kill, being a bit more aggressive. We have the B hit coming in from Astralis. Flamesin is in a good position. You can even argue could have had a double kill here. I think the, the trading position from Astralis is pretty on point. But from here, this actually should be over. Zywu gets the kill. You could, you could think that's it. Stop looking, have a coffee, it's over. And somehow Astralis will be able to turn it around with Blame F in that one position. And a little bit of chaos. Apex is white swing in a position that's completely clear. And then Zywu commits to the full fight, but his teammate is not really with him. So it happens, Blamef is able to distinguish all of the 1v1s, put him down at the end. At you don't come back from that. And this is no. very symptomatic. No, they panicked, right? You could see in the bomb timer, there was a little. half the time left, so they could have had plenty of time to figure out where he was. I think Saivu got baited as well, a small detail right here. One of the players headshotted Blame F through the box. Okay. Saivu pulled out his USP thinking he's at one HP. Saivu comes in from the side. I think he hits him once or twice in the body. Not enough to kill him. So I think he got baited into an unlucky scenario in that regard. However, it's the small details, it's the panic, and it's the lack of communication. You called it coming into the game. Vitality are not looking like their old self, and I would agree with you. Yeah, and, and the issue is it happened a couple of times, right? Bomb plan situations where if you go through the motions as a team that's in confidence and in the rhythm, you you, won't, you win these. Even the last round, I mean, what, what Device does is beautiful, but as, as the retake starts, you feel like Vitality is in a winning position. They for have sure. the odds for them, they have the numbers, they have the util, but still, Astralis being able to turn things around. And it's not only based on Vitality's mistake. We're not going to paint that picture. Let's talk a little bit about Yabi because he was one of the heroes of, of Astralis, of course. In the CT side, even though they suffered, he was thrown time and time again to fight into that banana position. He was fighting against Messi and Apex time and time again. And on the CT side as well, very, very strong on T side, rather. This was a Yabi that 
we have to command for this entire map. And honestly, it's great to see him back because I don't know if you remember, Matthew, but the last couple of months in Heroic, the last couple of tournaments he played one in that lineup, Yabi was not looking like his old self. I was even thinking to myself when Astralis signed him that, hmm, what if they signed the Yabi that was playing his best Counter-Strike in Heroic? Then we have an Astralis who can beat anyone. Then you have this superstar team. But if you sign the Yabi that was playing the last three, four tournaments for Heroic, he was not up there to that level. So for me personally, it's very good to see him back at his best exceptional in his trading potential right here, exceptional mid-round playing as well coming out from Yabi. And he's one of the players on the CT side as well who's not afraid of rushing down mm. middle, taking fights and just play on his aim, trusting in his aim. Yabi is God's gift to Counter-Strike when it comes to Danny's Amos and it's great to see him back. And also pretty low on the pecking order of who gets to choose where. Of course, when you have Stone, yeah. Device, Blame F, you're not going to be in the number one priority position. But anyway, he made the best out of all his on Inferno. That's the least we can say. We're going to take a three minute break. And when we come back, we dive into map two, which is going to be Mirage. Vitality came to Copenhagen as the rightful best team in the world, but things aren't exactly looking as good as they could right now, Jacob. We're talking about losing three out of four maps that they have played against Astralis so far. Yeah. We have to remind the viewers at home at what's at stake here, of course. The winner of this game goes straight to the Spring Finals in London. Blast.tv for the tickets, by the way. But the loser isn't completely out. You get another chance on Sunday. We're not going to pretend and manufacture a danger for Vitality. Oh, no, the showdown. I don't really care about that right now. I just want to talk about the level 
careful about the Counter-Strike and how Astralis made Vitality look like a B team on Mirage when they faced the first time. Yes, around. I would agree with that sentiment. I think the level of Counter-Strike that we've seen from Astralis at this tournament has been higher than the level of Counter-Strike we've seen from Vitality. That in itself is a great statement. It's a great statement to how well these guys on your screen have gelled together already. Of course, we knew the quality of the individual players, but we've seen that before. Cloud9 is a great example. There's a lot of quality when in that oh, lineup. They are it. no don't longer it. in this tournament, Matthew, because they can't quite mesh it up. Four of the 20 best players of 2023 now on the same team, and I think they have the rhythm going for them. I think the roles make sense. I think the map pool as well is changing a little bit. Mirage and Astralis, the last couple of years, haven't really been a great, great match, but I think with Stown coming into the lineup, with Blame F coming into it as well, and of course with Yabi, we can look at an Astralis who can contest against the best teams in the world on a map like Mirage. I agree. It's the evolution of, of a name as yes. Astralis, right? If you were watching Counter-Strike four to five years ago, and then you took a very long nap, you woke up and you see Astralis picking Mirage, you're like, huh? What the heck? They're picking Mirage? I don't know what kind of an accent that was. No <laughs> idea where this was coming from. Finish. Don't mind me on that. But the fact is, not only did you have the first wave of Blame F coming in and Config at the time, who were experts of the map, and I think Astralis started to play a little bit more, but then now you bring in Yabi, you bring in Stan, and obviously Mirage was definitely in the wheelbarrow of Heroic. Now, when they faced the first time around, the defense of Astralis is where Vitality could not find any solution. Talk me a little bit through what Astralis did at the time, the aggression coming in, the movement, a very much heroic-esque yes. vibe of Counter-Strike. That's the key word, heroic-esque vibe of Counter-Strike. I think that's exactly what Yabi and Stown is bringing in. Heroic were one of the best teams in order to be proactive on the map. They would always take control on the CT side somewhere on the map. Whether that would be pushing B apps, take mid control, delay push middle or fight for it, or push down ramp into apps, there would always be a proactive move somewhere on the map on the CT side whenever Heroic were playing. I see the same tendency Mm. the way Astralis is playing. And then you have Device to back it up. He can roam around with the AWP. He can be placed in CT spawn. He can be placed in window. He can even go B-app. So I think they're very versatile in the way they attack the CT side. And that's tough for Vitality to read. I like that you mentioned Device and his roaming because I really have a feeling that the read from Astralis when it comes to their defense was on point against mm. Vitality. And part of it is, of course, movement, proactivity on the map, and you can kind of solve the enigma as it's going through. But I also think they have a very good feel for the map. What are the utilities we're supposed to hear to draw this internal map of the map. How many players have we heard and where and when? And you can almost see their deduction as device is moving through the map. And you know he's in kitchen, you're like, ah, oh, damn, Vitality is about to hit the B side. Bam, device is in kitchen. He's mm. in a spawn. Oh, here is the A hit. I feel like they read their opponents very well. At least they did against Vitality. I 100% agree. One thing is doing it once though, you got to do it twice against the same opponents within a couple of days. That's a different task. However, I want to say this before we jump into the game, Matthew. Astralis is one map away from booking a spot into the Spring Finals in London. And they're also one map away from winning against Vitality right now in order to cement themselves as one of the Premier League favorites coming into Katowice. If you can beat Vitality twice at a tournament in a best of three, then you can't tell me that you can't go far at of it. So right now, Astralis are playing for a lot. I am right with you, Jacob. Astralis are 13 rounds, one away from an incredible feat here in Copenhagen. They came to the Blast Premier Spring Groups with a lot of expectations, a lot of eyes on them, and they have been delivering on all fronts. Gentlemen, dear casters, take us to map two. Thank you so much. The carnage that is Counter-Strike continues as we move on to Mirage here. Astralis stunned Vitality and indeed the world of that T-side performance in Inferno. A world-class finish from Yabby, Device, Blame F finding some form as well. And they've already beat Vitality at this tournament on Mirage. Could they be the first team going to London, Anders? I'm starting to believe. I mean, they are really doing a great job of convincing everyone at the moment. You could see the odds have now switched in favor of Astralis, no longer with the no same, way, like no longer with the best team in the world. Of Vitality, they're now the underdogs according to the GG bet. So wow. I'm excited. I bet you are as well. Second map coming up, it'll be on Mirage. I can't wait to get this on the way. What a day of Counter Strike we have ahead of us still. But this match to kick it off is a real treat, isn't it? Device closing out Inferno with an absolutely disgusting quad kill on the AW. WP, humbling Vitality a little bit. We'll see if they can bounce back and recover themselves going in to map number two. Well, strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. This one's going to be a bumpy ride for Vitality. Zaiwu was notably absent on that first map. Not a bad performance, but by his standards, very quiet. As we see Apex challenging towards top and middle to kick things off on their CT side. It's a smoke down towards Connector, and here comes the Wu. Sphinx with that first frag. He had an excellent performance on Inferno. Wasn't quite enough to clinch to victory. But they've now got a five on four scenario. Mezzi, the B bomb side anchor, very good in this role, but has been struggling against Astralis today. 
Yeah, just stay alive, Mezzi. That's the only thing you gotta do. Just don't die, and the backup will be there. The cavalry has arrived. Mezzi gets a headshot on Stal, but there's so many people here now, and the bomb is making its way back. I'm a little bit surprised that Astralis took the bait and tried to hunt down Apex at the start of the round. I feel like they did not need to do that. Again, you're up against USPs at range. It seemed like a fairly obvious play. He was running back. Of course, there's going to be someone in window. Turned out Spinks was at the catwalk as well. Blame if hasn't given up on the round yet. And he'll try and get the headshot down on Mezzi. Here we go. Second kill for him before he's Jesus. finally dead. That is a bit of a deletion. Blame F. Looking for a one versus four in the pistol round. You can see that Astralis just want to get that bomb planted if possible. Vitality doing everything they can to deny that prospect. Blame F. Some impressive shots there. But it will be another pistol going in favor of Vitality. Solid B hold. No plan found. Should be the eco coming up next. There is an option on Mirage, especially to go Tech Nines, Kevlar, and Smoke. That's an old school approach. So you're just trying to do the full execution and uh, try and steal the round away. I don't think we'll see that in this particular round. I assume they'll take the eco. Nice work from Apex to close things out. Just what Vitality needed to bounce back here. And it will indeed be an eco. Blame F of a Desert Eagle, considering he got an extra $600 because he had two frags. And we send four players in towards the palace position. No flashbang to send over the top. They'll just pick a time, flood the bomb site, maybe get a plan down, time will tell. Yeah, send the Glocks in first, hope that the Deagle behind it can sort of be the one to find the kill, but actually, Flames, really good. The first kill that he gets is on the Deagle in the back, and the Glocks obviously much less threat, so not even a single casualty on the Vitality side. Great news. Great news for Vitality, that's for sure. Astralis will have the AKs going to the next round. Would have loved to get the C4 down there for the extra cash, but all is well. They'll have enough for AKs at the very least and some basic utility as we get into this first gun round. Vitality will have some compromised firepower, I suppose, with FAMASs and SMGs in the mix. Might suggest they'll go for... Oh, it's no SMGs, I tell a lie. It's a couple of FAMASs. They were prepared for this one. Uh, they still might be jostling for control. And a certain area of the map, we've got a rare appearance from the Creek here, Anders. Now, I haven't seen one of those all tournament long. Nope. I think maybe you and I once or twice in CS2 have casted a Krieg really ever. The Org yeah. makes a disappearance, but the Krieg is so rare. Yeah, the, the Org is still meta, especially on maps like Ancient and Anubis. Krieg, though, hasn't been in the conversation for some time. Maybe Device can start initiating those chats. It's a bit unfortunate now because he's got tagged up so much, but I mean, in theory, still could be a really powerful weapon. They're not getting many opportunities to fight Vitality. I say that actually as they're getting flashed into the middle. Here we go. Vitality with a full on mid retake. Three or four people picking it, and it's working out for them. Well timed. This is such a good call for Vitality. Yeah, just what they needed. They collapse in towards middle, pincering the position and finding two. Very welcome kills. Mezzi starting to show some form now. That's his second frag of the round. Two players remain. It's Yabby and Blame F. They have got time to make something of this. There's a couple of low HP Vitality players. But ultimately, the round should be secure here. Looking to continue to streak on the CT side. I can't see any points of access here. Maybe a bomb down towards A, but we've got Apex in towards spawn. Sphinx will join him. As soon as the bomb does get planted, I'm not sure they can really fend them off. Apex just needs to get at least one kill here, and he'll take both. Lovely spray down with the M4A4. Convincing stuff here from Vitality. Holding on to a very important round. Bear in mind they entered with two FAMASs there, three M4s, and uh, managing to apply the perfect amount of pressure in towards middle. Significant damage applied to Device. He cowers in the corner. Mezzi hitting some impressive shot and winning his jewels against those AKs. And Apex denying the plan once again. It should be partial by territory here as the lost bonus starts to accumulate, but not much of one. Only a couple of players have Kevlar. I'll call this more of an eco, Anders. As we head over towards B, we've got a single smoke, maybe for the window, I suppose. I mean, the only kills the has had so far in the pistol, right? It was Blame F with two kills. Everyone else is at zero. So quite a slow start, really, for the Danish squad. They had a slow start on Inferno as well. They lost the first half yeah. eight to four on their CT campaign. You'd think, oh, that's, that's a death sentence. But their T side was ungodly. They've made the chairs invulnerable up here in the kitchen in CS2. They used to blow up, if you remember. Yeah, making a really used... awkward sound. Yeah. Uh, they removed that feature, along with many others, in CS2. 
Waiting for that patch to come through. Not bitter. Hashtag not bitter. I'm a little bit bitter right now. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Like, I feel like they, it feels like they've forgotten about us. Everyone's like just thinking, oh, it's, it's coming, the big patch. I don't know. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it ever coming, Anders? I don't know. We are getting cocked by Valve. <laughs> <We have to laughs> There's no denying it, unfortunately. One day, I remain hopeful. Like, you just see every other, like, FPS title get, like, weekly updates and blog posts and new features, Christmas updates, <laughs> tweets. And we're just oh. there, just like, oh, please, can we just get, like, an update? Like, as it's, <laughs> just, a said, general, just some communication. You said, in the, you said in the van the other day, going to the studio, you said, just a blog post. I just yeah. think that's funny. Just get, we're not even, just, can we just get a blog post? Just to, like, kind of recognize, like, <laughs> yeah, we, we appreciate, like, there's some features missing, there hasn't been an operation, or there's these bugs, or the anti-cheat situation. Just recognize we exist. <laughs> yeah. Like, instead of everyone, we're just, like, like, we're just at each other's throats right now. We're just angry at each other rather than uh, <laughs> resolving this issue. But either way, by just what they needed here to bounce back from Inferno. Round number five, they've got a 4-0 start. They've got four AKs They've got as well. four AK-47s. Confidence starting to flow through their veins. Pushing pretty much everywhere on the map right now. Apex is in towards short, drops the incendiary down towards the underpass. They've got some B apartments control. Messi has tucked himself in the kitchen here with the AK. Incredibly powerful position, meaning they can rotate some players over. Messi. Happy to defend B alone. It means, he, sure, he can get pinned from short, but he'll be in such a defensive position, he can call for the rotations to come through. Astralis make their way over towards the A side of the map. The bomb's down here, but they're starting to transition out. With one minute on the clock, back in towards T-Spawn we go. And maybe the B split from the apartments and short. Bear in mind, Mezzi's position will be instrumental in the defense here. He is alone on this side of the map. If you can find Stair, who's got the C4, that could be the round in itself. Yeah, tremendously awkward if he's the one to go in first alone and just dies. They're not going to have that much time left to recover this one. 40 seconds, Astralis. Messi's got a smoke as well. So if he gets his kill, finds yeah. the, the bomb, he can smoke it off, and I don't think they can even challenge. Yeah, might not be welcome in the kitchen after all. Here's the spray down on the one. Can't quite pull out the grenade. He knows there's someone else there. Messi, beautiful work. Double kill for him. 25 seconds now. Blamef will get one in return onto Apex. It's not quite done yet. His next kill for Cyber might make the difference. The headshot's beautiful. He does a lot of damage on the Yabby. 15 seconds. Bomb is being planted. Holding on to this round by a thread is Astralis. Bomb finally goes down. Two versus two. Kid available for Flames. Joined by his brother in arms, the Sphinx. Low HP on both Astralis players who are yet to post a round here. Advantage for Vitality for sure. Looking for it. Flames. Oh, yeah, but he was a bullet away from death. I can't believe he's still alive. Three kills on him, and it's all up to Spinks, the champion of Inferno, looking to see if he can make this a one. Versus one, oh. it does, but Blame is just hiding at the corner. I think he was always thinking that a little bit too much. The clock was running out on that bomb as well. He probably had to be a little bit more active. Thought maybe there was another player behind the bench, but it's the first round for Astralis. What a round it was as well. Tested to the very limits of their ability. Blame F had to find some spectacular shots through the smoke. Yabby winning that duel versus Saiwu. The bench took a lot of damage on Rue. Comes down to a 1v1. The old master, Blame F, finds Astralis their first round. And bear in mind, that all started with the Mezzi. B apartment's control. He took the bomb down a couple of frags. You think that'd be more than enough for the round victory. It's incredibly scrappy, but Astralis come out on top. It cost them a lot in terms of resources, though. Stair with just a deagle. First interaction coming in. It looks like Vitality had control, but two stunning headshots are delivered. Astralis five versus three as they push back the mid-aggression. It's about time that Astralis start to wake up and show themselves here on Mirage. Vitality, they build an economy. But if you can win this round, you're going to put a lot of pressure on the money on the CT side. Mezzi playing the opposite side of the kitchen here. Blame if he reads it well enough, but they still can't really get past Mezzi at the moment. Great work over towards the B side of the map, even if he's very low on health here. Spinks, unfortunately, can't help out. And now, I don't know if Mezzi can be the, the point of re-entry. I think Sai was already walking away with the AWP, so it's going to be another round for Astralis. Yeah, this one very convincing. They, they were caught off guard there. Like I mentioned, they had like Khalil's, Desert Eagles, and a very strong flashbang towards top of middle. 
device will be kicking himself. He doesn't convert that one. Nice little flick there from Zaiwu. Doesn't actually take any damage there. So that's just a straight up miss from device. But uh, they will be holding on to the AK, the EWP, but it's two rounds in a row for the Danes. Maybe Stair finds him. There's a miss. Someone kill him, please. Anybody, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Down he goes. Quite a different start for Mezzi. I feel like he's got an extra incentive to try and make it here playing London. Yeah. One of the home crowd. What would you say? Is it, is it good to play in front of a British crowd if you are British? Or is it I mean, are you just going to insult in, like you understand the insults? No, the I chance? think the British crowds are actually some of the best. They have no team to, to, to support, so they just kind of turn up for everyone. They love it. If, if Vitality is there with Mezzi as well. He'll be a hometown hero. He'll be welcomed with open arms. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's happening in June. The tickets are available now, by the way, for the spring finals. Winner of this series will be guaranteeing themselves a slot at that very event. It's going to be a lot of fun. Check it out. Vitality take a timeout here. Bear in mind, Zywo did go down in the end, so they don't have the luxury of the best sniper in the world operating going forward. They're the 4 0 star, but now going to be tested once again. Astralis starting to wake up here on Mirage. Their map pick, and it's a rematch, of course. We had this earlier in the week, three days ago, and it was a 13 10 victory for Astralis. Yavi is looking fantastic today. Nothing but headshots, super clean with it. And he has that AK-47 in hand. 4-2. I mean, you brought up the stat a couple of times that Astralis having four players in the top 20. Yeah, right? <laughs> so ridiculous. This is, like, this is like a super team now. Yes. Like, they're expected to have these deep runs. And so far, so good. Already taken down the world's number one team at this tournament. Here's the rematch. A map up. This is, team is the real deal. Zaiwu. Does have the AWP. Last of their resources thrown into round seven. Trying to answer back here. Flame F holds towards that underpass. Smoking towards window. Yeah, but they're bringing the bomb over on this side. Stown making his way towards the catwalk. Blame F has set it up so he can get a bit closer. They're going to try and pin to the B bomb side. It's already been set up, and the only one that could stop them at the moment is Cyber with his AWP. He gets the first one. It's a start. There could be a lot more to go. We'll see if they'll change their minds. They might actually... They hear the blast that they're all bringing out from the bomb side, and they say, maybe it's not worth it any longer. Sticking around now. 50 seconds. Maybe they're expecting for Cyber to rotate after the kill, and maybe that's why they're sort of waiting to recommit, but who wants to go straight into him? Has to be the B split now, really, with 40 seconds remaining. You've got to play in towards that ladder room. They're just hoping the CT second guess themselves. Yeah. They've that's kept it, it quiet for a while. Zaiwu, though, stays posted on this side of the map. Hungry for a second kill. 25 seconds remain here. Astralis don't really have many options. We're going to have to send some incredible flashes into standard chance. Apex gifted a freebie. Blame F for answer back, but Zaiwu holding strong on the bomb site here. Shouldn't be much of a chance for Device. I think he is very out of position, out of space, out of time. And that's going to be the round for Vitality. Holding strong in the B bomb side. Zaiwu backing up Mezzi. And they've got a very convincing round. Be careful, Device. Those wall bags are coming through. But it'll be Vitality breaking the little streak Astralis had accumulated there as we go five and two on their CT side. It's a bit, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate. Maybe it's a bit of a mistake even for Astralis as both the players in the middle coming through the catwalk are looking away. They're looking towards flames, but Apex, yeah, his timing there to take them down was just. It was absolutely perfect. Otherwise, if they get the kill on Apex, they isolate Saiwu again. And maybe that could have been enough. Yeah, Astralis. I do like the idea of going completely quiet. Like, you can see from both Apex and Saiwu's point of view, the map just looks empty on that side. Like, there's not a player in sight. But they're still out there waiting. They really were hoping that there would have been more of a mistake. Vitality, though, I guess, good patience, holding on to it. Putting out the Molotov here is Flames, but he's put under a lot of pressure towards the dark position. They know that he's in there somewhere, and it's there with a double opening, cracking open that A-bomb site. Four versus three here. See if he can get one more. Tries to go for the Wu. Swings wide. Oh. It's Yabby instead to take on over, and that might be enough to win the round. Yabby just keeps hitting those long-range one-taps. This time, takes down the orb of Zai Wu, who had found himself two kills already. Mezzi. That just spins. Certainly possible to still win this one, but a missed grenade does no damage. Blame F patrols towards CT spawn. Looks like Astralis might have done enough here. 
kit is available. Smokes and incendiaries in play as well for the CT side. Need to bait out one of these P players here. Find a Brad. They line up for him. Oh my God, Spinks. He might be over the triple here. Yabby, one versus one. Mezzi has got it all to do, taking significant damage. Can't hold on. Great maneuvers as Yabby finds yet another hat trick in this series. It's a lot closer than it should have been, Anders. The yes. fact that Sphinx gets a double spray down there, pretty remarkable. Apex knows that that was tantalizingly close, but I'm able to close things down there. That's a significant round. Zai Wu <laughs> hit some absolute fantastic shots there, but it's Yabby sealing the deal. That was the moment he pretty much wins the round when he did all that damage with the wall bang. Yeah. As he couldn't keep track of him. And Zaiwu gives it up after some strong contributions. It's not quite enough to hold on. What does it do to the money on the CT side? They were struggling just a couple of rounds ago, and some of the rounds have been fairly expensive. And I believe they're going to get $1,900 into the next one. So you're talking like between two and $3,000 per player. Oh, so an opening, in other words, for Astralis to... I, I don't know what do they something. do with this one. I would say oh, not even a partial buy, really. We'll have a look. Maybe I've got, a, got it wrong. But it doesn't, doesn't feel great after that investment. And yeah, so not even a partial buy. Desert Eagle 5-7, no Kevlar, no utility. This is like more eco territory. Looking for a superstar performance from Zyru. He's had an 8-3. Same as Mezzi as well. Sphinx has had his moments, but slowly but surely, Astralis is starting to close the gap here on their T-side campaign for now. An A execution, but... Might get a bit more than they bargained for here. There's going to be a solid defense, a lot of manpower. First two players are toppled by Blame F and his Mac 10. Zywoo, though, son, the hit shots of the scout. It's not going to be enough. As Astralis now have won four out of the previous five rounds. Sphinx left. Nothing to do, nothing to say. USP only. Be a miracle if he even finds a single frag at this stage. Yeah, and even in spite of that fact, they're checking more or less everything. They're sort of going pretty deep. They don't just go straight for the bomb plant. They really, really want to make sure that there's no shenanigans happening. Yeah, good. Uh, I mean, the fact that the smokes were down initially also meant that Saiwoo had to run forward before he could even fire the scout. So, you know, kind of making it a little bit rough on him in that sense. Yeah, Sphinx just waiting around, but um, yeah, four to three, the scoreline. Astral is catching up. He did tag Gabby. Messi's still got 3,300. Flames with 38. Ooh. Again, this is, this is, if you're playing it by the book, this is, this is partial by territory. But I don't think they're going to. I feel like they're going to hope that the couple of rifles they can pick up, an SMG or two or a Deagle will be enough, but it's certainly a high-risk maneuver. It's like pick your poison time. Do you take the partial now and then try and close things out with everything you need the awp etc no we're going for it so a couple of famuses helmets are out the window and that's a problem because we've got the blame f mac 10 here anders he's got the perfect weapon for this particular round oh yeah vitality should be on high alert that mac 10 gets near them they're in trouble device will find the first zywoo good response from the window neutralizes things to a four and four an important kill and return no doubt yeah, Stown will recover the AWP. Sphinx through the vent. Couldn't have been better timing, could it? Blame F out of it, and Sphinx relocating himself, slipping out of their grasp. They wanted to lock him in there, see if they could maybe box him into the vent position, but he's gone. Bit of a Molotov. Oh, that's awkward. He's actually crouching through that one. Yeah, nice Molly. So you know exactly where he is now. Somebody remember the bomb, please. The bomb is all the way back. At T steps, you're right, but uh, for now, their objective is to try and find a frag. Flames, that is brave. He gets away with it, challenging the connector with the FAMAS. Now the bomb will have to be scooped up from T spawn. Here we go, Stan will get it. I'm not really sure what they can do. Resources are low, they've lost a lot of map control. Mezzi's got full barments under his remit. I do love this from Mezzi. He's been so proactive in some of these rounds. My God, that's some damage. If they had more. They have an HE on Stown, but he's just too far away at the moment. They're going to be wrapping around the other way through the... Oh, Mezzi's left the site. Yeah, he oh, left the site. God. He went out. He pushed down into the underpass. I thought he was going to go for T-spawn as well. This is a little bit interesting. Stairs probably dead. He's in some trouble here. Headshot from Mezzi. It might work out in the end. I think Yabby has decided already. 
going to be very hard to fight for this one. Nine seconds left on the clock, and in a one versus four, they're everywhere. Yeah, just try and die before the time runs out. Vitality, very important round with four people alive. They can even pick up some AKs. I think it's a huge boost for them. Oh, it absolutely is. That's a solid round with concessions, as we mentioned. Two for masses entering that particular round. Device with a nice flick to open things up as I were answering back. Anti footwork from Sphinx manages to get that one through the vent, tuck himself away in CT spawn. It looked like they could be in trouble there with the Messi pushing towards the, the B apartments. He went for the full backstab through the underpass as they went up short. But Zaiwu one step ahead of them. He was there to rotate, deny the plant, and secure the round. They've won at least 50% of the available rounds here on Mirage. Money under a bit of scrutiny now on the T side. Two players can fully invest. The rest would have to make compromises. Flame F and Stair, 5K, 4K respectively. So uh, they took the tactical time out themselves to discuss their options. Two more rounds of play. We'll see what they bring to the table. They still don't look really fully fired up vitality, but they're doing an all right job. And I mean, hopefully it's creating a bit of time, right? Cyrus is starting to get there. It's 11-4 right now. Still expect a lot more out of him, but maybe that is still to come. I mean, yeah. He's got over a kill around at this stage. It's absolutely fine in that regard. And they've got some solid mid control. Even better spray from Sphinx. Connects with two. And this could find them a couple of rounds as well. We know the money is low for Astralis. They don't have the lost bonus themselves. Five on three for now. Mezzi coming to life in this series. Good flashbang. Doesn't swing off it. His teammates are trying to take the aggro for him. They've got a perfect read on the scenario. As Stair, he can feel that pressure. Has no choice but to fall back. I'd love it if somebody could go back and figure out how many times Astralis lost the top mid fight in this half. I feel like it's almost every single time they've showed up. Either Vitality haven't been there, and then that's fine, I guess. They get some map control, but I feel like every time Vitality actually challenged it, they've been winning that fight quite a bit, starting the pistol round even. Doesn't seem to be a spot that they've been too successful in at the moment. Two versus five here. Honestly, you don't have any money. The, these two AKs are going to be valuable the next round, right? Yeah, they're going to have to save them. Even if they recover that bomb, I don't think there's any option to plant it. So, yeah, their loss bonus is low. Can't even watch the TV. Can't even do that. No signal. And there uh, might be another kill available. Does go in favor of Stair. That confirms their saving. Do they want to initiate the hunt on the CD side? It's the last round coming up next. So... Do they fancy their chances? Do they want to try and punish? Doesn't seem to be the case. Five seconds remain. Henry, do you ever have a, one of those really large CRT TVs? <laughs> okay, uh, I was wondering where you're going with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone calm down. Right, go on. Like, they're so massively heavy. Like, I feel like people nowadays don't, don't appreciate like when, a, when I used to go to land, inch CRT TV can yeah. kill you. Dude, I used to go to land with like a 22 inch CRT. No. That weighed about the same as me back then. When I was like 16 years old, I weighed about 90 pounds. Um, <laughs> That's unreasonable. Yeah, I used to have to try and lug one of those. Your tower is about like came up to your hip as well. You had to lug a CRT with you. It, those are the, the dark ages. Yeah, we didn't need the gym. We just No, you, it's true. We were, we were real men back then. <laughs> So what a shot. He started off and taken down Stown. That's absolutely beautiful. He was diving out of the skies in the middle. Not an easy shot by any means to hit. He's back in the middle. He knows someone's up there. He misses that one. Stair tries to bring the round back. They needed desperately Astralis. Four rounds is a bit on the low side, to be honest, for this map. But the bomb is going to be planted here. And the retake is going to be on. Spinks before they even really get started. He's taken down device already. Stair and Yabby. A fight for their lives here. Two versus four. It's been a lot of clutch potential for these two players. Stairs had his moments this tournament. Yeah, he showed us his power on Inferno. First frag doesn't go in his favor. That was a good opportunity, but I feel like Stair, his days are numbered. It would have to be something unbelievable at this stage. Good start, but can't quite stick the landing. It's Vitality bouncing back, looking to take us to a third map as they once again post an 8-4 scoreline. we got Apex and Mezzi. Boys, last time we interviewed you was a four groups when you just put on the black and yellow yep. Mezzi. Different times, couple of trophies under your belt. First of all, how does it feel to be in the position right now? It must be amazing, right? Yeah, it feels good. I think, um, at least coming from my position, you never expect to 
instantly come into a team and win. But when you look back and think of, just look at the players that we have on the team, then of course, uh, obviously these guys expect it. Obviously, it wasn't the, the instant goal to just keep just win, but we yeah. knew we were capable of it, and it feels good to to win. What was your focus on the start of this season? Were you trying to find some downtime, some vacation, or did you know you had a lot of work to do? Um, have you been boot camping? Like, what's been the philosophy coming into this season? The good part is that we had um, a good break a longer break than yep. we used to have in the Christmas Eve. I'm here for a long time and it's really important to have those breaks, like not yes. thinking about CS and be on my side. But we already we started like two weeks ago to practice. Uh, we tried to grind the game and the focus has been to, to maintain our level because we know when you dominate a year, how tough it is to dominate the next one. And we saw like so many teams just crumble and just stop being Getting as good as before. Burnt out, right? Yeah, I think that's also about the motivation. It's a lot of a lot of issues and um, and uh, also thinking that uh, it's still going to be the same. But you have a big tar target on your back. Everyone wants to shoot you. Everyone wants to take your place. The good thing is we have some experienced player like me, for example, that needs to remind the young guys that yeah. you've been insane for the last year and I've I'm just speechless about that, but the young guys, you know, when that's why I said before, when they win, for them it's just a habit. It gets a habit, but you need to still work hard and we even work harder to stay at the top. I would say that with the lineup we have, it's easy to come at the top. It's easy to win one tournament. Sure. Let's be honest, because we have so much firepower, yeah. so much talent in the team. But to stay up there, it require it require way more. I know we can make it, but with young people, you just need to remind them most of the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are sitting comfortably. You join us for the Spring Groups 2024 Group A Final. It's the second map of Mirage. It was Vitality that had full control of Inferno, but let it slip through their grasp. Once again, they've posted an 8-4 score at half, Anders. It wasn't enough before, but can they take us to the third map of Nuke? This pistol might decide it. They have to, Henry. I really want to see Nuke. I think they, they owe it to us. This has been a great series so far. I want to see more. I don't want to just end now. In spite of the fact that I put all my chips in on Astralis, see if Vitality can do this, rushing the bomb site right into the Molotov, but they actually jump out the window. They dodge most of it. Flames with a good opening kill device. In a bit of trouble here. Stare, even more so. Bullets to the face, creates enough space. The bomb is a little bit further behind. I don't actually know why it's out there. There we go. They threw it over to Saibu, who's going to be planting it. It was Flames that headed towards the catwalk. Don't want to have the bomb in that position. A very, very hard retake coming in for Astralis. Yeah, they don't have the kit, of course. And it looks like a solid behold here from Vitality, but Blame F certainly making things more complicated. Takes down Flames as a low HP Apex to deal with as well. As Sphinx will be fighting two for nail here. Apex is incredibly low HP. One bullet would do it. Blame F can't connect though. And there it is, the important pistol going in favor of Vitality. The B play there negating the incendiary that was dropped at the mouth of the bomb site. They still made their way through. And even after a late plan, it's Astralis that can't hold on. The round is very convincing in the end. And it all started here. You can see there's very effective flashbangs. Flames leaping on him and Spinks continuing with this very strong form. He's shown throughout the series here. Apex, lovely shot to close things out, even on low HP. Is that all the pistol round so far going to Vitality? Um, I think it is. Yeah, you might be right. That's a bit crazy. 
the way that they got back into it on Inferno, obviously, Astralis was by winning the second round. So, they, yeah. you know, they kind of bounced back really quickly. See if they can do it again here. Stare, strong headshot. He's taken down Saibu already. But they slow it down. They concentrate. They focus. And they get rid of him before he can do any more damage in that position. So they have the bomb site. Means they get the bomb plant. Obviously, that's going to put an enormous amount of pressure once again on Astralis, who do not have the defuse kit here in the second round. Yeah, you might consider the safer. Unless Device can start landing a couple of picks with this scout. There's no real chance for them to do H much with it. Yeah, that's true. The HE will probably do enough, to be honest with you. There it is. Does that persuade them to give this one a little go? Sphinx's headshot certainly makes things more complicated. Blame F just trying to lock them in towards the bomb site here, looking yeah. for some exits if possible. They're not going to be going for the defuse, but it's double digits for vitality. As we mentioned, winning the pistol could guarantee that third map. MR12, we don't have much room to breathe. Oh, they're exiting the other way. Yeah. Nice take shot. Most of them down here. Yeah, they're really making it expensive. Another headshot. My God, device. He's so close to having done his 99 and 1. Mezzi, but he does get the triple. He keeps the AK in his hands, which is super, super important. Man, device. He's just, he's just right back at the top. One of the best in the world once again. It might all be for naught, though. It's the fact they're on the CT side, and this was a force. They can't really experiment with any further purchasing in the follow-up round. If they took all five down and saved an AK, maybe there'd be something to be said, but Device, he wants to be the hero. He's gonna purchase the M4A1S. Got a helmet as well, boosted up towards the underpass. Needs to convert his first kill. It goes in his favor, but Sphinx, Zaiwu answering back, but there's the hat trick. The boost is absolutely sensational. He's on for the ace right now. And he's not pulling back. They get he's the pushing out. forward. Yeah, good job on Messi. He ran for it. Oh, they see it. Yabby. No. He misses a shot. It might not be all over yet. The spray is coming through. They know that he's up there. The pressure is on the flames. Battling his way out of that one. Yabby, that might have been an absolutely crucial shot miss there. Device has to do all the work on his own. He's walked up. Not quite sure where the bomb is planted. Now he knows, but he's exposed out in the open. He's down. He's picked up an AK, and now he's joined up with him. Same position for them here. Can they bring this one back? This could be for the entire map right now. If you're a shot... Oh! What just happened? Take a seat, Astralis. Mezzi absolutely eviscerates them with the AK-47. What a spray down. He's had a questionable performance so far in the series. Very quiet on Inferno, but he just saves the day. Device was on for the ace, applying a ton of pressure towards the bombsite. A wide swing, and look at the control on the second. That is a beautiful oh! display from the Brit. That's sick, William! Yeah, that, that is sick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always fun with Apex on the server. It's Vitality stealing it away, denying the device ace. As we go 11 to 4. There is money available once again. Astralis of a weak buy, though. M4s across the board. No kits, no helmets. Bare bones in terms of utility. Vitality and cruise control right now almost look guaranteed for a third. Can they get there cleanly, though? Can they put it to bed now? I can't believe he got that transfer. Just painting the horizon with that AK and yeah. it just worked out. He's 14 and 6 right now. Like we said, this is for a spot to play in London, so no doubt Mezzi will want to go. We want to book his ticket right now. Spink's also doing amazing work. He's 16 and 8 right now. They're two rounds away from a third map. It'll be a good start. It'll be playing Nuke. Has to decide him. My favorite map in the pool, still after all these years. And it's Jabby, good shot down. Flames inside, we're absolutely gone. That's the bomb as well, he's gonna be able to find. Device, should have maybe been able to get that. What about Mezzi? Just hard to contend with at the moment. He's he's found himself a real game here. Yeah, really enjoying this return to form. Jabby's sandwiched in. This is a bit awkward right here. Blame F will open it up. That's actually a very important kill. Now they should be able to hold on. Well, Astralis arrive in its second half in the nick of time. This would have been for map points. They deny absolutely everything. There'll be no way Vitality convert this one. Maybe not worth the hunt at this stage. I feel like Apex gets this frag. Could get a little bit awkward. There it is, though. Good shot. 
keeps Astralis modest as three players survive the round. On the CT side, Vitality will keep two up. Oh, perfect timing, just as Flames is clearing out the close range proximity. That's when a swing comes through towards the A ramp. Bomb taken down, round over, and the comeback begins now. They actually won against Vitality on Mirage three days ago, 13 to 10. They've got an uphill battle in front of them here, but it's still possible. CS2 blinking, you miss it. These, these huge yeah. leads can disintegrate quickly. Fast A play here, a lot of pacing behind this one. Ton of damage from Yabby. He loses control of the spray. The grenade, though, surely does a ton of damage. As you see, Stown and Blame F swing into action here. Should be enough. It's scrappy, but it will do. Zai Wu, final player remains. They threw everything they had in towards the A site, trying to look for that knockout punch, the coup de gras, but uh, unable to find much more than a couple of kills. It's going to buy some space here for Astralis. Should be the eco now on the Vitality side of the equation. They stomped on Apex in the sandwich there. They actually yeah, right. stomped on him. You're right, though. Yami, yeah, I mean, it was funny. He, he just completely, you can tell, he couldn't see anything. He was partly flashed. There was hey, smoke He up. was doing a lot of damage. That's why the, the, the follow-up nade got such a nice kill. Yeah. But uh, there it is, Eco. As we send five players to the B side of the map, Vitality have a single flashbang courtesy of Flames. He's going to launch it over the roof. Luckily, though, he doesn't deploy it before that incendiary. So they can just bide their time. Stown, though, disallowing entry. Might only be good for one here. He's out of bullets. It's getting a little bit messy for him, but the round is secure. Messi remains, and without Kevlar, he'll be extra squishy to the AK-47 bullets there delivered towards the B apartments. Astralis starting to show some form on the CT side. That's three in a row as they close this gap. How heartbreaking would it be, though, for Vitality if they're not able to close this one out? I mean, this is I mean, it would lead. It would be for context, though. Losing this series doesn't mean you're out. We have yeah, four true. slots available for London today, and then all losers go into a new bracket tomorrow. We have two more slots. Yeah. So it would definitely be heartbreaking. But if ever you're going to lose some series, it might be at this tournament yeah. rather than at the Major or Katowice next week, right? Yeah. These are the times to learn these lessons and understand what issues you potentially have. Bear in mind, Astralis now, we're expecting this team to come online. They are a contender now with this new lineup. Yeah, they've made very, very quick progress. There was really no slow ramp onto this one. They picked up the players and immediately they looked like they were very, very confident. Mezzi getting grenaded. And no way! Down. Yeah, I mean, what a spray transfer. That's the power of the M41. He's done it again. It's a mirrored round, more or less. Yeah, with the bomb going down and the awareness to lock in Zaiwu towards the palace. The Prince of Counter-Strike is put on ice. A recoverable five on three, I suppose, with so much time. But look at the orca position of the bomb using their own utility against him. Yabby yeah, buys more time here. I think it's okay to allow them to have the bomb. You don't have to patrol it and risk these duels like you've done so well to find this five on three advantage. You can hear them now on the other side. That's a really powerful smoke. Yabby gets his hat trick. Astown chimes in as well. Zaiwu, nothing to do, nothing to say. Their loss bonus starting to accumulate now. That's four rounds in a row as we go 11 and eight. That means they get fourth stage loss bonus. That's $2,900 per player with no plan. So another partial buy. 11-9 uh, scoreline looking at least likely and it's not locked in. One of the features of, of really, you know, all of the great teams that have really cool eras has, has always been this chemistry and ability to, you know, get bend really far but never break and always sure. be able to come back. I'm sure in some sense Device must have been searching for that ever since the glory days of the old Astralis lineup. So this team is starting to show some of the same characteristics. It's a little bit too early to really call it um, early on in the season. I haven't seen that many games out of them, but... We've seen them be tested before and make some of these comebacks, even if it looks like they're under pressure. That's a, that's a good sign, if nothing else. Yeah, some fist bumps coming out. Yabby having himself such a sick time here at the ramp. Oh, that's world class. It really is. Yabby with three massive kills. Denies the bomb. Steals the round. Important to note, though, Zywu saves an AK-47 around this partial investment. Spinks and Apex will purchase Deagle Kevlar. 
They've got a smoke and an HE, like with Zywoo on the AK-47, this round is always going to be dangerous. So is that particular moment as well, but it will be Flames to be dropped first, courtesy of Stown from Shaw, trying to obtain mid-control for themselves. Nice HE grenade, should do significant damage. Spinks, even with the Kevlar, takes 50 off it. This next frag is everything. If Stown gets this one, that's the bomb. He gets all the sound cues he could ask for. My God. How has he hit that? Against device with the AK-47. A lifeline here for Vitality. Can they find map point here? You could see him on the X-ray setting himself up for it. He's almost got the spray there, but a good double. Damn. Stare, finding the right timing. I thought Samu was ready and would have had him as well. Now the flank is going to be coming in. And I think this is it. They're going to get crushed on this one. It'll be 11-9 uh, scoreline on fire for Astralis as they win five in a row and get very close now to making the comeback happen. Oh, you can feel the tension mounting. Next draw in the studio, it's palpable. This felt like another locked in scoreline. Bear in mind, Vitality went up 8-4 in Inferno. Completely collapsed on their CT campaign after winning the pistol as well. Yeah. Could barely get a gun round going. If once again, well, they get themselves an 8-4 scoreline. They win the pistol in the second half, get a 3-0 conversion this time. Yes. And now they've given up five in a row. Astralis, there's a reason they choose Mirage. They've got such a great understanding of the aggression. The analyst pointed out it's reminiscent of heroic CT sides being incredibly active, uh, applying that pressure, being unpredictable, moving around the map, working together in tandem more often than not. And you can see they're making this incredibly difficult for Vitality to try and close things out. A, a pretty decent buy. There's notably no Zywu AWP. Apex will be down to the Galil. All for Device. And over towards B we go, at least for the initial stages of the round. Device trying to get himself in a strong position. Bear in mind, Mezzi's in towards that kitchen. A Molotov could dislodge him. If Device throws it deep in towards the kitchen, could be enough to potentially get the kill. He's getting closer and closer. Does he dare go any further? Honestly, though, Mezzi's in a dangerous position too, right? He's a little bit further up than maybe Device is expecting. Blame F just looking for it. I thought Apex had actually beat the timing there, walking through the smoke, but somehow Blame F was ready and aware. Yeah, not his first rodeo. He's seen those tricks before. The bomb's real far away, so they're making some progress in the middle. See if they can find an opening here, but someone has to go back and pick up the bomb. It might be Mezzi, but again, he just has to... Oh! No, Blame F! That's a missed spray right there. Yeah. He's going to be kicking himself. That might be the cue for Device to be a little bit more active now. Mezzi's Oops. still in position. The bomb's still down at the T apartment entrance. I thought Stown was going to keep on going. He was down at the ramp. Now they're picking up the bomb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just, Damn. He can't not find the headshots at the moment. I don't know how he does it. 30 seconds left. And they're making a bit of noise. Stairs here. Yeah, he's going to slow them down. The Molotov. Oh, it's perfect. He couldn't have played that better. Doesn't overcommit to the fight, drops the incendiary, and funnels him through that one window where Device is already watching. Great comms, great counter-strike from Astralis today. Yeah, you're right. If they wanted to escape the Molotov, they have to jump yep. into the orb. Yep, exactly. They can't get to the safety of the van. That's just a, a small detail, but just a perfect reaction for Stead is to hold on to that incendiary right when he needed it. As a touch and go round. But that massive lead once again. They've got to hold on to this rifle, Zai Wu. He'll do so. It's, it's starting to become a significant problem that you can't show up anywhere near Yabby without this stuff happening. Like, it's yeah, really not sicker. that much fun for them. Stare. Valuable contribution in the B bomb site. C4 does not go down. Apex starting to look a little flustered here. Can feel this one slipping away. Another monumental lead squandered at this stage. It's a one round game. 11 to 10, Astralis hold their nerve. And you can see it's not a great buy on the T side. They've got three rifles short, or three AK, I should say, and one Galil. A Deagle for Apex. Strong grenade, to say the very least. A boatload of damage towards the top of middle. It continues to be delivered here. They are the walking wounded on the Vitality side. Sphinx low, Zywu low, Flames half HP. And Apex, he's had his feathers ruffled as well. They have zero map control. My God, that's a lot of utility damage at the start of the round. <laughs> How do you inspire a comeback in a team in a round like this one? 
absolutely critical that you start to win rounds again and get a bit closer. The momentum is out of control for Astralis, but this is a round where four of the members of the team are so low already. Everyone within one shot potential of the two M4s that are in play. Got the AWP on a on device, obviously, but yeah, it's an issue. You've painted quite a grim picture there, Mr. Bloom. Zaiwu, though, answering back, but it's not going to be quite enough. They have nothing to say about round number 22. A full investment into it. Of course, maximum loss bonus, but this time no saved Zaiwu AK-47. No bomb planted. They're going to get the $3,400, sure. But will they even be able to save the Galil? Stown knows it's valuable to get everything out of their hands at this stage. Yeah, They've got AKs well. in their ranks as well, you know, like... It's not about the money in the CT side, it's about keeping that firepower up. Yeah, looked like he's just barely going to get the AK stolen it away. The device is on a mission. Oh, he's hunting for him, yeah. He could kill him with a pistol. Spinks is already a bit low. Device up there. Doesn't get the chance. That's interesting. So oh, Spinks will at least oh, get it. Oh, what an upgrade to find. Oh, yeah. Not the best finish there from Device. Giving up the orb now, it's in the hands of Zaiwu. If he ends up carrying this next round, well, they definitely, they, they, they barely had a buy on this. They had $3,400 for player. Yeah. Now they've got a saved orb. They, their buy actually becomes a lot more significant. Zaiwu, he is playing very well here on Mirai. He had a quiet showing on Inferno, but now sat on 19 kills, 12 deaths. He's actually top of the server. You can't ask for much more out of him. He's going to save the day. It has to be right here, right now. Make yeah. a wish, Vitality. It's his 11 11. They'll use their final tactical timeout. Yeah, they're going to say, if you're a Vitality fan, you need to close your eyes and just send Sai all of your energy here because he needs it. Yeah, I, I think that was a bit of a blunder from Device. Surely was. I, I just don't think that was worth it. That's too high a risk. And you know, in the we, this is a classic kind of scenario. You make one little mistake, you think, oh, okay, that wasn't great. Cause it, cause but look, then it comes back to haunt you. They would have had Galils otherwise. Now yeah. they've got two AKs, two Galils, and the AWP in the hand of the world's best sniper. What have you done? We'll see how dire the consequences are going to be. We don't know yet. But it wouldn't be the first time that something like this has been a downfall of a team. They tried to boost up Saiwu at the start of the round to snipe into the A-bomb site. Again, could have been a mistake for Astralis there running across the bomb I think site. We're just going for a full-on set piece in towards the A-bomb site. Apex had enough. The defaults are getting manhandled by the rotations and the brutal. Shots from Yabby time and time again. It's going to try and disallow any sort of vision, make the CTs uncomfortable, try and flush them out. Well, let's see if they can get past Yabby. That's been the problem here. Stown is with him as well. Not that he's been playing badly, but it's really been Yabby with that laser. So device is over towards B, so there'll be no rival sniper this side of the map. Strong incendiary. Pushes Zywin into a corner, but he's still got a slither. And there it is. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile every single time. It's going to be Apex answering back, and it is the AWP that absolutely destroys them. Going into round 23, that I said that was an audacious maneuver from Device to even risk giving it up, and uh, they pay the price. I'd say it's a classic scenario, isn't it? Stan, tell me you're going to go for the Ninja Defuse. Tell me you're going to try. I mean, it would be... I can't imagine a world in which Vitality will forget about this. All right. He's going to go and shoot his gun. I thought he was going to try and play cute with it here. Gets a bit closer. Tries to do a bit of damage. Deep grenade. They have plenty of money on Astralis. It's not a problem for them to lose what they've got here. They can buy the AWP and everything else. But it would have been fun to try and see them sneak onto the bomb site maybe in the last second. Either way, it's Vitality finally getting to that 12th round. They need one more to bring us on to Nuke. How sick was that for Zaiwu? Just getting the absolute most out of that situation. He's been Molotov'd off. He's like, I've still got a pixel gap here. I'll still wait and see if there's an opportunity. And my God, was yeah. there ever. It's literally another centimeter that yeah. he can stand on, and that's enough. Brilliant scenes here from Zaiwu. Saves the day, alleviates a ton of pressure now. They've at least guaranteed overtime. Final round. Can they take us to nuke and regulation? Vitality. Battered and bruised in the second half. Yabby. Aggressive in towards the palace position. Device looking for the opening pick, but bested once again by the Wu. Oh. Looking to drag Vitality over the finish line, kicking and screaming here. 
He's got 22 kills. Yeah, he's and back, baby. They gave him an AWP. <laughs> yeah, that, that was their downfall. Had that, had that not happened, he's been pretty quiet with the AKs today, at least. Mirage would be much better, but the fact you gave him the AWP, this a is... life raft for Vitality, and they've cruised into a third map unless they get shut down here. Stand with a double kill, back to a three on three. And Yabby's in for a flank. He's really deep in there, starting to get into the B tunnels. This might not be done yet. Knife out, oh, this is so dangerous. You might get a kill on Spinks, but it's not the bomb. The bomb is still on Saiwu in the middle on the AWP. So 45 seconds, and I think Vitality have called for a bit of a freeze. They're not quite sure. Is there anyone else from Astralis in the middle? You could see they're worried about it, but they don't know about Yabby. Again, he's been anchoring the A-bomb site. They have no reason to believe that he's going to be up behind them. If Spinks goes down, this attack onto the B-bomb site is probably dead. It's Apex to die first. Huge issue right now. Saimu tagged up as well. 20 seconds here. Vitality, they had no business winning this round. They can't get back into this one. 15 seconds for Saimu, and he's getting shot in the back. It's overtime on map number two. It comes right down to the wire there. That round could have gone either way, but Yabby presenting some excellent discipline, playing the round to perfection, locking them in, waiting for the perfect time to strike, and they avoid going down in the final round of regulation. We are going to overtime. It's going to be first to 16 now. The teams remain on their respective sides. $12,500 per player. And we get into it. Full reset here. Stralis still on track for a 2-0 and a guaranteed spot in the spring finals in London in June. Blame Meth taken down early. Yes, and Stown peeking with his rifle not even out. It was still being drawn a spree. Wow. Oh my God. Flames with a double kill. A couple of missed timings there. I think Blamef kind of wasn't quite ready. He was sort of powering through the smoke, but it didn't look like he was had his aim in the right position. And certainly Stown, you could see him still pulling out the M4 as he was turning the corner. Not exactly a perfect scenario there. So Vitality, this is the round that they just needed. They hit it now instead in overtime. Stair, what have you got for us? That's not a bad star here. There's two players remaining now. He detects the presence towards CT spawn, but it will be that player tucking themselves away in towards the jungle. They're on high alert right now. No mistakes can be made, and it looks like he's going to retreat with the AWP. He's only got half health. I don't think he survives the round unless he's got some way of dislodging this T. The smoke, I think, has a gap. No, he's good. He can get away with this one, potentially. He knows they're coming for him. They're trying to hold on to it. He's done enough. It's a small consolation prize. This keeps the money strong. If they want to go for a double orb setup, they'll at least have the resources to do now. Uh, but this was the start of the round. Blame F trying to get in their face. It's Mezzi that delivers a face full of lead instead. That was a great little maneuver. The right click grenade towards the window to pop the smoke, take down the retreating device as well. First gun round in overtime goes to Vitality, 1-0. I think Stair's actually top fragging now on Astralis after that round. Yeah, he is 19 kills, 13 deaths. That's super sick. Or 20, I should say, with that orb kill at the end. Yeah, 23 on Saru, so... Slightly out dueling him at the moment, but again, Stair is definitely the way less experienced player amongst the five here. Cool to see him do this well early on. Yabby, feeling it, maybe hearing the footsteps a little bit. Flashes running really deep. They want to swing for it, but they didn't clear it out. You could throw a Molotov here, but they didn't, and Yabby, he's back to his old tricks again. Not a that. double kill for him, no problem clearing it out. Another multi, make it a triple. He's so clean with it, his movement, his aim. Preemptive shots, everything was just spot on. He's had a real world class showing today. Kind of an interesting um, variation on trying to attack the A bomb side, right? Instead of putting on the smokes, they actually wanted to flash and fight towards the connector. They're hoping that some of the CTs there turn around. And if Yabby hadn't been in that position, it could have worked out, right? Instead of trying to block them off and plant the bomb, you're just trying to fight them and flash them. Yeah, he's so clean with that. Spinks will have the information on one. Converts that kill, but this had too much to do. It's going to be 1-1, final round of the first half of overtime here. A nice victory for Astralis, courtesy of Yabby. Fends off the fast A pounce. A couple of flashes over, some basic smokes going down. They've seen a lot of activity in towards middle, hoping the CTs are focusing on that position. They, they kind of were, but one player, most three of them down. Apex is sick to his stomach as uh, he receives... There's deadly bullets from Yabby. Tactical timeout, you get one extra in overtime, of course. 
Must win map for Vitality, the goes about saying. And they are going to be tested to the very edge of their ability. One more yeah. round of this half. This game is really putting some pressure on Vitality. And I think the point you've made a couple of times, I think is a good one. You know, rather be tested now yeah. than in Katowice or for the Major. Like, now is the time for Vitality to discover if there is some weakness in the lineup, if there's something to talk about. It's great having those huge win streaks. Like, before this tournament, this roster with Messi was undefeated. Yeah. They'd lost, like, a couple of maps and won, like, 12 series in a row. A couple of trophies under their belt. Zai Wu okay. keeping the dream alive at the start. He has bested the vice more often than not towards this mid position. Blame F trying to take matters into his own hands. See if he can find a frag in response. Oh, God. It gets a little bit too close for comfort. He fumbles the spray somewhat. Ends up costing him his life. And it's now down to Yabi once again. We need something quite special for him to believe he can do this. But Sphinx has got him. That's a guaranteed kill and step. Nothing he can do with this. It's going to be 2 1 for Vitality. The bomb. Huge. He'll make his way towards A. He'll be there. Might as well give it a go. Yeah. They kind of know that. They thought it was a window, maybe, but the Molotov. Okay. Yeah. Somehow doesn't quite burn him. Who knows how that works? They're going to fake it once. Oh, Stam sneaking in a kill. That just makes it awkward. Still, it should be their round three versus one. They got 40 seconds left. Vitality, well-experienced team. Still don't see them really screwing this one up. But he's trying to land some of those shots. Another good click. Suddenly, it's awkward. One versus two now. The Molotov still not in the corner. Oh the grenade God. puts him down to seven. How is he alive? 25 seconds. They're going to fake it here. They really want to take a look, and he's going to go back. Did you pick up a grenade here? I think there's a flash in spawn. Okay. So, gives him a little bit of wiggle room. It would still be astonishing if he gets any closer to this one versus four. Two more players to find... Such low HP, zero information on the remaining players here. They coordinate themselves over towards the A ramp and shadow position. He has to make a sound cue. Good effort. Made things very uncomfortable for Vitality, but it will be them posting a 2-1 score on their T side. One honestly, step closer to Nuke. Honestly, it's just so cool to see Stay in, in some of those moments where it's pretty easy just to kind of, you know, roll into try something, anything, and just kind of make it look a little bit half-hearted, but... He, he gave it everything. If they'd made even one more mistake there, it could have been down to a one versus one. If, he could, if they would have peeked him from the palace, maybe he gets that straight headshot and suddenly it's real awkward. So, uh, Stair showing some interesting potential in some of those rounds. Even if they're losses, it still is just fun to see. Here we go. Astral is now going to be on the T side, looking to attack the middle. And Apex, a little bit away from his team at the moment. It's going to be a trade on Sphinx. But yeah, Molotov's down. They just try and force him out, and he's down to half health. It's, I think they know he's down there as well. So Apex is in a lot of trouble, to say the very least. He goes down to 10 points of health, tucks himself in behind the smoke right now. Bear in mind, it's Vitality. They just need one single round here. Trying to lock in Apex. Yeah, good effort to try and get out of there, but Blame F had that intel the entire time, was waiting but that moment where Apex tries to sneak back in. But here comes Zaiwu. He has been unbelievably good with this AWP that was gifted over in the dying stages of regulation. He's carried it on since 25 and 16 right now with 50 seconds remaining. One more round. It's a guarantee map point for Vitality. But they're in a four versus three deficit right now. Yabby posted up. Mezzi could just walk right into his crosshair. He holds his nerve. He might have a free kill. As he doesn't want to overstep the mark, he'll be overworked. There'll be so many players around him from the B apartments, from the ladder position. He seems to be aware of Yabby, though, and I think he's got himself a kill here. Such great patience. If Messi dies, the round is probably over right then and there, but now it's bought some space. Flames coming in, and Cyrus, like you said, he's just so hard to stop. 26 kills on him. They're trying to make their way through. Might be able to get the bomb plant, but they have to go lightning fast here. 10 seconds left. Yeah, running straight for it. Device and Blame F. The original core of the team here, trying to see if they can get this one back. It's a two versus three. 
Devices in the middle with the AWP. I don't think they... Maybe they know they're looking for it. They've got the right idea. Nice shot. And now it's up against... Oh! I can't believe it. Device landing it and believe it. We'll clear it out. A massive two versus three conversion. Astralis, they needed this round. We've been treated to so many epic series this tournament. Really sets the tone for 2024 and the level of Counter-Strike we yes. can expect going into these huge tournaments starting next week. Astralis are a team that could be serious contenders for these upcoming trophies. If the duo of Blame F and Device can win these sort of rounds in this fashion, I'm excited for this team. It's been so hard to predict because the last round of Roster Mania was insane. It was everybody into the tumble dry and you just you had no idea what was coming out on the other end. But some of these teams look really solid and we've had some of them clash at the tournament here. Say some of them that we are expecting to play really well are still looking to work it all together. But time is kind of running out for that. Yeah, this is a real head to head between these two one. All right now, Astralis have a chance to win it in overtime. They can do it in another couple of rounds here. Yeah, we're all tied up. Utility damage charts coming through. It's always Apex at the very top. Blame F not far behind him. Both in-game leaders putting in some serious work with the utility. Aggressive again. Zywoo is off towards Shaw. It looks to be an A execution, though. They might use these sound cues towards top of middle to just execute now. They're waiting for any CT pushes, though. Grenades are being deployed. Flashes go over. This is the queue. It's stair to try and open things up. We've got Apex on the bomb site. Needs to find at least one here. The flashbang is remarkable. He can't connect the shots, but Sphinx certainly can. Bit of a gimmick position for Apex. And because of the smokes, he's isolated. It's just him against the world in there. They're going to be picking up the bomb now. They're a little bit late. Oh, God, yes. That's a line-up, Flames. You're not wrong at all. The bomb now being planted. But he almost had the spray down. That could have really changed the round. It's now four versus four. Bit of a flashbang to set it up. Oh, God, it's Saiwoo. He's picked up an M4, hitting the shots. Even Yavi can't stop them. Great shots from Saiwoo. The AWP thrown away over to Sphinx because he was low on health. And it's Vitality on 15, now on map point. Fantastic retake there from Vitality. Operating as a solid unit. Blowing that smoke open, applying massive amounts of pressure. Even with the opening frag, it's not quite enough. Zaiwu and Mezzi working in tandem that second kill. Mezzi snatches it away, and they have found themselves another map point, looking to take us to a third. Pressure on the side of Astralis now. Need this one to take us double overtime. Vitality can put this one to bed right here, right now. Four players over towards A once again. Yeah. No mid-aggression this time in the CTs, more of a traditional setup. But we've got all five members of the Danish squad. This will be the set piece, Anders. Here it comes. They're going for it. There's no slowdown here. They're all committed. The Molotov, though, it might force them to slow it down. This is one of the worst things that can happen. You've thrown out all your utility, and now you have to wait behind the flames there. A missed shot, finally, for Saiwu. Maybe an opening for them to do something here. Blame it for the double spray down! And the pressure is on. Saiwu can feel it. He knows oh. one mistake here, and he might be dead. A grenade at his feet. The spray is through. He's down, though. Practically dead already. He just wants to take somebody no with him. And it's Blame have to go down next. What does it take to actually kill Saiwu? without having to surrender half your team in the process. Nobody knows at this stage. It's down and device two versus three. And only 50 seconds on the clock here. They need to clear this out a little bit more. They run into Saiwi as a force of nature. It's down on his own. One versus three. He's going to get the bomb planted at the very least. But Saiwi's out there looking for him in the distance. He knows it as well. Good shot from Stown. Can he bring this to double OT? It's Messi on the other side. Trying to get a step closer to London. All he needs is another connection. 22 health left on Stown. This shouldn't be possible. Oh! He can't find it. It's Mezzi instead to bring us to a third map on Nuke. An absolutely stunning performance out of the British player. Yeah, he holds his nerve. This one was much better than Inferno. It's tight. It's uncomfortable, but Vitality stick the landing. Zaiwu is notably absent on Inferno. It was looking like a desperate scenario here for Vitality, but he posed 30 frags after an overtime affair of Astralis, tested to the very limits of their ability. We are going to new, baby.
a huge sigh of relief from the Vitality camp who barely, barely escaped the 2-0 punishment on that of Mirage. We've seen once again, Jacob, the T side of Astralis is looking Imperial, very hard to handle for Vitality. And then you have this moment, just a moment in history in Counter-Strike where an AWP is being gathered and we know history. I come back into this and I'm at number three. Well, Jacob, I'm going to have to cut you off for a second because your mic is not on. So that's my dream now. I get to monologue about Vitality. I think I've managed to have technology on my end. We have a couple of stats coming on here, of course. And I want to focus on Zywood just a little bit, not only because he's got 30 kills, of course, but because we were very, very harsh with him after map number one. And also because I will say that he unlocked this situation on Mirage completely. This was a great map from Zywood. This was exactly what we were expecting from him, very mobile. With the AWP and I mean there are going to be moments that we're going to put under the microscope. Astralis had everything they needed to close this map. They could feel London at the tip of their fingers and it was rubbed away by Zywoo. They were so 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 close to making it happen of course. Zywoo coming in with a, a masterful performance once more. We were a little bit after him right? We made the news we saying that Inferno wasn't a great game from Zywoo. Doesn't really happen that often that we're criticizing the way he's playing Counter-Strike. The way he was keeping Vitality in the game, the way that he was pushing them through over time and inevitably also finishing it within overtime was just Stella coming out of Saivu. I find it hard to grasp a game like this because there were so many moments where it could have gone either way, mm. back and forth, back and forth. So we may as well dive into some of them. Yes, let's pinpoint one of these moments. Uh, sort of the equation of you mess around, you find out. That's round 23. <laughs> let's bring it out because Astralis is going to kick themselves for that one. Chasing Sphinx, giving him the AWP from device. That's a huge mistake in and of itself. 11 to 11 scoreline, Vitality out of solution, but that solution comes with the last letter of the alphabet. Saibu with the AWP, granted by device, straight sponsoring, Apex finds the timing, and then a third kill as well, courtesy of Saibu, onto the jungle, and now it's a 5v2 situation. I cannot underrate how this AWP being found changed the course of history for this game, because prior to this, Jacob, Vitality was muted. Vitality did not have a damn clue how to figure out the defense from Astralis. We were looking round after round after round, a sea of blue round, and then this AWP and then a little bit of genius. It's the magic of Cyber. It's the magic of putting an AWP in his Look, when that happens, I'm not time. making this up. No, you're not making it up at all. It was such a pivotal moment for Vitality. It had to happen in that round. However, I do want to say for Astralis to go for that hunt, to try to take the weapon away from Sphinx in this situation, what's the right call to make? I don't think Astralis made a mistake in doing so. The mistake was made in the sense that Sphinx all of a sudden can pick down an AWP through the wall of some sort. It wasn't even laying on the ground. It was device doesn't have to chase. Point. He doesn't have to chase that all. If Sphinx dies in that position, there's no buy at all for Vitality. I know what's the, the good That's side of the round. coin, but it's the bad round. side of the coin is what we've just seen. Like I understand in the, the pros. In retrospect, it's very easy to Ooh. say, yeah, Saibu is going to kill three people next round. No one knew that. <laughs> and Saibu, no. up until that point, had 10 rounds to do that where he didn't on that C side. So no, I fair. think it's it's easy to say that. However, as you said, it's a pivotal moment in the game. Saibu again, we just got to praise him for changing the narrative of the game because in that moment, it went to Vitality again. Absolutely. Zaiwu is going to be a uh, hot talk of this map, but I think Messi deserves a little bit of praise here and there as well. He might have waited a little bit in the overtime to come back to life, but during regulation, I would argue that he was one of the most solid pieces that Vitality had. Not only tested a couple of times on these B holds, and you can see here aggression, mobility from, from uh, Messi, not always playing the same position. I think he handled that pretty well. Of course, that spray control, huge, absolutely yeah. huge to put Vitality on 11. And then this last round in overtime, this was a very, very decent performance for Messi, he deserves a little bit of praises. I agree with that. I think he was locking down the B-bomb side to his best ability as good as he could. Even more so, he was very impactful in the retakes on the aim-bomb side, especially in overtime. You and I were watching one of the replays where he ran into the bomb side, got a kill towards Sandwich, and then finished the player towards the retake, through yes. the box, the retake. So he had a couple of those moments where he was not only useful on the B-bomb side as the static player, but he was the pivotal guy retaking the A-bomb side, making sure that Vitality stayed within the mm. game when it was looking dark in overtime. Absolutely. Now let's flip this conversation have a little bit of an Australis thought process. I'm being reminiscent of the Falcon series right there where it feels like for
for Astralis. This might have been the moment sure. to actually close it. You were on Mirage, you had stolen your opponent's map peak, everything was lining up, and you had a Yabi that was once again proving high performing. I mean, we're talking about locking down A sites time and time again on the offense as well. Very performative, and when he was opening these rushes, as we have a couple of examples here, swinging out of apps, finding the kill onto Zaibu. Yabi is very much convincing me throughout this Copenhagen campaign so far. He's back. He's back to his best. He's back to the Yabi that we saw for the vast majority in Heroic. As I said, coming into this matchup, the past three months of Yabi's career, especially in Heroic, he weren't looking that great. He was he was bottling it a little bit. He couldn't really get the individual output that we were used to. However, his stint in Australia so far has been spectacular. I agree with you. The impact he's finding on the server has always been great. I remember Yabi in Heroic, you know, the T. Uh, T overpass lurks that he will always mm. do, the CT sides on Mirage, you know, it's, it's some of the same ingredients that we're seeing again from Young Yabi, who's coming into Australia and taking it by the horn. Fair enough. Now, from the Ying to the Young, if we are going to be harsh with Zai on map one, I do feel like Device missed a little bit the mark in this very map. We know how powerful he can be. We talked about his ability to predict the opposition, to predict where they were going to go on the T side and how he could lock it down with the AWP. I, I didn't really see much of that. He, he missed more than often. He got caught by Zai more than often. Yeah. And I think whenever you, you keep your finger on the pulse in that duels, who finds the opening on who, then you have an idea of who is getting the domination. And, and this time, it was Saibu. He had 16 kills. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, at least I counted five exit frags in that game as well. Ooh. So we're down to 11. 11 impact kills for an AWP player on a map like Mirage is not enough for Device. There was a couple of moments where he was, again, you know, doing a great play, but that's to be expected from him. But over the course of 24 rounds, I agree with you, it wasn't great enough. Device. It wasn't great enough. At least to win 2 0. That leaves us with a very seductive map on the number three rather but that is on the other side of that little break we'll be back in three minutes
as Trollis as a new team will of course face plenty of new challengers throughout this iteration of the roster and I think this is one of the big first ones for them. They could feel that 2-0 victory, it was right there for the taking, they were on their map pick, they stole Inferno, they were locking down Vitality but unfortunately things didn't pan out this way. We're moving on to Nuke now. We've already established how this is going to be a test for the depth of the map pool of this brand new team, the superstar Danish team. And against them, one of the strongest arguments for Vitality has to be Sphinx. I know we talk a lot about Zaiwu, but the ability for Sphinx to lock down that inside slash mini position, yeah. to block the splits towards inside, drop down when that's needed. It's one of the maps where he's impressed me the most with multi-kill ability on his city side. I would agree. I think it's one of the maps where he is uh, definitely coming alive more often than not. I think in general, if we zoom out a little bit away from this game, only Sphinx has involved the past six months to be one of the absolute players in his position. We spoke about it in the green room, when you have the combo of Sphinx and Saibu, and we're starting to compare that to the likes of Device and Dupree, the electronics and symbols. I think we're at that point right now where he's been delivering consistently enough for such a long period of time next to Saibu that the combo of the two of them mm. is just a scary prospect on pretty much any given map, let alone Nuke. I agree with you, and he's got, not only does he have skill, and that's very obvious, but he's got a proclivity to be aggressive and also he's got pretty good problem solving skills like yes. movement staying alive in weird positions but he's got a dance in the smoke could be a little bit creative he's got a little bit of both right now and he can use his mechanical skills to a great extent so it's going to be great to keep an eye on Sphinx. vitality already had a little bit of an alert sign against falcons remember it's a map that they've lost in overtime the game was huge it was very entertaining to watch what do you think well let me rephrase that do you think there is any problem that astralis could exploit in the vitality camp if they want to win that new game. I think Messi was a bit of an issue on towards the ramp side. Okay. We talked about he had a couple of rounds where he shut it down, but he also had a couple of rounds where he was an issue, where he didn't get the job done. Sometimes his backup is also Apex. He's flying all over the map. That's going to be an issue. And as I said, during the Vitality and Falcon games, when it got into the nitty gritty, when it got into overtime as well, Apex had six rounds in a row where he was shot in the back of the head. Six rounds in a row where it wasn't about him not winning his duel, but he was just caught off guard, unaware of what was going on in the map. So if I'm Astralis, I would have looked at a game and I would look at the way Falcons were approaching it. Mm. A lot of walking down secret, a lot of placing players in uncomfortable positions where Apex were constantly caught off guard in the rotations. One more thing I want to highlight. One of the things that Stown was probably the best in the world at doing was getting out the door down to the vents when he was in Heroic. I hope to see that from Astralis as well because that was something Apex couldn't handle whatsoever against Falcons. Okay, so create chaos, pressure onto the Vitality yes. camp. I like your argument about Apex getting caught in the back because I think it's a, it's a good factor to keep your pulse on how calm vitality is. I feel mm. like if you observe Apex, the more chaotic he is in his playstyle, the more he gets caught, the more you can imagine that things are a little bit tense, yeah. people are talking too much, there's too much communication, maybe it's unclear. So they're going to have to keep that in control. You cannot allow yourself to be stressed. But I will say, Jacob, I don't know if you agree, I don't think BlameF calls a Counter-Strike the way Snappy calls mm. a Counter-Strike. And I don't know if they have it in them to play so active and so fast. I agree with that. I think Snappy is a little bit more leaning towards the expressive Counter-Strike coming out inside, exploding a bit more. However, the way he were were playing Counter-Strike as well was a little bit more like Snappy, you know, a little bit more proactive on the T side. They used the door a lot. Mm. I don't think the door is being used as much anymore, given that you can always nate the smoke and it makes it very difficult for both the CT side, but more so the T side to get down in the vents without getting killed, but I would like to see them try, because that was one of the things Falcons did well with Madden, the first bone coming out sometimes, and Apex, he was caught off guard by it a lot of times. All right, and we're also, of course, talking about the quality of Execute that's going to come from Astralis. I couldn't keep uh, track of them in the RMR qualification. I know they played it a couple of times. There's a loss to Amcal. There's the win against Pera after that. So I'm not exactly sure how deep the playbook goes, but they're going to have to be absolutely on point if they want to challenge Vitality once again. We talked about how many different maps they played if you're going to accomplish something great well you better do it the damn hard way back to you casters thank you so much maniac i am very excited for this third and final map what an epic tournament spring groups has turned out to be we enter new candors and this is where things get extra spicy now only one team can move forward to london from this series but the real winners of this entire affair has to be the spectators what an absolute treat it has been so far to just watch the carnage on the server unravel it's been truly beautiful. The odds are almost dead even now we're on GG bet. Uh, I guess it makes sense. We're going to the third map. It's tied right down the middle. We even had overtime to try and decide the second one. Now we're on nuke. I think this is going to be another spectacular map that's coming up here. What a treat it is. I mean, we're starting a whole new season. There's so much to learn about these teams, but the level of Counter-Strike overall has been really impressive. 
Oh, absolutely. It's just nice to have another team in this conversation. It's been boring. We've had like Vitality, Phase, G2. Like that's been yeah. the, 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 the conversation the last year. Astralis showing this sort of form at this tournament. They could be a real contender in 2024. An exciting prospect. They put their best foot forward on the first map. The second came down to overtime where it felt like one round kind of decided it. That one round where they had Sphinx locked in T-Spawn. They give him the AWP. Zywu answers back the follow-up round, takes him to overtime. They lose it there. It's been a roller coaster of emotions on both sides of the server today. It all comes down to Nuke to decide who will be making their way directly to London. Loser, bear in mind, will come back tomorrow to participate in the play in bracket. Well, yes. there'll be two more slots available. Yeah, it won't be done yet for anyone here. High fives, fist bumps, everyone is ready and we are as well. Let's get into Nuke, the third and deciding map here between Astralis and Vitality. I couldn't be any more excited for this one. I want to see more of Saiwu. I want to see Device back up there contending with him. He got a little bit quieted down on the second map. And we'll see what happens. It's Astralis starting on the CT side, Vitality on the T side. And they do have a couple of flashbangs and a Molotov as well for Apex, a classic position if you want a Molotov at that hut. Molotov the hut, double flash through. We've seen it plenty of times in Vitality. It's their go-to new pistol. Molotov is deployed, flashbang comes in from the CT side, but Flames, no problem. First frag is his, down trying to respond. He knows the player up and towards that roof, mows him down the jewel elite. Sphinx needs to be very careful. He's got that bomb, dives down the vents. And the round is wide open here. This kill might decide it. Back and forth we go. Bomb to be planted, no problem. And Mezzi patrolling the rotations here. They're going to drop down into him. They have to. They're going to have to fight. Yep, there's no other way. They've got Saiwa in the back. And actually, they might have made their way. Oh! oh! One more shot! Mezzi with the triple. I can't believe he kept this cool. Spinks shooting stare in the back. And just like that, vitality to win the pistol. Yeah, young Mezzi holding his nerve. He's such a great new player. Patrols the vents perfectly. Ideal weapon for the job. The dual elites on the T side. Two players launch themselves down the vents into his crosshair. It all started with the flames opening frag. He was completely blind as well. He saw that from his POV. This is where the round was decided though. Two versus one flames. He's loving it. 1-0, four spy in response here on the CT side of Nuke. MP9 is the main focal point. A scout for device, couple of deagles to boot. Very difficult round, but a possible one. Gonna send one player down towards lower already, maybe towards secret. Yeah, why not? Trying to get any intel they can. They don't hear anyone burning on the hub. They're gonna use that as information and make their way out towards upper. Seems to be the correct call. No casualties after breaching the bombsite floor. Got a lot of open runway here. Bomb should be planted. And it could be a complete save already. Yeah, it really might be. I don't see a lot for Astralis to accomplish at this point. You're right, they burned out the hut, they burned out the back of the bomb site, and even up when those Molotovs were down, they just kind of waited a little bit. They wanted to make yeah. sure there was no crazy pop-off coming in from the Danish side. So I think just a really controlled and measured round from Vitality. That's really good to see. Yeah, very assertive. Might be the unicorn round. We've had one already this tournament, if you're keeping track at home. That's when uh, no one dies in a round of Counter-Strike, but we're not going to see that today. Oh, a couple of kills just down. Okay, that's actually quite significant. He might even go for a third here. Trying to do damage as they leave. Oh my god, he takes four down? That's <laughs> so wild. How oh, does that happen? god. That's crazy. They, they were on track for five players to survive that one. They end up with Zaiwu on like five points of health. So a slight hollow victory. You won't be high-fiving after that one if you're Vitality. Sure, the round's complete, the job is done. But your money's been absolutely wrecked. And Astralis going to use that to purchase an M4. They're going to hey. give this one a good go. Listen, they did it to great success on Mirage. What? Remember the boost up down when Device had the M4? Yeah, true! Maybe they could do it again. Tag on to one. A headshot on the Saibu. He was the one that got tagged at the very oh. least. But there's one more connection. They've done so much damage at the start of this round. Vitality might be a little bit shell-shocked at the start of this game. Even in spite of the fact that they were up 2-0. Yeah, that was... And here it comes. An absolutely hellish way to close things out for Vitality. This one is up in the air now.
We've got flames on main roof. Device coming in from secret. Significant damage inflicted. He's only got the MAC-10 to deal with it. The grenade does no damage. But he has to be careful. He doesn't have a helmet. So fighting the MAC-10, even at a little bit of range there. Could be dangerous, you're right. You don't want to be too wild with it. Also reveals the fact that he has the M4. They're going to be pushing towards the ramp. It's a double setup for the moment here. It's a shot. Oh, device is here. Any damage that can be inflicted is certainly welcome. Device will maintain a neutral situation. Three versus three. That's a guaranteed frag for Yabby, though. Oh, no vitality. They were flying high. They were looking so good. Five players should have survived the previous round. There should be no force here from Astralis. There should be no M4. But they gave up so much. They have some smokes to try and put the bomb down if they could even make it past the first Deagle here. That's a big question. 25 seconds and they can't. Mezzi's out of the round. There's no, no chance for a Oh, that stings. And they're not going to have much money. They're going to have $1,400. They lost almost everyone before. Had to fully reinvest. Oh, how quickly things can change. Amazing contribution from Stown there. Gets yeah. a kill and a tag. Setting Device up for a couple of kills here. That was Flames. Those rotating back from main roof, you remember. They don't get the plan. Three players from Australia survive. All of a sudden, this game turns on its head. Vitality were in cruise control. Now they limp into round number four with four pistols. A Zaiwu, AK-47 at the very least. But Astralis in a commanding position here. Oh, the grenade couldn't be better placed. Yeah, but I guess that AK on Saiwu is still really worth respecting, right? We obviously know him as the star Opa, but my God, he's good with the rifle. You don't want to underestimate him. Nice little shot on the Sphinx. Tagged up with a grenade earlier, so in spite of the fact that it's the window shot there still easily. Not clipping any walls or anything like that. Happens quite a lot in the yard. Four versus five. Well, they made their way past, at the very least. There's two people waiting in a bit of a crossfire yeah. down here. That's a problem. <laughs> there is almost no chance they get down towards lower. Yabby's position is just way too powerful. The fact he's got his wingman down there with him as well, Stown. I just don't see a world where they get close to this one. It would take something unreal. Taking all the aggro. They've done pretty well. That's about the best they could have hoped for there. An equal trade. Stown suggesting he's closed the door. Flames not taking the bait. They've actually brought this back to a winnable scenario. They've got a smoke available, and Zaiwu starting to make that AK sing. Yes, he is. I don't know where they're getting the kills from. A little bit of a jump there. It's Blame F. Yeah, like you said, they're so low on health. That's the big problem that they're facing at the moment. They can't take any extended fights. They want to try and escape up the vent. They get the headshot on Blame F. Zaiwu, two big kills and two for Flames as well. And just like that device on his own. No kit, no grenades, no nothing. I think Vitality have found a way out here. Oh, that's so rough. They were so low on HP. Walking into a beautiful crossfire. You couldn't ask for a better setup. I, I love the fact that... Stan, I don't mind that he's trying to open the door and play around with the noise there, but it's he did it twice. It's he, It felt very pressured. That's one of those moments where you commit to one or the other. And it felt like he was a little bit too wild with it. Oh, we've got to be careful now! <laughs> that range! Saiwu finds the head of device. Not even the AWP brought into the next round. My God, the Danes, they had it right there on a silver platter for them, and now they have to fight again. Oh, that was their round all day long. This yeah. moment here should have gone much better for them. That was the frag. Yeah. Down, taking the challenge. Zaiwu in the vents. They then sneak back in towards upper. Blame F gets absolutely wrecked. So does the Vice. They save nothing. So after a couple of key mistakes and vitality no! towards the end of round number two, they bounce back. They're on their feet here, and they go three to one on the T side of Nuke. Looking to book themselves a first class ticket to London. That round and the one where they give over the AWP to Saibu on Mirage, those are some of the few rounds I feel like where we can really point to and say, man, Astralis really kind of screwed that up a little bit, right? It's not been many. We've, we've seen a lot of rounds of Counter-Strike played, but they happen every once in a while, and it can really cost you, right? You are playing the best team in the world, so making even small mistakes can have massive consequences. Device has picked up an auto shotgun. Yeah, they're being stretched quite thin at the moment here. CT side, not the best beginning, but spray is good. Spinks not allowed to get the dive down towards the vent, so that'll help them out a little bit. 
Oh, it certainly will. They needed that. Invested everything they had into this round. Shotguns, MP9s, couple of M4s. Speaking of shotguns, device. He's got a secret for them. Down at the back steps. Can he make it work, though? It's so unlikely. You don't see big shotgun highlights these days. But maybe this is one. There's a chance here. He's good for one. Maintains that advantage. Down at the scene of the crime, trying to pick up the pieces. Lovely shot. Preemptively fires towards flames. Needs to hold them off now to the best of his ability. Trying to peel off. And he has made his way safely down towards the decon steps. Yeah, it's a two versus four, so you definitely don't want to see Stown fight at that corner. It's fine that he takes a look at what's going on. Oh, what? <laughs> it's a drive-by. Oh, I feel sick. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Two versus three. He's still in the round. You can't feel safe when he's on the server. Anywhere. Nice shot from Stown. Sai, we're trying to crack back in. It's 30 seconds. He's going to get the ace here, Henry, if he wants to win the round, but it can be done. Closes the door. Yeah. He's, he's locked in right now. Out in the open, just standing his ground. Blame F swings for it and will take him down, but you can sense how scary that is. He had the information as to where both CT players were. He was hitting every single shot as well. Given an opportunity to find that kill towards ramp, he misses the first one tap. And uh, thankfully, Astralis will be able to convert the round there. Very scary, that's for sure. But uh, Astralis with a comfortable defuse in the end. The auto shotgun. Paying dividends, at least gets one kill towards Secret, is the POV from Device. Would have been lovely if he got two, but he did some damage. Managed to get himself $900. Zaiwu, though, oh, what a scary display of skill. They had to dig so deep, you can see that sigh of relief from Blame F when they get the round over the line. Closing the gap now to 3-2. This game's still wide open. You have to try your best to forget who you're up against in one of those one versus twos, because otherwise you're going to be second-guessing yourself, you're going to be a little bit slow. A truly one-in-a-million talent, maybe more. It's a slight lead now for Vitality. You don't have that much to work with in the round. Apex getting sprayed down quite far here. A lot of bullets being wasted by device. Does he want to do it again? It's risky. He's not finding anyone. Got to be careful. You still have some left for a later fight. He's got about 45 bullets in total. Yeah. Some damage being dished out, though. Vitality. Cautiously. Make their way down the secret steps here. They've got everyone alive. You can see it's a, a compromise buy, to say the very least. Yeah. A little two tech nines, and Stown is playing that pixel gap. As soon as he spots one, he deploys the incendiary. Buys time, confirming that there is presence down towards lower. Device looking to lock them in from garage. 45 seconds remaining. There is not much in terms of utility for the T side. They've got a couple of Molotovs. It's not that much on the CT side either. I was going to say, Jabby can rotate in from, from the ramp, but they only have flashbangs down here. So they can't really slow them down any th further at this point. 30 seconds on the clock. Device still in the garage, so it's really down to Stown and Yabby. The two heroic players now on Astralis. See if they can find enough for the defense here. Some spray, but it's not really connecting. Cyro and Mezzi open it up. It's a very scuffed defense. This might be the round. Wow. Great inventive use of those Molotovs. So they don't have the smoke to work with there, but they can isolate the entire area of ramp, Molotoving left and right, and uh, isolating their fights. Might not be enough. I don't think they're going for it either I don't way. Think. No. So it looks like the round is under control. Vitality will maintain the lead and go four to two. Uh, but just incredibly well handled, very disciplined, making sure they got window control first. They cleared out the back lines, double Molotov, then they can isolate those fights towards Dark and the bomb side itself. Uh, couldn't have really played it better. So great mid round decision making I as uh, Vitality pull around back. It's not really to put the blame on anyone. I'm sure Yabby had good reason to, to use whatever grenades he had at ramp. But it's always such a luxury if you are coming in as a ramp player and you can throw down a Molotov towards the double doors, you can smoke off the windows. Like, it's nice if you have that extra grenade. But with only about 20 seconds left in the round, he'd already used all of them and they just couldn't do much of anything there. That's understandably very frustrating. Yeah. Hold it together, Yabby. It's a four and five that they just, they can't quite find. 
We'll see. So, tactical timeout. Astralis had no choice but to save the weaponry they had. Back and forth we go. Yet to really build a streak of rounds on the CT side. Astralis finding themselves in hot water here. Losing to the Galils and Tech 9 combo. And Zaiwu AK-47 is proving to be a real nuisance for them each and every time. He's up to eight kills and three deaths at the top of the server. Stown up there with him of eight and six. And we'll see what the response is now. They saved some weapons. A lot of discussion is happening on the Vitality camp as well. A little bit of back and forth there. The fact they've got a MAC-10 suggests to me, Anders, we've got a fast, fast, fast strategy coming in here. Maybe an upper rush. Maybe a ramp rush. The fact that Sphinx has chosen to get that weapon, we can afford the AK. You better believe something quick's coming. Yeah, you said it, and here we go, right on track, Henry, but they run into Stown, the MP9 somehow besting every single weapon, Stown Yo. with the triple, you don't need to do anymore, it's already job done, but he's hunting them down, now the USP is oh. out, he was hungry for the kills, and he got three of them, nearly a quad, that's it, wiped out, just to remember, it's Saiwu, don't give him any chances to get back in, respect who you're up against here, and they will double team him to make sure that he's dead. I like the call, but I love that MP9 sequence even more. A little sewing machine. Yeah. Top of the heart. Stitching them up. As soon as he lands on the hut, you can see they make their way out. It's absolute pandemonium out there. Stown delivers with three kills. You can see what they're trying to do, trying to punish the fact they're just taking the tactical timeout. They're adjusting their CT setup. They're trying to um, deliver the resources around the map, but unfortunately, it will be Vitality sent packing. Their money under pressure once again. Three rifles, two pistols. Oh, they don't know about this. Sphinx has walked past. He has no idea. That's a free kill. Stare. That's something that he's going to remember for a while. He made a big assumption that no one had already pushed through. And now they're coming for the bomb site. Stown is dead right on top. This is a disaster. Yabi trying to get the spray in, but he was alone. I don't even know if J Yabi should have really fought that. If he gets two kills, maybe the opportunity to retake the bomb site will arise but ultimately it looks like vitality have done enough the upper bomb site a lot more forgiving this time apex with the luxury of going for a scouting procedure considering he's just got the tech nine spots one if i should take him down no problem yeah no threat of any funny defuses because there's no kit in play Otherwise, Nuke is a prime map for it. We've seen it a couple of times in the past where if you drop in in the last second, maybe you have an extra Molotov. Oh, there is a kit there. I'm lying. All right, the observers. Thanks, guys. Calling me out. I like it. Got to keep it honest here at the broadcast. Um, but yeah, they can't make the funny ninja drop, drop down. I'm always waiting for that. I always think that's one of the coolest things about Nuke. Another cool thing is the fact that Vitality are up 5-3. to three. They're starting to pull ahead here. They're starting to get away from Astralis a little bit. But worse still is the economy on the CT side. Absolute freebie of a frag there for Sphinx. Fancy footwork to tuck himself in towards the hut, had the best possible spawn. Stare didn't consider it as an option. Uh, of course, at the start of the, the round, there's incendiaries. You, you miss out on some sound cues. Didn't quite catch the timing. And he was busy throwing down grenades exactly. towards the, the, the squeak door, so he was sort of helping out his teammates there. Ouch. Oh, hey. That'll really hurt. Not dissuaded, though. Device still willing to challenge. Rattles off a shot, gives up the fact he's got the AWP. Two players on the hub going to be boosting up to the rafters here to uh, escort the VIP. <laughs> Get Device out of there. Still has to be careful. That is a position you can get taken down in device nice shot onto sphinx can he land another one it's down now to try and take on over and they've been slowed down vitality not managing to actually get through to the bomb side this time but it's down a device they're so low on health this round might not be done yet that's super creative from astralis there getting device boosted up and that real unpredictable angle the awp you never see a sniper up there thinking on their feet keeping device alive keeping him in the round as well really fantastic stuff there Four on three, 50 seconds. They, they do have a Molotov for that back corner, but it doesn't look like they're really going to be going through this way. So 
Device might have a chance to get a bit of a free kill here. We'll see if Mezzi sets one up or if they're just going to go right out. No, he's in the hut instead. And there we go. Apex out of it. Device is oh, plenty is enough. Weird. What a round. Three kills in spite of the fact that he got double needed at the start and nearly died. Yeah, he goes down to, what, 15 points of health. They have to think on their feet. How can we make him relevant in this round but keep him protected? Boost up and towards the rafters. A complete off angle for the AWP. You don't see that one coming. He takes the first kill, tucks himself in. The rifles can be activated at that stage. Changes position and ends up with this wonderful sequence as Device gets three in total. Has I always shown signs of frustration today? He's got that one AK again, Henry. Yeah. It worked last time. It definitely did. That's to say the very least. Device hits another shot. This time, doesn't quite find the frag. Follow up HEs won't finish the job either. If he'd hit that shot, I would have made a report myself. <laughs> to the police. <laughs> There's been a crime out here. <laughs> yeah. Apex, okay. he's low. It's unreasonable. There's one player with an AK and you have to be worried for the whole round, but that kind of is the cyber effect, isn't it? Device staying far back. He knows once they give up ramp, he can't afford to get closer to it. But Vitality, it's a good forward platform that they have here, but they still need a kill to make it work. They have to find an opening to bounce forward from this position. I think at this point, Stown's cleared pretty much all of Yard. I think he's now going down back below to see if he could do... Oh, actually, going inside to see if he could do anything. Yabby's waiting for them. And they don't have any needs to get rid of him either, but they do have that AK on side. Well, let's see what it could do. Surely he doesn't just get a one tap. Yeah, okay. Finally, he's been silenced. Looks like it's going to be business as usual here for Astralis. Yabby and Stown working in tandem. Very clean round, just what they needed there. Finally, a convincing one for Astralis here on the CT side of Nuke. No one goes down. They get a nice injection of cash as uh, Vitality can't sink their teeth in after gaining ramp control. Just nice work there. Astralis after. Losing the ramp, set up a nice crossfire. Yabby is just at the back, down towards the window. An absolute shooting gallery is deployed. And they convert every single interaction. Nice work, device is liking that. 5-5. Five, five. Still a compromise buy on the T side here. Flames down to a Deagle. Not much in terms of utility, no AWP on the T side. Blown open that initial smoke. Device, very smart play. Turns it to perfection. Takes down the in-game leader at the start of round number 11. And they set up for another grenade to land inside of the smoke. So if someone had been there, if flames would have stuck around, might have been a nasty surprise for him. Tricky moves using those new mechanics in CS2. Stown parked out here. Why not? The pressure is on right now for Vitality. Five rounds? It's not half bad, but... You obviously don't want to let Astralis come into the second half with a huge comeback, you know, at the end of the first half here. If it ends up a 7-5 scoreline, I think Astralis are going to be quite happy with that. And Stown actually no longer parked. Slowly moving forward. Oh, the timing is ridiculous. That could have been a double spray down. He still gets the headshot and spots out a couple of more players, so it's not bad anyway. Nice reaction from Zai Wu. Keeps the, the round alive somewhat. Four on three. They've got Seeker control, but Flames starting to retreat back towards outside. Sphinx is squeaky. Yeah, I think that's... It's the Sphinx position that's making them reconsider. They want to go back up instead. They're hearing the footsteps. They know what's coming out of the yard. Oh, what missed shot device with the Deagle. That would have been a really good kill if they could have found it on flames. But still, Sphinx going down. Saiwu now maybe having to do all the work once again. Two versus three. They put up a smoke here. Blame if he's dead. Nice peek from flames. He knew that was coming. Yabby and Device to try and see if they get this retake through. And this time they should be going for it. Flames, though, spins around, ready for it. Oh, and they drop God. Device dead. A huge conversion out of Vitality. What a disgusting round from Zai Wu. Taking matters into his own hands here. Every shot just connects. And that was a, a man deficit as well. Apex went down early. He's currently at 2 and 11, having a rough time out there. Yeah. But his teammates, Zai Wu and Flames, go absolutely massive here. A great oh. opening frag up the pop in the smoke. Apex can't believe it. They have to dig so deep to get back into the round here. But once the Molotov's down towards heaven, they can plant the bomb. Flames patrolling the vents, finds Blame F, and then Zywu just doesn't miss a beat. Hits absolutely everything. No! He's doing it all out there right now, taking his total up to 11 and 6. They've got at least 50% of the rounds here on Nuke. 
as we enter the final round of this half. It's six to five. Astralis will have to try and dig their way back into this one. I think if Device hits the shot on Flames as he's crossing over from Secret into Mini, it's probably the round. Oh, it, definitely. Like, they have a really, really good crack at it, but... Just oh. one of those shots you think, oh, that's the easy guaranteed that's the one. Easy one. He rushes it a little bit. And, uh, yeah, the, the round collapses eventually. Astralis still have decent cash here. Final round of the half. Who will be either drawing at 6-6 or Vitality finding 7-5? Flame F on the front foot. Teammates around him as well. Could be flashed into a swing. Ready and waiting. Apex with the Here's nine. the sound cue. Oh. oh, but destroyed by Apex this time. Yeah, and he was just kind of playing spoiler for the rest of them, right? There was a whole team behind him. It's down. This is dangerous. But they're not ready for it. They're caught sleeping a little bit. Apex gets traded. But so does down. Good stuff. They don't let him spiral that round. Four versus three. What do you do here for Astralis? You could see Apex just went into full commander mode then. He just le like, yes. reclined his chair, and now he's just calling from the back line. Yeah. So four versus three, their advantage. It looks like he's called for some sort of upper execution here. I wonder if they should take more of a risk here, Astralis. Look at how stretched out they are on the map. Gabby's now, I guess, to the A-bomb site, but it's real risky. Well, I've got this smoke for now, which does provide a veil for stare. He has to get the double. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. His teammates, they're walking up behind. They, yeah, they have to get the risk finally. Gabby on the other side, but I don't know what he could do. You could see Device is trying to get there, but it's too late. Mezzi, strong kill. Device has the AWP, but realizes on the flank that Deagle is probably the safer choice, but he's been found. Seven to five in the first half. Amazing work for Vitality. They're a step closer to winning this series. So it's uh, in, the in the map pool? pool? It's in the map pool. Oh, it's, uh, did you play against Cloud9? It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's finished with the O. What maps were we against Cloud9? Inferno, uh, Mirage, and Ubis. Yes, we played against uh, Cloud9. So is it, is it Inferno? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not calculations. Is it A-side? It, no, it's not A-side. Okay. Is it a T position? Yeah, T position no. is fine. So it's a city. city. So it's, a, it's B. B side. It's B side. It's B side. Four. Guys, it's another four side. We, we need to be careful of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's another okay, we are four. Uh, so we. I have okay, a question. No, I have, I have a, a question. question. Because it can be either on the left or either on the right. Yeah, but I will, so is it like. Like left side uh, when you go T, left side. <laughs> yes, yes or no? Wait, wait, is it, is it when you go on T side, side, you come on B side? Is it's it on the left, left side. on side? Yes. It's in on left. Okay, okay, two more. So, so we know it's C1, C2, dark, people, and choice. Yes. Do we have a setup where one of us played it? Yeah. Mm, it's a good one. It's, it's a good, good one. Because we play together on B side. Yes, we have. Oh, okay. okay. No, 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 you, 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 Oh, four positions, one question. Uh, yeah, but I have, I have between three, bro. We, have, we don't have one setup like you on Inferno, bro. Put it. Then we come to you. <laughs> Could we flash from this position? But what do you mean? I can flash from any position. Yeah, no. do, we have, do we have a setup where I flash from this position? Yes. Coins? It's cold. So it's, no, it's either coins or fabric. Is it fabric? Uh, no. Dark? No. What? What? For me, it was cold. I need to, or behind coins, is it counting like garden, the garden? Garden? I don't know. You should know it. I swear you should know it. Okay. But if I flash and it's on the left of the bond side, so it can be only dark. You don't flash C1? No, I never flash C1. Okay. Now we need to guess. It's a new setup we have uh, done. But then it's a new one and you don't remember what yeah, you should know this, come on. C2? I don't know. I, Does I it play C2? But what other positions do we have? We have fountain, C2, C1. C2 and C1. Yeah, but three positions. But the, then it's, oh, it's fountain. Yes, it's fountain as well. It's fountain. Okay, okay, it's fountain. It's dark, okay. Yeah. Fuck's sake. <laughs> but I said it's the first thing. It might be fountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true though. It's I, true. I was like, it's C1, dark, new, and then it's a fountain, and then you guys forget about it. But both yeah. two. Yeah. But two fountain, guys. Ah, it's a good one. Okay. Yeah. But, but, but we never used it. If, if, it. if you never guessed it, I would say it's sandbox and f***ing into a lot of you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you would be tilted because the two Jewish people said this.
A very warm welcome back to Blast Premier Spring Groups 2024. You join us for the culmination of Group A here. One final half between Vitality and Astralis. It's the former that has a 7-5 leave after a very successful T-side campaign. Pressure on the Danes now, Anders. They're going to have to stand and deliver. Find this pistol round and begin the long road back in towards the Spring Finals in June. Otherwise, if they give this one up, they come back tomorrow to participate in the play-in bracket. We're going fast. Looks like we're going in towards upper. They drop the initial utility, but don't commit to the site just yet. Might have been expecting more of a reply coming out from the Vitality CT side now. Apex has had a tough time, but he's pushed up close to Yabby. He's got the duallys here. The rest of them are going to be coming out. The squeak door, they smoke off Mini, but that's a great kill. Apex gets one. He's not quite ready, but Flames is there to save his captain, and it's absolutely over for Astralis in this round. Stair, another player that's been struggling on Nuke here. Now in a one versus four. Could do a little bit more damage, maybe. It's not going to be allowed. Flames will take him down. Apex is going to be so overjoyed that he got saved there. He wasn't ready. His back turned as they were running in behind him. But Flames, the hero of the round. Yeah, strange one there from Astralis. They, they had the smoke down towards main, the double flashes. They pump the brakes, and they get essentially nothing done. No real kills found. Painted into a corner. Stair got one as a consolation prize, but that's about it. No bomb planted, most notably as well. It's either Tech 9 Force Buy or a full eco. I'll opt for the second choice, and Apex. Starting to warm up into this one now. A confidence building frag towards outside. See, yeah. he's taking his hands off the mouse and keyboard. Taking a moment's respite. <laughs> oh my god. Get back in there. <laughs> no, he's just chilling. He's chilling. He's got Cyber One Watch. He's like, you. I watch the heaven. You know, you, you watch the ground. It's all good. Just. Slowly edging their way forward here. Beagle on Stout, who's been very, very good, but he's absolutely silenced in this one. 17 and 12 on Stout. It's pretty damn impressive, considering that they're quite far behind at the moment. He's going to have to keep it up. First gun round here of the second half, currently down 2 and 0. They take the full eco, enabling to bring out AKs and Galils. They made their way back from these camp score lines, right? Ele oh, yeah. Eight fours, like they've, they've been able yeah. to make those comebacks happen. It was eight four in the first map of Inferno. They brought it right back. It was eight four. Yeah. In the second map of Mirage, they brought it right back. They did lose in overtime. But uh, yeah, they've got one better here. At least it's seven five. But uh, losing the pistol once again. Like we said, Galil's and AKs. Oh, significant dink. Flame F scrambling away from the HE grenade. They're taking a lot of damage towards outside. Zai Wu has been a real nuisance for them. He's preparing for a swing, and it's a beautiful double kill. A comprehensive victory in round number 15. Yabby behind enemy lines, but Sphinx just so aware, holding a really tricky position. Doesn't hit the frag. Nice little flick from Yabby, but gonna need a lot more where that came from. Yeah, you need about two or three more of those before this really gets interesting. Sphinx didn't get any kills in the yard, but he somehow stayed alive through all of the bullets that were being shot at. <laughs> all right. God. Cool. All right, that's fine. Just Saiwoo things. He created so much chaos that Sphinx didn't go down that nobody could readjust and fight Saiwoo. So once he swings out, yeah, the spray is amazing. But I think the problem is half the T side out there, they're so focused on looking for Sphinx that they can't really do anything else. Yabby, I don't know. Can't do anything. Save the AK, maybe. 40 seconds. It'll be a long old save. I think he's going to try and make his way towards Secret. See if he can surprise them. But you're right. Essentially nothing to do. Looks like it will be the save. Just going to tuck himself behind the silo. That will do. Zaiwu, after a quiet inferno, has been loud and proud ever yeah. since, Sanders. He gets 30 frags on Mirage. He's had significant output here on Nuke, currently on 15 kills, 6 deaths. A commanding round towards outside. Very aggressive, very confident. His teammates taking all the aggro as he hears the AKs rattling off, spraying speculatively through the smoke. That's when he swings and finds a double kill. This is Apex helping him out as well. And then here comes that swing. 
big, big double kill. Gets the third with pinpoint accuracy as well. Applying a lot of pressure to Astralis. As they get one step closer to London now. Just a few more rounds away from closing out Group A as the winners. You really have to enjoy your time in the sun when Sai isn't playing, you know, at his top level, because like that that's when you can try and win a map or two against him. Otherwise, when he's like this, you know, that time slips out, the window closes, and all of a sudden he's just an absolute beast. Oh god, there he is. Once again, opening things up, this time in round number 16. Opening kill on in-game lead up. Blame S. Second for Apex. Snatches that one away from Zai Wu, as everyone wants to be part of the action here. Shutting this round down quickly. Give them no space to breathe, no room to maneuver. Apex will find the third. Zai Wu hunting for that penultimate frag. This keeps on applying the pressure, making it clear they will not be getting anywhere near a bomb site. Five versus two. Some damage inflicted. The AK is recovered. That was saved by Yabby in the previous round. Can't hold on to it, though. Device, Desert Eagle. Clean sweep. Two rounds away from victory here. Three kills for Apex. Yeah, big. Some individual redemption coming out from him. Again, it was a very frustrating first half for him, no question. The calls were good, so it's not like he wasn't contributing, but obviously he got shut down a lot out in the yard. Looking for something here, but yeah, good kills coming through. 10 to 5, or 11 to 5 now. Vitality started to really make this work. Yeah, he's hyping himself up. Give himself props, I think. If nobody else will, you have to do it, you know? So, Astralis treading water now. One more round will lead to series point for Vitality. They've made good progress outside, but Sphinx has been pretty quiet here on Nuke. He'll find the first kill. Trading blows towards up up. Significant damage. They know exactly where this one is finishing up. Nice HG grenade towards the vice. Takes him down to 22 points of health, but the dream is still alive. Finding some form when it matters most. Mezzi coming in from Squeaky Door, trying to contain them, forcing that plan in towards upper. This round is still possible. First kill has to be his. Can he find the second? Not quite. And it will be Astralis. Course correcting here. Managing to find their first round in the second half. We go 4-1 or 11-6 overall. Yeah, trying to pull the emergency break on this Vitality train. And they did it once before. They got it into overtime on the second map. Obviously, they did it on Inferno as well to great success. But it's still so hard to imagine that Vitality won't be able to find another two rounds at this stage. Getting the early shot down on Stown at the start of the second half here is must be really frustrating. He's played lights out in the first half, but he hasn't really been able to accomplish anything yet. Keeps going down as one of the first players on the Astralis side. That has to stop. They need to get him reactivated. Mezzi here. What can you do? Grenade set up that blows open. Oh my god, that's a sick little combination. That's some real CS2 right there. Yes, it is. That's how you do it. You throw down another smoke, and people hear the smoke, they're like, oh, it's another smoke landing, and then from a distance, you can't hear it. Grenade blows yeah. it open. We call that one the alley-oop. That's how it should be done. Set grenades. Not trying to blow the smoke open for yourself, for your teammate in a prime position yeah. to capitalize upon it instantly. And if there are any more T's on the other side by the by the vending machines, they can't see anything, because there's other, another smoke just went up in front of them. It's actually a ridiculous level of coordination. Not out of the woods just yet, though. This round oh. is still up for debate. Four and four. And Sphinx with six kills. He knows they're coming out of squeaky momentarily, but nothing he can do about it. Zaiwu in flames, though. That is ridiculous. What a convincing finish. As Zaiwu once again just mows them down like it's absolutely nothing. And there's a walk in the park for the world's best as he guarantees series point. London point at this stage. One more round will do it. And after winning the previous as well, it takes him down a loss bonus. So that means $2,900 into the next one. With no bomb plan, that could mean a very compromised setup here. I believe they'll still have a buy, but uh, it won't feel comfortable. And they now need to be playing the perfect game of Counter-Strike from here on out. They need six in a row 
just to take us to overtime. Then they've got to win in overtime as well. It, it seems impossible. The form Zaiwu is displaying after a quiet start in Inferno has just been impeccable. He saved the day on Mirage. Astrala should have 2 0 this. If it yes. wasn't for that saved AWP yeah. that Zaiwu was able to take us to overtime with, I think it'd already be over. Yeah, that is, I think, almost inarguable at this stage. But it doesn't matter. That's what he's here for. This is oh, what yeah. he does. We, we always say he's always going to win you two or, two or three rounds. Yeah. Like, categorically. He almost every single map. It. So nobody's surprised. But still, when you see it right in front of your eyes, it's an absolute joy to watch, isn't it? Device trying to see if he can change the outcome. Turn the tides in their favor here. Astralis needs six in a row. Such a long road ahead of them. Especially when I was still out there looking. Yeah, and it's a bumpy road at that. You can see they've got Deagle, Galil's. Little to no utility. The first frag, the beginning of the end is signaled here as Vitality start to mow them down. It looks like they're guaranteed a spot in the spring finals. No showdown for them. No games tomorrow required. Two more kills will do it. Astralis, a great showing today. Had every opportunity to win this series. A fantastic showing. They've displayed that they can hang with the very best. Brand and they can new, cause damage. It's a brand new team. They take them to overtime on the second map. They're playing a full best of three and making the vitality sweat a little bit. But you're right here. It's not quite enough on the third map of Nuke. And two versus five. They get another kill, make it a two on three. But again, they're low on health. They're only about 30 seconds left. There should be no way they can break through. Sai was still alive. Up at the heavens, raining down death from above. And it's the final kill for Sai Wu. And it's Vitality to make it to London. Messi will play in London indeed. First tickets punched to the spring finals for Vitality, a two to one game that required them to dig deeper in their resources, dig into that third map. But once we got here, the difference of level between teams had to be acknowledged. Yeah, great performance coming out from Vitality and New. Great performance once again coming out from Saivu. We said after map one that he was struggling a little bit. He had a bit of a rough showing on Inferno. A 1.13 rating was not enough to satisfy us at all. He then came alive on map two and he absolutely destroyed Astralis here in New once more. Vitality showed us why they're the best team in the world, but I also do think Astralis showed us why it's a team that we need to keep an eye out for. I, I, I cannot help but make the comparison with the Falcons encounter that we witnessed, yeah. right? You're talking about a new team for Astralis, who of course is far from being a finished product on all of the maps, but you can already see the quality, what they're made of in some of the map that they prepared, and they had that opportunity to strike. Obviously, they're going to have regrets on map two, but once we got to Nuke, there was no real question. I'm, I'm struggling not to make it just about Saiwu. I think it would be unfair towards Vitality to not mention some other players. Flames was relatively correct. Mezzi had good moments on the T side. Apex called a pretty good T side too, but let's put it quite simply. Zaibu is the best hybrid I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I mean, he's just adding to the conversation about how good of a, a Counter-Strike He barely he played with the AWP on the T side and he was messing them up with the AK. Like, can you imagine how much of an asset it is as a leader to know that you don't even need to have an AWP in order to get the best out of your player? He will turn around situations barely on rifle. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. And when he did pick up the AWP on Mirage after the device dropped that after hunting him down, right? You saw what happened. Zaibu can do it all. He is undoubtedly the best player in Counter-Strike. And if you look past the worst four years that we've seen, he's also been the best in that period. You know, there's no doubt about it. He's only getting better. He's still relatively young. So, I mean, it, it gets a bit boring constantly praising Saibu, but he's giving us a reason to do it time and time again. Every single game that he's showing up to, every single tournament he's showing up to, he's the best player we have. So why not? And we'll keep giving compliments when the compliments are heeded. One of the players that must be absolutely elated to make his way to the spring finals since Messi as he's catching up with James Banks. Vitality do get the revenge on Astralis and you become the first team to make it to London. Now, this is a special one. British boy going off to London event, Wembley. What do you think about that, mate? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be crazy. I think uh, a first for me as well, like, apart from playing some local lands and like, at the start of my career now, coming back, tier one player, getting to play a big event, it's a dream come true, especially maybe getting some family down as well. It'll be, it'll be yeah. good, it'll be good. 
family come to see the event and the whole British crowd cheering Messi? Yeah, I, I, I hope so. <laughs> but there'll be a new one, there'll be a new one, but uh, yeah, I hope so. Now, let's look at this game though, right? It was a tough rematch. Now, Inferno, obviously, they come up very strong. They looked yeah. very like they had you guys booked and named for it. But Mirage, I want to talk about the impressive comeback they made because it was the rounds after rounds. But the changing point was where Sphinx was able to save that orb. Is that what you felt was like, okay, did we get Zyrus to do his thing? Yeah, I mean, I don't We were like, let's hope, hopefully, uh, <laughs> Sphinx could stay alive. But I mean, somehow he managed to get his long arms, grab, a, grab an orb. But yeah, I mean, when you've got the best player in the world, managed to get the best weapon as well. It's like, you know, you've always got a chance, even on that last map as well. And you, even when he's got an AK, yeah. hero AK is going to make something special. So yeah, it's good. But what did that do to the mentality going into the third map? Because this was a decisive win. Yeah, I think, I mean, in all three maps and even in the previous game against them, we knew we kind of lost it ourselves. It wasn't, okay. I think obviously they did have some good rounds. They played well, but I think we messed up a lot in the first one. And even this one, we we kind of let lead slip and, and, and didn't play out to our best. But I think um, going to this third map, yeah, we were really confident and going from the others, we had great reach, just didn't do the last part of rounds correctly. And then this map, we uh, really turned it around. Well done, mate. See you in London. Thank you. I would argue this is probably the best way for Vitality to make it through the Spring Finals. Not the easiest way, not the way that makes you feel like you're untouchable, like nothing can happen to you. No, no, no. They were reminded time and time again that if their level was to drop, if they were to get a little lazy or complacent, they would be punished. Falcons did it to him, Astralis did it to him. It was not an easy way in there, but they were reminding themselves that you have to play your 100%, no matter if you're the best team in the world or not. Counter-Strike does not allow for laziness. We are through. For our first uh, series, I'm gonna take a deep breath, get let my heartbeat go down just a little bit, take a few minutes break, and when we come back, we see G2 and Navi getting ready. It's gonna be good.
they might not be consistency incarnated, but you cannot deny the peaks of G2. Last year, 2023, they reminded us of their power in Katowice, in Cologne, the double-double as we call it. But ever since we've been searching for that consistency, we've been searching for these results, trying to clean up some of the mistakes, maybe help a couple of players here and there to up their floor, if you will, in terms of skill. But they're nevertheless a team you can never underestimate. If they wake up from the wrong side of the bed, they can just absolutely destroy you. Against them is a Navi team that we might have been sleeping on just a little bit. Of course, they don't necessarily have the highest names and the most prestigious names out there, but their Counter-Strike is actually really legitimate. They're starting to convince me, convince us that there is a whole lot to it, a depth to the playbook, a resilience mentally speaking. They've already beaten G2, so they're coming here arguably as a favorite. Oh, I think that's a tough one. To uh, all right. You know? I, I wouldn't necessarily say favorites. I will, you know, in, in danger of sounding like a broken record, say that it's a team that is trending upwards. It's a team that is getting better and better tournament by tournament. I think the likes of LXB and Blade together have found a decent foundation. They're trying to build it up from the ground and upwards. And some of these individual players that we've been calling out, wonderful, mm. Immer, JL for that matter, they're starting to deliver on the server. So it's getting better for Navi, but I wouldn't call them favorites against G2 just Yet. Let's say let's stay on the LXB topic for half a second, right? I think he's been a player that was very divisive and controversial as a leader. They are there's the camp that is definitely in his favor and the camp that says he's been failing upwards and all of that. <laughs> What, where do you stand on what he's being able to do with Navi? Where do you think his credit score is going towards in this Navi lineup in terms of making the best out of the pieces? I would I would argue he's doing pretty well. He's doing a pretty goddamn good job. I'm not going to lie. He's coming into an organization that's never had an international roster before. He's coming in to work with Blade, who has a very, let's call it, specific style of how he would like to approach the game. He's also never worked with an international roster before. And honestly, if you look at the players that Alexi B has available, it's not like Monesi and Nico and the old guys. Good guard, yeah, they know, play against him. They play against him now, but it's players of the second rank, so to speak. You look at your JLs, you look at your Immer for that matter as well. Bit is coming to alive. Wonderful is not simple anymore. Let's be honest, right? It's not the same kind of player. So I think what he has to work with, he's making the most out of it. And to me, that's a great sign for Alexi B and it's a great sign for Navi for the future because you can always upgrade your player material <laughs> down the line. But after all these compliments from Jacob, let's hear what Alexi B has to say about Immer. To start with, I want to touch on Ema, because when I ask him, he doesn't talk too much about himself. But are you impressed with how he's developing and, and how big of a difference he's making now for Na'Vi? Yeah, I do think that he's definitely improved. Definitely feels, feels way more comfortable on server um, with our style, with his own decision making, with just the way we play. And I'm really proud of that because uh, you need all the individuals to come, come alive. And I feel like he's done a tremendous job lately. Do you feel like you can rely on him now? Later. Hey, we're back. I you think know, the we just had to... I think the answer is yes. You think the answer is yes? Yeah, you can rely we'll, on it. We'll ask James Banks in the green room after that. Um, the Ema talk is obviously very polarizing. Obviously, when he came from Gamer Legion, I had the sensation we would not immediately see his level, but I didn't exactly see the drop coming in. There was a huge drop. Mm. There is no way to go around it. Now, I will say, part of the responsibility befalls on his shoulders. I don't think you can just blame the environment, just say, oh, you know, it's hard to play with simple, whatever. Like, a part of okay. it is also your path to walk. And I think it's great to see him get a bit more confident, a bit more out there, telling Alexa be what he likes to do and we are seeing slowly but surely the steps of him getting better i would agree with that i think he's finding more consistency he's finding a higher output and as you saw right there just get to the third map and then he'll make sure to get the job done the two third maps he had against g2 you found it in the green room we spoke about it that's an incredible stat line coming in for him he's doing a fantastic job when it gets down to the nitty-gritty now we'll quickly touch on g2 of course we said they were the loser of the first confrontation between these two teams but they still have a, a weapon in the arsenal a weapon of which one well, I know there's basically two answers to that one, but it does feel like the headlights have gone towards Manesi, at least when it comes to CS2. Nico is kind of catching up right now, but Manesi has been a, a trendsetter. Like his transition from CSGO to CS2 has been, in my book, the quickest and the, the purest to witness. Yeah, you can see, right? He's streaming, he's putting in the hours, he's coming up with all these new tricks, and he's dictating the games. That's the one label I want to put on Manesi, because often when we speak about great AWP players like Shiro, like Device, all of them have a certain flaws to the game, I feel like 
as he can do it all. He will be the guy on the server who dictates how the team is playing. We even heard from Hooksy in one of the rounds that, hey, Monesty, why don't you walk into this bomb site, kill a guy, and then we go elsewhere. You can't do that with any other AWP in the game as of right now, which is what makes him so, so special. I agree. And what is actually really terrifying is that from this point on, it feels like only really maybe experience is something he can gather more of. Yeah. You know, play these big stages time and time again, getting mentally ready, dig himself out of bad situations. Because I look mechanically at his game and it's very close to perfection. I know it isn't, sure. but mechanically speaking, it's damn close to perfection. So imagine where he could end up a few years from now with that experience that he's gathering in all of these games in the G2 jersey. Listen, I said it this year when he he placed, what, third third best player, fourth best player in the world on the HLTV ranking. I, I think this year is, is the year where he can go to the top. I don't think anyone is going to beat Saivu of that crown as of right now. Saivu is the best player in the world. That's just the way it is. Whereas for Manithi, I think he could be the next channels. I think he's the new symbol in the sense that we can have Saivu and Manithi for the future. Do get out for who's the best player in the world. Because the way he's playing right now, the way he's progressing, the way he's getting more experience, it's a hell of a prospect to have on your team. Well, if Saivu is the king, Manithi is the prince, and you know why they do the kings in France, Henry? It's not always great. <laughs> That's a very good point, Matthew. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, we have five more slots available for the Spring Finals in London, of course, and it could be either Na'Vi or G2 coming up next. Uh, who have you got here, Anders? Of course, Na'Vi won 2-1 one before, but I think G2 are still the favorites going into the series today. Yeah, I can't really pick against Monacy and Nico. It's just such a delightful prospect. The odds are in their favor as well. It's slight favor on GG Bet. It's not a really a huge margin here. But uh, yeah, I'll give it to G2 as well. I think they're looking pretty good. They're looking very good indeed. And we're going to kick things off on Inferno, a map that's starting to get slightly more popular in CS2. We didn't see it for the first few months of any tournament. But ladies and gentlemen, this one should be an absolute barn burner of a matchup. Another rematch, another chance to take it to London. And we'll see who can put their best foot forward in the pistol round here on Inferno. G2 take it on Na'Vi, another blockbuster series for you. It's the pick of G2. They'll start on the T side here. We've got smoke and a couple of flashbangs that all important P250 for Nico. Yeah, an absolute demon in the pistol rounds and just in general across the map. Last time we saw them, it wasn't the most explosive performance from Nico. He had his moments, but there's so much more out of him. So I'm expecting today to be a real Nico day. Next, they're getting shot down early, though. Jail with the first kill of the series here. Modesty trying to get him back, and he nearly has Jail. Oh, ho, ho. he fell off. He got the headshot while he was still in the air. Nico now on his own. Still that trusty P250 in his back pocket, but can he actually do anything with it? He's looking to slide on in. Wonderful on the other side. Good headshot. Ima and Bits, two versus one. A minute here. Nico, he's only got two bullets. He hasn't even reloaded yet. Why is he peeking like that? Dangerous move. They're coming for him. They're around the corner, shooting him in the back, hunting him down, relentless. They don't want to give him the chance to escape oh, this one. He God, does get yes. the kill, but he can't win the round. Yeah, he certainly can't. He gave it a good effort, though. Nico, the P250, you're right, the two bullets towards Ruins is ambitious, to say the very least, but it's JL, the one-man army, the solo behold, absolutely dunks him with three beautiful headshots. He gets four kills in total. Nico made things uncomfortable. He finds a penultimate kill, but unable to convert the round. No plan found it either. It's Na'Vi with the pistol on their opponent's pick under their belt. Monacy bringing out the hero AK. It's Nico that drops it as well, because he gets the, the three frags. He gets the extra $900 yeah. compared to his teammates. He drops the AK over. And Monacy, given the responsibility to try and make it work, it's a sniper. He's got it all to do. Glocks otherwise. Objective here to justify this investment has to be the plan. And it's a great start for Monacy. Takes care of JL, silences him early. Alexi has a smoke. Are they going to respect it? Yeah, they should push through. Why would you wait? No! <laughs> It'd be nine on the other side, but it just gets wiped out. Nico with a stolen M4A1. And now surely they get the bomb plant as well. Bit very exposed. Is he going to check that tree position? I doubt it. Hunter just waiting there. No! Oh, he still finds it! What a beginning to this game. Everyone is fired up. It's Nico. He sees oh. in front of him, he can't get around the corner. All right, he almost got stuck there. The bomb is planted. Nico lands another kill, taking down. Wonderful. Ima, what have you got for us here? A one versus three to try and clutch it, and he's already walking backwards. That bomb was planted really quickly. 
looking for the kill, but again, with no kit, he can't do it. Oh my goodness. G2 have done it again. Against NIP, they won with just Glocks, you remember on Vertigo. Rushing B. How can you forget? And now they've done it again. A bit of assistance from the Monacy AK-47, don't get me wrong. Absolutely. But the hero AK lives up to its name. It cracks open the B bomb site, gives them some open runway. They swarm the bomb site. There's an MP9 lying in wait. Nika recovers the dropped M4. The second kill comes in. This is the moment. And bear in mind, Nika's got no Kevlar either. That's a monumental kill. Great contributions. He almost fumbled the retreat, but then gets himself a third. And there was no chance, and that's the absolute nice. worst outcome for Nabi at this point. You get $1,400 into this next round. And on the CT side, this is a death sentence. It's going to be a very weak force by, we're talking five sevens and deagles. Yeah. Maybe an MP9 at the very top end. But a technical pause, a moment's respite, but no chatting allowed. Devastating early headshot that he got there on Wonderful, who was peeking in, who, like, he just instantly lasered him. So accurate. But like I said, last time for Nico, I mean, he had, I think, a really, really good map. But apart from that, it wasn't that super sick performance that we saw out of him. Monacy was doing quite a lot of work. I want to see Nico really step it up here. We already had the Saibu experience. What could be better? What could really, like, what's the next in line? Probably getting that Nico treatment. So... We've got a single M4. One player isolated, and my god, it's JL somehow finding kills completely blind. He does manage to keep it to a four and four. It still favors the T's and then some, but that's a nice little swing from Imma. Isolates the fight on Nico, the smoke down towards Harful. They've got the man advantage, and there are weapons available towards Banana as well. CT's unable to gather them just yet. Still on high alert here. Plenty of time remaining. One minute five on the clock is... And will be G2 trying to reclaim territory. Slowly but surely making their way back in towards the B bomb site. Strong smoke goes down. It's only Alexi B defending this side of the map. He's got one further smoke though, Anders. Yeah. He can wait till about the 45 sec... Well, the 40 second mark in Sacknance. Get this next smoke down. And just delay them as long as possible. Felt like he threw that a little bit early, but... Maybe, yeah. It's absolutely fine. See if it's enough. He is going to be tested, and the rotations are coming from the CTs here. They're reading this one, but Alexi B is burning to a crisp. His teammates need to arrive right now as the bomb goes down. Can they? Oh, they can take it down. Oh, this is a, a bad play. It really is. There's a little bit of a swing. Imma continues. Three kills for him. Only 14 seconds. Hunter, they're never going to let you plant this bomb here. Of course, they're going to go for it. Bit will get the shot. That's costly for G2, and that is a mistake. I, I don't know why they rushed to plant the bomb like that. You could have just gone for a fountain plant, had cover. No one covering the banana position whatsoever. Yeah. After you get that all-important kill, it was a three versus three. You could have planted anywhere else but there. They get the smoke down towards Coffins. Behind the fountain would do. Yeah, Nico can't believe it. No! It's a bit of a yikes. And Navi pulled the round back. They had the Hero M4, giving G2 a taste of their own medicine. And we get into it, round four. The war of attrition is officially underway. Forced by wards. It's Nico this time with the rifle. Can he replicate the four Monacy? Displayed previously, there's the opportunity, but JL gets away without taking any damage whatsoever. Oh, they know about the AK now. Listening for the shots out there. Surely they respect it now, they've run into it at least once. And actually rotating three people to the B-bomb site, so... If G2 follow through with this, if they actually smoke up, they're kind of maneuvering like they want to go back to B anyway. It is a really weak A bomb site if they if they do try and go for it. But look at the bomb. Yeah, it's going towards B, so looking for that banana split through CT spawn. Smoke down towards library. It's Imma. 
is in the perfect position to get a double kill here. Should be able to find Hooksy, but he's done very well to trade that kill out. Alexi will be on high alert. He's being pincered right now. They'll boost up behind the smoke, and what a great call it is. But JL, he reads it. Double kill through the smoke, maintains the advantage here. It looks like Na'Vi have done enough for three rounds as Monacy locked out of the bomb site. AK-47 in hand, four kills to find. Perfect flashbang. If he can get the bomb down, that'd be something, but I don't think he has any cover towards CT spawn. He'll get the first, but it's very effective round. Na'Vi, they hold on. That's going to have to be the first eco now, as G2 will have no money after that force buy. I'm actually, I'm so shocked that G2 are losing some of these rounds. The, the last one with the bomb plant exposed, this one, the boost against Jail is sick. He was super exposed. I thought they would have got the kill on him, and then Hooksy would have been able to run in behind. It would have been just Alexi with an MP9 on the bomb site against four people. I'm, I'm really surprised. It was, a, it was a really nice call. Boosting behind the site was yeah. the correct... Uh, behind the smoke, sorry, was the correct call. Should have got that kill. Didn't quite land the shot. JL gets a double. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, absolutely not taking anything away from JL. That's super sick. He's playing amazingly well at the start of this game. Bit getting a chance to flex. And he'll do exactly that. Two kills. Instantly shut down. A grenade, I think, on top of Nico as well. Oh, this is getting a bit uncomfortable at the start, really, for G2. A frustrating way to begin a match. You feel like you have big moments. You fight hard for it. You're pretty much in some good winning positions, and then it kind of slips right over your hands. Yeah, uh, most notably that open plan from Nexa. Yeah. That's where things started to spiral for them. They didn't have to rush that plan. There was like 30 seconds left on the clock. They had smoked down towards the coffin side. A fumbled scenario. And should be a guaranteed round here. JL can't believe his luck. He's been absolutely fed some kills. It's Nico. Last player remaining. Best he can hope for is a bomb plan here. Drops the smoke. Gonna try desperately to get it down. I think he's done enough. Not quite. It's That's, close. It's very close. Good effort. They only get a single frag on the full eco, but here we go. It's going to be Na'Vi beginning to stretch their legs here on Inferno. If JL had lazily thrown down the Molotov and just ran with his back turned, which you sometimes see people do, they would have been powering through and shot him in the back. So it's good to see him not just throw it down and, and assume that it was going to be a wall, but actually holding it and getting the double kill. Small details like that. Also, I think it's just Monacy and Nico getting kills. hooksy has got one, Zero on Nexus, Zero on Hunter. We're in the sixth round starting now. Hunter's had a pretty difficult tournament so far. Yeah. He hasn't looked his usual self. No need to rediscover some of that. Whatever the mojo oh, is, get it, it would, back. It would certainly help. Uh, bear in mind, this is the map pick of G2 as well. Uh, very early days. They're on the T side. Nothing to be alarmed at just yet. They lost the pistol. They did win that second round force buy, but then that massive issue with the bomb plant has led them to this pretty large deficit, but certainly a recoverable one, as we do see AKs within the hands of the CTs, though. Ima letting himself known from the bedroom position. He'll find the aforementioned Hunter, who goes down 0-6 now. And now they can start to peel off. The initial investigation towards second mid was successful. They've got a five on four. Money, resources being drained from G2 here. They do have multiple smokes remaining, a couple of Molotovs as well, but wonderful. A great defensive sniper, never really oversteps the mark. He plays the advantages, and he'll be holding towards Emo right now. You can Molotov that position. Let's see if they do so, though. And they only have one Molotov to throw, so it might be true. Oh, another one picked up there by Nexa, so maybe they can find him. That would be helpful, oh, but they're, they're a little bit late. Alexi started to show up. Flashbang is absolutely amazing, but it's Alexi who gets the first one as they try and make it in. Defensive sniping coming out. You mentioned it, and here we are. Wonderful. Landing a shot on Nexa. They try to bring it back in the round. 15 seconds left. Hooksy, a huge double kill. Puts it within the realm of possibilities, but JL in the fountain. A pariah trying to see if he can find that kill onto Hooksy, who's now alone, and time has run out. He cannot win the round unless they peek him again, which they have no reason to do. Bit. Now out looking to see if Hooksy wants to go over his life. It's actually a quad kill for Hooksy, but they still lose the round. He saves the AWP. He can throw that over to Monacy in the future, uh, but still a disappointing finish. They don't really break through the B bomb site once again. They lost the initial pick in towards second middle. It's Emma. Like we said, when you've got the AK 47s, you can play on the front foot. You can play on those front lines. 
go for the one taps. He's actually looked much better in recent tournaments as well. Emma had a slow start in Na'Vi. Good job from Hooksy to keep the AWP in play at the very least, but smiles all round, especially for JL. But they just don't have the resources to go with it. G2 will give Monacy the AWP. He likes a lot of damage on route towards Banana, down to 67, but won't be a problem. We know a player of his capabilities will be able to make this one work. Have to assume it, that Navi won't easily peek into this orb either. They, they know it's in play. Yeah. So it's not some sort of big surprise. Why would you go and fight him at Banana or something else? Just play this round a bit more slowly. Hope to put him in an awkward position. They don't have, well, they have one smoke on Modesty to try and set this one up. See the jumping peek around the corner? Want to do it again? No, I don't think so. Yeah, smoke it off again. That's how you want to do it. Don't give him the opportunity. The three people at the B bomb side. They've been doing that quite a bit. Two man set up over at A, where G2, I think, for the first time, are going to try and actually take a look at the A bomb side. They've been ignoring that for the first six rounds of the game. It's one of the reasons why Wonderful has only got the one kill. He's been playing over here most of the time, so hasn't really been needed at all. The chicken is first in the middle, but the rest of G2 are they're right behind. Nice incendiary. As we said, wonderful. Doesn't usually overstep the mark. He's got fantastic mechanical ability, but he wants to make sure he wins the round, doesn't take any risks for his team. That's a great opening kill. Secures the advantage, but Monacy will respond in kind. Lovely shots being delivered now. It's down to Bit. We need to see at least one more kill from him. He's not going to find it. Advantage now as Monacy delivers a disgusting shot through the wall. And now poor old JL. Three versus one. A double orb set up on the T side here. Hunter would love his first kill. Build that confidence up. Oh, there it is. And uh, if you give Monacy an AWP, even with Glocks around him, Anders, the round is still possible. <laughs> I can't believe it, especially because Wonderful got the first shot on Hooksy, yeah, he was jumping. A five on four. You think that would be enough? Monacy, though, even with half HP, Nico will join him. And like I said, Bit had to find at least two. Yeah. Overwhelmed by the pistols, the AWP, gross shot. And there's nothing they could do. That's going to be G2 arriving back in Inferno just in the nick of time. Two rounds to their name now, but a nice injection of cash. Taz, very happy to see that, I'm sure. That last kill for Monacy, the double scope actually made that kill so much harder. <laughs> but yeah. he got it anyway, still flicked and got it. Oh, man. Yeah. Blade and Taz both getting a chance to, to chime in. For all the really painful rounds that G2 have lost so far on the map, at least this is one that they get back. I mean, that's that's a little bit of redemption on their side. It is still early days, even if it's a good start for Navi here, so I don't want to get too carried away, but they need to build something on top of this, right? We say it all the time, like the one odd round, it's not going to be good enough. You have to, some consecutive rounds, maybe yeah. put a little bit of pain into Navi. Most notably, Nexa and Hunter yet P90. to arrive. It's the P90 rush. An old classic, a fan favorite, and it's actually going to work out. Not the double kill. It actually leads him to a disadvantage here. You don't see many in-game leaders calling that. It's avant-garde. <laughs> 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 super high-level game. He rushed the B-bomb side with a P90, threw the hey. Molotov, and it actually he actually got the kill on Jail. He got the kill. If they would have followed through, it would have just been Alexi with an MP9 on the other side. They would have for sure won that one. <laughs> Holy. That is so sick. Hooksy creating the memes around himself for the oh. moment. Oh, they trade places. What? Emma for Nico. They did not see each other. I don't know how I'd love to see both their replays after this one. Under a minute now. And I think Alexi's actually joined Emma on that side. So now they're both towards CT spawn. Nico, a little bit more patience. A couple of steps forward. And he can get the opening kill here. Oh, he's not looking for it. They don't see him either on top of the smoke. There we go. He can't spin around in time. And Imma, hand, hand cannon, able to take him down. Nexa dropped very low. Got to be careful here. Monis is still with the AWP in 35 seconds. He gets the first. He needs another three. Oh, look at the movement. Prancing around the map, but Imma will deny the plan. That's very important. Monisi thrust into the clutch. We've seen him here before. These are the sort of scenarios he can win. 20 seconds, need to try and isolate these kills. The first kill, no problem whatsoever. 
dancing around. Bomb on his back. What's the next maneuver here? 10 seconds remaining. Players behind him, though. A chance of glory, but one that won't be converted. Nico sneaking through the back lines like ships in the night. They pass in the smoke. He gets towards ruins, but the perfect counter. A boosted player just above that smoke. They spot him before he can make his first incision. And he was looking for Alexi, who at last sighting was on top of first oranges. So that's why he's checking the die. He's not checking for the boost, right? He thinks that Alexi's there alone. So why yeah. would he? No one could be boosted even. So unfortunate. The P90 rush and as it doesn't work out. Yeah, but legendary nonetheless. Oh, yeah. Still goes down in the history books. Oh, you're burning. This has to be some of the most painful rounds of Counter-Strike I've seen out of G2 for a really long time. And they are a team that have a history of tilting a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. Certainly. Or a lot, even. <laughs> yeah, or a lot. <laughs> I was uh, being kind. And uh, they are getting manhandled. Hot Inferno right now. Shot, you just know he's gonna hit. Every time. These AWPers, these enigmatic ones like Zywa and Monacy, they're just, they're on a different level. Yeah. I don't even know if they can explain how they know. Like, it's just a feeling in their brains. <laughs> like telling them now is the time. And then a wrong. Almost never wrong. Monacy, nine kills. Nico on nine kills. Hooksy had that amazing quad around that they lost anyway, but Hunter and Nex are still absent from the game. You need to step it up here. If they win this round, there's no more money on Na'Vi, and it could be a really big bounce back. G2, it's been painful, but they're definitely not out of it yet. Hoxie, another good opening. Not with the P90, but the MP9 this time. And they are rotating around. They've created an opening. Oh, Bits! What? Nice nade. He hits the headshot on Monacy, and it's a three versus three. Bomb is going to be planted here. Oh, before it even do, Nico's dead. Yeah, he pops the smoke himself there. Nico didn't see it coming. This retake wasn't looking possible, but all of a sudden the round is back on. CTs do have kits available. A flashbang within their ranks as well. All three players coming in towards shore, but they need to get their skates on. Hunter residing in the bedroom, leaving the heavy lifting to Nexa. Bear in mind, these are the two players that are yet to really have any sort of impact. Hunter, prime opportunity to shut this one down. Finds the kills in the back, and there we have it. A clean round from G2. Just what they needed when things were beginning to spiral here. And you mentioned it, the money is very low on the Na'Vi side. They're going to be in a lot of trouble going forward now. They will have zero loss bonus accumulated. I saw those two names, Hunter and X, and I thought, oh, don't, don't let it be this round where they, they slip up and let it go. But they don't. Absolutely rock solid play. Nexa obviously down in the pit, but Hunter understanding exactly when to push. He knew he got the information from Nexa, and that was it. Good communication, good setup, and a force up from Navi. Oh, almost getting away with it there, but Hunter activated finally. Hooksy, he's out of control. <laughs> he can't he's be stopped. He's buying SMG every round and rushing banana. We've got P90s, Mac 10s, MP9s. Somewhere out there is Carrigan and Boomich nodding at him like, yeah. That's how you do it. You're, you're under something. Snappy as well loves it. <laughs> yeah, we got like some of those IGLs that uh, that enjoy that kind of counter strike. Wonderful. Deagle, the force up has failed. Yeah, <clears throat> this isn't a lifeline for G2. This is a life raft. That force buy does nothing for Na'Vi. Hooksy taking matters into his own hands. The B rush once again, this time successfully breaching the bomb site, mowing them down, farming that money. And they might be able to turn this around and actually get the 6-6 scoreline uh, when things were looking devastating for them at one point. Some crushing defeats, some awkward rounds. But now two opportunities and one that should be an absolute wide open net as they face five USPs here in the penultimate round of the half. 6-5, an absolute lock-in. Hoxie can just maintain control of this MAC-10. An old classic boost here. Yes. Five-man set up. You're just hoping that Hooksy tries his luck. Yeah, they just want to take down Hooksy, I think. Yeah. Punish him for his lack of respect over at this bomb site. Going to be a bit of a nasty surprise, even if the USPs don't do a lot of damage. <laughs> All right. He's like, no, I'm good. Instant call. Rounds one. I mean, it probably already was, but now it's even more definitely one. <laughs> yes, indeed. There's not really much that can be said or done. Hunter, like, he would love some frags here, though, Anders. Yeah. He'll get one. 
not ideal, but Hooksy continues to farm. He has had nothing but SMG kills. Julie's as well. He's got like, the cheesiest loadout you can have in all of CS2. <laughs> What's he doing? What's he doing to our game? Well, it's the last round coming up next, so surely he doesn't maintain the SMG. Get the P90 again. Get Okay, I actually don't mind that. Yeah, get the P90. I'd, I'd pay him some money to do that one more time. <laughs> I want to see that. It was so cool. He'll go with the AK. Yeah, sensible choice. Hooksy's top fragging. It's one of those days. Okay. Well, this has been one of those games as well where it's been one-sided for the first six rounds and then one-sided in the other direction in the last six. This is like a common occurrence in CS2, unfortunately. One difficult round, one mistake can unravel the entire team. Nico takes a ton of damage at the half wall here. Flashbang's being deployed at the top. So are bullets from bits. He gets the first kill. Hooksy this time down early. And there will be... A likely 7-5 finish here. Na'Vi, final round, huge advantage. Bit will extend it. Not really much left to be said here. Hunter fighting two for Nail. He hasn't got the bomb, but Monacy does. AWP, they can get the plant down. And the smoke towards Moto. There is a chance here, Anders. Yes, there is. It's not done yet. Put Monacy in the pit, and let's see if they can get rid of him. They do have a Molotov, so if they can set that up, they can try and burn him out. And they've done a nice open plan as well. It's locked up behind the yeah. box, so Monacy can actually see it from multiple angles in the pit. That it's is critical. He picked up a smoke. Was that on bit? Yeah, it must have been. One more smoke to put it down. That's a huge issue. Do they want to try and boost behind it? If not, then they have to flash their way through. They're running out of time quicker than you'd like here. There's the smoke going down to try and buy a little bit of space so they can push forward. But Hunter is in front of the smoke. He goes down. Monacy, the flick, it doesn't connect. And now the pressure is on. They're all around him coming in. The grenade lied in front of him and he can't do anything about it. They're already on the defuse. Wonderful will hunt him down. And they just hold on for the life. Is it going to be close? Oh! oh! That's how it ends. Seven to five. Na'Vi with a bit of a lead going into the second half. It's a, it's a really interesting time to be playing Counter-Strike. Um, just speaking to you, Taz, taking a, taking a break from competitive play back in March. New challenge as a coach now. Do you feel like you're, you're ready for this challenge, this way you, you want to be in your career right now? This boy is ready. He's ready? This boy, yes. He's doing a good job? <laughs> was this thank, always, thank you, son. Was, was this always the, the dream? Is this always the, the future for Taz after he finished playing? I always were saying, I always said that I don't want to be a coach. Like okay. the whole time I was playing because I felt like it's a very different uh, aspect of how I used to be as a player. But uh, when I got uh, like, contacted by G2, I was like, okay, this is the only team I want to coach. Like basically this was the only team that I felt like uh, I can go in and I will like understand the guys and the guys will understand me because of, you know, uh, where, are we, where we come from. And uh, it just felt natural to join this team. And uh, I actually, I'm very happy. Now being a coach of G2 and having Philip uh, being a coach of FaZe and he already won a couple tournaments, mm -hmm. it just gives me extra kick and extra motivation. And uh, I'm kind of motivated person. So if you give me more fuel, then hey, I take it. You seem very relaxed these days, Taz. Um, I used to be a little bit scared of you back in the day when you were a player. Like, um, for you, Ilya, how is it playing with him? Is he is he chill? Has he calmed down a bit? You can say that. Well, sometimes. Say it. sometimes. You, want to say, you want to have some fire, though. You want to have some passion, right? <laughs> I, I will leave now. He has, he has a good balance. He's a hard worker, and uh, he's putting a lot of effort in the game. And uh, he's helping the team a lot. And uh, obviously, like, if you want to be a good coach, like sometimes you have to be calm. Sometimes you have to be uh, more, I would say, like not str like strict but in a good way, no? And uh, he's having a good balance. But I don't scream. No, you don't I, scream. I don't no, scream. but I mean strict, like uh, yeah, tar targeting yeah, a mistake, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's you're like, doing good. Yeah, it's <laughs> thank, you. thank you. So he's having a good balance and uh, I really like it. And uh, last days on the boot camp were really productive.
London calling indeed. We have five more slots available for Spring Groups 2024 happening. Oh, sorry, Spring Finals, I should say, yes. happening in June 2024. Which one of these two teams will be entering the arena next? So either Navi or G2. The former post seven rounds on their CT side. They had a flying star, but G2 closed the gap on their map pick and were full send in the pistol and silenced USP for Monacy, a staple of his play as the aggression comes to a standstill. They wait for the next move from Na'Vi. Yeah, and that was Emma interrupting the push down the middle. Hunter will open it up. Monacy still looking for something here. Unable to connect with anyone. They're a little bit stretched out. Oh, here comes the surprise, Zimmer. Could have had the double right then and there. They traded back and forth. And still with G2 slightly in the lead. Alexi, he was really far behind with the bomb. A chance that he could have got segmented from the rest of the team and they couldn't have even got the bomb here, but they can still win the round. They got a smoke and a Molotov. Alexi with the health. He's obviously going to have to be the one plant of the bomb at some point if they can get into a site. That's a massive if. They throw a decoy suggesting it's some sort of limp fake. And by the look of things, we'll end up towards B eventually. Got to run the clock down. Can't fake anyone with Nico here, right? That's a very good point. Like I said, it's uh, a desperate attempt. <laughs> yes. I mean, technically, you can smoke off CT spawn. Maybe you can land a Molotov on Hunter in this, or sorry, on uh, Hooksy in this position. But it's questionable at best already found out yeah they know what's coming bit is going to be dead alexi a chance for a bomb plant we know how important it is because it means you can buy around early you can get into the game much sooner trying to punch in those digits but executed by nexa instead really important to get that last one before the bomb is planted oh absolutely they definitely could justify sacrificing a player in that three versus one denying the all-important plant hooks he just had to find that low hp player which he did and it will be the pistol going in favor of G2. Nice aggression at the start, trading out the kills, found the man advantage. Hooksy, solo hold towards B, holds on to it admirably. You can see even with the Molotov going down, stays alive, his teammate denies the plant, and G2 back on track. Round 14, no bomb planted as mentioned, so it has to be the eco here. Glocks and a couple of P250s. Next up, Fits himself up high and mighty on top of the atrium. Okay, don't mind us, Mimo. Good pacing. Yeah, he's actually he's getting so much real estate on the map. Kind of set up for G2. You have the rifles, you should be winning it, but it is just really awkward. Not a flashbang on Navi to set anything up, otherwise, I think that's where you can really break apart this kind of a defense. But you can kind of tell if, if somebody dies here towards this double setup, suddenly it's just chaos all around. Monacy, good spray, good continuation. I think that creates enough space that they're not in danger of losing the round, but they might lose another player here. Monacy's very, very low. And now they're stuck in the pit. I don't think they're going to be able to get the bomb. Oh, maybe. They just run right out. A nade might finish him off. Not quite. Bomb planted. They'll take that all day long. They were going to buy regardless in the follow-up round, but that certainly gives them a nice injection of cash. G2 tie things up 7-7. Seven, seven. It's our first map. It's their pick. And now it's anyone's game. There will be enough to bring out the wonderful AWP if they really wanted to. I don't think we'll see it this early on the T side. The bomb going down certainly is a welcome addition to round 15 coming up next. So, I mean, this is a very open game now. 7-7. Seven, seven. Hooksy, he really put so much effort into that first half. He's tied with Monacy for top frags at 13 each. Still that MP9 in play. Maybe could have had something else, but it's got some utility up here, jumping around the wall. And so, uh, Boomwich is practically addicted to doing that. You can see they've got a reservoir of utility over there at B. Nico setting up for retake utility potentially. When I say that, it means incendiary by the car, smoke by half wall, retake with a flash, and this is what you're going to see right now. Smoke, 
Molotov behind it, flashbang over. You don't have to swing. It's just designed to push any tease of the car back. And no one there. It just takes a lot of vision and information away now. You have to readdress the issue. You have to flush it out again. You have to check the sandbags, break through that smoke. And it allows them to just have one player over towards me. That's going to be Nico. He bolsters the A defense with the suggested retake utility. There's very little time for this round to work out for Navi. 30 seconds. Oh, Molotov gonna be... there on Monacy. Alexi B special. At the right time. It's going to be absolutely sick. DBG as well. Oh, it blows up Imma. This has to work. They're jumping out right now. 18 seconds on the clock. It's madness. Navi, you don't have time for this fight. You need to get the bomb planted. And they're absolutely getting wiped out. Denied even getting into it here. That late couple of needs that they just saved on the G2 side. Enough to slow down Navi even further. And jail just to save the AK. That's big. Well, that's monumental. Well played. Uh, when I said the Alexi V special, he really does favor the, the apartment's pounce on the T side of Inferno. Historically, even rolling it way back to end days, he would love these sort of approaches, flashing out, smoke down towards Moto, flooding out of the apartment's position. Doesn't work out for them this time. JL, he entered this one on an absolute heater. He actually had, what, the four kills in the pistol, was looking like he'd have one of those astonishing games yeah but he's only got 10 frags now not like a, a bad performance but just the way he entered the server you thought he'd carry that momentum on g2 establishing themselves in the second half they've got a 3-0 start orb now for monacy as well one more buy in reserve changing the stance over towards banana they take assertive control at the beginning here. It costs you a lot of your utility, but you know you're up against the pistols. You're to deny their execution potential here, and you've got the firepower advantage. You can actually hold the AWP at the car position as a turret, and then have all the rifles enabled in those crossfires over towards A. Pull the trigger now, Monacy. It's a free shot against Alexi. And you can see they've left him like a full utility belt. Yeah. So when he gets a kill, he can drop the HE, then he can drop the smoke. If he gets in trouble, incendiary at the entrance, allowing time for rotations to come through. So it's all calculated. Like the risk might look significant, but he's actually got a lot of control. And so did Nexa, at least for the first kill. Nico will chime in for a pair of frags. JL, nothing to do here. $50 to his name. And a Tech 9 in hand. To be in a little bit of trouble here, Navi. You can kind of tell that even if G2 fumbled a bunch of rounds early on, they still had a pretty decent first half, and the second half has been really great for them. They're they're in the lead. They've got the money on their side. Navi not quite getting the bomb pass that they need either. Yeah, you're dead on. You're like, not doing enough damage either, right? G2 was 6 2 down. It looked like they weren't going to arrive here today. They're a very slow start, but they managed to post. Three rounds in a row towards the end. Laid down the foundations of the 7-5 scoreline. And now it's just round after round. Eight to seven. Oh, sorry, nine to seven, I should say. Yeah, laid with the tactical papers out there. The dossing through what's going on. The dossier. Yeah. Hopefully there's something in those papers that'll Give him a chance to get back into this one. Two-round deficit for Navi. Really, it's the money. It's not the build on that CT sign that's keeping me concerned for Navi. See if they could do some more damage. Three-man setup early on at the B-bomb side. Navi themselves ran this kind of a setup quite a bit and weren't really called on it too much. There weren't a lot of times where it was a fast A attack for G2. Doesn't look like Navi themselves are looking to try and pressure that side of the map all that much at the moment. But if they did, good chance they could overwhelm this kind of a double setup. The window maybe to do it is closing slightly here. Nico coming in from the other side. We saw in the last game the weakness of the setup though, if you actually go out apartments and you have the right flashbangs for it. But I guess Navi already tried that a couple of times and it hasn't worked out, so I don't know if they will want to do it a third time. Go. 
Grenades in the middle, they blow open that smoke. It couldn't have been any better timing. Hunter, good double kill, but coming in oh. to help out. It's bit, and he can just walk right in to that shot. He's got 16 kills. A huge reason why Navi might win this round. Two versus three. And the bomb is going to get planted. Bit might be very, very low on health, but he's finding himself in the graveyard. It's going to be hard to clear him out of this one. Yeah, they pop the smoke for a second, but it's... Another one lands. They'll try it again, but I think they realize that this one is over. Courtesy of Bits, finding two very significant kills out of the apartment set, especially the booster player, a quad. Now V will post that first after going 0-4 in the second half. They close the gap. A one round game as we go nine to eight, but plenty of resources available for G2 going forward. This is not a reset. They'll save the AK-47 and AWP. Plenty of cash otherwise. You know, because they changed the railing on, yes. on the exit? Yes. I think if you're playing at quad position now, I don't think he was ready for Pit being able to just walk out. Like, yeah, nobody sure. has to jump up and try and, like, it should, it's such a surprise. A tiny look at look at this next one. Like he can just walk right into it. I don't think Nexa he's probably in the back of his mind thinking that he has to jump up, but not the case anymore. Yeah, it's a good point. But there it is, the first round. Navi finds some form on the T side. Working through those apartments. And we'll take a tactical timeout. Blade trying to stabilize the ship here. It's getting a little bit choppy out there. He seems calm though. Have a look at the scoreboard while we're here. It's Monacy, 15 kills, 10 deaths at the very top. Nico and Hooksy and Hunter, not far behind, at 13 frags apiece. So Hunter's turning his game around. He was 0 7 at one point. More power to him. That could be one of the challenging things about playing the game. It's one thing if the whole team is falling apart, but if one or two players having a hard time and they can't turn it around, but the rest is playing well, that could be quite a lot of pressure on an individual. Right, 13. I think both Nexter and Hunter are 1 and 7 at one point. Yeah. So, <laughs> what a turnaround it's been. Well, not much separating these two teams now. The first map of our best of three, the Group C final. Winner of this series goes directly to Spring Finals in London, happening in June. Get your tickets now. It's going to be one hell of a... One hell of a tournament, a glorious return to London. We've had some iconic tournaments there over the years. We just sent the world's number one team to play, so... It's true. It's a solid start. There'll be more to come. Yeah, five slots available at this stage with Vitality taking the first of six. We are going to fill four of those slots after we complete the games today. Navi versus G2 right now. Liquid phase coming up next. And Virtus Pro Big to close out the day. For now, though, we try and crack open this B bomb side. It's JL with the opener. They know Monty's in spawn. They've got to try and flush him out. Perfect grenade in more ways than one. He gets the intel and the frag. They cross over eventually, but he's given them a fighting chance on the G2 side. Nico covering the extremities here, waiting for the smoke to dissipate, and will challenge Bit of the sandbags. Yeah, but Bit has been the hard carry of the team. He has to stand up to three people coming in, and he can get none of them. Hunter the one to take him down, and now the retake is definitely on here. Navi just starting their own comeback. They don't want to fall short already. They have to hold on to this one, hold on to the bomb for as long as possible. And G2 setting up some smokes now, flashing their way through. The spray, it looked good. It almost got the kill, but they keep on trading through. Wonderful! It's two big kills. One play. Oh! Clear it out. That is magnificent. In the corner, a triple. He saved Navi. Not known to be a rifler is wonderful, but apparently he can do it all. Lovely sequence there, very controlled, very calm on a retake that looked destined to go in favor of G2. Hunter hitting absolutely everything on route as a three versus one, but wonderful mows them all down. Time was on his side, he converts it. Even if he died in that final interaction, and as he still wins the round, they knew it as well. Before that shot had even landed, you can see the smile on JL's face. That is significant. That is massive from Wonderful. His best contribution thus far. He was bottom of the scoreboard and then some up until that moment. He now ties up with Alexi B in terms of frags. And overall, we've got a tied game, 9-9. Nine, nine. Money is there for two players. We've got 7K on Monacy, 5K on Nico, 
everyone else hovering around the two and a half thousand dollar mark. So yet another tactical timeout. As we're going to go the full distance here, SMGs have been deployed. Nexer and Hooksy will have to make do. Monacy pressure on him to find some opening picks once again. This time making his way towards the apartments. Solo. We were blessed with a fantastic best of three to start the day with this one. This one has the makings of another really great series. It looked like Navi had given up a little bit here in the second half, but no longer. Hooksy, look at how he's just pressuring, standing at the edge of the flames without touching them. That is narrow margins. Nico just trying to spam. Obviously, he's trying to do some damage as well, but more importantly, baiting Hooksy. Just suggesting that they're just going to be spamming for now. Hooksy thinking better of it. Offers to smoke up and maybe wants to leave Nico as that aforementioned turret. Once again, he hasn't got the AWP, but he's got another smoke. Can hold them at bay if required. He doesn't want to deploy until he absolutely has to, and he's feeling too much pressure because he is now the, the last standing player at the B bomb site. Hooksy in between A and B. We can kind of see the cogs are turning there on G2, right? They're running back and forth, they're adjusting. Now they've brought Hooksy back, but for a minute he was over at the A bomb site. They really want to make sure they're in the right position. Navi, though, they've done a good job. It, it would have been a four-man setup at the bomb side. They brought it down to three by just kind of taking bat banana control. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. The next piece is getting the entry. They're actually wrapping around. I'm worried about the time, though. 20 seconds. One mistake here could cost them the entire round. Navi, don't leave it too late. Bit with a good kill. Wonderful shooting. Monacy in the back of the head. And Hunter, he's no longer going to have any teammates. Absolutely taken down the whole bomb sites wrapped up six seconds as they start the bomb plant so it's it's kind of scary but um it was well calculated it was always going to be a difficult round for g2 entering with a couple of smgs the awp of monacy unable to connect overwhelmed as they perfectly executed towards that a bomb site once again it's bit with another double kill upon arrival absolutely destroying the defense and at this stage, that's where Na'Vi will start to cruise in the lead there in a fantastic position to close out their opponent's pick handers. That was the force fight, bear in mind. We're at the latter stages of this game. They take the lead. And now the money is going to be under a lot of pressure. This is a bit like how much work has he done it's from the apartment's position? Like next, uh, it keeps getting rocked. Hoxie tried to hold on to the MP9. That's all they had left. You can see Hunter does look a little bit frustrated as they have to enter a full eco scenario. This round is guaranteed. Na'Vi will have 11 rounds on the board. Just a matter of time before they convert it. Can they keep it clean is the only question. I feel like it was just the other day that I was leveling some criticism against Bit, saying that he you know, hasn't really been performing up to the level that you would have expected. And maybe that was true at one point, but this is... Yeah, this is the kind of performance that you want out of Bit. Maybe people forgot about it, but the duo of Bit and Simple just made the original Navi lineup look so ridiculous because he's just so good. But obviously, they've been through a lot of turbulence, and Bit it looked like it took him a while to recover his own game. They do walk into a bit of a stack here, and they actually do lose Alexi B, which is unfortunate. But at least they know that the stack is there. We'll see. Looks like they, they don't even want to fall back. They might just want to try and face it, use the grenades to clear it out. It's a bit risky, but um, the AKs should be coming out on top of this one. Hunter up here. Oh, oh, hold on. Lands a good shot on JL. 40 seconds. They're doing a good job. They know that someone's back here. So hook C. I don't think there's a way out of this one except death. Hey, they made it uncomfortable. There's been about a dozen dinks here for those USBs. Yeah. A couple of kills, zero dollars invested into the round. You, you'll take it, I suppose. It's about as good as it was ever going to be. Next up, waiting patiently in spawn, but that is going to be the round all done. 11 for Na'Vi. As they look to steal away Inferno. It's the first map of our series here. Mirage up next, the pick of Na'Vi as well. Nuke if required. And for now, next up, maybe he gets one. Two of them are low. Yeah, it's doable. But not if you don't hit the shots. Emma with a four kill in this one. They'll take it. 11 to nine. Navi getting closer now, two rounds away. 
from picking up the map here. Very close. Taz knows it. You can feel this one slipping out of their grasp. For context, if you didn't watch the previous game, I'm going to explain it one more time. The format here today, all four series, whoever wins it will take four teams to London to the World Finals or Spring Finals. Tomorrow, all the losers will have a new black bracket, or we'll have two more slots available, six in total, one of which has already gone to Vitality. So you're not out of the tournament if you lose this series, but my God, would you ever like to just end things now and secure it today? Oh, no question. There are some, some dangerous teams left out there. And again, for both G2 and, and Na'Vi, even though they're really strong teams, and they're certainly showing it today, they've shown some weaknesses every once in a while too. They've shown a little bit of inconsistency every once in a while. So you, yeah, get it done with now. Don't leave it up to chance. Finally, a buy coming out from G2. See if they can return to their winning ways. They've got everyone activated. Ridiculously, Hunter is now top fragging on G2. I just can't even believe that. Again, I just have to remind you, he was 1-7 and seven at some point in this game. He just was completely not playing the game, but um, that's in the past. Certainly. Three players for G2 towards B at the start. Primarily just dropping off utility. Set up that turret once again. This time, Monacy's on the half wall. It's a very powerful position. You're normally guaranteed at least one, especially with a player of his caliber up there. You're able to drop off, find safety in the bomb site, and it enables you to have a four-man setup over towards A. Flashbang doesn't dissuade him. What? And he hits a beautiful shot towards Wonderful. It wasn't even the front player. It was actually Wonderful who was who was aiming for that, yeah. right? That I think is what Wonderful is waiting for. He's waiting for the peak. The high value target is who he finds, the AWP player. Five on four. G2 can't afford to give this round up, but Hunter, he's given them an opportunity. Bits on high alert right now. He smokes off towards library. They've got to deal with two players in towards that pit. Bits absolutely out of his mind at the moment. He walked through the smoke to find that one. They're going to take down Emma, though. 20 seconds on the clock. Bits still out there, still looking for the headshots. Nexa goes down, and JL comes up close and finds Hooksy. Bits finally dead, but... Got to go for it. Yeah, you have to. Two versus two. Oh! And Nico, he finds it just as a second smoke is deployed. It's on Alexi, not the sniper of the team at all. The captain, look at us, if he could save the ship. Monacy walking into the other side, and he walks right into it. He can't believe it. And through the smoke now, he hears it. He knows. Alexi, run, yeah, Alexi. Make his way out. He's around the corner. He's escaped. He might have done it, Henry. Alexi, nowhere to be found. And Nico, desperate. He hits the headshot. But even with the kit, it's not enough time. One versus two. A sick clutch for the captain. Oh, he died as well. Nico went down with the AWP. That is massive. Oh, no, that means Monacy potentially doesn't have the orb going forward. They couldn't afford to lose that round. They had the that advantages. Hurts. They had everything going in their favor. And then all of a sudden, Bit comes to life. He's been fantastic on this T-side performance. Nico did everything he could. Brought it back to a two-on-two. -two, hit this stunning shot. Oh, my God, what is that? Even on the replay, I actually ah! can't see what he saw. I have no idea how he got that, whatever. But Alexi B clutches out, Anders. If ever there was a time to convert this game and seal away your opponent's pick, this would be it. They have to buy MP9s for masses. Nico taking matters into his own hands with the only rifle. Takes significant damage down to half HP. And Alexi B with the perfect weapon for the job as well. He's got the Mac 10 knowing there won't be a single helmet available for G2 here. Everything has been set up for Na'Vi to end it right here, right now. They've got five rounds in a row so far. Surely they can make it six, unless Monacy can do something unbelievable with the FAMAS in middle. They run into that MAC-10 and they find it for more than a couple of seconds, maybe even more for more than one second. They're going to get their heads popped. You're absolutely right. No helmets. What a disastrous way to get into this round. We'll see they're around the corner trying to degrade their way there through. There it is. There it is. Nexa absolutely exploded it in the corner. Oh, oh no. How does it happen? A barbecue at the A bomb site. Monacy on the double kill. But still, it might not even be enough. Nico low from the earlier grenade and Hooksy. Coming in from the other side, he's real far away from the action. JL, you win this fight, you win this map. 
He set up for it, patiently waiting, just slowly jiggling for it. Nico, the timing is a bit awkward, but it doesn't matter. The one bullet potential there. JL takes him down, and now it's on Hooksy. One versus three. They should never even allow him to get onto the bomb side here. Up at the graveyard, jumping in, shot in the back, and shut down. Navi picking up the map on Inferno. A great team effort. But you have to say there was one individual shining brighter than the others. Bits with a monstrous performance. Catapults Nabi in the lead in this very important best of three. 12 to 9, and he posts 20 frags. A dominating performance just when Nabi needed. The best way to kick off this series for Navi, indeed, stealing Inferno away from G2 and off the back of a very strong offense. I find myself sounding like a, a little bit of a bird, a cockatoo, always talking about, <laughs> okay. hey, what a good T side. Oh, wow, Alexi, great calling. Wow, great problem solving. But it's happening time and time again. And off of a 4 0 start in the defense of G2, they crumbled and let Navi come back. Yeah, and I guess that's why we're praising Alexi B, right? Because every time we do watch them play, we feel like they're getting better and better and better. The T sides are solid. Sometimes the CT sides can struggle a little bit. However, as you can see on the round distribution right here, at the later stages of this game, despite of G2 getting off to a strong CT side, Navi found their rhythm, and at that point, they didn't even let G2 breathe at a single point. We praise G2 for having a very strong CT side. We praise Hunter for being a great CT side player. We praise Monesi for being a great CT side player. We praise Nico for being one of the greatest at playing banana, yet Navi made it look easy. You know, I think that this vision now is a little bit outdated. Yeah. I think it is a little bit outdated in the sense of the one win condition for G2 on the CT side seems to be Monesi being in the right place in the right time. Yeah. And whenever you see G2 stopping offenses, it's when they've called Monesi towards banana and he gets to do his antics with the AWP or when he peeks into middle when the A side is happening. But the truth is, if, if it's not through Monesi on the CT side, the win conditions for G2 are far and few between. I would agree with that. It feels like he's the placeholder. He's the one trying to fill out all the gaps that G2 Let's have in the defense right now. It's been like this for quite some time. I remember us talking about it a couple of days ago as well, where we spoke about, okay, what are some of the potential weaknesses of G2? And we're not quite sure Nexa is the man for the job playing that CT side. I think JK is player for player playing in that position. He's just better, you know, mm. which means Monesi will have to, I guess, attend a little more over towards that bomb side, which then leaves Nico and Hooksy a little bit more vulnerable. So I think there's certain positions right now on the CT side where G2 are, I wouldn't say struggling, but where they're not on par what they used to be. I mean, that's, it's a fair point to make. Towards the end of that game, the A side was being targeted time and time again by Navi, and they did him to G2 in multiple different ways, slowly, fast, running down the clock, different times of splits. We have round 19 that I really wanted to bring forth because I think it's a round that is very hard to execute for Navi. 17 seconds when the pincer move comes in, but you can see how one kill basically turns into a domino of kills. They're one timing away. Monesi maybe could have punished towards long, but the truth is the force, the strength is coming in from quad anyway. So Navi had disguised their attack. They forced G2 into that very passive, on the bomb side, kind of hidden position. And I have to say, the A side of G2 never really knew how to handle these pincer moves. They were, they looked lost in most of these late rounds. I would agree, I would agree. It's also a great example of where you see Blade's vision for Counter-Strike and Elixir B's vision for Counter-Strike melt together. What you saw right there was a classic old Navi round where they would always run down the clock. They would come into the bomb side with 10, 15 seconds left of the round. Not something Elixir B did practice that much in G2, not something he did often in OG either. So that's a bit of a, the Blade DNA within Navi as well. I like how you <laughs> mesh them together sometimes and apparently you get a good Navi playing out of it. And what you also depend on when you're going to run down the clock like that is an entry frag or an ability to have that instant headshot. And Bit mm -hmm. seems to be that guy. We're obviously putting a whole lot of scrutiny around him. We know he's been a little bit hit or miss, but in this game, once again, I think Henry gave him the praises he deserved. Very strong performance from Bit. And again, when I'm, when I'm talking about running down the clock and putting yourself in a dangerous position, you literally rely on a small time to kill window for your players. If people are just spraying and being a little bit all over the place with their shots, it's not going to work out. You need someone to cleanly execute into the side. Bit's been that weapon. He's a turret, and he's been a turret throughout the entire tournament. 180 R in this game as well. That's pretty good. That's very, very impressive coming in from Bit. Now, the thing with him is that we've been seeing him play well in CS2. We saw in Sydney when they were playing with Blade, understand, in the first audition for Navi. He was playing hearts out some beautiful Counter-Strike. Next tournament, he was struggling a little bit. Next tournament, he was all right, then he struggled again. At this tournament so far, he's been consistent more or less in every single game, every single map. That was the type of consistency we saw when he broke into the scene back in 2020, 2021, where he was coming in as this project 
Prodigy who played some beautiful Counter Strike. So I hope we get to see more <laughs> consistent bit. Because if we have Emma playing well, we have Bit playing well, we have Alexa B and Blade all of a sudden fighting each other. Maybe we have a Navi that we can start take seriously when it comes to maybe going deep into playoffs. Well, it's a long list of ifs, but I'm right there with you. I, I definitely there. see all of these win conditions kind of appearing more and more and more, which also explains why we are praising Navi and why we think they're on the upwards trajectory. Uh, back to G2 for a little bit. I would like to give maybe some misplaced praises to Hooksy in the sense of I think he's a very easy target whenever G2 is losing. Okay. You can usually tab in, basically look at the maps and say, ha, he is the one, he is the problem. I think in this game, he calls a pretty decent T side coming back after what was a very complicated start from G2. I think individually, he did pretty okay. You could blame him for maybe a lack of movement on the CT side, but I'm for one thinking that I think players have responsibility all across the board to figure out what the hell to do on the CT side. I think this is how you play the high level CS. And I don't personally think Hooksy was a liability in this map. So I think it's only fair to salute him as well when he's doing more than what we maybe paint him or describe him to do. I 100% agree. It's always easy to, to point at Hooksy. Uh, it's his fault. Yeah, 82 ADRs is not bad. As you said, he kept them alive in the game as well. Had some decent calling, some decent individual output as well. I don't think this was a game down to Hooksy. Again, you're looking to your Nikos, you're looking to watch your Honda as well. Even Nexa, you know, the thing with, with that whole Nexa JKS thing, the more I think about it, you know, the more I think about it, we used to be able to praise JKS for some time being the best player on the server. He would have those games where he would take over the show. He would be the difference maker. Nexa doesn't have that ability. So it's one of those tools that has gone missing from uh, G2. Mm -hmm. And that means there's more responsibility on uh, Monacy, more responsibility on right. Honda more responsibility than Nico, and we all agree Nico hasn't been at the same level, and Honda is far from his CSGO level as well, so it's basically only Monacy at this point who you can rely on showing up every single time, and that's where I feel they miss JKS the most. I would like your opinion on the following. I I'm struggling between two opinions. One is, the CT side was too disjointed from G2, and I think there should be better setups, better synergy between players. And the other side of me thinks, well, maybe that's how you're supposed to play. You just need to have stronger individual. You just need to have your Nexa being able to do more damage in the first line of defense. Because when your defense falls like this, it yeah. just looks like a, a castle of cards. You're like, what the hell am I looking at? But the truth is, is that that different from the very, very top level? Is it not just not about more kills from one position? Like, which, which way are you leaning? I think so. I think we're leaning towards that, you know, a little okay. bit more output individually in, in certain positions. I'm also open to the idea that maybe you bring Nexa to play on the smaller bomb side together with Nico and you bring Hooksy away from that one, or you try to change up the internal positions a little bit. I think I've seen enough now for G2 on the CT side of Inferno to say that they are struggling quite a lot. The T side is still decent, you know, they can still get the job done once in a while, but I don't know what it is. I, I'm just getting to a point where I feel like the more I watch them play, the more I miss JKS. And usually that's not a good thing. It's like going back to your ex at some point where you like, you get a distance relationship to that one. And then the more you miss her, the more you're away from him, the more you want to go back and usually match you. It's not a good idea. Well, guys, if you have some trouble in your relationship and seductions, just make sure to tweet at Jacob. Apparently, he's got plenty of takes on that one. Not for free. Um, we'll get back in a few minutes. I don't really know where this is going, but I know we're going to a break. Map two after that.
Hunter, I would say the start to the season individually on your skill side, right, has not been probably where we saw you end last year with. I wanted to see, maybe you know a reason for that, what's going on? I mean, it's CS2, like, since the CS2 came out, I'm not performing how I want to perform and uh, how people expect me to perform. I'm trying my best, I'm working to, to, to be better as much as I can and my teammates are helping me, so hopefully I will be better today and start. Let, let, let's start today. A better hunter is obviously what G2 is hoping to see. He himself, of course, has higher expectation for him. Yeah. And he's one of these players where when he's doing what he's supposed to do, he might not be the headline of the newspaper because other people are going to be taking that kind of light. We're talking about Monacy, we're talking about Nico. But the truth is, mm -hmm. when Hunter is missing and CS2 has not been kind to him, G2 definitely has a little bit of instability to it. Especially when there's no JKS in the lineup. We just spoke about it before. They, they did take away individual skill and replace it with maybe better mood, you know, more energy in Nexa. But when Honda is not playing well, then you're right. There's, there's a lot of responsibility on towards Nico and, and Monacy. I can't help to feel that the play style Honda is having within the game is not suited for CS2 yet. It's a lot about swinging, little less about holding angles, etc., etc. That's where he was very good, especially CT side on Inferno. Usually also Mirage, he would show up, but it just haven't been the same Honda for the past couple of months and I'm I'm sorry for that you know I hope he gets back on his right level but right now it's not looking great well you said the key word Jacob you talk about Mirage this is where we are going into this map too and I don't want to be too dramatic okay. I know that losing this game does not send you to showdown you have another chance tomorrow that's granted but the fact of the matter is 2024 and Mirage for G2 has mm. not been that great we're talking about six rounds won in two games in two games? In two games. Two games. Uh, I believe Guild Eagles rounds. and Sprout. Yes. 13 to 3, 13 to 3 defeat. So it's been a little bit complicated. It's been rough around the edges. But the truth is, Navi haven't really played the map too, too much. When CS2 came out, they attacked it a whole lot, played it in Sydney a bunch, had a, some good results rather here and there. But we are yet to see how they look like right now. And if I'm trying to find a silver lining, the way Alexi B out called G2 on the T side of Inferno, I don't know if that fits Mirage. I think Mirage is a bit more messy, skirmishy, okay. slightly less tactical, slightly less on timings. So maybe this could be a way for G2? Uh, maybe, maybe. I'm, uh, I'm worried. I'm worried, I'm not gonna lie. One of the things Alexi B did super well when he was in G2 and when he was in OG as well was his B executes. And I think he's going to find a bit of a weakness over towards that B side from G2. Hunter playing on short, as we spoke about, haven't had the best time. The B anchor as well. He's going to need to have a, a wonderful time in order to make up for that loss. I think Alexi B is going to hit G2 with a lot of B executes, both fast, but mm. also late in the rounds. And if they can handle that, that could be it. That could be the one thing that's going to open up this game. It's the, the anchors on the side of G2 that, that could be a little bit complicated. You're right. If you think about Hooksy on the B side, if you think about Nexa on A as well, like yeah. these are positions like we know how much pressure can be put on them. So G G2's back is now firmly against the wall. Navi put themselves in a very favorable position, winning that map of Inferno at the very beginning. They're now 13 rounds away from the Spring Finals and would be considered an upset. I leaving you in the very capable hands of Enders and Henry G. Oh, you're too kind there, Matthew. We'll do our best. We'll see what we can do with this one as the long road to London comes to its uh, logical conclusion now. We've got a couple more days left to play, five more slots available, and one of these two teams will be taking them. It's Na'Vi putting their best foot forward on the first map. We move on to Mirage now, where G2 are not known to be specialists as of late. Hunter has been struggling this series, been struggling this tournament. He's struggling with CS2 in general. They're in a lot of trouble right now as Na'Vi are the favorites to close things out. Yeah, a lot for them to pick up. The ultra almost even at the start, but now you can tell they're tilted towards Navi. That's over in GG bet. And it makes sense the way that this has been playing out uh, for the minutes. Um, really, a pro potentially a tough second map that's coming up here for G2. We'd have to see a massive resurgence individually, and they need to shut down Navi early off the bat here. We know that Navi are going to be good on this one. So, yeah, G2, they might have to take the long road to London if this keeps going. Here we go then. The map pick up Na'Vi to close it all out. For us to start believing in this project without simple, of course. Everyone was so excited when this team was announced about losing their star player. A very capable replacement in the form of Wonderful. It's taken some time to come online. But here they are, one map away from the Spring Finals in London. Happening in June. Get your tickets now. As it will be G2. Starting on the CT side, seven guns in their defensive setup. Two sets of dual elites. No defuse kit. The analyst talked about the execution potential of Na'Vi. They'll have a, a slight execution here. They're going to have a smoke and a couple of flashes. 
Where the smoke lands is yet to be seen. Right now, two people, if nothing else, are going to be in front of that smoke, right? It'll just be Nexa at most. You can throw that really cool new smoke that you can't even really be on top of the ticket booth. Yeah, that, that lands on the CT spawn boxes. Yeah. Could be that one, could be landing a connector. A few options here. Yeah, it's going to be towards connector instead. So a very, very tricky fight coming out. Three people on the bottom side. Monacy. Alexi didn't even know what hit him, but the return is even better. Wow. Wonderful. Two shots and two kills coming up for him. Hooksy and Hunter trying to take it closer to the bomb side here, but they need some really swift frags to even get close to this one. I doubt if it's possible any longer, although Hunter's made a great case for himself. Hooksy also doing some work. The Dooley's actually finding the kills. This is a bit awkward now. Running out of time oh. here. JL just around the corner. 99 damage. Can you believe it, Anders? Hunters had to waste so much time trying to get close to him, and now they need a quick kill. Bear in mind, it's planned for connector. You just got to hold on to it. Oh, we can't see it. Uh-oh. Oh, no, he's given it up. I can't believe it. He thought it was. I thought it was. He could have jumped down. He could have tried to run for it up connector, but instead, he takes the long shot there, and he's unable to stop the bomb from getting defused. What a retake. That's what a two versus four with dualies, and they actually make it work. Oh, that is a nightmare for Na'Vi. Look how hard they had to work. They get three kills on the A site, a clean plant. You've got them on the back foot. And you let them back into it. Oh, that's blowing my eardrums out, but I'm here for it. Well done to Hooksy. Yeah, who needs, who needs hearing anyway? Well, that throws a spanner in the works. Like you said, there was almost no chance of them winning that one. That's a fumbled round from Na'Vi. A fantastic result for G2. They, they had no business winning that one. We go 1-0, but the bomb, of course, was planted. Wonderful with multiple frags can justify an AK-47. It has meant he doesn't have a helmet. Up against these M4s and MP9s could be problematic here. Very important round. G2 need to start building some momentum here after giving up Inferno, their map pick. Yeah, and again, we heard the stats from the analysts there about just how dreadful of a time they've had at playing this particular map, G2. So... If they can keep it going, if they can get off to an explosive start, who knows, something could still happen, but... The outlook is a little bit bleak at the moment. Oh, Emma. I don't know how, but he finds the shot. He takes down Nico. Start of the round here. Nexa, long range, but might have a chance. He's going to get the one kill. Still a single player on the bomb side. Hunter, with a lot of work to do. I think he was almost getting shot by his team there. He wants a double. A little bit greedy, perhaps. <laughs> oh, but it's not no, out. Hunter God. denied the double. Oh, he tried everything there to get the absolute most out of the scenario. Hooks, he can still win this, though. There's a world. But he is smoked off for now with no kit. He's got an incendiary as he bides his time, calculating his options here, discussing with his teammates. You can see Monacy being very vocal, giving him some suggestions here. It would have to be one hell of an incendiary. If he throws it on default, he will flush out the first player. But options... He's oh, very time. limited, and I think it's done. You're right, I'll have to say the AK-47. And it's two kills a bit once again, carrying on with that amazing form we saw in Inferno. Imma with the all-important kill on Nico as well, through the smoke. Yeah. Upgrade to a rifle, gets a second kill, and Hunter, the most heartbreaking play you're ever going to see, really. He had everything going for him. Very high IQ moment, but when the spray... Started rattling off. He only connects with one. It, this is the moment. It's as soon as he clicks his mouse, the player moves forward in that very second. Otherwise, it's probably a straight, just instant kill. And he can get the second one. The timing, I, I, to some extent, just very ridiculous from his point of view. Okay, well, they got the AK. They got the dualies. They got two MP9s and a C set 75 on Hunter. Gotta say, it's one of the better CZ75 players that's kind of still around. Third round here, and already Alexi putting some pressure on the bomb side. Imma, again, finding Nico this time at top mid, able to take him down. And look a bit. Look a bit. He has been phenomenal. A lot of nice oh. <laughs> movement into the bomb side, JL. It's like Ill. you're wearing the wrong uniform. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> He confirms the round. There's nothing G2 can say about this one now. 
And that, that's like the, the worst case scenario. We always mention this in CS2, especially win the pistol, lose the second round follow up, try and save some weaponry here. But Alexi B's on the hunt with the MAC 10, rightly so. Yeah, just save the, that's the, the prime objective. MP9, sure as well if you can, but that AK is pretty valuable for them at the current stage. Will be a two to one scoreline. And again, we're sort of we're sort of weaving a dream scenario for G2. If they can win the pistol, if they go on to like have a good start, and maybe, and you know, a lot of contingencies, and if this happens, and so on and so forth. But the fact that they win the pistol and go straight on to lose like this is devastating. They do save a little. So they will have to do a lot with the saved MP9 and dual elites. That is all they've got. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the saying of every middle manager: do more with less, right? <laughs> um, on, team, I, I don't even know. Oh, they actually, to be fair, they did find an AK. I didn't catch that at the end. So maybe there's something to be said. Monacy, the kind of player that can have this impact, he did it on Inferno as well, right? It was the Glocks and an AK-47. He found the initial incisions. That was on the T side, however. Difficult to carry the round on the CT side when you're defending. You can't dictate the pace of the round. Yeah, we fired half the workforce, but we expect to double the output for the for the year. Good luck, guys. <laughs> A lot of that going around right now. <laughs> Especially in our industry. Yeah, the esports winter a little bit. We'll be it's back just longer. gaming winter in general, it feels gaming like. Gaming winter, yeah, you're the right. The whole industry's been gutted. Tech winter as well. Tech companies yeah. getting slaughtered. AI's taken over. And it's starting okay. here at Blast as well with the AI predictor. It's a first sign yeah, of things right. to come. We'll get it. Nico's been fired from the round as well. <laughs> Wonderful. He tapped him once. He clicked him away. Doink. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Hooks, he's going to be very low on health. They know where he is. No real threat there. Monacy, that long saved AK gets absolutely nothing done. Wonderful. Just cleaning his way through the bomb site. And Hooksy going to be found. It's a flawless round coming out here from Na'Vi. They're loving life for the moment. This is just, this is just looking very, very overpowering. Look at this. Goodbye. Yeah. Wonderful. We're learning more about this player. I don't think many people have talked about his rifling potential very much in the past. No. But today, we saw a three versus one on the B-bomb side of Inferno. He has had pixel-perfect precision here on Mirage, looking very capable. Another one of these top-tier snipers that can do it all, which you kind of have to at this level these days. Yeah, it's it's important. I think uh, also another skill to have, unless you're like one of very, very few snipers, is also to kind of know when to stop by and the orb if it isn't working, right? If you're having a day where you're just not really connecting with it, if you can switch into an M4 or an AK instead and that works really well, then that can be, that can be a good follow-up, right? Probably some players where you would say they always have the ability somehow. But every once in a while, it, it might just be better to, to swap out if you're not feeling it. Speaking of snipers and one of those, Monacy, never a time where you don't want to see the AWP on him. And he's got it in this one. A lot of weight on his shoulders as they're down a couple of rounds here and feeling uncomfortable on Mirage once again. The analysts discuss this, Anders. Alexi B loves to execute on these bomb sites, especially when he's got the financial advantage. It's a stifling execution. Nico goes down with nothing. Same story for Nexa. They are struggling. If Monacy hits that shot, maybe there's a way to fight back into it, but absolutely not this time. Ran over by the utility. Zero damage inflicted by G2. They just roll over and die in round number five. How is that even possible? Because that execution was sick. You're just traversing and the entire bomb site. They had found so much space and scaled into the bomb site. As the smokes were blooming, the flashbangs were so overwhelming. CTs wall munching in the back, and Imma given the difficult task of finding a few kills here on the save. If he gets this one, amazing. He's really hammered at home, but I think that's enough. That will call the end of the hunt. 4 1, though. That XCB has got them eating out of the palm of his hand. Nico with zero kills at the start. He, he is having a rough time. one. He is getting first death every single round. Yeah. He like they're playing a very passive game. They have no swagger, zero riz. You would say. <laughs> um, we're not seeing them push top or middle. They're just like the back of these yeah. bomb sites, waiting to be taken down. 
Whereas Navi, on the other hand, they're... Oh, that's so sick. So they Molotov those positions, wait for the CT to reside in the smoke. They think they're safe, then they nade on top of it yeah. and blow it open. Ooh. That's all by design. Exposed. This is, we're starting to see CS2 come to fruition now. Yeah, and the timing on those, on those kind of plays, it's so tight, right? You have a lot of time to actually pull it off, so it's been enjoyable. Yeah, that's a super technical kill there. Like the fact they've coordinated that, like if they do defend themselves with the smoke, we blow it open. We've got a player ready and waiting with the crosshair on that smoke. Very smart. And we've got a 4-1 lead, but not out of the woods just yet. The money is relatively okay, considering they saved three weapons there and fended off the hunt in the previous round. Speaking of hunt, his hunter. He's towards short right now, delivers a nade towards underpass. Five on five, but more of a default spread this time from Na'Vi. They need to really wake up. G2. Can't afford to sleep their way through the first part of this map. Nice oh. shot, wonderful taking down Nico. He's zero and six. He is having a rough one. Yeah. Honestly, though, when there's a will, there's a way. He can recover these sort of scenarios, as demonstrated by that fantastic shot over to Mr. Wonderful. But the CS2 mechanics ringing true once again. Monacy, a lot of pressure coming his way. Doesn't hit that one, and they've got some space to plan now. And he knows they're coming up from connector. He can't stick around. There's a huge threat that they're going to be really close to him. So. Another four versus three, and another escape here from G2. They've already called it around. They don't want to stick around any further. Okay. Uh, Joe, uh, no, this is such a bad idea. Yeah. You, you get that kill. It's so early on. They line up oh, for the no. kill. Emma, double headshot as they throw away rifles. And the AWP. And the AWP as well. Oh, that that's always the worst thing. You and I have had this conversation yeah. so many times. You get one of those kills. Everyone's like, hold on. Maybe. And then you go through the position. It's called Murder Hole for a reason. It is called Murder Hole for a reason. <laughs> they forgot about it. Oh, nice shot from Hunt. A little bit of a spray down here, but they lose every single rifle. I don't know. This is looking very grim. I, uh, G2, I don't know I don't know why they made that call. They've been, been hitting the Benjamin too hard. <laughs> Benjamin buttoned out of their mind. <laughs> Emma, he can't believe his luck. It's a little bit of a, a hollow victory at the end with all five players going down, but the money is going to be so low for G2. It shouldn't be much of an issue here. Alexi B actually probably happy with that. He gets to bring out the MAC-10 once again. Smoke down. Yeah. And towards B we go. This will be that execution the analysts were discussing. Over towards B. This is where you just have to really appreciate Alexi and how much he's just in control of this, right? He doesn't have a lot of kills in this game right now, but... He's absolutely wrecking G2 with the calls left and right. Ooh, last There's bullet. one, and that's plenty enough. No defense on the bomb side. They could just save again. And there's no reason for them even to show up to the bomb side, really. This is, I mean, maybe you can try and lock them in, sacrifice some of these, some of these pistols for an AK or two if you feel really good about it, but you're not going to be winning the round. Six to one for Navi. A suffocating start to Mirage. Oh. oh my days. Someone needs to throw in the towel. They're not defending themselves out there. Yeah. True. You can't, Where's the referee? You can't knee people once they're on the ground. <laughs> like you gotta you gotta stop. Alright, Hunter. Maybe you can steal away something here. They're gonna check it though. Oh, are they? Okay. He's got a smoke. Ah, oh, that's a four. I was going to say, I'm not sure. Is the ladder room safe on B-bomb side? I don't think so. We know now. <laughs> we know now for sure. Um, there we have it. Nice attempt there from Hunter. Keeps him modest at the very least. It wasn't a completely open shut case. He gets two CZ kills towards the end. But it will be 6-1 on the T side of Mirage as Na'Vi making fantastic progress towards London. About halfway there now. Second time out. Taz, what have you got for us? That partial buy led them to nothing. They've got maximum loss bonus. Now, bear in mind, Anders, G2, believe it or not, won the pistol. And they're 6-1 down. Nico, yet to frag, he's 007 right now. And it was... <laughs> oh, no. Mr. Bond has arrived. You don't see it too often from him. Oh, no, you don't. Really rare that you get a, a, a truly bad game out of Nico. But they have, they're shocked on this one. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to recover. Navi just having themselves a party. They're just, they're enjoying themselves way too much. 
Couple of shots from Nico just as he's been cleared of smoke with a rifle. Alexi sneaking on through. Grenade touches him a little bit. Not a big deal if he can take this space. Look at how far oh, that he is. God. That's a lot of space. That's unbelievable. They've got the opening frag and Alexi B in one Wait. of the most prominent positions on the map of the T side. Did he wallbang Hunter? I think he did. I think I think Bit just absolutely yeah, wallbanged him. Yeah, I think you're right. No. That was the word short, wasn't it? Say it ain't so. I think you're exactly right. Yeah. Oh, there's the evidence. Well spotted, Anders. We've got the CSI crew out yeah. looking for bullet Enhance. holes. Enhance. Oh, God. <laughs> and that's the only player that's fragging right now. Hunter's, Hunter's at the top of eight and five. And that's the way he goes down. If we can catch that replay, I know it's a, a tall order, but please, let's try and get it. He just crushed it now. He, just... okay, so he had to, I see what's happening. He's yeah. got no helmets. So he must have just caught him in the head. I like first put it on the spray, yeah. then finished him off. Oh my that's why I don't think I've I've probably seen it before, but I can't it's recall. Rare. All right, there's a dink, but not much of one. Looks like he thinks he's probably done 80 damage, but no, 25. Talk about those B splits, and Im has gone down. Okay. Leveling the playing field here. Four and four. Navi. Yeah, but all the danger is here, right? Hooksy, Nico at the bomb site. They're alone. The backup is never going to get here. They either defend this and win, or they're going to be saving the round once again. They can Hooksy, just can't get here in time. Hooksy trying to stay alive. 15 seconds left where the headshot is there. And again, they're blocked out. A two on three. Maybe you try and throw Monacy in. It's a massive risk to lose this AWP. But again, you're so far behind right now that you're in desperate territory. You've got to try something. Um, You haven't got a kit, though. What can you do? No, I don't think you can do anything, unfortunately. There's another round when Na'Vi just so far ahead in every way that matters. Wonderful taking down Nexa. Monacy kills. He can't win the round, but he try and do it a little bit more. Seven to one. This is just Navi at this stage twerking their way through the second map. Hey, this looks too easy. Let's have a look. Oh god, yeah, right in the head. He invited it himself. That's oh, he's not he's not even mad. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, whatever, I guess. Like one of those games. G2 it is so flat here. I, I've seen nothing that's inspired any sort of confidence that they can pull this one back. Like it's very default rounds. No one's taking initiative. There's no aggression. Uh, no one's really popping off. They, they've non done nothing since the pistol. The money's wrecked again. They need to steal one of these rounds, Anders. This has to go in their favor. To reignite this team, they need to find some deagle shots. 7-1. Oh, God. That's, why are they doing him like that? <laughs> get that off the screen. <laughs> He'll get a kill. They've done him dirty. Get it off. Oh, Thank you. That's funny. Um, yeah. I mean, he, everyone in their career at some point or another has to have one of these games. Happens to everybody. I've seen I've seen games where Simple has zero kills and a half. Hey. And it, it's happened. Problem is, Nico's got six ADR. Like, he's he's really struggling out there. He's not even getting any bullets off before he goes down. That's the problem. All right. Down but not out. They can find three rounds total. There's still a chance, but... Let's see if they can get anything done here. Nico, if you're going to wake up and arrive in the second map, we need it to be right now. Yeah, had a real chance here with the Deagle shot. He misses that one. Being able to just duck under it. And now the rest of them are starting to show up. Monacy, the only one to answer back yet. He's got eight kills. But he's not going to be getting another one in this one. Yeah, that gives, kill so far. that gives up the information as to where Hooksy resides. Hunter's in a smoke or something. Where is he? Oh, there's so many like little opportunities yeah. that aren't coming to fruition. But uh, Nico looked like he was good for the initial kill. Doesn't land again. Hunter swings out, could deny the plant. Oh, dinks him, doesn't quite get the kill. It's really unfortunate. Is there a chance that they've put blanks in all his guns? So Maybe, it's a yeah. Banter, you know, like Honestly, a funny joke. It looks like it. So that was the partial buy. They will have money again. We've got to start seeing some confidence here. Nico is down 0 9. Oh, this is rough. About as rough as it possibly gets. Let's fucking go. Alexi's in his element. 
We talk about some of the careers, some of these players, but Lexi's had a really long journey here we go. to get here. Anders, we're seeing some yes. initiative. Oh, the flashbang comes out, though. The counter flash is so good. And of course, it had to be Nico, the first victim in the middle. It's so painful. Wonderful. Landing a good shot, but at least Hooksy. There to reply. Still, the pressure is on. The A bomb side is under attack once again. Monacy, good little flick here to take down Bit, and it's a three versus three. Alexi, he's hearing it. He knows who one of them is. They know where Monacy is. As well. oh! It doesn't matter. He's so lightning fast, isn't he? Otherwise, the position for Alexi there was pretty sick. That's the bomb as well. Hoxie takes down Immer, and there's trouble now. Navi alone is JL. This should be their round. Monacy and Hooksy, the ones to carry them through it. That should seal the deal. Detected and wounded is JL. 8-1 is the scoreline. They have to convert this round. I can't even picture a world where JL finds a kill here. The G2 are known to give up some disastrous situations sometimes. He knows there's a, a chance he can have a slight bit of impact, maybe a kill, maybe two. Keep the morale as low as possible, right? Just whatever you could do here. Take the AKs out of their hands. Something like that. Yeah, it all counts. It really does. 20 seconds. So, yeah, no chance of winning the round. Bomb is just so far away from any other sites here. Got to turn his back, and Nexa will be able to pick up a second kill of the game for Nexa. Did Nico get his first yet? No. He died at the start right here. Oh. Okay, well, at least they managed to stick the landing. They won the pistol, we, we, Henry. Finally, we, yeah, that's true. That is true. But bear in mind, we, they've been so conservative on the CT side so far. They've done. They've not initiated any pushes. They've had no real set pieces on the CT side. But now, there it is. They, they, they lose the first kill, but they convert the round. We'll take it. Round 11, penultimate round of this first half. We said three would do. One more round until that total. Nico, still happy. To go toe to toe, oh god, you just, I, don't, I don't want to say, I'm not going to say it. It's fine, Hooksy is playing well. He can bring this one back. Yeah, Hunter. Oh, maybe he can't. They've got the four beep on side. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like kills is one thing, but the fact that Alexei is just having absolutely free reign of what's going on on the map. Like, wherever he puts the troops, it's pretty much the right call every single time. They get the entries they need. Every afterplant looks on, impossible, Hooksy. although Hooksy. Yeah, do, do more. You can't really, I mean, you can't save any longer. Three versus three. This is one of the best chances you're going to get. A bit off angle. Very, very hard to clear out of here. One good flash might do it, but it's going to be the spray down. Bit with a headshot to take down Hooksy. Continuing. Oh, again. Nexa is next in line. Yeah. Steal it away again. The heartbreak continues. Oh. Navi on nine. They saved him on a CAWP at the very least. Final round coming up next. What an absolute disaster. Nico, you got to give it to him. Like, he's, he's trying, to, he's throwing everything he's got at them. Yep. But he goes down to 0 11 now. One more round. Bit. And the problem is, they got that one kill from Hooks here. And again, it invites him into the bomb side, Anders. They lose two frags. Oh, they save the orb, sure, but would have liked a lot more. I'm going to say the same thing. Go on. That we said it for uh, we said it for vitality, right? Have this game now if you're Nico and not at Katowice or not at the major. Double or setup here for the CT side as G2 try everything they can to get a third round of the board. It's very tricky for them right now. Nexa will get one there. Monacy wiped out. The spray continues. Bit back with another double kill. Three versus four. And grenades are raining down. Nico having to do any kind of damage at all right now. Can he get a kill in the round? He's certainly trying. Oh, God. Might have to be through the smoke. Whatever it takes. Whatever it requires at this there point There we go. Time. There it is. He's taken down Emma. A bit of redemption for him. And a three versus three. Bomb delayed on the plant. Not getting it yet either. Yeah, Nico's giving them something to work with here. It's going to be difficult to get this bomb planted. Hooks, he's got the AWP in towards CT spawn. Three on three with bits. Two frags, sure, but he's only got 18 points of health. We're sub one minute. Who will make the next move? There's no further utility on the T side. Apart from a flash and an HE, they can't segregate the bomb site. Waiting for a mistake. Who will blink first? Wonderful. 
goes down. A missed shot slips by the wayside. Should be enough here. We said three would be enough. But JL with a sensational sequence with the AK-47 knows exactly where Hunter resides. They've had a disgusting half so far. They need this one to go in Hunter's favor. He sneaks out of the smoke. Surely out positions him. And when there's a will, there's a way. It wasn't a pretty half, but at least they post three. G2 on the back foot. We said they had to get three rounds. At least that dream is realized. The second half will be an uphill battle to say the very least. Let's get into it, shall we? It's, it's, it looks like an impossible task that's ahead of them right now. Individually, they haven't really shown up. I mean, I think Hunter and Monacy tried to do a little bit here, right? 11 and eight kills, or actually eight kills on Hooksy, 10 on Hunter. So they had a couple of players, but obviously it was a dreadful first half here. Now the... They're just a couple of steps away from making their way into London. We'll see if they can it's, do it on the CT side. It's never that easy, though. Okay, I like it. Nothing is guaranteed. Skepticism. Nothing is locked in in CS2 especially. G2 yeah. with five players here on the A side of the map. Talk about execution potential. Double smokes, Molotovs as well. No CT presence and no kit. They've made the right call. Bit blowing up in the smoke. Not even trying for the damage with the grenade, but it's Monacy on the return instead. That creates the space, that creates a bit of room for them to put the bomb down. Four versus five. There's no kit in play at the moment. This should be G2's round every single time. Jail quick with the return. Four on four, but again, the clock is really ticking against them. Oh, and now there, there comes he is. Nico. Couple of good kills. He's absolutely yeah, rocked him in this one. Again, individually, he had one kill in the first half, so picking up a couple here, whatever it takes, just get him back online. 
Down but not out. G2, very impressive pistol. Full execution. Found an open sight. Nico triples his frag count in one round. Let's see whether they can keep it going. There will be a full eco up next for Na'Vi. Just a few rounds away from booking their place at the Spring Finals in London. Be stack. If they lose this one, Anders, Don't. I'm done. I'm out. You're on, you have to do this alone. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's reasonable. I'll carry you through the rest of it if it happens. But it looks like they've managed to chew up a little bit of a stack going on. They did lose a couple of players, Jail and Bit, with a kill each, but they survive the stack cap. Well, we get to keep you around, Henry. I'm happy about that's that. That's true. I didn't want to lose you so soon. <laughs> that was the full eco. We do have the buy coming in for Navi next. G2, though, this is what they had to do. Convert those two rounds. Need the third as well. Need momentum. You can see that gap is closing rapidly. 9-5 now. M4s deployed. Galil's in the hand of Hooksy and Nexa. Helmet watch as usual. There's only one in play. So the Galil's very potent in this particular round. Yeah, definitely something that now we have to keep the back of their minds too. Don't take too many crazy fights, even if it's clearly hearing on the other side. Bomb dropped further back, which is quite standard. Alexi giving us a masterclass on how to call that T side. We'll find out if Hooksy can show some of the same flair here. Nade going down to the top of connector. But a nice little boost going on over the other side. I kind of like this. Alexi making the jump up. I don't think they have any idea. Hunter up on the bench here, but he's not even looking for that elevated position. So the flashbang, oh, it's a long and difficult spray, but the idea was good. Still works out for him or on the other side. A bit of a crossfire setup, and they absolutely tear it apart in the middle. G2 left with just Nico and 45 seconds here. Everyone knows Nico, he'll often be found in the palace. If he's the last player remaining on the T side of Mirage, you can take an educated guess. That's where he'll be residing. Ah, oh, that momentum I, I spoke about. They did need to carry that forward. Doesn't yeah. work out for them. Wasn't a very close round in the end. They try to get through connector. They get a couple of kills, but JL, wonderful working in tandem, mowing them down, applying pressure from short and connector. Final time out here for G2. And you know, honestly, also a good position for Navi to be in, right? They had two at Catwalk. They were trying to do the boost. They had two on the other side of Connect. That's four people in the middle. So a good read in that sense for the CTs to kind of guess that it was going to be some mid control coming out from G2. Is it all said and done, Anders? Time will tell. G2 won't have a whole lot in terms of resources. Honestly, the, the problem is obviously the, the scoreline is a problem. But it's more like the flat feeling that's coming out here for G2. If if they had oh, their eco. a little bit more umph here, then I would say, yeah, you can you can make back a 10-5 scoreline, right? But it's it's the it's that strange feeling. This is Taz's call. He he called that timeout. They're looking death straight in the face. And they've taken a Glock eco. Objective here, get the bomb down. Maybe saying Hooksy, you drop the ult from Honesty next round, and then we'll win from there. He's got a lot of money, Hooksy. Yeah, true. They get 1,900 next round, so he could... He could bring it out. Yeah. It's a shot. He can get Kevlar and the AWP, swap it with Monacy. I think that's a very wise and informed decision they've made. Oh, so close to getting a kill there. Again, just get something. Change the atmosphere on the team if you can at all. JL up above, sending them to the graves. Three kills for him in this one, as Navi get to 11 rounds. They're two away from booking a second spot, second spot here in London, right? We already have Vitality sent there. Yep. We're looking for more. Plenty more action after this series as well, ladies and gentlemen. I would say the headline fixture of the day. Liquid versus FaZe coming up next. Yes. That is going to be so much fun. I'm excited for that game. Yeah, that's going to be great. Then we've got Virtus Pro versus Big. Well, that's going to be a slow-paced game, to say the least. Yeah. But it uh, should be pretty good. Big actually looking much better this tournament as it's gone on. Mantu was out of yep. control yesterday. He was, was so sick to see really him good. play. 
I was they, hyped they, up. They 2-0 to Cloud9. They, that yeah. was... No one saw that coming. Like, Big have been pretty woeful this year, um, but they're on the comeback. Let's get back into this one, though. Yeah. All of the work still ahead of G2. So Monacy did get that AWP, as you mentioned. Yeah, I think that's part of the decision-making here. Maybe it's also Taz kind of wanting the team. It's early on in this in this team, right? So you want to have them rely on the default. You don't want exactly. to have to just go crazy. You want to and... stick to the game plan rather than Hail Marys. Yeah. Because, again, they have a whole year to build into here, so... Well, that gives up the fact Monacy's got the orb. That's going to change the dynamic of the round here. He doesn't get the opening pick. Time is ticking. Emma in towards that connector. Completely smoked off. They start to try and get into said connector themselves. Yeah, they're kind of... Oh, he's in the window, my bad. Rotating a little bit closer, though, on the CT side. Smoke up towards the A ramp. We'll see if Wonderful wants to take a look, but it's Alexi going down early. Monacy, that's a really, really important shot. Deep in towards the B bomb site. Bit will take down Nico in return, though, and now they're trying to push her. That's the bomb all the way committed towards the benches. Monacy, yeah, he's doing great work on the wrong side of the map at the moment. Hunter gets one more. 19 seconds left, and a two versus one now. Trying to see if he can make his way back. Hunter, he's got the first one. He's got 10 seconds left. Tries to put up that Molotov, but Immer's in the middle. Both players here with a couple of kills each, and Hunter making a jump. He comes back for more, trying to catch Immer off guard, but now swapping out for the M4. Four Diffuse might be on the cards here. We'll have a look. Immer is willing to challenge in towards CT spawn 1v1. This is for map point. Oh my god, he still gets it. He was going for the full defuse. He was! I can't believe it. he how? committed to it. He should have been dead. I, I don't even know how he gets the gun out in time. What? Emma, three kills. I need a replay from his point of view. How does that work? I have no idea, bro. <laughs> like, he's going for the full defuse. Hunter made the correct call. He challenges him. How does he get the shot off? I actually don't know. I, I, <laughs> I have no idea. I need a replay. Oh, oh I feel sick for Hunter. It's ticking, he's he's listening. Full diffuse, he's committed to it. Oh, we have to find, somebody has to find that from Emma's point of view. Yeah, let's get on it. Um, well, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we might have our second team for London already decided. Wonderful, we'll crack things open. Emma trying to close them down. Three frags found. G2 have rolled over and died here on Mirage. Not their best look. A pretty shambolic performance. Couldn't get things going. Showed no signs of confidence on the CT side. And now, poor old next up. He'll have to win a one versus five in dings in the process. I think we know which way this one is going now. Na'Vi, congratulations. They are the next team on their way to the Spring Finals in London. A fantastic team effort throughout. They 2-0 G2 once again. Very convincing performance. Nico, un didn't even arrive here on Mirage today. The team will have to come back tomorrow and try their luck once again. But for now, the next floor goes to Na'Vi. It is going to be a day to forget for G2 Esports and for Nico specifically. There is no way around it. But I refuse to make this all about a failure. I would much rather celebrate Na'Vi yeah. and the Counter-Strike they've put forth once again. They keep surprising us. Maybe that's not even the right term to put through. Very strong Inferno, able to steal it away from G2. And here in command, absolutely outclassing their opponent on Mirage. I think without a doubt, this is the best we've seen from Na'Vi in a very long time. Without a doubt, it's the best we've seen from Na'Vi with this current iteration, with this current roster. Ash you said in control from start to finish sure you can argue the first map could have gone both ways a little bit it was t2's map pick but here in mirage it was navi all over alexi b had a game plan the players mm. had an idea of what they wanted to do and then executed that to perfection yeah we've been speaking about t2 struggling a bit lately but taking down g2 2-0 in this fashion that's a massive result for navi who then qualifies for the spring finals they are in london indeed jacob you are right and you know what g2 being so absent pisses me off just a little bit okay. because i don't know if i have to take something away from navi and i don't want to i want to say that this is just great counter-strike great calling i want to celebrate bit wonderful for having these performances but at the same time i have to address the elephant in the room when you have nico who has a historically bad map the rest of the team look dejected this this is something that we have to consider right i don't think ignoring it is the right way to go 
Both things can be true at the same time, Matthew. Both things can be true. I think G2 played a horrible game of Counter-Strike. I think the man on his screen had a map he wants to forget, and sometimes that is going to happen. That doesn't take away the fact that Na'Vi did an extendingly well-fine, polished job, and they made it very, very tough for G2 from start to finish. You're absolutely right. And one of the heroes wearing the Na'Vi jersey, I'm sure a full smile on his face is JL talking to Bex right now. Na'Vi are our next team through to London, and you've done it in style of the rematch against G2. Now, if people have not been following his social media, he had a sign of G2 and a massive jump and stamp. Can you do the jump? Soup. Okay, that's pretty high, that's pretty high. You can get the jump up high, but this was a huge win, mate, and this was a dominant victory. Things are really clicking for you guys, though. You were very happy when Mirage came into play? Of course. Uh, I mean, Mirage, we know, is not the best map for them. Uh, that's why they opted to ban Mirage on their first game. Overpass is a tough map for us as well, but uh, they, they felt confident. They thought maybe in the rematch we're gonna get him, but Mirage is our map and you shouldn't uh, mess with us. <laughs> you shouldn't mess with Na'Vi or Mirage, okay. But let's look at the great start to the year and what you guys wanted here. How does this feel overall going into future events coming up? It feels great. I, I feel like we've gained a lot of confidence. And you know, of course, confidence comes from preparation and the actual in-game skill and your ability to win games. And we're feeling confident and no matter who you put against us, vitality phase, I think we can be either really competitive or beating them. So things are coming together for Na'Vi? Fuck yes. <laughs> we'll end on that. Thank you very much, Joe. Oh, my man. JL with the words and with the good vibes, and you can understand it very much so. Qualified for the Spring Finals, of course, they are joining Vitality. He said, you know what, on a good day, maybe we can mess with Vitality. We're going to have to see the yellow logos already strong in the Spring Final. That is here, the schedule, what you have seen today. Of course, we witnessed Vitality with an incredible game versus Astralis, and now Navi made easy work of G2 Esports. That's not all for the Counter-Strike. It's all for us. It's time for me to enjoy myself, put on the slippers, watch some kind of strike while Tech Girl and Bubsky take you in a few minutes. Bye. Okay, go. Try to shoot. It's crazy what I have. Good? Is it in Blast Map Pool? No. Has it ever been like in the active competitive map pool? Yes. It could be Cobble, it could be Train, it could be Dust2, it could be Cash, it could be... What what are the green maps? Cash is a green and uh, Cobblestone is green. So we just... Is it a green, a green map? Cash and Cobblestone yeah. are green, so that's one, two, two, one. Okay. Two. You have seven questions left, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Is it Cobble? Yes. What I have? You not even in your head, you know. You cannot believe that it's <laughs> what's written. Bro, it's this in sniper position. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking as well. Same, same. It's chicken cook. Power. Is it question? Is it question? Yes, it's question. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it was not that that's unlucky, that was a guess in the dark. Chicken oh, coop. Chicken coop, yeah. It's like, <laughs> okay, chicken so is it A or B? We should just ask, like, when you go from C spawn, do you go towards B? Do it better from CD, maybe. It's better. <laughs> okay, when you go from... <laughs> when it's you, a good, uh, yeah. When you go from CD, uh, are you going towards B? A B is on the right, yeah? yeah? To the right side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, just cut. Just you need obvious things. It's really obvious, but why am I is helping, it, man? What the is it on the right side of drop? Yeah. Did who, he mention that? Knows? Yes or no? No, that's a question. That's a question. Really? Did yeah. he mention? Yes. <laughs> what do we? How do we narrow this down? Okay. Uh, you know the statue on side. Yeah. Is it to the right of that? Ah, oh, you cannot ask this. You can. You can say yes or no. No, of course not. If you stay behind it, a seat, yeah. Yeah. But when you look is from it to the, Is it to the right? And you hold long. Yeah, it's to the right. Yeah. To so it's either plateau or chicken coop. Then we just have to 50-50 now. Like, yeah. is that what you answered? That if you look yeah. from stone to side, then it's on the right. No, like what Nexus said. I, I said I answered. Yeah, that's okay. Right. So this yeah, is chicken coop. Yeah. So yeah. it's chicken coop. Yeah. Ten questions left, guys, and you won. <laughs> <laughs>
Maniac just left us saying that he's going back to the hotel to put on his slippers and watch some Counter-Strike, but we've all read his tweets. We know Maniac's not watching Counter-Strike tonight. Welcome back. My name is Tickle. I am your host here for the Blast Premier Spring Groups for the afternoon. I'm joined by Babski. And of course, today is all about those tickets to London. Every team that wins is heading to the UK. We've already seen two exciting matchups. And now we get to see the really fun one. This is the one I've been waiting for because I do love a little bit of drama. FaZe up against Liquid. And there's been a little bit of a shuffle in these lineups, which makes it all the more fascinating, Bubski. I mean, Twist did the, the Kirby move. He he went from a great team to a new project, and hopefully it's going to be working out for him. But it's a very big chance today to solidify that decision. Do you think, and I mean, I know that everyone always says, oh, you know, everyone's good friends out of the server. It's all good. But there has to be of a little bit of, you know, from the phase side kind of going, hey, we just want to point out that you probably shouldn't have left us. Yeah, I mean, 100% there's going to be bad blood. Quote, unquote, they're not going to be enemies outside the server, but on that day when they're going to join the server, they're going to be 100% focused on winning against your former teammate. On Twist side, he is going to be looking at over at the monitor of Robs. He's so used to doing it, and I think it's going to be really funny. And I'm also going to be looking forward, are they going to shout at each other? Because there is some sort of respect between these two. You know what, we can talk about this for a long time. We can talk about the, the drama, the, the potential matchup. But I think what I'd like to know is how Carrigan is feeling about this matchup. We spoke a lot about roles when it comes to FaZe Clan, obviously the swap between Rain and Frozen with it. I want to just ask you, with some of the results you had, with how you're feeling, do you feel like they're in a good position with it? Do you feel like they're happy with it right now? Or is it just going to take more time? I think yes or no. I mean, uh, it all depends on what angle you look for, right? Um, Hobie wants the team to perform at the highest level. He's willing to give something up. But there are some positions where I feel like Rain is the best yard player in the world. Yeah. And, I, and I think Frozen is the second best player. <laughs> so that's a luxury problem we have. and. Who knows long term if it doesn't work if, uh, with positions? That's the thing I love about this team. Everybody is not thinking about themselves, but they're sacrificing for the benefit of the team, right? So we swapped Inferno from World Finals to, to here. Um, so yeah, we keep improving and we keep learning and, and understanding the dynamics of the team, right? And right now, I just see a lot of great dynamics. So it's kind of a, in my opinion, a luxury problem. Now we just need to put it down in, on, on the results on the paper, right? When we're looking at these results, though, you lost overpass twice to Game Leaves on this, right? What do you put that down to? I think it's a strange situation. I think we were really good at overpass in the World Finals. Uh, it really felt natural the way me and Rain played on B. But I also think the issue we had yesterday was that me and Rain was completely off uh, okay. on both on B. Um, not so much how understanding of each other, but aim-wise. Like, we, we both knew it was not good enough what we delivered. And I also think um, our T size has been great on the map. Uh, but we have started 5-1 down a CT. Um, so I put it down to that. And when you look at the results, it's 13-11. That's an overtime loss. And, and Game Legion has proven to be a pretty good all-pass team as well. Yeah, they have definitely shown it. Thank you for giving some credit on that. Because some people just be like, oh, no, it just does. That's it, you know, the whole way through. Now, this is going to be your first time facing off against Twist with this. Because, obviously, I know he's a good friend and teammate. Does this hold any special meaning? Does it hold any extra motivation? I think maybe down the line, in, in a few months, I think they're obviously in the early stage of the team. Uh, speaking of the season, uh, not everything else in line here in the tournament. I mean, if you ask me if there was a final for tournament, obviously it would be <laughs> insane to have the first yeah. uh, game. Um, but obviously he left us and we didn't kick him or anything, right? So you can say there was uh, no bad blood from, uh, from any of us. Um, obviously we want to win uh, today and I think uh, Russ wants the same. Um, but in the end, uh, it's just part of uh, esports uh, career. You're gonna play ex-teammates, or are you also gonna play future teammates? That's what happens <laughs> often. Um, so yeah, all in all, uh, I think it's just uh, gonna be a good game, and I'm looking forward to see uh, how far Liquid has progressed uh, the last few uh, days or the last month. And looking at Liquid as a team and how you're looking at their progression, they played a lot of officials, right? But it's a different case when you come to this type of event. Do you have a good read on them, or are you gonna play it more on the fly? Yeah, I mean, I have an understanding of how to play, but also uh, you can see that it's different school of Counter-Strike, uh, what players want to do in specific scenarios, right? You have, in my opinion, three, like, big speakers in the team, Yekinda, and you have Trist, and you have Katie, and right? And finding a perfect mix as an ideal or leader is always uh, hard, and I think that's what they uh, need to find. And when they find that, I think they can be a very dangerous team. Uh, but for now, I still think there is uh, consistency issues in their reactions. Um, and let's see uh, if they can uh, get it rolling today. But um, obviously, a lot of great players on that team, so we need to shoot hard today. 
so much great stuff from, from Carrigan there. Obviously, the, the cheeky little, I mean, we didn't kick him, but he did leave us. So pointing that out, he addressed some of the role issues that you've had concerns mm. about, Bubsky. And then also kind of says there, well, you know, maybe Liquid still has some things to work out. Yeah, I mean, he plays the, the favorites role here, no doubt about that. And I also think it's very right in his mind to be that because we, if we saw face towards the end of the season, it made no sense for Twist to leave this project. All of a sudden, he's on the opposite side of the scoreboard and it's going to be really interesting to follow. Carrigan and Cadian are two very different IGLs in terms of their style yeah. of play. So when you put them up against each other on opposite ends of the server, how does that play out? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the stats, you would be like, wow, Cadian is really the difference maker today. He's going to be rocking that 11.11 .11 rating, but that's not really the whole truth. He has a lot of stats currently from the North American scene, and those teams are definitely not up to the standards of face. So it's going to be interesting looking into it because I can remember some of the games that Cadian has played with this roster. It's not been good enough in the important rounds. I remember that I am China event, they failed. Not due to him, but he was really performing bad. It's again, same in the first Armada game, he also failed. So there is a couple of, I would say, games where KDM falls out and he was so consistent in heroic towards the end. It's also interesting in the, the sense that Carrigan is, is a is a leader that will sacrifice himself, whereas yeah. I think Cadian is a leader that likes to show off. So that may also mix it up a bit. Yeah, and I also think he highlights that there's three voices in this team. We speak about Yikinda, he says also um, uh, Twist and, and Cadian, and it's difficult to find who is the right voice for the right situations. And I think Kerrigan is concerned about that. And I'm also a little bit concerned about it because Heroic was used to just letting Cadian do his thing. Now he's going to take into consideration that there's a, a Latvian star player on his right side and also a Canadian superstar on the left. So there's going to be a different. I wonder if Cadian feels the same way. Let's find out. Not talking about if it's going to be normal in this game, it's phase, but I expect there to be more mental games because I'm sure Twist is going to be able to give you a lot of information on this. Is there extra hunger for this win, especially because it's the first real test for you guys? I mean, I can't talk on behalf of uh, Russell, but I think, of course, there's, there's going to be a little bit of emotion. But then again, I think, you know, what is the expectations, right? They changed one guy and we built an entire new team. So kind of to compare the two of us at this stage, I think they have way higher uh, chances of being prepared and being ready compared to us. Uh, but again, it is a game that a lot of people are probably looking forward to. There's a lot of star power on both teams. And I mean, we just want to create a good game of uh, Counter-Strike. And in terms of that good game of Counter-Strike you want to create, would you say that you're going to be quite harder to read because of the mix of styles and, the, and you're not calling like it's just heroic again? I think maybe so, like in the early stages, we might be actually easier to read. Because, I mean, if you kind of perfect your style, you'll kind of know what details is a bit more. Where when you're kind of new to all the things, it's it's a bit more, you know, difficult to to have kind of the understanding of everything, you know. Yeah, all the small details. Well, let's see how it goes on the server. Thank you very much, Kaden. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I want to send my condolences from the entire Liquid to uh, Cynic and his uh, family. It's something that definitely has affected our team. Um, we have had both Edward, who has worked with Nouns and with the Cynic, and we competed against him just one week ago. Uh, the world out there is tough. This industry is tough. And uh, yeah, make sure to, to spread as much kindness as you can, guys. Be good to one of another. And yeah, we, we send all the condolences we can. Massive respect as always. Thank you, Kadian. Definitely, definitely echoing Kadian's sentiments here, sending our well wishes to, to Cynic's family and friends. It's a sad time for Counter-Strike, for competitive Counter-Strike when we lose one of our community. He mentioned Edward there, obviously someone who had worked with Nans, but it is someone I'd like to bring up as well. Originally was the, the mental and wellness coach for G2, yeah. now with Liquid. In partnership with Zeus, I feel like the support staff behind Liquid are some of the best in the industry. Yeah, we had this conversation, I think it was two days ago, where it was interesting to see how useful are they. And I think this most information is going to come out from them in the start of the, the team. And they've just gotten together in some way. And I think he's the perfect fit to getting a team like this with so many different personalities on the same page. And I think that Edward knows how to deal with big personalities coming from G2. And Kadian is a big personality. There's also Zeus, who I argue, and I would say it's, mm. I think he's one of the best coaches of, of all time for Counter-Strike. And I think that he has a point to prove because he doesn't want to be forgotten. I actually got a chance to speak to him last year and he said he wants to come back because he really yeah. believes that he understands how to coach a team. For me, on this Liquid roster, 
some would say it's goals, but for me it's the it's the signing of the coach. I'm not sure that he's good enough for a roster of this caliber. I think he's a great one when you look at the paper, but for recent experience, he doesn't have the claims to back up being on a superstar lineup like this. I hope Kadian is gonna clarify in the next couple of months how good of a coach he is, because this is the only way we can see it. Wow, Babski, you just broke my heart and disagreed with me. We can talk about this after the first map. I think it's time to see exactly what these teams can bring us in game. It is, it is an interesting question as to like, I, I think I understand Bubsky's point. There is always the angle that we don't know what a coach is hired for. True. Is it for tactics, is it for like mental or whatever? And sometimes is that just a smoke screen for like, they're not good enough to be a tactical coach. Do they have the analytical support staff to make up for the fact that they don't have that? Does Kadian need that kind of help? These are, there's a lot of questions that again, uh, we don't have the answers to that we'll have to Ask find out. someone like Katie to find out. Yeah, of course. GG Bet Odds giving FaZe the favor coming into this best of three. My personal take on Zeus, specifically with this project of Liquid, is that I like that Skulls has a familiar Brazilian face true, next true. to him on this team. Love that. Because if it's all about integrating Skulls into this team of experienced players in contrast to his own career, at least no matter what, if in practice if in the rounds if in the server he feels like he's not being heard or he feels like he has more to contribute you know for a fact that skulls can go to zeus specifically to make sure he is heard and hopefully able to play his best game that's what we're going to need out of skulls that's what we're going to need out of the board for team liquid this one's for london baby we're a few days deep into 2024 and we finally got a game with something to win Ooh, and an instant push outside from Cadian, but an equally fast ramp take here from phase Skulls, no chance at the trade frag. Katie and fast outer, somehow behind Rops. Yakinder picks up rain elsewhere on the map down beneath where Bomb was looking to go. We've got door open. We've got Yakinder holding and another clean tap. Damn, we didn't see the first, but if it was anything like that, he's on one already. Post IGL glow here for Yakinder. He has been a lot better since handing over that responsibility. We're handing it back to another thoroughbred caller. There we go. Twist comes through with two headshots as well. That was already strange seeing Twist kill Brokey. Yeah, it is It is quite odd. Obviously, uh, a very fresh chance for Twist mm. to get a piece of his ex-team. And you were telling me you were speaking him to him this morning about this conversation of playing versus your old teams. Yeah, we were talking about who's the best at ping pong, how long the run was that Edward was going to go for, who came down to the breakfast with cold hands. And I was like, did you already go for a run? He's like, no, I haven't been outside yet. I'm like, okay. He just chugged a bottle of electrolytes, ha ate half a banana and just left. Um, Twist was saying that, well, I asked him who he thought had the better advantage in the matchup for Falcons versus Vitality. Was it Magisk and, uh, and Zonic who played against Vitality? Or was it Apex against those guys? And he said that Magisk and Zonic, and he thinks that that's why Magisk popped off. And by transitive property, I think that means that he, he probably feels like he has a pretty good advantage versus FaZe. He also said that, you know, he spent years spectating these guys when he's been dead. It's a known thing that you, you press tab when you're in a 1v1 if you know the other guy and you just have an idea of how they're going to play that post plant, you know? Certain spots they like to go to. So there will be a mental mind game both ways, for sure. But uh, maybe for Twist, he's going to be a valuable asset to help Liquid understand phases macro. Kinder wasting no time bringing it outer. Few calls for Kadian's head from Bubski in his recent performances as of late, or recent struggles to perform in some pretty important games so far in this Liquid jersey. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm um, being too charitable, but I, I, I want to assume that it gets better for him individually. He's always had very parabolic form, even. This last year was his best year. If you look at him event to event, it's bad sometimes, it's good. I think the reason he cracked top 20 this year was because his big game form was actually really nice. He, he did have good moments in, in really important matches. And as a caller, was absolutely striking when it came to making the right decisions for the team when it was necessary. So no denying if you watched Heroic play, you knew a lot of it had to do with Kadian. But he's got a new four new players to call the system. He's going to get a second person from the last team to help him build uh, one of the m most unique rosters and philosophies for how to play the game that we've ever seen. So I think the form comes back. That's, that would be my personal bet. It's a bet I would take as well, for the record. 
You know, we see the success of the heroic duo in Astralis bring a glimpse of heroic into that team. We've been waiting to see whether the other duo still on heroic can do the same and maintain their identity. What does Kadian bring to Team Liquid? The people who have brought it to the forefront so far this week in Copenhagen, it's the Canadian duo of Nafly and Twists. Teammates long ago, teammates once again, wasting no time as both of them top 10 rated players at the event coming into the game. Rain, both towards secret and then back into main. Skulls, pressure to go into lobby to Ooh. look to respond to something inside A. This one's gonna fall on Twist. He's got an entire team coming at him. Slow crawl towards heaven from Rain as well. Nice first kill, but everybody else around Twist is dying. He's got- Oh four. my god. Just like that, we've got Twists deep on a 3k. I mean, clinical with that A1S. Rain oh, comes man. through to deny this. Twist doing his damnedest to try and post around, but no one else offered anything. That was the alley-oop, and I think we know Kadian in a clutch can put up big moments. So there was a, and that's the reason that his his form has been called into question. It's because, you know, like it, it was so it was so rough for a second that when they played against Spirit, Halley, after the end of the series, had four less kills than Kadian. It was that close. So, yes. The floor needs to be brought up in that regard, but if Twist can put up this half of the deal, then his team will be in a good position. I think his confidence is already very high, knowing that he started the day like this. We saw some hot and cold performances out of Rain yesterday. Two incredible maps in that series versus Gamer Legion. However, an absolute absence on Overpass. He'll go down as he looks to get some kind of outer control at the start of this round. It's Rops to the trade frag, wasting no time creeping out hut. Naf aware of it though. SMG tears through him. That was free AK to the site. And Naf must have seen him, right? Or he was so aware. That is a play that, that Rops makes once or twice a half here on Nuke. Kinder hearing the footsteps as they start to run downstairs. That'll elicit some kind of a movement down lower. And it's Kadian towards ramp. His read is correct, they're not waiting for him, so. FaZe thinking they're ahead of the pack, but Liquid hot on their heels and in position to hold this. Kinder not overplaying his hand, but setting up his team with information. No smoke for the T's to get into this bomb site either, so they're gonna have to clear the kills. This is the perfect setup, essentially, comes down to Kadian's next shot. Naf locks in on Dark. There's that next shot. Nafly actually dies. Kadian gonna pick up the slack. 30 seconds, Kerrigan 1v3. No bomb as that sits down over towards the single door. Twists, barrel up close, and he'll close. We've got Liquid answering right back to the 3-1 lead. Yeah, that's massive. And I mean, Liquid could have a good day. Both these teams come into this match with very questionable form here at the groups. So we'll have to see if um, FaZe as a whole can pick it up because they were not playing like themselves yesterday and uh, damn near coming off of two losses to Gamer Legion, right? Multiple maps, we can say at least. Liquid in contrast, opening this week versus a very limited team spirit, standing in with a coach and I believe their academy player in Baz. Yeah, for Liquid, it's sort of, uh, at least they're getting better day to day. That's a pretty, pretty promising sign. I think, I think the, 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 there might be, there may be, I don't know how much grudge there is in this match. There's obviously the will to win, obviously. We saw Apex's tweet. We know what it means to play against your former team. But, uh, you know, there was Twist saying that he believes Kadian can be a top one IGL. And of course, you know, this is his current caller. He's got to put him on. Um, and I, I believe he believes it too. But that does mean that Kerrigan's there on the other side calling for the team that he's playing against right here mm -hmm. in their first land match. That's going to be on their minds. You know, we just talked about Twist getting that 3k back A site and what that does for his game early on in this series. I think two shots like that from Kadian to just shut down a potential B plant is also going to bode well for the offer. Mm -hmm. We put him under question at the start of the series. And we can look to at least one round and say, shots connect. Yeah, he has always been funny like that because, again, his stats are so parabolic. But you almost would never argue that he shouldn't be opping, right? Some of his of biggest not. moments have all been with the op. Bro, he's going to throw a 1v5 into the mix at a moment's notice. Yeah, it's like, oh, maybe it's going to be two a year. Two more than most other oppers will ever have. So it's it's, it's funny. It's like every, every 1v5 buys him three more months. Pistols trickle in through main. 
Top silo player is going to connect. Hello, Frozen. Glock trying to cross over with Bomb. That one gets cut down by Skulls. Skulls is somebody who, I think, if you didn't have your finger on the pulse of, say, like, the Monterey America's RMR going into the Blast Paris Major, or even the first Paris stage major. of the Paris Major yeah. itself. Or Pain. I, I don't know. I feel like Twist or Skulls went under the radar with some people in a way that I didn't really understand. But that might have been my bias of, like, I've seen so many of Pain yeah, we watched the, Yeah, we watched them live. Watching you know? Pain play yeah. or, like, qualify... Uh, play so well, honestly, with uh, the skull Zevi combo. Mm -hmm. That made it over Fury to Lisbon, right? Yes. So I, I think I've been, been admiring Skulls on pain. Sometime, yep. And I think in Brazil, he's all, it was also a very well-known thought that they, they, were, they were trying to scoop these two players for this team to go to Furia in the first place, but they were just too expensive. So when Liquid made the plunge and bought him, I can understand some people not knowing who Skull, Skulls was, but I'm pretty surprised that, like, a lot of people were doubting how good he could be. He was... He was a great anchor. He was a great anchor on Pain, and Pain were a very good team. I agree. And again, I think it's really nice that he comes into this with Zeus. Little Brazilian splash for 2024 Team Liquid. Guns back in the hands of FaZe. It was those two frozen deagles last round. We get Yakinder leaning back in garage once more. No, excuse me. He's actually top secret. Drops? Stuck in the molly. Took damage. Broiled. Him and Twists exchanging damage and death. Nice headshot from Kerrigan. As he entries in through main, Yakinder coming out, not anticipating a third player, thinking Kerrigan would only be the second. Oh, interesting. Well, the Ops back here, so now they can't scale, but Kadian would have actually liked them to come forward in upper. This all they got. This Mocus keep because they need to think about something new. Kadian can get mobile. They've got one in the rafters. A very interesting mid-round situation to synthesize, but the drop down lower makes Dangerous. perfect sense for FaZe. Rain's already got it locked in. This opens the door for Frozen to move past on Secret. Oh, so oh Kadian. Oh, actually will find this. Yep. Yep. Quick scope into the smoke. But it makes it a hard map to read. I mean, he's in mini, right? Thinking about the lurk upstairs. This activates the plant. Downstairs, Frozen and Rain. That Versus cold weather. Kadian and Skulls. Frozen locking in. Here's the stomping going on in the vent. Kadian has to buy time for Skulls to come over. Rain is just going to be sat top rafters in the site. CT's looking to trade frag versus Frozen. He could cut them both down, and he will. Superb headshots from Frozen. Ice cold as he sits on secret. Make sure nobody moves forward. Yeah, that was beautiful, right from Decon. Um, I mean, uh, I think yesterday we saw, and at these groups, Frozen is not like the standout worst performer or anything on a team that's been a little bit dysfunctional, but his form, I would say, could be better. Like, he's missed some trades that were not that great. I think he still has time to get, to try to get comfortable on the team, but it hasn't been like a one-for-one -one instant fit um, compared to where Twist was at, which are high standards, but, I mean, Frozen deserves those high standards. He was amazing on Mouse and a very similar player in a very similar role. So, timeout called here for Team Liquid. Not the worst situation that they let that one slip, but they did decide to participate in a lot of duels outside in that mid round, and maybe want to decide a different approach about mm. for how they're going to tackle the early round. I think particularly Yakinder, right? He gets his one kill and then kind of squeezes out further, thinking he can just fire off towards the player pushing in through main, but a third member next to the smoke just gets a full face of Yakinder looking the wrong direction. They decide to come in with everything they can afford. It's NAF, the most limited. And we've got Brokey scouring Garage for what's been a pretty consistent presence from Yakinder between Garage or Top Secret. Right now, they're two inside of main. Frozen on top of it. Saw one. Pop rings out. Kadian pressure dealt with. Scaling pretty quick. And that ramp peak is the end of NAF fly. Twist's SMG will topple a single player. We've still got Yakinder in that corner of main. 
Yeah, he's gonna fall. Oh, oh never mind. Brokey. Catch Brokey from behind. Turns it around and Skull suddenly left on his own. So this is FaZe bottoming out the bank accounts and getting this T side going early on. He actually had to have the most skilled barber to get him to shave his beard. Every other barber that tried. We don't Man talk means about business. Them yeah. All business, Brokey. I think you're not allowed to laugh at jokes that are made about Brokey because he wouldn't laugh either. Always stern. That's a good rule. I think. Yeah, enough's he's, enough. Yeah, well, he's not playing games. Naf has been pretty non-existent in this map so far. One in six, but just playing ramp and not really getting too much to do. This is Rain catching Kadian in transition. Trying to run from CT back into hell. Gross shot from Brokey. Yeah, he's a awareness 100 right now. And um, money's not good here for Liquid. This new roster did cost a lot. Pistols again. We got a Zeus on the field if things get wild. And a Deagle in the hands of Twists. Um, I think you had a you had a stat about Kerrigan and, and Kadian. Yes, Kadian and Kerrigan enter this match, potentially the last match for both of these teams. In uh they are both 0 0.87 ratings coming into this game, which I think when we talk about in-game leaders that are sort of struggling individually, we don't really put Kadian and Kerrigan side by side. I've I've always felt that Danish IGLs have held this game back. <laughs> Continue. Okay. You know, you you don't expect Kadian to have to go su super above and beyond, but again, literally identical ratings. And that's with Liquid topping the group and him sitting at 0 0.87. You know, Kerrigan, he's oh, been taking beatings from oh Gamer Legion. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh, nice one, twist. Or maybe you should. Okay. This ends up being costly for a single deagle round, but uh, full control the entire time, Faye's not gonna sweat it. I think the, if I could pinpoint one thing about the way Kerrigan's playing lately that I don't, don't love that much, it's, or seeing him push a lot of smokes. Remember the world final? I think it was versus, versus Vitality in a game that got crushed. Maybe it was the finals where it felt like every round, instead of going forward with like a slow crawling game plan to take map control and like out positional, out, out position their opponent, um, and like kind of slowly crush them. They had Kerrigan push through a lot of smokes and just try to do things that he was doing back in 2020. A lot of IGLs were just taking risks for information. And I think he's also done that a bit here at the groups. Quick pop, Kerrigan, speak of the devil, entry into A. Not alone, but now down for the count. Kadian also catching a kill outer. We wow. keep seeing Rain try to play around that red box he through the smokes, and he's got nice pathing, but right now, Twist is untouchable. 14 literally. and four, stopped by Brokey, who's on for the clutch. Two kills deep already. Wow, he's sharp right now, too. And man. you know Brokey, he's got the bomb, he's ready to go, but he writes off the possibility of Kadian getting aggressive, so an uptick from Kadian and more Twist's impact. You can feel it, that these two players are both boiling up right now for a big moment. Brokey and Twist look very sharp. I think it's... Obviously, it's saving Liquid. It's helping out FaZe. FaZe overall have got some good ideas. Uh, but yeah, here's an example of, I think, Kerrigan doing something heads up, but with some support, so not in the same way that I've seen before. This is just a good sort of up attempt at an upper pop. The weird part is that we can see the bombs actually routing towards ramp with him walking out of hut. So was he trying to make the, the sacrifice completely to sell the fake? Brokey throwing a single one-man wall of smoke, and we'll see if Rain can work around it. I'm trying to draw attention outside, mm -hmm. but... It's got Yakinder occupied. It's got only Yakinder at the moment. 
And all of those smokes, Rain goes trying to peer over top of it. We also get these smokes on the A floor where Skulls finds himself exposed. Nice pop out from Rops. Coming down from Squeaky with the Tech 9 into the headshot. Finally, you've dealt with Twist swiftly. And if Twist hasn't offered much on A, these are rounds Liquid lose. Why are they paused? No bomb plank going down just yet. Smokes are up and they are on a swivel looking for opponents. The T's are not comfortable at all. Mini smoke comes in. They're still looking for confirmation on one more. Plant out in the open. Your kinder will go for a blind spam, not find a thing. Naf's job's gonna be a difficult one if he's gonna look to come in through heaven. Maybe wait out for that main smoke to fade. They finally expand into lobby control. And yeah, Kadian's there, but he's not aggressing. So this one's a lot better. This round we had the outer smokes to overstress the mini player to focus on outside, draw some grenades out in that direction, and on that timing, go for an upper hit. So the phase have been really in favor of fakes lately. That's very clean execution. And the entry is that overwhelmed twist, finally. Oof! Wow, that's a Jesus. punishing exit, actually. Three players dead? How did they not have time, more time to go? I think it's just that Cadian was holding from... They were in position to punish exits for all the choke points, except for, like, getting down the vent, right? Yeah, but the lobby player leaves, so then they could have just gone T-spawn. They yeah. had time to still get out the T-spawn door. Okay, that's what it felt did like. Did they stay I, in lobby? Not exactly sure. To be honest, I kind of stopped watching radar because I just assumed they'd keep on running, but if they were worried there's somebody T-roof or T-spawn... It was just... Kadian got an op shot. Maybe they... T I don't know. So... That's an opportunity, though, for Liquid. Snapshot before the round ended. Saw one player with 3,600 on Base Clan. And there was a very decent save between the up and rifles for Team Liquid. They won't have to buy much to have a chance to play. This is a high volatility matchup. Both teams' form has been in question, but we also know the ceiling is extremely high on both sides. It just really, really depends on the day here. Man, three players dying there gives everybody a Galil or the MAC-10. Not one AK being brought out here in round 11 for FaZe, but <laughs> will it matter? You kinder, he's dead. Type regression in through Squeaky, and it gets punished in an instant. Wow, I mean, FaZe wanted to do something quick here. Um, and you kinder thought maybe he had an opportunity because they quickly jock for position outside with their fast smokes and they get rain on this lurk. The T start to reassess the situation in lobby. They've got a kill that buys them extra time on the clock and Rops is out in a position that's really good to punish when you have low mollies. Missed Molotov. Would have actually disrupted the setup. Oh would have God, genuinely yeah. screwed it over. I think definitely Kadian would have had to either pull out a smoke or move. Yep. And instead, it's a kill from him and his teammate in the back of this site. But that was also a uh, a good push from, from Twist. I don't think they would have exacted in the same way if they knew the op was there. Skulls reads Rops' spot, but he needs Twist to finish the job. Man advantage, but Rain, who had gotten down secret. I think they've kept an inventory of him, right? Because yeah. of full outside smokes. Gotta be ready, you'd assume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kadian sticks it in the gut, bayonets him down the vent, and we've got Liquid back to winning ways. That missed Molotov missed back sight. Molly may or may not have made a difference. Shirt sure, certainly would have displaced Kadian, who got one of the kills. Um, arguably, the first kill is more important than one that Twist finds. So, but yeah, don't don't miss your nades because when you go back and watch the demo. You don't want to have to talk about missed grenades when it comes to what went wrong. You get those right first, and then you still could lose. But obviously, it feels the worst when it's just because. Yeah, it was one of those. Off. It was one of those like jump. It was one of those jump throws that looked like the, like the piece of vent in front of him kind of like threw him diagonally instead. Mm -hmm. I don't know if bumping into geometry with jump throws still screws things up, but. I always blame geometry. Same. Goddamn triangles. Parallelograms. <laughs> Kiss my rumbus. <laughs> well, gonna have to find a diamond in the rough here. Faye is last round of the half. Tech nines. 
few pieces of util. We've seen them try to crank the speed in some of these more recent T rounds. It's also been that affinity for the smoke's outer, but this time so limited economically that they're not going to be coming in with many tools. So let the first bit of util from Liquid fade. Maybe we get a simple oh, ramp oh. rush. Maybe you want to try to take down Naf for once. Naf on ramp, finally. Naf's been waiting. You can put this on display, baby. And waiting and oh. waiting, and finally you take a step closer to him and he softens you, he softens you up. The tenderizer that is Keith. Yeah, the molly gets pulled out a little too early, so we don't get to see him try to fight. I like this move uh, from from Faze. Oh my god, wait, Kerrigan's happen. walking up her. Yeah, and you can do super deep on Secret, so all is going swimmingly. Skulls, he had a chance Whoa. to Tech-9 blast, but twists the emergency policy in position. Whoa. All is good. Rob's still going for it. He's got three more to topple, M4 in hand, Spray gets away, Team Liquid, two round lead at the end of this CT side. Pre-match rituals. So I want to talk about pre-match rituals. Now for you, I know you carry an assortment of gems and minerals. I'm sure you've been asked about it a few times before. Can you just explain to me what the idea behind those is? Are they special to you? Do they mean anything? Are they specific stones? They are specific stones in, in that sense that they can represent something. Okay. Uh, something can represent courage. Uh, something can represent luck. So as my wife chooses out the stone, I explain in detail what kind of stone I need to nice. look to when I, when I need to do something. And I think it's just one way to kind of like remind these key things. Um, one of them is about leadership as well that I have these stones and I can kind of like if I have a rough time uh, I sometimes look at them and like remind okay leadership courage and and kind of like push my charm and luck you know um, and I think it's just one way I build up and obviously when I started using the stones went pretty good last year uh, 2022 so um, I got more added to the collection now uh, Nice. <laughs> what are the new ones what do they symbolize uh, I can't remember now actually I have to uh, double check again. so so for you it's not so much like a spiritual thing is to remind you of uh, kind of a, a symbol of the, the kind of qualities you'd like to be as a leader? Uh, both things, I would say, right? Yep. The spiritual, I'm not always that deep into, but I think that way I'm using is kind of remind myself to kind of leadership is what I need to be. I need to also bring on the table. Yep. I can have a bad game, but I can never be a bad leader uh, in a game. That's um, and then the courage is just like never really second guess what I'm doing, go with my stomach feeling. So that, that's kind of things I'm kind of remind myself um, to, to kind of do. And, and that's a good way to, when you get lost in track of your thoughts, then it's good to kind of like blink for a second, look to the right. And obviously also have confetti on the mouse pad to kind of remind um, right what we're fighting for. Because losing finals and get confetti in your bag is like the worst feeling ever. <laughs> but winning a final and have confetti in your keyboard is the best feeling. So okay, it's awesome. like a flip coin. And I think that reminds me that Never, nothing is ever given. Wow, Frozen, quite profound answers there. What about you, <laughs> um, <laughs> pre-match rituals? You doing anything? You're know, just doing DM and Spotify. What are you up to? Uh, yeah, Spotify, bots, and yeah. uh, like close to the match, I do breathing exercise. Okay, um, so just some kind of uh, mindfulness sort of kind yeah, of- Yeah, I think it's called focus up. breathing, the one I do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that for like last two years, I think. I think- Seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. Twist looking slicker than Justin Bieber in this server right now. 19 kills, man, like it's nothing. 135 ADR launders. He was the immovable object of that A bomb site, and we saw it in the first three rounds of the half. We saw that 3K spray down when his teammates all died around him. Yeah. And then as he continued to perform as well, well, we got a little uh, contribution from Kadian, a kill or two from Skulls, and poor Nav, who never got any action on ramp. But that's the life of the ramp anchor. It is, yeah. But, you know, counting all the Canadian kills, 21 and 14. Not bad. Not bad at all. 
Roki, not able to stop them from getting into the ramp room. Rops just hiding back sight. Will they fall victim to this? There's a smoke, I believe. Him, he's still getting away with the plant. Oh, now they've found him. But they're already being corralled. Look at this ramp flank. So hot on the heels of Team Liquid is Kerrigan. And this Frozen, would... who starts the round, also gets the fourth. This would be his most impressive 1v5 yet. They have no idea he's in here. That smoke's time limited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like a, like getting tied to the train tracks. Katie knew he was done. Yeah. Uh, poor guy. So, nicely done. Face kick off the CT Endeavor with a pistol. That's good because uh, they needed this to, to tie up. It'll be a nice test for the Team Liquid T side. FaZe have been good at pistols versus Gamer Legion and now versus Liquid. Splitting the difference this time. Going one and one. Yeah, and FaZe's upgrade with getting Frozen was that uh, Frozen was an excellent new player for, for Mouse, so that's that should be something that really worked out. It's hard to say, you know, by transitive property that it's going to work out the same, but you just know that on Mouse, it was one of his, it was maybe his best map. It was one of them. So he was pretty much the best player on every map. Like, that's sort of the story. Oh, not, nah, not going to happen. Rain was so consistent in his ability to pester outside last half. He'll make sure your Kinder's cut down. Great damage out of the MP9, all things considered. Uh oh. Even if it's without the frag. Ooh. Look at Brokey run for the heavens. He gets away, but he can't stay inside of hell. They push down, and at least Rain's here. Yeah, easy cleanup there, but Rain. That, that's two from control side and decon. When the. The CTs rotate down, it's much harder to get back upstairs. They still have control of vent, so Liquid have to respect that. But this actually puts Kerrigan in jeopardy. He should know they could come back. Oh, but he'll handle it. Mows down Naf. Kadian trades him back, grabbing the M4 in the process. We've got this outer push from Brokey that's just going to surprise Kadian. Oh. This is a jump scare for sure. No chance you clear blue. Goodbye. And with that, the round. So, I feel like all that damage out of ROPS in the corner of Ramp Room really set up everybody to succeed. We see the peek out of single door, two little bur bullet bur burst, the bur 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 Yeah. All is good. The, um, the power of ROPS inside of Ramp is he's one of the only Ramp players that's allowed to play that side of Ramp consistently at Tier 1. Like, he can get more than one kill so often that he never has to have a, a plan B, you know? Like, some people, they try to be Counter-Strike players, but then they're told, you know, maybe I'll get a degree as well. Like, Robs doesn't have to get the degree when it comes to playing the ramp room. He can stay commit fully to that one angle and get more kills than anybody else. Real entrepreneur. So yeah, exactly. He's very industrious and also extremely talented. Not even Naf can do that as a sacred ramp player, too. Naf's just more humble and, like, could. Just doesn't. All right. So, of course, uh, of his own volition that he doesn't. He's the kind of guy that could get A pluses, but is happy getting Cs. He's the guy who doesn't study and gets an A minus. Oh. Consistent. That's true. He is good enough for A's. That's fair. I, by no means, trying to write off Naf's ability, but he is 2 and 9. I feel like he just didn't get gunfights last map. Now every gunfight will be a pain point here for Liquid. Pistols in for the international roster. Closest thing we have to a Canadian team. Not according to HLTV. I mean, yeah. very clearly a Canadian team in my opinion, but they can go with the other flag. Sure. Canadian on a good day, international in the rough rounds. Mm -hmm. It's the Montu duality. They've managed to get three players across. There's a Galil here for Skulls because he saved. Beasts, they're trying to scramble down, but Skulls gets the entry. They know there's another. Kerrigan's thinking teammates, and the pistols just churn through the vent rotate. Oh, man, it's, it's sorry. not it's one not yet. Funny just yet. Rain. Not yet. Maybe saves the day. Brokey, they can send him back this way. 13 health, 25 seconds. 
He should catch Naf off guard. That should be Naf dead because he's low HP. They're going to come out both ends. Skulls, he has a bomb in his hand. And now he's stuck inside of the smoke as Brokey drops. Rain comes through and all is good. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they didn't think that anybody had rotated into lower, but at the same time weren't willing to commit to it. A swift reminder to FaZe Clan that things can go a 0 to 100 real quick. Yeah, that was a... Uh, I I mean, that wasn't really a brain fart moment from Kerrigan. Like, kind of was, but there could have been there someone been there. there some jumping in the vent from that side. You have basically a team of Banelings swarming you with Tech Nines. I'm actually more impressed that he hit that headshot. That was a nice shot. In the off chance it was an enemy. That's what people don't want to admit about that situation. The Lizard Brain kicks in. Wow. We are spending timeouts right now. That's, that's three of three. So one thing I could say about Zeus is that he's an excellent communicator and that anytime I've ever done content with him or just talked to him, I don't think there's anybody who's actually as clear of a speaker. I like that as a as a as a personality trait in a coach. I think that when you are working with people, you need to have skills. communication skills. Yeah, because you don't get to play. So no. I mean, don't get me wrong. Talk. We still obviously value analytics. Preparation, professionalism, our other coaches with maybe more of those, but communication skills, underrated. Fast one, this is tons of mollies, tons of pressure, and not that much damage being taken. Kerrigan, he's down just like that. They just flood out into the A-site off of the tack pause, slamming the A-site. Good spam damage out of rain, but is it enough to reopen the door to the A-site or to Liquid tie the game at eight? Upper hits are more than just a tactical choice. Upper hits are a vent. They're a release of frustration. You know, they're a specific form of catharsis for a team on T side to get rid of frustration, to start over. They symbolize a new start. It's about getting the car out of the sand Oof. with upper hits. Yeah. Now suddenly you feel like you're back on the open road. And in the pit of their stomach, a quick reminder to FaZe. That's two rounds in a row where there's just this moment of explosiveness out of Team Liquid. And with one round, it's a single Galil and pistols. They nearly lose. In this round, they didn't stand a chance. It quells the ego. It puts you in check. It resets the communication. And uh, it's something that's an executive decision by your IGL to make, but it's the, the kind of call that it also comes with risks. If they had lost that round, maybe this game would have felt over, and now it's tied. Also elicits a forced reaction from FaZe. MP9 in the vent, smokes ahead of Molly's. One does not lose to an all-out rush and then not prepare for it the one round right after. Absolutely. The added benefit of conditioning can't be denied. Starting to get so many more waterfall smokes nowadays. The evolution of CS2. Op shot lands, but Brokey just pelted by flashbangs. Gets downstairs. Could still end up serving up a problem. There's a second player to support him down as well. We've got one towards CT spawn and Rain plus the garage is occupied. Rain wins his first duel as Skulls loses oh, out alongside oh Nap. Three God. kills like it's nothing! What a storm! Holy... Rain, that's unbelievable. When we talk about yesterday, that he was absent compared to this. On this angle, it looks like he's out in the open, but he's going to be cleared. Hard cleared. And knows it. And he oh, can't oh. get All that's five! Five duels, none of them shooting in the back of the head. Everybody looking directly at him mm -hmm. at his ice cold stare. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Four kills, single magazine of the M4A4. Every player facing him through this doorway. Precision personified. Rain takes the lead right back. They just needed one trade to get that going. They what hurts more? Through ramp. An A-Rush or that?
Frozen catching skulls deep towards Squeaky. We've got a 5v4 coming through from FaZe. Responding in the face of the back-to-back -back round win. Drops in rain, holding off outside. No attempt at the main drop yet from Twist. He locks in behind the unit. That one round win from Liquid with victories from FaZe on both sides. Money on the line. Map win not far off. Cadian with Bomb still sitting back at the base of Silo. Don't, don't, don't. Kerrigan still has full vision on this, but how has Yekinder oh managed God. to cross? Wait, Frozen is not spotting this. He has no idea. Now, there's still... The thing is, the door is still closed. Control... Control glass might be open, though. What a weird back and forth that ends up being, because Yekinder even weird, crosses weird, back. Oh my god, this is massive for Twist. He can speed up. He's gonna go up, or... And Nafli gets a kill. This is following the rain ace. Frozen stuck downstairs. We've got a player on the doorway of Hut, but Twists, he's coming around, so as Brokey gets two kills, taking man advantage back, at least Twists is set up. Brokey almost catching the timing on that turnaround. Seven seconds. Kadian's gonna have to run in. Twist gives the cover. A peek from Frozen. All there is! Oh! And Twists with a triple from the heavens! And if you want a special moment, you need a Twist. That's an unbelievable play, dropping in from heaven, flanking them, supported by the first two kills. Nafly outside, that allowed him to take speed. But you still need the right player at the wheel. Man, and you know Brokey, we said you can't really shoot him in the back. We already got that instance of him turning on Yakinder towards main in the first half. This was another one where half a second sooner, Brokey's looking towards heaven. But not on Twist's watch, 23 and 10. The Canadian continues to tear it up as his teammates offer the smallest opening. And we're back to the tied game. Money on the line here for FaZe. Every Counter-Strike fan got out of bed today and hoped that this best of three would deliver. Bangers all day long. Quick pop out from Skulls, just the Mac 10 Won't find his kill, but he's got teammates to trade. Frozen's head's down, has yet to be spotted. Comes in with just the Fomus, and Brokey off the rafters with the answer. Cadian to the clutch. With plenty of time to cook. Oh, and they're chasing Ghost. It's the instant vent drop. Brokey thinks he's at least going towards the ramp. I don't know how much was heard, but the rest can be inferred. Cadian is going to walk out into the upper site and find no one. Struggles in this liquid jersey, but always good for the clutch. Oh, there's a key passive angle held here from Brokey. Cadian's gonna have to be sharp. He's gonna have to visualize this positioning. He knows that he's following somebody, so this corner is probably occupied. And Cadian's quick scope is on the money. Smoke grenade over towards ramp as Rops just rushes this downwards. Cadian gets back into the doors. With eyes on vent, he doesn't know. Can't sense it yet. But every year, Cadian seems to kick it off with a clutch down on this B side of Nuke. He hears Rops. Is sick, and the jester makes a fool of phase. Ten nine, like it's nothing. A full screen of orange, then a full screen of gray. Not a single player spotted. What was Cadian even flicking at? What does he see? What does he know that he sees we don't? The future is what he sees. Oh, <laughs> crazy. Ah! Doesn't matter what jersey he's wearing, he still will wield the op in that exact way. Special bonus when it's maps on nuke. Pistols now out for FaZe, desperate to do anything in this round. Entering the grand finals with the same rating as his counterpart in Kerrigan. Leaps and bounds above as we hit round 20, but still a hiccup.
Yeah, there is no mo moment here for respite. They've got four players up on phase. No one even has armor to work with right now. Frozen has a MAC-10 in his hand, and at least a Kinder will equalize material. Brokey still holding on to Decon, and Liquid still have to be careful. P250 in the pocket. They're not worried about this right now. Door, Door goes swings. Open. Oof, at least Yakinder was able to get away so the pistol's not to the back of his head. Yeah, but Kadian knows. They have control side guaranteed. They can plant for it. They don't have to worry. Twist coming down late secret. There's a CT flanking him. But again, we're working with no kit here. Oh, but <laughs> things still get interesting. Kadian's going to go ahead and land his shot, breaks the window but fakes it out, and Rops will see that nobody actually jumped out. Again, you could just go for damage, you can just hit these exits. Tough ask, but we know that bomb radius is nasty. Team Liquid getting through scorched. But a round wins a round win once it's added to the board, and that's a two-round lead for Liquid. Yeah, they come out of that round bruised, but at least they have something saved. They don't give over an op, and uh, FaZe are waiting to win the next round anyway. No full investment at this point. It's about to get very interesting, and, uh, well, this game already has created a collection of moments. I think no matter what happens... At this point, we can say it was a success from an entertainment standpoint. But a two-round lead. Match point on the horizon. And FaZe have some borrowed weapons. Low utility and less kits. Again, it's going to be a tether off the back of Skulls. MAC-10 to lead the charge. Kerrigan gets full vision! And it's a total stoppage on the first two. Follow up from Twist. 3v5 queued up, but cut down by Rain. Whoa. Another nice shot from Kadian. And dare I say it, another still winnable round. There's something about those moments. These thunderous flicks that Kadian hits that just silences the server for a second. And now it's suddenly a reset. That was a two on four situation, nearly unwinnable. And uh, because of the upper hold between Kerrigan, that very important first kill, and the follow-up, FaZe are still in control of the map and have time on their side. But suddenly there is a chance to get back into it. It'll be two of the most intuitive CS players playing side-by-side -side in this mid-round situation to try to come up with a creative solution. And they are going for something ambitious. Kadian on the full cross downstairs, hard-scoped with Nafli. Oh, inside a squeaky, and that kill means that, okay, they might not know where Kadian is, but now it's a one-on-three. But he at least has the smallest of openings down on this B site. If he somehow finds Brokey in this spot, I mean... Tuck dark, Brokey does nothing, Kadian, he'll catch the vent rotate. That's a nice kill, but if Brokey wasn't on site, maybe. Yeah, worth a shot, but they could afford to lose material to try to run at him. Time was not on his side. Brokey was in a great spot, and yes... Kerrigan can shout. He hasn't had the best game so far, but that was key impact on a couple of rounds upstairs. His frags are working out. It's especially this top hut position. Mm -hmm. And um, also Rain continuing to do well on the CT side. That's making the difference. You can't leave anything on the table in a matchup like this. London's on the line. And who is and who will be the better team is up for debate. There are going to be great arguments on both sides. It, it might be riskier to say that Liquid, you know, will be better in six months or something like that. But that's what they're aiming for. And uh, they've certainly paid for a team to be able to compete for that. And I don't think Twist would have gone anywhere that could have ended up worse than FaZe. Matchups like this are what dictate that. Kadian's pregame interview as well, just identifying, of course I expect FaZe to be the better prepared team. We've just come together. We're looking for good, immediate results. He has breached the 20 kill mark, 
and he takes up outside alone. Ahead of this, Rain could just unsuspectingly walk into the scope here. Kadian, this is a huge risk. Yeah, there was no smoke outside. None at all, in huge, fact. Huge, but it works. It, it does, and there's no audible here for Rain either, so he can't corroborate this information in good faith. He can say maybe someone crossed, but he has been purveying outside for the last 20 seconds actively, and now is just in a listening spot. Kadian's now set up to basically catch lurks and assist with denying rotations. A low buy for his teammates puts it in a very unique position. But what can he really do here? 50 seconds, ramp under question. Oh my god, he can actually clear out control side. There's no rotations lower because they haven't called this. Kadian is correct that bringing his teammates downstairs is the right move. This but can they get to him? If they can even force somebody downstairs, that's something. A smoke in front of Ross. It's going to bank on Brokey. He doesn't get a kill, but the damage is certainly there. They have managed to get down into the B site. Frozen over on single. They still don't know about Kadian, but they're losing players as this flank comes immediately in. Again, they have control side with the op. A dink from downtown. It's just pistols for the majority. Kadian's op now found out to be inside of control, but all of his team is falling all around him. He lands his shot, but it's still no kill and no scope, no connection. Twists, Mac 10. Okay. Too much of an ask, and we get tied at 11. Ooh, that is very well handled from Twi from FaZe. Excuse me. That was a very scary situation. When they smoked, they literally smoked out Rops, specifically playing on that left side. Crazy. I just said that Rops is mm -hmm. one of the few players who consistently goes there because he can be consistent at the Tier 1 in that spot, and they smoked him out only just to go around. That was a huge call out, and it ended up almost working. A very hard situation to synthesize. Sometimes you don't expect to be the guy who gets the secret, no one sees you, and then to like go into control side and you haven't actually influenced any rotation, so you have no idea what the other team wants to do. It's hard to make decisions from that perspective, but they nearly made something happen. That was difficult for FaZe, but they found their way out. Damn. Couple players all the way down, twists in with the solo AK, so they're gonna try to get this one happening. It could lead to a limitation for twists in the follow-up, but this is FaZe with a golden opportunity to close out this game with 13. Yakinder again gets over to Secret, much like Kadia in the round prior. Of course, this time it's very well known. Rain, he'll just tuck back into main. Yeah. Majority huh. numbers for Liquid over oh, the towards Lobby. The flash perfect. is fantastic from Skulls. His entries have been stifled in A, but his support this round is instrumental. Down the vent they'll go. Kerrigan in position, double, and a bomb dropped at his feet. He backs up, but Yakinder's no longer in secret. Instead, opting to go deep. CT, his realm, 50 seconds on this clock, twists AK, yet to be seen, the heaven what? peak. It works, but so does oh. Kerrigan, a triple. Beretta's into the back of Frozen. This round goes back and forth. The only thing that's been essential is Kerrigan on that bomb, and Rops is going to come through with his impact, pushing Yakinder into a clutch. God, Kerrigan did everything right there. 30 seconds, and Yakinder, what can he do? He's already been known coming out of heaven. The vent drop is just so precarious. The bomb down there, I don't know. The op, he has to save it because of the money. It's an economic decision that Yakinder has to walk away from this, and FaZe will take 12. They let 12 slip. Kerrigan. Kerrigan, been... listen, for the fact that Kerrigan is 13 and 17 right now, he had a complete, like, it was an abject failure in the first half, what he was able to put up in terms of numbers. So the recovery is noticed, okay? You look at the scoreline now, you think he's had an overall bad game, but he's absolutely saved FaZe in these last few rounds. And who does he shut down second coming out of vent? Gets a little bit of Cadian. Yeah. Twists also losing a duel straight up to Kerrigan. He had the advantage of that headshot angle over the, the double doors. Still, for what that one AK was able to accomplish last round, that buy, Team Liquid come in. Decent. It's a MAC-10 on twist. It's a real limitation. Rain beneath Silo. Not a spot that he has played this entire half. Is it one that Yakinder forgets to check? Looks like it. Yes. Easy 5v4. 
Now Rain's just looking to get out of dodge. Naf on the Ooh. approach. It's actually Kadian from up top to get that kill. Naf still stagnant at five frags on did, this map. Yeah, how did he even find that? And Twist at 28 right now. Jesus. It's an unbelievable amount of output. A walkout from Lurk, or, or sorry, a Lurk, excuse me, from Skulls. And this means that he's got some good information. Wait, this is huge. This is a full. Wait, this is huge. Go up or, oh, he's just gonna go up into heaven. He has no idea about this up below him, but now he's going to see more than he's gonna see every target if but he wants to. He also doesn't look. He still doesn't know. Brokey from down beneath him. Look at these targets. Tech nine to the side, but he exposes himself. Frozen down from sight. Able to get that trade immediately. What more could have been done if not for Brokey in the back of sight, stopping Twist in his tracks, and poor Naf who was dinked early on by Rain and has been nearly non-existent in this map to try and close out 1v2, 11 health, or phase survive the test. Liquid frozen in their tracks as FaZe Clan bring it back. A CT side that hangs on for dear life. Kerrigan's 3K over towards those vents and Rain a consistency. The pillar of this clan from start to finish Map one in the bag. What a fight that we got to witness there on Nuke. Incredible performances from individual players and FaZe claiming it right at the end. But I have to talk about the man on the losing side for this one, Twist, because he was going up against his previous team, a team he's won so many titles with, Babski, and it was like he had been unleashed. He was a demon. I mean, he did his, his former teammates dirty. Like, he played lights out, and he deserved in some way to win that game, but it was the game of the small margins. Small margins, but big plays from Twist. We're going to get a chance to see some of those moments. He's just an incredible aimer. Also one of the players with the, the highest headshot percentage in the game. I think it speaks for itself. Him not making the top 20 last year was also a big surprise for many pl uh, players. He's such a great player when he's on his A game. I do think he sometimes lacks consistency, but I think it's going to be a lot easier in this lineup with Team Liquid. If this is what he looks like at the start with Liquid, what happens in a couple of months when they've all settled? Because then I will be terrified for anyone that has to go up against it. Yeah, and I'm very much looking at Twist and, and Kadian as a, a stown type of Kadian duo. They look like they were brothers, like a duo, and I've seen them outside of, of the building always hanging around, and I think it's going to be built a super fun and good atmosphere between those two for the future in, in Team Liquid. But even though Twist was able to pop off, it wasn't enough because FaZe was able to claim their map pick. And I do think that it helped that towards the second half, Rain decided to pitch up on the server and do some epic things as well. Yeah, um, Kerrigan mentioned before the game that he has two of the best outside players. And I think we can testament to that after seeing what Rain did outside. He is so good in this position. He's not the strongest aimer anymore, but he's so smart around these smokes. It, I'm not sure how much damage this guy does through smokes and yard, but it's definitely one of the highest in the game. I'm 100% sure he does it so often and he's really an expert what a lot of players will say and a lot of fans i'll talk about new lineups how new lineups need time to develop how you can't expect much from them and i agree but also when you take a look at liquid who is now going up against arguably one of the best teams in the world they haven't been together very long this roster they've been in north america where the the level of play that they can practice against is not exactly great. And yet they've come here, they look the way they do. So what is it about Liquid that they were able to take it to phase like this? If you look at the players, they have star players. They are meant to be a top five team. I don't think this project is going to be happy if they're going to stay around the top 10 mark. I think they bought in heavy. I think Twist is no cheap player. KDM for sure also had other offers. Nafly, one of the best anchor players in the world. He can die at one point, was such an incredible rifler. I still think he's got it, but he's nowhere near the same. And then they picked up Skull Skulls, obviously in a term to keep that North American spot, but also because he was a really good candidate. Star players, though, we've seen in the past can come together and it doesn't work out. So what is it specifically about these players when they're in the server that's working? I think Kadian has the, the know-how. He's been in a heroic where he built it from scratch. Now he's building a new project from scratch and he knows he has so much better pieces than what he started it with heroic. So I'm not going to be worried that Liquid is not going to be competitive. They are for sure going to be a good team at one point. I'm just not sure when it's going to be. Kadian did have moments, though, where we saw some of his brilliance and also those those standalone Kadian moments that people either love or hate him yeah. for. I mean, Kadian with the, in the clutches is so filthy. Like, that, that door behind Under, I'm not sure how many clutches he's made at this point, but it's kind of, yeah, a memory from my past. 
We've actually got the clutch we're talking about. It's up now. Oh, not too bad. Okay, so they're actually going to go through to the A-side, and it's really a miss, and it looks like communication is super off. You can die. I have no idea where they are placed. And then all of a sudden, it just falls down, and then Kadian actually managed to escape. He does that smart thing. He fakes the steps, and look at the rotation. They think that he's going under, and now all of a sudden, he has the timing. He's going to be looking for the players. has no idea, but he clears all the angles. That MVP lightning strike, he's so comfortable with it. Gets the first one, and then, yeah, the one we won in the end. He gets to play with the door. It's quite easy to play it from here, as he can close the door if he misses the shot, but look what it means to them. Kadian is, like, quite a polarizing figure, right? So people either love him or they hate him, but I'm curious, because you've obviously played up against him. What What is it about Kadian that can frustrate another player? He gets in your head. Like, he, he plays the mental game like Kerrigan used to do in the old days. I still think he got it, but he's just such a, a prick to play against. He is so annoying when it comes to the plays. He just runs through a smoke all of a sudden, and then he's gonna laugh at you after the round ends. So he's kind of an, an Apex Kerrigan type of person, and I think it fits the team very much. Do you think that that helps when you're in in a lineup with him? Obviously, but if you're playing with mm -hmm. him, that sort of that mental game, because if he's laughing and stuff, there's a level of confidence that's maybe feeding into the rest of the team. Yeah, I mean, we spoke about the sports psychologist. If he agrees that this is the way of doing it, I think it's a very nice thing. Um, before the game, I'm sure that all the players have sat down. How do we want to play officials? Do we want you to start screaming? Do we want to keep it down a tone? It's kind of a question that you always have to ask in game leader. I want to go back to what we were talking about in the pre-match. And again, if you've just joined us, of course, both of these teams, they are competing for a place in London. That is what is up for grabs. The winner is going to be heading to London. The the other team will be having to play tomorrow. Right now, Fayez has taken their map pick, but it was very close. You mentioned that you questioned the Zeus as a coach for, for Liquid. So let's walk through. Mm -hmm. You don't think that he's been in top-level Counter-Strike for a while? Yeah, he's been out of the game for some time. I'm, I'm not saying Zeus isn't a, a qualified candidate to take on the job, but I'm having a hard time to see why did he was the right. I think you said it with the big names, but he's also been in the names with the Coursera guys and so on, and that didn't work after the last time. I'm not sure he's up to tactically, but I think Kadian is going to onboard him to that process relatively quickly. Do you know what I think people forget about Zeus, uh, and I'm about to reveal my age here, is that Zeus was a coach before having a coach for a Counter-Strike team was a thing. Yeah, and one he was one of the first that was standing behind teams and, and getting involved. So I feel like there is such a base of knowledge there. Mm. So yes, maybe he hasn't been coaching at the top level for, for a little while, but he still just got so much experience, not only in what teams need, and, and like I said, what big attitudes need, which I think in the case of this Liquid lineup, they desperately need someone who can kind of take the reins. And you saw there during the game that he gets behind them, he shouts, he's supportive in that way. So I think that that helps, but I also do think that he has the, the tactical knowledge to step in and go, okay, you need to do this, you need to do this, and there's no fear in speaking up to them. And I mean, that's a very uneducated opinion, right? But for me, I think it's the experience that comes with it. This team from Liquid, they don't need a coach to sit and tell them exactly what to do. They just need someone to bash their heads together when they're, they're not performing. Yeah, I mean, I would argue that Kadian sometimes needed help in that aspect. I'm not sure if Exist was the right combination with him, but now he's got a whole nother coach. Exist was the tactical mind. He was very behind the scenes. And now we have a guy like Zeus who's going to take control of the team in a human way, right? He's going to be the guy who's always clapping the guys and really getting the energy up. And, and I'm not sure what Liquid needs. Time will tell. And I think Kadian in some interviews should surely highlight what Zeus brings to the table. Also, completely off topic here, Babski, but of course, everyone everyone likes the emotional aspects of this game. How the hell does this work when you've got Kadian, who is a very emotional player, yeah. and his coach is a very loud, emotional Brazilian? Because when things get go wrong, which inevitably they do in any team, there are going to be some epic shouting matches in the backstage, right? Yeah, I mean, most of the time it's going to be good. I, I don't disagree with that. But f for some time, I also think it can cause a little bit of stress because all of a sudden, I remember Katie and talking about back in the days with Heroic, they would scream so much that they didn't know where the orb was when they had to pick it up because Katie would be like, orb side, orb side, and then start was like, yeah! <laughs> like, he, they wouldn't be able to do that. And I hopefully a guy like Suze is not going to go to that level. So they probably figured it out by now. We're talking absolute rubbish, but it's super interesting anyway. Uh, in time, we'll see how this liquid roster pans out. But for now, in time, we need to see what's going to happen on the next map, which will happen right after this.
that was an important map. Yes, it was, Carrigan, because by winning it and then winning the next one, you get to go to London. They should have included Blame Evan in that mix as well. Why is it that Danish in-game leaders have to constantly shout at each other? Because, Bubsky, you said it. Cadian gets in your head yeah. when you're playing against him. Is it just a thing that they teach you all in Danish Counter-Strike school? We don't go to school. We skip school to play Counter-Strike. So that's the thing. <laughs> we go to the local LAN events early on. And I think it's just such a normal thing because you have these Björk events where you bring your own computer, you set it up, and then you would sit like two rows away from like people you've never played against. And then all of a sudden you feel no relation to them. So you would just be saying stuff like, you guys are so shy after round one. And then, then would just go through the halls of, of that arena. And it obviously works. Cause like you said, Cadian's got in your head before. I mean, I'm also a, an easy one to manipulate, I would say, but uh, for some it works and for some it doesn't. I would say that it's also cost him rounds at times where he would scream because, as we spoke before, that they've actually missed the orb in saving it a couple of times solely due to being too loud. Liquid picked Mirage, that's where we're going to next. How does this one play out, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to look at what is Liquid's map pool going to be, because they're going to come in with a loads of experience from everywhere. Liquid had their map pool, FaZe had their one, and Heroic had one as well. So who is going to be the deciding factor of which six maps are we going to play? I think this event has shown that Mirage is one of the what like to play, but it's going to be interesting to follow how much are they willing to gamble. There's so much experience on that phase line that they've been in these high pressure situations so many times before all together. I know they have one new piece, but I don't think that that's going to change the mentality of the four other players. For them, Mirage, they know how to play this. They've got this, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to look at uh, also Rain and, and Rob's again, oh, sorry, Rain and, and Frozen again, because they're going to be crossing on each other's roles on the A-side Mirage. They always play that, except for now, one of them is going to have to change. I would expect Frozen to go into the connector area, but it's a very different role from what the A-side is. A-side is very much about staying alive, call the flashes, use your aim, while in connector, it's way more about those aggressive plays, getting a flash from the teammate, using the one-way smoke. So it's going to be a whole lot different from face. I just got a great idea. Obviously, on the side of Liquid, you have the Brazilians, which are loud, North Americans, which tend to be loud, and Cadian, probably the loudest Dane we know. Imagine if we had a decimeter and we measured those levels and compared them to launders. Compared them to launders, this is this is the quiet half. We're talking about getting rowdy. She's right, North Americans do get loud. Uh, Brazilians, known for the passion, and Cadian, I think, fits right in. Uh, so it turns out Bubski is easy to manipulate and never went to school. Is that what I just learned from that death segment? Didn't need to tell me that. GG Bet Odds have FaZe as the favorites in this series. They had them as the favorites coming in, but now with the map in their back pocket, we go, what was that, one to four? One to four, which I actually think is still, it's kind of steep compared, like if you, mm. after you watch that game, I think it's four to one that Liquid bring this back. I understand because it's a new team, uh, FaZe in good form could bring it back, but I feel like Liquid made that extremely competitive. So maybe there's uh, some money to be made right there. I don't know. I don't know, but what we do know is that Liquid are two maps away from London, or FaZe are only one. And you better believe they know how to game on Mirage. Yeah, damn right. We're talking about a team again that since the return from the online era have never missed a Blast Finals, spring or fall, and have never had to go to the showdown. I'm talking about FaZe. Liquid, all too common, a showdown attendee. Rain's not going to get anything before falling. We've got the plant opposite default. Heavy jungle control, but there's also a lot of CTs up here in the window. Naf, I think just gush skulls in the back of the head as that was a hectic looking jungle fight. Maybe not anticipating so many players. And then a flank comes out from Kerrigan as he's just allowed it to slide out onto the site. We had Cadian. Look at this. Checking his shoes. But the bomb's not planted for this side, so he can actually creep around default now. And they're going to lose track of this for sure. He gets spotted by the stairs players, oh. still switching over. And now the player over on ramp can just buy time. Kadian from behind triple. And there's the no kits on now. Robs didn't manage to get on top. Playing Firebox with the bomb planted Insane. off the default. Wow, it's time to take a shower. Who the hell are you? Meanwhile... We are getting sweaty. I mean, to be fair, all his teammates are supposed to be up in jungle or on ramp, so when Skulls gets flushed out and then dies to Kerrigan because he's standing on bench, it's kind of like, damn, Kadian, you didn't help. But at the same time, you'd already lost jungle. Whatever Skulls gets done, he gets done. Kadian was playing for the entire round, like yeah, this here, right? He had freedom to go, yeah, to get whatever he could. That's, sorry, buddy. That's good. Then delay in this objective base game is all they needed in that situation. 
So it sets up for an interesting second round where there is a, a full investment here from FaZe. And Brokey has the best gun. For the defense. As the T's start to encroach on his bomb site. It will be an A play in a matter of seconds. But it looks like they're trying to establish either one lurk or getting into connector control. They're still two in mid, so waiting to see what the complexion of this round really looks like as the CTs start to make their way over. Okay, for a second, look like two potentially. Nap has to have a better game. Straight up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's a game that's so close that if anybody has a couple extra kills, they could dictate the outcome. And uh, yeah, Naf could have absolutely done more. You know, I think at one thing at the start of the map when he's playing CT on ramp and they're just not quite coming towards him, so it's a lot of retake situations or rotate situations. By the end of that game, especially on T side, just never got anything going. Finished with six frags That's back on Nuke. That's what's always so impressive about anchors is that, like, some days you just, like you said, you end up rotating into unwinnable retakes and mm -hmm. you just end up with a bad scoreline, but you didn't really do much. Right. But you have to stay confident and warm for the next for half. For the second half. That's the thing. And is get your get your frags. You know, trying to hold ramp where we're saying he didn't get fights. He just goes two and seven. It's not the end of the world. They switch to the T side. He goes four and 12. Mm -hmm. At that point... You have just had no impact. Yeah, absolutely. They'll try to get frozen here, hanging on to the Galil, and sure enough, oh now... Oh my god. ...padding stats early with the 3k. Well, I mean, not just that, denying the save of that gun with his Glock. With the Glock. <laughs> with his Glock. All right. Okay. The energy's right today. Everyone's frying. It has to be. This is the day Some that... people are burning themselves with the hot oil, but everybody is frying. I mean, it's the fifth day of the Blast groups, and finally, you win something if you pick up the victory. You know, we're not just jockeying for the finals. This is London on the line. Two spots available as well tomorrow. But all eight teams knew what they were walking into today. Still got Virtus Pro and Big waiting in the wings. Quick hop out from apartments. Rops MP9 down on catwalk. It's a good idea. Yeah, CT's trying to make something happen with less this round, but all seems good. There's a pretty uh, pretty rapid pace, I feel like, to the T side so far out of Liquid. This movement is so good. He just instantly silent drop without even lining it up right there. Just perfect. Wasn't heard. Brokey can at least save this gun. That's not too bad. Or can he? Naf's going to inspire his teammates to go hunting with a Glock. 3-0 mm. the start. I'm going to bring it up just because it happened yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, go for it. Ready? Oh, Rain started the game versus Gamer Legion. Lights out. Disappeared in the second map. Came back for map three. It was like a bad Ancient, or was it coming back? It was a bad ancient. overpass. Right, bad, bad overpass. On Ancient, on he ancient. just dominated out of the gate, right? Yeah. And we saw very instrumental to the phase win back on Nuke. Pretty much the whole map long, T side, CT side, didn't matter. He had his impact outside, mid rounds, opening kills. Rain was there, omnipresent. I'm not going to overreact as we're only three rounds in, but it's a 0 and 3 start for Rain. And I, I would just hate to see an integral piece of phase fall silent. I mean, he's great last map. Map to map. So. I don't need that Gamer Legion flashback. Hadian already sliding out from ramp. Gets caught out by rain. No stress. No sweat. Naf takes the place of the dead opper. Skulls has a shot whiz by towards Palace. So they know that there was three initially here on A. They score a tempo coming down to this bench. And ooh, I think Rops is, he was ready for something, but uh, obviously it was unlikely that Yakinder could have crossed. So sharp aim nets him one. Frozen holding from spawn and Yakinder tries to take speed. Frozen in the right place early. And this uh, makes the map a little bit more confusing for the T side. Maybe that was one tempo too many. Leaning back by murder hold though, catwalk, window, 
all clear for the taking. And Brokey's not posted at all from, like, ticket down towards Khan, so... Time ticking. And Skull's applying A pressure, but that bomb twists in NAF. Couple Canadian killers working their way up uh, catwalk, and Kerrigan that... takes an angle where the, he can't see them. Yeah, it's not spotted. Timing for Kerrigan. Kerrigan will also spot a second target. And the bomb gets dropped right there. Twist deals with the rotator. No Kerrigan can just lock this in, and there's not really time here for Twist to go grab bombs, so... It's gonna fizzle out. Ooh! Damn, Kerrigan! Turn it all the way up. Okay. He's got that aim tonight. Sheesh. Sheesh. That's a good round, Kerrigan, and uh, a great end to Nuke as well. Just a couple of these, like, you know, 90-degree flick moments already. Where he just deals with pressure from both ends. Nice positioning. Hey! Fucking sick, Finn! Rosen I loves that. Finn. Mixed by once again. But it is with that powerful op in the golden hands of Cadian. The mixed by last time made some magic happen in the, in the New Jersey. Rain tucks in. That's gonna leave him with zero support here. You kinder dodging bullets. Skulls comes out with the entry. Oh, oh a second gone. kill out of Skulls. Wow. And Beautiful he... re-engagement there. Jiggling on the corner of Palace. Yeah. You kinder's going deep. Twist catches Brokey. This was the lesser buy from Liquid, and they just squeeze into that A site like it's nothing. Yeah, found a good timing right there. Skulls was. I would say on Nuke that there were multiple trade situations that Skulls aim wasn't good enough to keep up, and that made the round's a little awkward for Liquid, but at the same time, he took good fights. He just lost them, and so it was disappointing when he lost them. And I think his utility so far has actually been pretty good. So I would say he's not making the map worse. The only thing right now is maybe the confidence in the peaks or who you know the level of opponent that he's playing against. But here we can see a, a great moment where the aim is just right, and it definitely wins Liquid around. So nice job up in the halls, Lurk. And that fly somebody who gets who who has gotten shoved around, I think, the most in terms of roles in the last like year or two, with your kinder coming into the team with a liege previously, um, splitting up lurk roles sometimes, sometimes taking more supportive roles, and it and I think miraculously somehow still has great stats when you zoom out. I mean, last map was not great, but that was just one map. An anomaly. Um but yeah, he has somebody. He is somebody who has had to be the most malleable and adaptable um, on the roster. When Rainmaker came into the team, he's never really complained about it. But um, he has had to be ready for change. Oh. Nasty Tech 9 shot from Twist, but really to me, it's that Skull's second kill. Just minimizing his exposure to the entirety of the defense. One frag at a time, one step after another, and into A they went. Kerrigan with the mid window peak as Smoke got exposed. He's the only M4. Clear that mid will be a persistent feature here for Team Liquid. Ooh. Oh. Deagle strikes down the first victim here to the favor of FaZe. And do they forget about it? The Kinder's gun runs empty. Kerrigan double! Wow, nice control. The M4 again. But they've taken over Palace, of course, after taking out Skulls. I believe that was in Palace. No, it was on the ramp, actually, right yep. beside where Naf was. So they might not know about this push. But they do know it's high numbers here for FaZe. Katie and stuck top middle with the bomb as well. So Nav's going to have to do something to unroot this defense. Looking and looking, but again with palace control, odds are he will not find this. Which could lead to an early death to Nafly. He's he's aware of it. He can he can extend this information. There, There's a safe plant with the smoke 
that they have. They have enough utility. There's actually a world where they get this, but, you know, we've got a very clever person inside a palace to try to... Molly will help. Yeah. So, there, there it is. They might have found the safe plant. We'll see if Rob's tries to do anything, but... Maps holding it. Ooh! No, oh. he doesn't get the kill fast enough. Oof. That is exactly what they had to do. It's the only thing they could do is throw Rob's out from Palace. That was just a matter of, well, you got to time that molly perfectly because you could see that there was no time to just like run up into the site and plant. Rob's with a perfect level of disrespect. Considering the numbers advantage, he has every right to run out and try to interrupt that. Disgusting. Kerrigan kind of saves it once again. Damn right he like does. He set up this mid-round with this beautiful 2k. An individual hero here for FaZe. Wish we got to see exactly how Rops ran that out, right? Whether it stepped through half the Molotov did, to, take yeah, the to take the damage. Yeah. But also, I would have liked to see Naf's perspective, too. Too many, too many sets of eyes. Molotov gonna burn Twist to a crisp. They made him pay for that. Yeah, not coming through this time, but Rain back exposed as Rops was in the smoke. At least he trades quick. Maintaining connector for now. Robs is going to be fine here. Teammate Smoke makes sure that he is okay. Hanging on. Brokey's frag grenade to soften up skulls. But now he is starting to get burned out from the corner. Tech 9 taps can't quite find their intended target. So Frozen is pulled into the action as well. The risky. con guy's pressured. The window guy's pressured. Frozen comes through to deal death to one and push back the other two. Wow, that was some good firefighting here from FaZe as they deal with all of that um, disruptive dis disruption with the with the Molotovs. And they threw some good ones themselves inside of B-Halls to stop that initial rush. Mac-10 and Tech-9 starting to creep up into the B-Site. Are they just going to try it? There's a CT here. And they heard Brokey. Pillar. Yeah, they heard Brokey, but Rops flanks fast enough, drops <laughs> the bomb. And Kerrigan, the insurance policy on the B-Site yet once more. They can go and grab that. Well, face have London in their sights, looking to steal the map pick away from Liquid. And I think Kerrigan shouted at the end of the last game, that was a very important map. Man, did it ever come down to the wire? Mm -hmm. It did. Yeah, I couldn't even really tell who had more highlights. Like, maybe Liquid had more highlights, and so they got closer, but the quality of rounds was higher for FaZe. FaZe had good pistols, though, so... Yes. Yep. As they have. Yeah. It was definitely a very, very even map. We knew the potential on this series was going to be high. We just weren't sure if, you know, someone would have an off day. Enough for fireworks on Nuke. Rain going to fall out to the Desert Eagle. This is a bomb plant for Katie and Guaranteed. A little bit of money in the back pockets of Liquid. Oh. What more do you have Oof. in that magic pouch? Kadian dead to Rops off top stairs. Teammates not far behind him. We do get this creep out from Nap onto Tetris. He can try to jump over with the Glock, but Kerrigan always here and always helping. Yakinder, the bomb is not planted for him. Kerrigan's just going to get right on this and deal with it. Phase tying up after the 3-0 start out of Liquid. Yeah, that was a nice, uh, nice shot there from Kadian. About it. A game now. Phase somewhat in control. So the, the the economy has been all or nothing for Liquid. I feel like we're seeing a lot more saves than you would than we than we're used to seeing so far, uh, comparing to other teams in the group. But I haven't done any, you know, any economy analysis on like who's saving how much. But it certainly feels like there are you know a lot more Glock, you know. Full Glock rounds, full USP rounds, back-to-back -back saves. Frozen's been hoarding gold this entire time. Not only do we have FaZe tying up, but nice streak of rounds here. Could be a very healthy CT half. Look with charging headstrong down middle. Yakinder trying to keep his head under this ledge. Actually comes peeking into the fight. And it's Twist to uh -oh. pick up Kerrigan. He was trying to get into ladder room. Beautiful flash, but Ooh. Frozen unfazed. 
through connector, three players look to charge. Again, we've got Palace positioning here from FaZe Clan. This time it's Brokey. And he is one of two ops in this round. Rops also with his on the other side, but while that shot did land, Nap okay. survives it, and the A-site just crumbles underneath this pinch. Smokes up from both sides, Liquid back to the lead. Jesus, just like that. Out of nowhere. That was an explosive round. Great kill from Frozen. I thought that that's where he saved it. Ate the flash, confirmed Dink when he was jumped, boosted on bricks on Cat, and then still hit the blind spray on Twist, and I'm sure he was tilted about that, but... From that point on, no more deaths for Liquid. They take over the A-site with haste. Great scaling. Nice shot from Katie in through triple. And just like that, right back in the lead. Stark improvement from Nafly between map one and two. Yeah, I remember he was two and seven. Oh, nuke. There was a tweet from Nero a couple days ago quoting the interview that Naf did saying, yeah, I've just been picking up, you know, all the crummy spots. I've been picking up all the support, doing all the dirty work here, just kind of, you know, doing what I have to. <laughs> and then it's a like picture it. of his ratings, and it's just a sea of green because even doing the janitorial work on Team Liquid, Naf is the man. So this actually would have been his worst rating of a map since this Liquid roster came to be. That's what we got on Nuke. Mm. Yeah, very, very consistent. Always has been. Was well, something of a prodigy way back in the day when pro leagues used to be in, uh, in Texas every year. Definitely turned heads as a youngster. Mm -hmm. I'll forever remember that multi-kill spray down off ticket. a site Mirage. Wow. You are older than you look. R-A-W-P-Z, baby. Ooh. Deep control here. With Frozen. Yep. Nice trade out of Robs. You know, ultimately, they never saw that second off last round because Robs Whoa. kept it hidden over towards B, but Skulls will reopen the possibility of this split. He's jumping back into ladder room. They're going to chill for a second. They still have control of mid. CTs are going to be roaming around. Now, how do they read the rotations? We've got to walk into underpass just to add one layer of obfuscation to what the game plan might be here for Liquid. But sometimes when you try to do this, you make it complicated for yourself. So FaZe's course of action is to go full passive on the extremities and wait. Let Brokey take all the freedoms. He moves in towards default. This is a great angle versus connector. And if, for, if they feel comfortable that it's not Palace, he has the perfect fight. Brokey could instantly win this, but he's actually concerned about CT and jungle. But he's got it all under wraps. Adian. Double backing towards middle. Maybe looking at Catwalk instead. Missed shot. Skulls reopens A-site. Rops. He's rotating out. And if this gets caught by Skulls, then Kadian is going to go sprinting up Cat. But he's got to start going now. At least he knows the positioning of the 1B player. He can assume that. This kill right here, right now. Oh, but a missed yeah. chance. And it is Rops instead to lay down lead with that AWP. Three frags on the round from start to finish. Yeah, shout out to Rops. You get a rare cameo with him on that off, but uh, when he wields it, he wields it well. We know that much. Kadian actually did have the right read, but missed the shot. Oh. It's me every round. You shouldn't find that one! Oh, blown open smoke, Rops. From passive off, to all-out combat, doesn't see anything top middle, but doesn't mean they're not there. Huge pack of players out of Liquid trying to just charge again towards Catwalk. It's Skulls getting picked out of Palace, trying to show a little skin before the mid players can come through, and Frozen Ooh. finding the smoke in a weird spot. It's an easy headshot, and finally an answer back from Liquid in the 3v5. Frozen 
taking over ladder. Kadian just trying to go oh, what? Through the smoke like it's nothing. And then Yakinder opens this right back and up. Suddenly it's that a real round. Is explosive. Missed shot from Rops. We've got Kadian on high alert with Yakinder still with him. Yakinder has the bomb he can't plant. Rops is still last the player. They know him. They know that he's back here. Rops looking for the duels. And oh. flicked down by Kadian. What? Is that? There's a bit of revenge, and that duo of Kadian and Yakinder stole the show right there. Two impossible kills back to back. Kerrigan's got to be pissed. Bro, look at the two of them firing each other up as well. He Fuel was, to the fire. He was about to look silly, right? Running through a cat smoke into a rifle, wow. and watching the smoke, and boom, it's the kill. He also gets the first trade back. Ridiculous. Rounds like that show us that you can think like a chess player, but we are playing in real time. Mistakes will be made. And if you can have combat moments like mm -hmm. that, well, I mean, listen, you can break the game. Between Nuke and this map, we've already seen these nice moments of just like all out crazy hyper aggression from Liquid. Is that not a, a version of Liquid your kinder can thrive in? 100%. Inspired by Kadian as they charge up Catwalk last round. He tries to get frisky with it again here in the final round of the half. Liquid have gotten themselves their sixth, and they had weapons advantage coming into close number 12. But a speed bump. As Frozen finds one, Rops' Desert Eagle off the mark. MP9 spray, a little too much to ask. And Rops' Deagle picks up the slack. Naf bottom gone. Ooh, Ooh, a second out of Rops' sidearm. I mean, luckily, Skulls rebalances the map with that one kill. This is the only chance they have. Kadian, another walk back, though. Hello. Wait a second. Running up into Connector. What? The bomb could have definitely just joined up with Skulls. They really thought that they were going to focus on that one kill he got. Ooh. Oh. And, okay, just when you think maybe phaser outclassed, it's a 3k out of Rops with a double deagle, a taste of their own medicine, liquid cooled off. We're tied at six at the end of this half. We're live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only mid, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can rush short and they can't go ups. Okay, let's do that. Let's just rush short. I didn't buy nades, by the way. Flash by side. Inside, inside. Dead. Hit dead. I'm planning, I'm planning. Together? Yeah, ready? One, Three, two, three. two, one. Woo. Jesus Christ. They're looking, they're smiling, man. I'm blocking short okay. instead. Alright, I'm coming long. I have HE. I have flash if you play small pit. Long once. One low, one low. Both long, both long. I'm going behind us. Okay. I can smoke default after and we can like go to side. Yeah, I think we should do that. I think he's in holes or... Yeah, I don't think he's side. I smoke default and flashing side once. I'm going first. Oh, we got it, we got it. <laughs> was a little concerning there. Hey, the... okay, one Nico. One double at mid instant. Do we have time now, right? We have time, I think. We'll find out. It's good to find out Nico. I won't take bottom. Try flashing one for you. Flash. Too long, too long, too nice. They're going a little bit, I think. I think I have to move to short uh, side. That's so fast though. Long. 
Nice! Let's go! 8 damage, okay. Wanna double nade pit maybe? Team Liquid getting a little wild towards the tail end of that T side here on their map choice of Mirage. We go back and forth for the last five rounds of the half, and this six round half from Team Liquid, half of it off of the pistol and conversions. So mm -hmm. pretty solid defense we had out of phase. We got that double op out of Rops and of course Brokey, and some pretty stellar, I think, palace control at times as well. They'll be taking to the offense with Rops at the top of the board and Kerrigan right behind him. Team Liquid, Got to bounce back now, or it's FaZe going to London. Skulls, he'll be cleared off at the ticket booth. One of three defenders here on the A site. Kadian locked into this fight. He's waiting for his triple player to peek, and Twists will do that. Oh, he's two. still peeking. Nicely done. While blind catching Kerrigan, we get Rain into the corner of sight. Gushing, Yakinder. And a lurk out from Khan. Oh Shut down. It is Liquid. Back to the lead. That's a statement. Still alive, still ready to play. And yeah, we learned in that first half that there's still a lot to be learned about how people are going to play uh, Mirage in CS2. And I mean that in the most entertaining way possible because you can break open smokes. Obviously, it's favorable for both the T's and CT's to do it at different times, which makes mid so curious. Like near the end of CSGO, if you had all the correct utility and like were really careful on T side, it was very hard to stop. <laughs> A slow progression into mid control, but now it's just a lot more hectic. There's a lot more counterplay, and yet it's still an appealing option, despite all that counterplay. It makes it very fun to watch, but it also means that CTs are more likely to double down on on holding mid instead of just simply giving it up. So you don't have to just respect every smoke that gets thrown now. Keep all your fanatic window smokes. Keep long enough, Mahone will make a video about it. Yeah, true, true. Um, this is actually a dangerous setup for Nafly. It, they they don't have anyone off. Oh, uh oh. And that was a smoke grenade. Okay. Yeah, was very sketchy. You could see the little panic that he had in his gameplay there, as he throws a smoke and three of them come running at him. Oh, well, they let a plant go down off this. Yep. That's a little bit of money here for FaZe. And considering the buy they came in with, you take it. You take what you can get. Beggars can't be choosers. Frozen can walk away from this. Liquid in eighth. One more. Oh, dude, nice. Yeah, nice catch. Nice shot. The fuse will finally come in, but two kills and a bomb plant. That's not too bad for FaZe, considering they didn't really invest. Um, yeah. No, sometimes it's usually safer, obviously, to have two people in B. Even if you have a cat player, sometimes they can't really help you um, on that one window cross uh, versus anti-ecos. So, held on to mid-control a little bit too long. FaZe get away with that. And now, it's the Nafly secondary op here to complement Kadian. How do you feel about that? I mean... Y'all aboard? This is how... Luminosity won MLG Columbus 2016 versus Liquid. <laughs> okay. That's that's all I can say about that. Yeah. No, definitely relevant. Mm -hmm. Oh, jumping double from cold. Still have nightmares about that. Oh, oh my god. Oh, good night, Frozen. Sweet dreams. Put to rest. Nothing's holding back Kerrigan and Co. from jumping up into the window here. Kadian's actually moving back towards Murder Hole right now. But we get the double A ramp push. It's a it's a it's an open A site. They they will have Kadian come into ticket, but there is a like an awkward thing here where the CTs can push, but they actually don't want to go all the way from the ramp. So they'll send Skulls alone, which is perfectly fine, but he almost becomes a B player, you know what I mean? Coming in from the top of mid. There's no one here right now. Yeah, I mean, he's in mid at the same time as Yakinder, essentially. Kerrigan locked in and the under the vent. Gets found out. Kerrigan staying aware. Oh, oh and yeah. rain. Jesus. Beautiful. Oh, vent was never broken. 
Katie was looking at this for a little while. Yakinder, he'll catch the Kerrigan frag. Now, they don't know about twists, but they're on high alert oh, for it. No. And this feels like FaZe just got a freebie. Yeah, this is this is a situation where you can do too much on the CT side. So, yeah, it's cool that you got a kill and then you got a double push eight ramp, so you know that's clean. Um, but you still got an A site to defense. No eyes on mid in that situation. And you have a passive setup where you don't break the grade open. So there's just almost too many sacrifices for all the full flanks. Agreed. Um, if they had split up actually and just going Palace and, and back to A, that would have been great. But that's obviously with full knowledge of the map. So mm -hmm. Liquid couldn't see that. And uh, FaZe made him pay for it. Oh, dude, Rain is uh, a nice shot. Yeah. That AK is spitting fire. But ultimately, you know, two players pushing ramp, one goes top mid flank, you get nothing out of your top mid flank, you get nothing out of your A ramp player, you get nothing out of the ticket peak because Rain just instant headshot. Yeah, there were a few ways to... So good from Rain that just completely destroyed Kadian, and then also Twist coming up the A ramp could have won his duel versus Rops, and there would have been a chance for a retake, yep. but... They're going to wipe you off their windshield. Keep on driving. Kadian behind triple as the execute comes over top. Ooh, Kerrigan again, dude. Talking about the accuracy of the rifles. His has looked as good as Reigns. They're able to just squeeze out from ramp. They deal with the entirety of that A defense. Nothing can be held here by Liquid. And Phase Run rampant through it. We got Naps stuck down in spawn on the 5-7. These rifles valuable if they can save them. FaZe, they're not wasting any time in bringing this game right back. And this is kind of more of the same of what we got from Liquid. Both pistols in their back pockets on each side of Mirage right now, converting for three in the first half, two in the second. Outside of that, it's been FaZe all day. And Rain is simply not missing headshots. He ultimately ends 2023 with one of the highest headshot percentages in all of Counter-Strike, even higher than Twists, in fact. So we always talk about Twists hitting headshots, but uh, Rain kind of stole his crown. People don't want to talk about it, but that's the only stat that really matters. Everybody knows that. That's what it's like playing with Harry Russell, or just Harry. Harry Russell will not shoot at people if he doesn't think he's going to get the headshot right, because yeah. he has to protect the HSP. And at first, as a teammate, I hated it. Uh huh. But he's so consistent. He is. Doesn't buy five sevens because he's less likely to get headshot kills. That's why he only plays the Deagle. I remember that 1v1 versus Dinko. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's the first time I've seen him mad. He may have the best aim out of all the talent. That is a big claim. But I'm just saying. Bro's never watched me play. He's a contender. Doesn't have a better scout than me. Okay. Th that's fair. You're, you're the number one scout. I'll give you that. He also didn't win the 1v1 tournament. So. <laughs> <laughs> no lands. No lands. Who did win? Dinko, the Dinko. Rat King. Oh, yeah, the Rat King. <laughs> <laughs> First time I've seen Harry, Harry Mad. <laughs> All right, let's see what these saved weapons can get done for Liquid. Tied game. Pretty nasty pace from FaZe these last few. And the economic shortcomings, not a comfortable place here for Liquid. Every time they get back to a lead, it's taken from them. And that's because Kerrigan is climbing the scoreboard. Kerrigan and Rops, 14 frags each. Yakinder stuck in ladder, dodges flash. Was but his barrel sticking out is the question. Yeah, Rain saw it. Doesn't matter. Yakinder still CS2, peeks in. baby, you better swing. Yeah, swinger be swung. Prime example of it. Yakinder starting to pull back from Cat. Kerrigan taking space in connector. Starts to just trudge headstrong into A. 
He's got an offer to try and cover, but a missed shot from Brokey trying to bring Bomb ever closer. It's Twist's USP. Player on sight and sandwich, but Skulls, oh, just both of them. Woo. Pop noggins, and we've got a Bomb plant undeniably oh, inbound. Kadian missed op shot, Rops picking up the slack. 5-7 comes swinging out from jungle, and Naf now finds himself solo 1v3, completely squeezed, smoking off one side, oh. and still trying to deliver. It's hands onto the AK, no kit to be found, but he's got two players separated and a smoke to go top on Bomb. Frozen, does he walk through this? Oh, he did. Naf taps it once, elicits the peak, but Frozen's gonna find him. Just a second off that connector hold, and maybe Naf does the unthinkable. Yeah, close call, but uh, well handled by FaZe. Another round that just comes down to minutia and like the one kill in CT from Kerrigan. He's just saved the day so many times. He's really going for bonuses here. But um, Kadian needed that off shot. I think that's the, the thing that, that makes the site fall over. Round was actually shaping up for, for Liquid, but it's also a round where they didn't invest very much. So FaZe had the expectation. I think luckily for them, they pull it out. And now we've got a full buy and response for Liquid. Nafly on the auto shotgun. It's the only sign of poverty at the moment. Otherwise, it's pure opulence. You still have the op on Kadian, but they lose window. a player. Maybe they popped it open? The Kerrigan's headshot percentage is through the roof right now. Looking like more of an entry than rain. Oh, and there goes the op. Popping the smoke, Kerrigan here again! Oh, Whoa. again! Somebody stop this man! 20 and 11 like it's nothing! And a shoddy peek off catwalk? Not gonna happen! Kerrigan's a beast! <laughs> 21 and 11. And he's chirping. Wow. He's got liquid quiet as a mouse right now. That was, that was insane. When he said 20 and 11, he thought it was the year. Oh, he told Kaden to be smarter in two languages. <laughs> Did you hear Apex talking shit in Danish the other day? Danish, yeah, he said to shut up. Oh my goodness. We're off to a flying start in 2024. And a shot from Skulls. These are mostly unarmored players, so they're falling like flies. Naf. Could be the difference. 5-7 good for the first, but Rain's right there to trade out Kerrigan. He finally goes down, unsuccessful on the entry this time, but so be it, FaZe about to lock in this 11. Oh, man. Two rounds from London. Counter-Strike's just better when FaZe are on top, you know? Yes, it They're is. Just owning, and, and Liquid being right here this early is such a good sign for the future. So many teams at groups that have just been amazing to watch for how, how, like, how latent their rosters are, having Astralis in the form that they are. Having, you know, having Vitality in the place that they start. Mm -hmm. FaZe getting back to form. Yeah, Navi as well, peak for him. Yeah, it's really, really good Dark Horse sign. contender. It's also been the meta has just been very fun in terms of breaking open the smokes. It's going to be remembered as one of the you know, greatest up. mechanics in all of video games, honestly. Dude, get VP out of that group and give them some top contenders. Counter-Strike looking competitive at the start of 2024. Exactly what we need going into the very first major. Kerrigan, not this time either. Two rounds, he goes down empty-handed. It's Ooh. rain to try, but there's just so many numbers there in middle here from Liquid that the fight seems like it will continue. Yeah, he went down. He went for the double down. Now it's down to the, the daycare, I like to call them. Frozen and Rops in the two-on-three to kind of do well by Kerrigan. Some damage here on Skulls. It's a winnable situation. Oh! From Molotov followed by an HE targeted here on Skulls. What a beautiful way to reopen the possibility of this round win. No place to run. Odds in the favor of the post plant slightly. We got Rob stuck in behind ticket, 32 HP. Flash on Frozen if he wants to set up Rob's. Yekinder's gonna send his over first. Rob's sees the jump up, Nafly loses. And then Yekinder trades it back, but unbeknownst to him, Frozen, underhanded flash, hides behind default. Yekinder taking to the top of bench now, closing that gap, getting up in his face, wow. and dealing with the pressure. Oh, no kit, he has to run away from it. Oh, no, confused. <laughs> all, all for phase. All for naught.
Beautifully tethered. Flashbang comes through. Comes in with that killer instinct. But time, time is a fickle mistress. Yeah, and that's, you know, there is a previous history with the three players on the right here. In terms of chemistry, it's a... It's Frozen and Rops reunited from Mouse Sports to, and reunited with Kerrigan as well. Oh, man, they didn't know about the kit. It was actually such a... And you can see what it means. You can see what it means to Liquid. They thought they had it. Twist said, you had it, you had it, even with no kit. I don't think so. That's what he just said, but I don't think so either. But... It was even close, actually, but... <laughs> Twist was convinced, man. He's popping yeah. off, screaming. Hope I'm not wrong, but I didn't think that was close at all. Flashbangs and pressure for Cadian. Map and match point plus 5v4. Even despite FaZe's slower start versus Gamer Legion this week, being the victim of the biggest upset in terms of opening matches in 2024 on land. And they have rebounded with revenge and maybe now victory over Liquid. Trying to get up Catwalk. They've suddenly been stifled. Okay. Skulls from downtown. And look who it is. Uh, once again, Rops and Frozen. If they did it back to back, put them in Cirque du Soleil. This would be an absolute <laughs> miracle, honestly. What kind of acrobatics is it going to take? They lose one end of it. Three players in this bomb site. Feels like the trade potential here is just sky high. Frozen hoping somebody gives him something to work with. Jumps down. He's lost. Oh, a third of his health. Oh. Sees two clean shots, but Skulls is there to end him. Those peaks were disgusting. Yeah, looking for a third. All layered up next to each other. Well, they didn't necessarily need the round. They were they're still in a very comfortable spot. I feel like 12 to 9. after this liquid round and, and it ends up becoming costly in the end because of those last couple of kills. It's just no massive performance from Twist or Katie and then this is from map in contrast to Nuke. They're trying their damnedest as Rain crosses back towards top mid. Two players stranded. Kerrigan finds him through smoke. Well, but Yakinder, no underpass. they haven't seen him. Kerrigan just missed vision. Yakinder catching rain. Support off catwalk. Half the trade. Brokey's got him. Barrel stuffed. Yeah. And Kadian down with nothing. Leaves Liquid in the worst spot possible because Frozen's eyeing up this B site and FaZe are running that bomb. Right. And all they've got is a, a ticket player in Nafly. Also known on A, they can just simply plant the bomb. This should be it. This was a quick couple of maps, but an absolute show all the same. Damn right. Um, Action packed. Okay. Kerrigan backs up into connector. This helps, right? A dire situation, 2v4. You shave one off. You have to try and force the issue. Brokey coming out of sight. Doesn't want to take that instead falling back. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. If you were Skulls, time to go above and beyond. Robs towards Van. They're piecing together the picture, but unfortunately for them, this one is done. Signed by FaZe for the seventh consecutive blast season. FaZe will qualify directly for the finals. No showdown for them. And one last chance for Team Liquid versus G2 tomorrow. Their job not done. Promise on Nuke, but a little flat here in Mirage. Faze is going to London, and I know all the fans are going to be excited. I want to talk about the, the words that I always use with Faze, performance management. They always do just enough to cross the line, and then when they do pop off, it is majestic, which is exactly what it was now when we got to see them just come together as the Faze we know and love, the Faze we've seen lift trophies and just do what they needed to do to get their plane tickets. What an exciting game. I was surprised by the level that these guys brought to the server, and I also think it means a lot to them that they were able to play against such a good team on this level. So I'm going to be looking really forward to seeing Liquid as more tomorrow. For me, the big thing about Liquid, and we will get to see them again tomorrow, so it's not all doom and gloom for them. They can still compete for those tickets to London. Mm. The thing about Liquid is this roster just 
came together and they have not had a lot of time to play. They've been in North America where the level of teams that they can scrim against isn't that great. And yet they just came up against one of the world's best and they may have lost 2-0, but what they did was go toe to toe with them time and time again. You cannot sleep on what this roster is. And I am terrified about what happens in a couple of months when they find their synergy and all click. Kenyan also said in the interview that they weren't expecting to, to win against uh, Alike's of face. So I think it was a very, very nice to see that they actually made it possible. I think easily Liquid with small things going their way, they could have made this 2-0 and then the storyline would have been a whole lot different. So basically what we can wrap up here when we take a look at this game is Babski, the Danes are saving North American Counter-Strike. He did it before, he did it with Rogue, he came back to North and destroyed Danish Counter-Strike, then he got removed and then he got into the Heroic, which made the history that is now Team Liquid. He is such a unique character, Kadian, so I think it's going to be such a blessing for them to have him in North America. We'll see Liquid again tomorrow and we'll see FaZe in London. What a performance from the man with James Banks. London will be calling FaZe's name and maybe Carrigan's name if he can do some of the damage like we just saw there. You said in the pre-match interview that Okay, your own performance wasn't that good, right? Nuke, it was kind of looking the same, and it was very close. You were down, they got to 11, and then you had these string of CT rounds, and you were really full sending it. Was this like, okay, something has to change? I mean, I, I think uh, some of the games here has been very strange for me, but focus, I can feel like I'm not too focused on my crosshair. I don't know if it's um, too early for in the season, or yeah, it's been hard to kind of focus, and then in the end, I'm like, okay, focus more on crosshair now. It was like, focus on crosshair. No, I mean, um, it, it feels good to, to have an impact, especially here on, on Mirage as well, uh, with some CT round, T round. So, yeah, I have that in my pocket, but I don't show them that often. <laughs> it's a surprise attack, right? When they least expect it, Carrigan comes in in full force. You said about, okay, not focusing on the crosses so much. Is that maybe just are you doing too much in the managing of the team at that point, or what is it? No, I don't, I don't think that's an excuse. I, I think okay. it's just bad focus level. Uh, yeah. I have to look into it, what happened this. Tournament and visual device. Um, I mean, calling was always there. I'm always making sure that I can, I'm always being the leader I am mm -hmm. uh, and trying to to support and make sure everybody's coming. But yeah, it has been some strange rounds where we watch the games where like I'm reacting like I'm 40 years old. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but uh, but yeah, it feels good now to. I could feel I was in the zone, uh, and that just feels good to to end this group stage with that. Well, I'm glad you had a good score, because you're making us old guys like we can do it. It's still possible the whole way through. But you avoided the showdown as well. Is that a, a weight off your shoulders for the whole team? I mean, this was the goal coming into the tournament, right? Uh, how we managed to do it, how, how we're supposed to do it, doesn't matter, top six, that's what we, our goal was. Um, it was a little ugly in the beginning, uh, but we managed to, to play good here in the end. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely showdown is a really annoying situation uh, when it comes to scheduling, uh, especially online, everything can happen, right? So now we know, at least we have a tournament in six months from now. <laughs> <laughs> There's one guaranteed, and that's why he got a smile on his face. Thank you very much, Carrigan. My South African accent is going to come into play really hard here, so I apologize. I'm going to use Carrigan's own words to describe his performance on Mirage. Nice. I mean, it was nice. And when he joins the server and actually delivers on the fracking side, FaZe is the best team in the world, in my opinion. When he gets on that team and he kill, kills 20 to 25 people, they almost always win. That's the only issue I have with Carrigan. We see it sometimes, but it's just too rarely. Well, we saw it today, and it was great. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the difference between winning Mirage and not winning Mirage, and it's so rarely that we say that about Kerrigan, but he was the star player today, and we just mentioned all these names of Robs and, and Frozen and Yekinda, all these types of guys, but the old guys can still do it, and he really showed it. Did you just call Kerrigan old? I mean, I'm going to catch him probably one day. I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm going to become his age Babsky, one day, hopefully. you can call him old. I still think he can take you down in the server. Yeah, you got nothing to say because you know a, I'm in right. In a 1v1 aim duel, maybe I still have a chance, but for sure, when it comes to actually winning stuff and not being useless, then for sure he's got the upper hand on me. Well, they've qualified to go to London, and like Harrigan said, he's got a guaranteed tournament in a couple of months. FaZe is going through. They are joining the Vitality Boys and Na'Vi. We will find out who else is going to be heading up after this short break, which we're not going to just yet because I'm going to show you the schedule to just tease you a little bit so you can get super excited about what's to come. It is Virtus Pro up against Big. If you looked at all of these teams on your screen right now, all eight of them, Big was not the name that you thought you were going to see here yesterday. Most would have said Cloud9. Yeah, we had the conversation and I also think there's going to be something interesting in the interview coming up after the break. It's like he can tell the future. Who knows? We're going to a break. We'll see what Bubsky's talking about right after this.
Welcome back to the Blast Premier Spring Groups. It's winner bracket day. Four games and four tickets to London waiting for the victors. We are moving into the final matchup. It is Virtus Pro up against Big. There have been some high-flying names in the mix today. You've seen some of the top teams. You might not have expected the German organization to be here. Many people didn't, and yet, they took down Heroic 2-0, they took down Cloud9 yesterday 2-0, and they have made sure that they belong here now. There is a mountain to climb though when they go up against Virtus Pro. Yeah, I mean, many people in this group had two levels to it. We had the, the Virtus Pro and the Cloud9 who we consider to be the favorites, and then we had the, the underdogs that were the favorites to go down in the showdown. But uh, all of a sudden we have big with a big opportunity. It is a big opportunity for them, and they have delivered in the last few days. I think we've both been pretty tough on them. We've consistently spoken about this lineup, questioned whether they have what it takes to face off against these bigger opponents, and twice now they've proven to us that they do. Yeah, I mean, when, when you have the guy from Poland all of a sudden being a, a superstar, then of course you can win games, and I think he is the main reason of why Big are winning games all of a sudden. Yesterday, he was the main difference why they won against Cloud9. I also think Cloud9 had a hard time because they don't have that orb to potentially challenge him, but he had a free day. But credit to the setup in Big that allows the space for Mantu to deliver. I do think that that plays a big role in how they've strategized to make sure that they can optimize his performance. Yeah, I mean, they are, they are a smart team and Gopi for sure have given some heat maps to him to predict where the rifles are going to be. And we saw it multiple times, especially on that Anubis side, where he was taking the DP angles and time after time again, he caught those angles, got an entry, and that's what an orb on the CT side needs to do. It is pretty interesting that we have this very strategy heavy big yeah. up against the very strategy heavy Virtus Pro. I wouldn't actually say Virtus Pro is the most strategic strategic team, they're just a very slow default team, but big on the other side, I agree, they are very strategic. They play always by the book, they have their pages written, and they know what APC is, but on Virtus Pro it's A, but then it's just B very slowly, and then it's into an execute. I don't think you've seen the textbooks that Virtus Pro walk around no. with. I just think if we had to, if they had to go through that entire textbook, we would be here till next year, January. Yeah, I mean, I think Jabe has his principles down and everybody needs to understand what, what is going on. But I just think if you're going to look at their defaults, generally, they are some of the best in the world, especially on Overpass, which we are hopefully going to be seeing once again as it's normally their pick. The thing about Virtus Pro is they prep very heavy for the teams they're facing off yep. against. So I'm curious what they have done now when they face off against Big. Yeah, and it's also interesting to see the Kai to the left. We spoke about this trio, Jame, Fame and Flit. But all of a sudden, Flip is, is the Nico of this group. He's been top three in the entire tournament. Like, he's been dominating opponents. We're not going to talk about Flit, though, because what I want to hear is from the coach now from Virtus Pro to find out how prepped they are for this big matchup. Now, you guys are looking really strong here at Blast, right? Your games have been solid. I want to touch on the Cloud9 game, though, because even though Anubis, in terms of looking at your map win rate, is not a great map, you almost won them. So are you just seeing more progress, more confidence as a team? To gain more confidence, we need wins. <laughs> but uh, generally, we feel comfortable, but we need to gain more experience. Anubis is new map. Yeah. It's, for example, when we play maps like Inferno, Mirage, Overpass, we play it by years. Yeah. It's different. But Anubis, I think, we're pretty co comfortable because even if we lose, we play close matches. Always close. Yeah. And we just need uh, some wins in a row. Are you expecting it today from Big? What? Anubis. Yes, we expected <laughs> we expected Anubis because they previously tried Vertigo. They lost last three times and it was we know that it will be Anubis. And I think it's not it's also not natural for them in some way. Okay, so obviously they were up late last night, replanning their strategies, uh, prepping, but they've got the coach to do it, and I'm sure James got it as well. And from the way that they're speaking there, it seems that Virtus Pro is more than ready for what Big may throw at them. But it says a lot, right, for Big side. Their best map is by far Vertigo, if you ask me, but they're going away from it because they respect Virtus Pro so much. They go for their Anubis, which of course is their second best, but it just says a lot about the status and the difference between the level of D2 and then of course, we also have the overpass coming in from Virtus Pro. No surprise, the world's best overpass team. No doubt about it, if you ask me. 
Okay, so we know that you feel that they're the best overpass team. I think a lot of other teams respect that. It's going to come down to whether or not Anu uh, Anubis is going to be a map that Big can potentially take from Virtus.pro. And I know that I'm selling Big very short by saying, well, I'm pretty confident VP takes overpass. If they play that way out, it's going to come down to Anubis. And do you think Big is able? You've seen them play it yesterday. Can they do it again? I hope they didn't get back to the hotel too late last night because they're going to need Manto again. He's going to need that information from Gobi in terms of where will he find James because he needs to avoid him because James, as all know, is a very, very passive orber. He's going to stick to a position, hold an angle and wait for Manto to potentially come through. So he needs to find him on the opposite side of map, stay away from him and try to find the rifles instead. You've heard what we have to say. Now let's see what actually happens in game. It is big up against Virtus Pro. Yes, ma'am, it most certainly is. Scrawny and Launders take you guys through the last game of the day for qualifications. We've got Virtus Pro as the GG bet odds favorites. I think that last point Bubsky's making about, you know, James sitting back and maybe waiting for Montu to come into him. The one thing is, is that despite no matter how many angles James is going to end up holding, one of the conversations we had yesterday with Montu was sometimes his inability to move that op forward. I think he's scared. I think he's scared. I think he's very talented, but I don't think he's as brave so when you see him holding an angle like there was moments where he would hold an angle so long then just get flashed by his careful team and die and he should be pushing a bit more so i think he has his mind in the right place and he knows where to go but he's not going deep enough he's not fully committing and he can have great maps because he's got the skill yes um, but he's not going to stand up to someone like jane in the exact same situations jane knows ways in which to get impact with the op that no one else can even figure out um in the same the same spot so they might be similar in the way that they're passive but uh, it's it t t totally different levels and you know? to be fair even with that criticism of montu i think that yesterday is the reason that big are here right now he was single-handedly the star of the show when we got to map two we had you know crimbo kind of have his uptick with him but you know beyond 50 kills across the two maps um it yeah. was it was quite nasty from Montu from start to finish. So without that, we ask ourselves, you know, what does big look like? I would say yes and, and no. I mean, volume was there, yeah. But at the same time, those like last few rounds where we saw him hold an angle and get flash, it was like, if this game went on longer, I don't right. know if he would just get continuously outplayed. Um, in terms of who's the best player, I'd still say it's Krimbo. He's still, he can match up to the wits, I think, of his opponents at mm -hmm. almost every level. And uh, he'll be key on, on Anubis as well. But uh, overpass is where the trouble begins. Yeah, VP kind of being touted as the best or one of the best overpass teams in the world. They have shaped the meta. I did not know you could hear it from right here. Wait. Uh, 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 yeah. huh. oh, lame. Tapson going to get smoked out. E nope. Almost. But no, blocks go over top, nothing. They're gonna just charge out through the heaven smoke. Kinda crazy, kinda crazy. Sets up Sin, pushes along the boardwalk. He still has Montu above him who decides not to go jumping through smoke like his other three teammates. And we've got a bomb down at this point. So man advantage, post plant, and two CTs soon to be found out here by Virtus Pro. But they give the counter terrorists room to wiggle. They've managed to get Montu up along the water. Fame is waiting for him, but Montu comes in off a different angle. And then Mir's going to use the pillar as cover towards barrels. Ooh. Montu double kill in the retake as Jame has secured a little bit of short control. They've got a kit on Sin. They've got James fighting first. He needs to get through Montu and then get Sin off the bomb. And damn, oh, Montu, okay. okay. Yeah. Three headshots in the 2v3 retake like it's nothing. Yes. Such good aim. That was really well played on the on the retake. And you can see what what Big are gonna try to do today already. Like jumping through that smoke to retake early. They want to disrespect the fact that Virtus Pro are good at holding on to space. And um yeah, I mean, like I said, it's not that Montu can't play like this, that he can't hit the shots, it's that he wasn't. So all I can say is I hope he keeps coming forward. I hope he keeps abusing the fact that he's got great mechanics. In, in 2020 on stats alone, he was like top 15 just on like ADR and certain uh, metrics on HLTV. Of course, in terms of actual impact, he wasn't quite there, right? But 
Very impressive from perspective of output and mechanics. Ooh, Norbert sliding down beneath the wood wall player. Krimbo's double kill. Gonna be impactful before he's dropped. Process can clean up fame, but Flit's right there with the trade frag. And Flit is above and beyond so far at groups. Coming into this match with a 1.4 rating. Just nasty. Leaps and bounds above the rest of the riflers. We get the short play in from Tabson soon enough. Molotov to the bomb plant, which isn't being prioritized because bombs on Flit in smoke. Look at this, a freebie for Tabson. <laughs> Flit backs up into his death and James is thrust into the clutch. Tabson right here as James sees him. Doesn't get the kill. Tapson's SMG for two. Wow. And big convert. Yeah, well, that's that's nice, man. That's an X Factor kills here from big nice play from Tabson. Full control of the B site once again. And it's uh, calm looking into round three. They keep only a couple of guns, so it's an opportunity to punish the economy. That's the second layer of what's sort of difficult. Hard, I'd say it's very hard to read the money sometimes with Virtus Pro with the way they buy, you know, two players or one player sometimes. It's, it's really helpful for, as a team to know when you can anti-eco, right? And when you when you play against Virtus Pro, you, you, never just, know. you can't really know if you can anti-eco. No, you never know what's coming. Flip, tech nine through, process prepared. That was the best weapon BP had to work with, but a fully running blind mirror gets the Tech-9 headshots. A curious turn of events. M4 now in hand. You know, and Mir is somebody who kind of comes into VP trying to fit into the system. Not the highest rated player of Virtus Pro. The lowest, in fact. Mm -hmm. It's been an awkward fit. Yep. He was much better before. But it feels like it, it's almost like anybody would be awkward for a little while. It's a question of, like, can he find his groove within this system eventually? Can he raise the floor of Virtus Pro one day? We've seen Mir play well, you know, previously Team Spirit and some other more random lineups. Vegas he was, Squad. He was a yeah, Vegas Squad is a terror in Tier 2. Um, but, yeah, and everyone changes when they join Virtus Pro, but it hasn't really, isn't really adapted to the play style, I think, to maximize his own abilities just yet. When you put on that VP jersey, you have to drink the Kool-Aid. On to. It's an easy pickup. Bomb will indeed go down. So again, working with little, Ooh. they've managed something. And fame, disgusting. Desert Eagle up to heaven, but they're not going to waste any time here, Big. Just charging through this retake like it's nothing. We'll see what Norbert's Deagle can get done on half health. Smoke in front of him. They don't stick it right away. He can come back through, maybe line up something if he gets a little lucky. Sin, it's a 10 second stick as there's no kit here. Process three kills on the round. And Big just keep on winning. They do, man. They, they look sharp right now. This is a good start to the day. So much better than where it all began. It looked so desperate with Big. It looked so depressing, honestly. I just felt so bad for them. Yes. And that's just not fun to, to watch a team and simply just feel their pain. I mean, we were, we were going from day one, taps in sort of scream, you know, yelling indiscriminately, not even at anybody, just out of pure frustration right, yeah, into yesterday, right. which was such a, a miraculous and exciting victory, into now a real chance at uh, taking a stab at making it all the way mm -hmm. to London. Well, it's also just because they start their week in the worst position of all the teams, the only team in attendance at groups that will not be a part of at least the RMR, Yeah. let alone the major. And yeah, mentally, that just stinks. That just stinks. You know, you come in as the most beaten up squad And then Virtus Pro in their opening game against Big. That's where we started the week. Vote on Blast TV, but make sure to watch on Blast TV. And they just launched an app. Nice trade out of Jame. But Montu's there, posted on the same angle, ready to take it back. Man advantage, not for free. Virtus Pro, they've lost their bomb as well, so that's a good amount of information. It's enough to bring Krimbo up towards Dumpster. And Montu, I like this, moving forward, getting active, and in doing so, oh, yeah. killing Norbert. That's what you want to see. It is a strong start from Montu. You said it yesterday, you know, continuing off of the heroic game. 
Could Big really keep the ball rolling against Cloud9? Montu did exactly that. I mean, you can lose the game, whether you're passive or aggressive, but at least if you were aggressive and you lost, you can still look in the mirror. You could say you gave it your all. Still have a good night's rest. Tell yourself you left it all on the table. A life of loss is not as bad as a life of regret. Montu gonna continue to collect these frags like it's easy. Mir, fake plant once, Crimbo runs through. That's oh. still enough time. Ooh, baby. Uh -oh. We're on for the 1v4. Process tries the spam just as the nade goes through. Process comes out. Oh. And Mir, it's a valiant effort, but two's all he's gonna get. Big 4-0 start. He set up a great moment there for himself where it was two kills, no, no damage, and an open plant could have been very difficult. Big were antsy to get that done with, but it ends up working out. I mean, yeah, they, they're deciding to play very fast versus VP and very aggressive, and I think it's the perfect antidote. At least for now, VP are known for crushing teams that try to get a, a little bit too risky with it. But they haven't exactly proven that they're ready for this big aggression, big energy. Big taps it. And that's something that, despite the hardships, of the groups from loss to win didn't matter. Gob B, Tabson have been the heart and soul of big for years now, but specifically during this period of struggle. Mm -hmm. They have kept it alive, you energy, know, energy so high. Big critics can question all sorts of their gameplay. Passion, undeniable. They got that soul, Launders. Mm -hmm. You can't buy that. Nope. Not even on soul.com? Nope. Okay. Don't go there. I don't know where that goes. So <laughs> Everybody, let's go to Blast TV. Or hltv.org. Artillery barrage here from VP, but... Doesn't look like it's going to hit anybody. Ooh, but if they were there, they were so dead. Yeah, we saw some really nice nade lineups out of Crimbo on Anubis yesterday versus Cloud9. I always expect Big to have good nades. Kind of have that expectation with Virtus Pro as well. And that's like what I like stylistically about this head to head. It's why I thought the first time they play against each other this year, you know, to start a group, it would be very tactical. Very. Very tactical, you know, it's like a gentleman's agreement to play quality Counter-Strike. Feels like everybody in the server a real fan of the craft. 45 on the clock, and VP have shown some presence on the B site. It's keeping big three here. Fame's also happy to start running a bit of a banana, uh, bathroom's risk. 33 seconds, so... A little bit of utility. Didn't really shake up the defense. Big held strong down on B. T's got some smokes and flashes left. Sin, it's up close on the A1S. Norbert gonna win the duel. Doesn't get the second. Clean! Oh. Process! That's perfect layers right there for that exact hit. 13 seconds, and they're peeling away. They have lost. Not a single kill on the entry. Sid dies earlier on. Or post Sin, I should say. And with the top clock expiring, at least they keep these AKs, but that is a failed attempt. That, I mean, that's a beautiful hold. It's not really like a total flub here from Virtus Pro, but it was forecasted really well for Big. The double swing was on point. The process could have been flashed in the situation. They definitely knew that it was going to be a B-site hit. So this is really good prep and really good execution from Big. This is some of the best uh, we've seen from them so far. Every step of the way as well, they have been written off. Heroic Big felt in the air, but when they won that game, felt like that was all they were gonna get. It was almost celebrated that they got a win. You know, that was kind of like the community consensus. Like, good for big. Yeah. But time to lose. At least they won a, a 
best of three. Yes. Because they hadn't done that in so long. Yes. That match versus Cloud9, though, legit. But this is a no-luck 5-0 start. They are the better team right now. Seizing the opportunity today. Cool. Process to be tested once more. Mm, survives it. Norbert doesn't get a thing, but Sin actually falls through the smoke spam. But you gotta have the eyes forward on the A side. That's where the three T's are encroaching upon. And it's Flit to lead the charge. Tabson, he just got dinked from the Tech 9 at this distance. Oh, good cover from Montu, though. Yeah, but Tabson won't survive. They know Montu's also relegated behind Dice. Nice grenade, actually, on oh the fadeaway. God. He finds the little that remained of Flit. That's so the Iverson right there. Beautiful stuff from Montu. And uh, the fallback is absolutely warranted. Back Dice, he would have just gotten closed off from both long and from inside bathrooms and with time running out, Heaven Smoke comes in, Prosis could walk up back pit or sit one pretty. One flash, one flash to get through this and it goes beyond Prosis. Mir takes the long road around through Monster. Smoke in Heaven, they've got just enough time, just enough time to go for this plant. And Jame, well he's lucky that bomb doesn't get run down. Prosis thinking maybe water's occupied. There's the first one found out as the op shot rings out. Now they know exactly where the last two CTs are. And James opts to double all the way back around towards Monster. No James going to get in front of Mir. Crimbo. Oh, gets caught by the headshot. Wow. They finagle the B plant. Montu switching out to the AK. Quick redirection around through water. He's got the kit. He pushes in. He kills Jane first. That gun's got four bullets in it. Mir, Shadow Peak. Now it's empty. Pistols out. All he's got, no oh, frag. And VP find themselves on the board with a late B rotation. I mean, they don't win, but at least he looks fearsome. That's good recovery from uh, Virtus Pro. Great shot from Jane. Instant headshot on a Crimbo. He has to take that on the chin. That's um, unfortunate for him. I think I would have liked to see Prosis just play closer to the site in that situation because they didn't have time to clear back pit and push um, when big raw material. They wanted to play it slow, go for the retake, but they didn't even have utility to do it. Um, either way, sort of an effort wasted here from Montu, who starts off this round so well, as well as Prosis. Montu gets his uh, op shot on long, as well as the, the nade to push him to the B site in the first place, but... That round took a lot of grit for Virtus Pro to be able to pull out. They needed it. Ooh, <laughs> there it is. You just always know the headshot potential is so high on the VP Riflers. I mean, that's where Fame made his name for yeah. me in Rio, was just gunning down CTs, Ooh. sprinting at the A site of Overpass. That was also nice. And they've done a really good job of just canceling Flit out of the opening bit of this game. Norbert, Mac 10 beats Prosis. And Sin's gonna fall as well, so Norby making a little bit of money. Can't manage to hold off Crimbo, taps in, in a bit of a pickle. Here's the runaway. Yeah. Look, bomb is still towards long. It's like a bait from James just to pull him upstairs. But then he stops watching. He'll find it. James forever with one eye on the clock. And the other on the prize. VP, dodge danger. We'll get that second round. Nice shot from Fame, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Really did open up the game. Montu was just there a second too late, and I don't know why. He posted on balloons um, to open the rounds. Fame had basically teleported so far ahead of him. Oh, I see he was on the inside of it. Just like that. Two rounds straight. That's fine by VP. They'll play every round, every second. Haven't seen them really fall victim to the clock in a group of teams that have fallen 
to just mistiming certain commitments. We saw Heroic do it. We saw Big do it. Virtus Pro have just kind of been following through as per usual. You know, it's like everybody's played against VP in this group, and then they try to play like VP, but they just lose their grip on it. There has been a contagion with their play style, mm -hmm. and I, I think everybody has been infected. Um, <laughs> no one can really swing it like them, and at least big in this map, it looks like they're just, they're going with something new. But yeah, they started out like that for sure. Nades again, but nobody's home. It's a boost over here, deep with the A1S. Krimbo's just hiding in the bushes. Creepy. Like a bird watcher. It's Prius. I think that's a pretty odd hobby, if I'm being honest. No offense. Well, a little. I, yeah, I mean, does it? I mean, do do people who love bird watching are they like addicted to Pokemon Go? Is it just it could be it something weird? There? Yeah, like oh. bug catchers. Are they all in Pal World right now? With the other two million people? Bird watchers. This boost? It's so funny. Three players it's boosted Tabson. and Tabson steals the kill. Krimbo's like, what am I? Wait, can he still shoot them? Yep. Coming into the site? Yes. Whoa. From the boost, maybe not. But from this spot, Tabson's got pressure on the site. Pistols are going to run at this. At least VP have extra time. USPs. Wait, what? Double from Montu. Pressure all around. What is this? You don't win rounds like this first VP. He throws it out. They give it up. And it's USPs. Oh, Yo, that one play from Tabson. And like an avalanche. Big just come onto the B site and kill everybody on a full buy from VP. Two rounds straight on wins. These are the rounds they do to you. Something's in the water tonight. This double kill. Two taps to Mir. Bro! Oh. Oh, just like... Tapson softened up Norbert a little earlier. No! That's the guy who got spammed from short. Yeah, man, he's on one. The fact you put three people on that boost, because if three people on the boost get spotted from the short player... They get mollied. They stop, right? Exactly. Because VP don't see that boost and think it's just Tapson in a smoke on short... They run in, yeah. What a unique round of CS. God, guys, that was uh, that was so unique. That was so unique. So you tell your teammates. Nothing we could do about that. You know, you, even if there was 10 USPs, I think you'd feel silly for losing to them. So. Nice shots, Montu. Nice shots, Montu. That helps. VP on the receiving end of a round like that. I think there were more half-by victories in the heroic big game on Anubis than there were full-by victories. Honestly, that could be a very true statement. That game was just, like, almost nonsensical mm -hmm. from both teams. I mean, it just felt like they were all... It was just desperate and sloppy, yeah. and it's kind of what we expected from heroic just because they are still new. And it's kind of what we expected from big since they're in a recent slump. Just like really a one month slump, a one event slump in the close qualifier. Yeah, whereas now they're just winning all kinds of good yeah. rounds and the hard rounds. This this is the big that we could have expected in the major close qualifier. Like based on all the online results that they had at the tail end of 2023. Just the team play, the tethering, the ideas. This is the big that the Roaring Bears have come to love. Oh. Tapson catching Flit on the approach. AK now in the hands of Fame, but Smoke's in front. No vision. No entrance. No easy kills. Maybe a redirection to the B site is in order. We've got two defenders so they, down towards Monsters. Yeah, Smoke so gonna, again. They want to try to run this back because they know it can be an 18 second exec into the B site. Um, and they, they are ready for the Monster push. There's no one wrapping around far. So great angle from Prosis, but he has to hit these shots. Heaven Smoke. He'll get his one sin still tucked in. Good. Wow. Gets the headshot on Fame. Five seconds. Jame, he's got bomb, but he knows better. This AWP needs to be saved. And honestly, they could come chasing him down. They worked on so much stuff, man. Um, Bubsky said, I hope Montu had a good night's rest so he could keep up the form. But honestly, Big clearly have just put in so much work.
uh, between yesterday and today. I think they sense the opportunity. Them and themselves from just a few days ago, just worlds apart already. Across the board. You know, I think we'll see some problems when we get to Anubis. And maybe I'd, maybe I'd love to see if those are solved too. But, you know, between their B-site holds, everything except for sort of... Uh, process, or sorry, everything extort, everything except Crimbo and Montu was somewhat awkward. Yeah, that's what Dostan said in the interview, right? He said, like, Anubis and Big just doesn't really click, or, like, he finds it odd that we go there. Yeah, 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 he, he expected, no, he expected Big to pick it, but he thinks that they're weak, basically. Not the first team to have doubted Big openly, and, uh, you know, fair enough, like, this is... This is the best we've seen from them. It's been a lot worse, so... Respect is earned. Real improvements as the Blast Groups has gone on. VP. Three more chances to rack up a round win. Mir's boost comes oh, through, man. and Krimbo's watching that. He actually that. was not watching it because just he was crouched. crouched. So that... Body was watching it. Tech9 oh. kill comes out. Can Krimbo pick up the slack? Oh, oh. Jake through the barrel. Oh, that's uh, one mistake. Still winnable. Montu and Tabson, 2v4. Yeesh, they've been found out. Oh. And Montu's dead. Flit double headshot. VP the boost to unravel it all. Oh, man, that's a mistake from Krimbo. Yeah, he's literally covering his teammate on barrels, but he's not even holding a deeper he's, angle. Essentially, yeah. it's a vertical situation, but if he was standing up, maybe they both died at the same time, but he'd actually be serving as protection, but... Did he think he could see that boost? Well, sure. Clearly, he was looking up there. And he's not stargazing. That was a nice shot, though, too. From Jane. Ooh, damn, wow. So, double op comes out from Big now in response round 11. Mir getting past the utility pressure. Here's the jump up. Tucks into the cubby. Krimbo's going to put the Molotov down, so Mir has to give up this position, and the short chase, not on. Process lets him go. But we're bomb and spawn right now, so don't anticipate BP getting too crazy too quick. Yeah, never mind. There's still three minutes left on the round. <sighs> Trying to go for a boost. Tabson dying in bathrooms. That's a site completely open. But VP in no position to rush down mm. this half of the map for the free control. Oh, flit with Woo. a homing missile. Dunks on Montu. And VP starting to pull big apart in these recent rounds. Four rounds and it's a competent half. Five and it's a little problematic for big. It's good CT. CT side, but they've got to go up against VP CT side as well, which is, that's world class. Process with Montu's op in hand, turns there, them back, but there's, no there's nobody here. A. Save for next round, says Big, if they don't come B. Okay. And yeah, they close the gap a little bit. Do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share about Process as a player? Yeah, I mean, I really liked Process in Academy as well. Um, I I think that he's not he's not that standout on like when we look when we go over to Anubis. I think Sin is the one who looks the least experienced, and so I don't think Process breaks apart the structure um, as often as as Sin does. But I think they both definitely need some work to get to the point that like Crimbo's at. Like it's in a Totally different league. Um, and to be honest, as veteran as Taps in is, he makes his fair share of individual mistakes too. So uh, there, there's just like a lot of um, catching up, I feel like, for this team to, to all feel very experienced. But I do appreciate that they've used their academy to this degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the few teams that really taps into them. There was a time in Counter-Strike when everybody wanted an academy team, but it didn't feel like everybody used it properly. Yeah, like, Navi Jr. was a great... Ex <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> I was just about to name all the other orgs. <laughs> but okay, we can cut to the chase. <laughs> we can get to the point. Mm 
Yeah, Spirit Academy donk. Yep. Mon Navi Z bit. Bro, Navi Jr. was a farm fest. Ooh, here's a sick timing. Norbert swinging for the fences uh -oh. here. Final round of the half, and he wants his entry. Haven't really had that, like, glaring success from Norbert. And he's pulled other teams apart in this bomb site. Process just charging headstrong into the site, clearing mirror of the board. Flit eats the flash, doesn't fire. And the counter terrorists slot into the defense. Smoke and oh, Flit's ahead of it, but doesn't want to try to lose that bomb. You got a minute to make this work. Final round of the half. Man disadvantage to fight back from. Flit, does he read this boost? No, he reacts. Oh, well, that was a great option, I'd say, for Tapsif. To keep the momentum up on the punishes, but now it's 3v3. Prosis tried to return fire, didn't find the mark. Couple smokes and a Molotov, four bigs still. And we've got 35 seconds on the clock. If they could find a way to put it down front monster, they could have stopped this hit, but here it comes. They've managed to get out. Amali on the bomb site could also be massive. And just the certainty that Short shouldn't get pushed. Fame brings Montu down with him. Prosis floats between the site. And as Flit's hands are busy, Process looks to get up the boardwalk. Molotov's gonna force Flit out, but he swings before it even pops. Burnt to a crisp. It's a CZ of Krimbo. He gets the gun upgrade, dives into the site. Jane miss shots, and Krimbo over the box. But it's Jane to seal the deal. A clutch at the end of the half. Classic Jane fashion. We're live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only mid, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can rush short and they can't go ups. Let's go. Flashing now. Boom. I'm blind. I flashed long. I'm going to library. Oh, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> he picked short or? Yeah, he picked. He went back, I think. I'm coming too. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing on uh, apartments. One came back short, since I saw him. He's in short. Maybe I'm they on. won't. Yeah, I'm gonna. They flash. flash short. Maybe he's picking. Going up short, going up short. They smoked side. Hold the flash for speed. In the back. I'm not picking. I'm gonna drop it. Yeah. Don't want to bite, don't want to bite. Yeah, just wait, just wait. I'm going closer. I'm trying to full slot it for you. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Bro, let's mull it long and short and go two apps. <laughs> okay. Well, one time he like put a molly short. One time he like put out the molly. So. Flash, flashing. I'm going, bro. I'm being shot. Fuck me. That. Maybe bike. I don't see him side. Okay. Apps. In apps. He's not tired. <laughs> Was he blind? No, he went in front no, of us. Okay. Maybe he catch him a little bit. Uh, bye. Yeah, yeah? I think yeah. it's. Last round, maybe? For the win, or no? I think it's match point after this. I'm peeking short. One dash right. One, uh, one more mid, one more mid. She smoked from mid. I, it's one way for me, I'm playing. Nice. Easy. He went to, he tried going fast along. Back in action with Big Clan versus Virtus Pro. Now, 
Felt like it was VP to walk into this one and blow him out of the water as they did at the start of the event, but this is the best big we've seen yet. Definitely. I mean, that was a really fun half to watch, and it ends up being close, which means Virtus Pro still have a great chance to close the map out because they get CT side, and obviously they picked overpass. They love the map. Uh, but that will not take away from the fact that we watched uh, Big in their best form to start the day. No slow first map. All the right pieces shooting well. In, and I mean Tabson and Mantu, mm -hmm. most of all. And um, so I'm ready to believe in what we can find for their second half. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to believe in this T side. I think as well, it's like, you know, we get this maybe unexpected, but very welcome performance from Process. Topping yeah. the charts coming into the second half. So it's not like we're banking on Montu and Crimbo as we were yesterday. If the floor of big has risen, then VP may have their hands full because Flit hasn't popped off like a madman. James not dominating just yet, but he does have the CT side. And we know James with an op on the defensive overpass can really be something special. So balls in VP's court to prove that they deserve that shot to London. None of the new Blast partner teams for this last year of the program have managed to qualify straight to London. Virtus Pro would be the only... Oh! <laughs> Norbert. Okay. Okay. All right. That was disgusting. That's the only bullet shot this round. In all the best ways. Smoke for Dumpster. We've got Jame in the corner. Oof, a gush. Not ideal for fame. But James got a back turn to him. All's good. Oh, Jesus. Flash out into Tabson. Easy pickups for James, And now they are so stuck. They've got a player behind them on bathrooms already flanking. This one's looking like a massacre or a masterpiece. Sin, two kills in. James low. Fame's half health. Only headshots. But Bomb is back by bathrooms, of course. He's gotten himself the third. This is a 1v5 out of Sin. Three kills deep, it's and possible. James is low. But Norbert's had enough. Oh, a second bullet shot that round. Kicks it off and ends it. Damn. Nice try. Yeah, I'd say, uh, I'd say like the best feature of Sin is definitely his aim. So I think that's a good place to start, though. I always say you can't teach someone how to run faster. At least that's how my running coach used to say work on things a little bit but for the most part that's a, a path usually walked alone mm. but at least when it comes to learning how to play the team game that's that's a bit more teachable the umps are back but there's also an mp9 So do you think they're doing something wrong or? No, I think they're just doing something. I was going to say unique, but there's actually other teams. I just, again, I haven't heard a, a pro talk to me. Tell me the strengths of the ump over the other SMGs. Mm -hmm. That's all I really want to know. Well, the strengths, the strengths numbers wise are always get in there versus armor. Okay. Yeah, it just has a really high armor pen, but oh. it's got, you know, low mag and oh. gets you one D. That's a downside. Yep. True. Completely the ump's fault. Agreed. Turns your head into a watermelon. It's just a side effect. It's a small print. Ooh, this is this is sketchy, isn't it? Crimbo picks up the ump, dies. Coincident? I don't think so. Flip falls back into water. Hears them charging down, but do they commit to trying to flood out here? Nice trade frag. 35 on the clock. Norbert's gonna get himself into the water. It's a great position to anchor B from, but B's not the intended target. Tabson didn't join the rest of the pack down towards Connector, so he's found a very interesting timing, but he actually gets spotted out by Fame. Still has the dice box to try and work with. Wow. And a deagle shot between the teeth. Wow. Mir, he's dodging them, takes some to the face. Woo. The ump punctures through. This is unarmored pistols. Norbert comes out, tries to snap, does. Second kill's clean, goes over the dumpster. Montu pinned against the wall. Oh. Peek or be peaked. Norbert 1v3. Damn, that was beautiful, Norbert. I mean, it's a round with just pistols, but it was lost without each of those kills, and he pretty much had to do it right then and there while they were still all around that truck.
Beautiful shots. At least they had one good gun to counter the umps. Dude, Tapson hitting him with the whammy. Yeah, that was a banger. That was a good And what I love about that, too, is it's just it's his decision to stay away from the potential for that connector to be opening, right? When they run into the ump, they decide, okay, let's bring it back. And he had still just floated towards Banana, Mm. floated close enough to, you saw it, catch the first guy off guard. So very cost-effective round for Big. Good damage against VP's economy. Bomb plant to boot. But Norbert steps forth. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it's an excellent spray transfer from Norbert. It's not like they didn't peak at the right time, so they can't be too upset. But uh, you, you know, in a, in a in a map like this, they might they might have needed the round. So we'll see. Third time out for VP. Crazy to watch how many times in this game they've been on the ropes. Make no mistake, they still are. That was not an investment. Yeah, but they just have such high fight IQ. You know, they're evasive. Yeah, you can they beat do. them up. They'll drag you into the fifth. They'll take their time with you. It's really true. Rack up the body shots. They can't get knocked out. Score some points with leg kicks. You know, they're just they they're just VP. Next. They're just what? They're just VP. Just VP, yeah. Kings of the split decision. <laughs> That's great. I love that. This is such a good encapsulation of exactly what it feels like to watch them play some maps. Like, did they, did they win? Did they really win, but then, yeah. they, but then they do it like 10 times in a row. Yeah. What do they know? What do they know? It's like, I see 13 at the top of the screen, but I don't, I'm not, I'm still not convinced. Kings of the split decision. That's good. But yeah, the high fight IQ thing. And of the split second decisions. Wow. We're just workshopping lines right now. <laughs> yes, this is this is behind the scenes. Tabson, good trade frag out long, but remember, bombs all the way back in spawn still. Uh, Tabson can have his fun. He's got three quarters of what's left of VP preoccupied in this bomb site. He's got teammates now joining him front bathrooms. Looking out for the flashes. Fame dropping taps in Prosis, locked in for the trade frag, expecting the peak. And Prosis will continue this form, 21 and 9, oh. make it 22. Make sure you trust the Prosis, baby, that is beautiful. One man army inside of the site, just like that, we've got Big in the lead. Yeah, that's uh And remember, oh, all that economic damage from the round before. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that was not... That was not nothing. It was just Norbert last round, and it's just Norbert again. It's one thing to be a, uh, you know, one-way player, have that good CT side, but process here on T side on overpass. Topping up. 22 frags. v5 taps in he had everybody just kind of put in the spots he's what kept them locked in so that process could thrive with this the jump up sick just gets a glimpse of flit disgusting and honestly flit's been pretty nullified this map coming in leaps and bounds above everybody else on vp but this is their first time out made to look human damn and you know what happens when god b takes timeouts oh yeah He's got a good track record, at least empirically, from what we've observed and what we remember. But remember, we always block out things that don't fit our narrative. Mm -hmm. The web weavers. But really, the last two or three times that we mentioned it, off the pause, Big have done something insane. So, well, I mean, it doesn't even seem like they need one, though. They should win this round. Should. Should. Yeah. Hold your tongue. Well placed early, Molly. That'll help. You got Norbert softened up. 
but you do still have one M4 in play for VP. Krimbo walking in alone. No Norbert's ready to swing if needed, but he's low health because of that molly and oh. doesn't even go for any kind of a trade. Just yeah. lets Krimbo get out. No, no trade. Definitely should have because he, he was low. Instead, wanted to just make sure he could recover the gun. That'll be a blessing for Krimbo and potentially big as a whole as they walk towards A now. 45 seconds and they have sometimes tripped over their own shoelaces in times like this. They can let the clock go down too much. However, it seems like they're going B now. No, are they? They are just going to fake and explode B. CTs all here. I think it's calm. They're still a little skeptical. You can be. Few seconds left to spare. Montu. Uh oh. Five seven's gonna pounce on him. There's an op for Jame next round. That's. Yeah. But they luckily have no resistance down here on the oh B side. Oh my god, 10 seconds as they're coming scared, in. They're scared, man. That's there well, there could have been pistols everywhere. They didn't could actually clear the site at all, so... Yeah, that, they got to be careful with that. They have taken too long to organize. And, you know, the one thing that's always been the um, redeeming quality of Big is that, oh, they don't have the individuals, but at least they're, like, such a smart team, right? Such a tactical team. But if they can't execute on it, or they take too long sometimes, then they can't even be held to that standard. So really important that rounds like this, especially on anti ecos, they don't let they don't let it go down. They they can't play that Virtus Pro game, right. and they have lost games because of that. Don't let it soil the first half. That was yeah, they, fantastic. They've, they've lost rounds this very week. Yeah. to those kinds of moments, jumping into a bomb site ten seconds with a pistol in the wrong spot. So and here they just lost an op just to throw a fake that did nothing. Right, you know, essentially. I suppose at this point, you know, they know going into that site, like, oh, man, if shit hit the fan, we were done for. Yeah, so one guy on the pillar, one guy at barrels right now, one guy back pit. Let it, this, you know, maybe be that quick reminder. Can't play another round that same way, and at least this time you did find a completely open bomb site. Yeah. Let's not do that twice, Big. You've got yourself a two-round lead. You're on the map pick. You've got Pro's Pro. Pro game right here. Come on. Don't give that away. You want to defy all expectations? You want to keep running with the momentum? You want to qualify for London? Man, they, they literally just gave this off to Jame now <laughs> and stacked B. And they wouldn't be the first team nor the last to make that vital error. One off in the hands of Virtus Pro can change the game. Right now, James sitting outside of Divider on A. And th this is a perfect, James' perfect structure. We'll see what happens if Bigger are careful around it. They know Montu just gave him this, so there's that. But this is James 4 ones in setups, full buys all the time. So he sometimes has no, no support around him. Well, they're all staging now for a B exec. Yeah, but that site's getting stacked by the other guns. Krimbo's ahead of the smoke. Oh, they shoot early. Dodges flash. Montu's utility comes through to help. Looking to peel off all the pistols, oh. and they'll do so. Process coming in from short clears Norbert. Mir, its hands on the M4 as the pistols fell with nothing really to be proud of. Time still mm. easily on the side of Big. This time, it's great. Oh, I thought they accidentally shot, but it was just to get them to eat the flash. So yeah. that was really good out of... Big and they dealt with four players there as if there was only, you know, one or two. Doing it with extra time. Yeah. Doing it in the face of, like, the utility that comes out from BVP because you've got Krimbo on Monster ready to go. They don't waste any time after that. They don't, they don't leave Krimbo out there to die alone to give another gun away. They had one foot in the door, and they decide to pounce on it, securing a tenth. They kill everybody except Jane, leave him to his A site as a recluse to live alone. The best way to deal with him is to not fight him at all. Just a hermit living in the woods. And they might find the timing on this approach. Oh, no, he's Tapson's running, but he's got teammates as well. They want to get rid of this if they can. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just leave him in the woods. <laughs> Starve him. You can't. He's self-sufficient. True. <laughs> a hunter-gatherer. He'll gatherer. just use photosynthesis. 
Yeah, he's solar powered. <laughs> hey. Find. Everyone, find. Everyone's got to use those. Find him. Find him. Some healthy stats here for Brosis. And a healthy buy for VP now. The CT side shriveling. And big, they're going to go hyper aggressive right into the B site. It's an aggressive stance. They know what they want. Woo. And they kick it off with a Prosis SMG headshot. But he is killed by Mir, Mir's who leans him. back and covers it. We've got no smoke towards heaven. Krimbo going to try to get one out. The entire big clan just stuck outside of Monster, waiting for somebody to step into that scope. Can Montu move it all forward? You have to respect the smoke back pit before they try to scale. Nope. They the go trade. for it. Peek out from fame. He'll get there in the end. Op shot is a miss, and Montu to the clutch. It's Jame and Mir in the water, in the smoke. Weird, he sees the shadow. He should have seen the shadow on the second player right along the wall. Oh my god, James just sitting still. But he has completely lost track of this. Didn't notice the detail. James to walk out now, I mean, surely. And James should have this in the bag. Walks up behind him. Ooh, okay, <laughs> sketchy, but all's good. Yeah. Yeah, the shadow was He should there. have seen the shadow. The shadow's on the wall. Yeah, it might not have been noticed by him or his teammates. Weird. I mean, to expect someone to sit in the smoke right yeah, there. Oh, like. Also, like, you know, kind of trying to deal with a 1v3. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Bro, why didn't he see that shadow? <laughs> <laughs> but he's surrounded in a bomb site with Jame alive. Three players breathing down his neck, so, oh, man. so they nice. tried to get aggressive, but good, good hold from, from Mir. Um two kills on site. The entry was right there. Prosis with the Mac 10. Got them to 5v4. Tried to tilt the scales. But Mir steps up. VP stay alive. On to boosted on the fountain, hoping to find Jane, who's been floating with the AWP around the A site. But he's a touch more timid on the T side, but it is harder to find that impact. This is a, a CT opper's map. But if Big aren't careful, there's a chance that Process's performance dries up. And despite all the rounds played out, we still haven't gotten Krimbo or Tabson kicking it into gear. Virtus Pro. Just leaning on James Op to hold the A site. All's good off the first one. Oh, and he got away. Good reposition. Support behind him in fame. Coming to fight. Sights being held. James locking this one down from bathrooms. Three kills. And on to Benchy goes with an entire squad behind him. Oh, man. They've seen the bomb. They've dropped it. Woo. James is immovable. That is amazing. I mean, it's a perfect first setup for the kill. <clears throat> Into a flowchart sequence. And no counters. They sent out Montu and the crew to look for him on long. Pushed him back. And set up scaling smokes, but in the end, just tried to use bathrooms. And James took a dump on him. Montu, maybe no op save. Oh my god. Maybe after dying after time. time. Nope. They he still made his money. Okay. I was I was grateful of or uh, charitable of them to let him let him live. But also I think the cash is now low for big. Yeah, pricey anyway, huh? Mm -hmm. But this is great support from behind. Even though Fame dies, it just allows Jame, the most important piece, to stay alive. Yeah. Jame is just... Him. He's such a rock. You know, yeah. Yeah, we're That's looking cool. at a tight game now. That play was just classically good. Good execution, good shots. I wouldn't say it's like too difficult, but at the same time, you always picture it going that way and then doesn't. So to be able to realize that. It's both the symptom of a uh, good calm individual and a good setup. And he just hasn't died this entire map. Eight deaths for James, 16 kills. Taken over the lobby one op shot at a time. 
Fame saw that bathrooms player. That landed. Tabson gets hit through the brick wall. Lucky to be alive at this point. Not that he's looking forward to trying to hit this A site. And James, second bullet gets the job done. At least you've got one crawling up to the flower pots. If anything were to get weird, it's off of this, but it just does feel like classic VP fashion. Just lock into the CT side of overpass. Don't let anybody even get close to bomb sites. Yeah, it's a tough CT side to crack, that's for sure. One of the best. James continues to just land these shots. Sin, Deagles looks good, but not as fantastic as Father Time. James cleans him up. A site has been absolutely closed. Rock solid. Really good. And the, the annoying part, I think, for Big is, like, they get very close, which is, like, you're not dying. Hold. There's no... What are the aggressive setups outsiders used, which is, for those who the uninitiated, was James' team back at the Rio Major on overpass, was this three-man, four-man aggressive setup on the ace, um, on balloons, with James opping as the final piece, spotting the cross towards long. And then a rifler in stairs, a rifler underneath him holding the cross, and a rifler um, at the top of bathrooms or whatever. And they haven't even used, they haven't been using that lately at all. They've been almost full passive towards the A side. And Bigger getting a lot of early map control, but VP are just totally comfortable with it. And that's just such a hard thing to wrestle with. If somebody's giving you that, you're supposed to be able to punish them for it, but they can't. They can. I mean, that's the real power of James. Because even if he didn't use those forward aggressive setups, like at Fnatic game from that same major, he was solo on the A site controlling the whole mm -hmm. map. Feels like one of All the, the time. one of the few teams that can just let so much go for free. Yeah. It's just more like a phantom tax. You don't know you're paying. Sure. It's your Netflix subscription. Cancelled that months ago. Big round here, 21. James very realistically has a chance to surpass Process as the star of this map. Uh, he could get there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you said uh, eventually he could run out of gas. Mm -hmm. And nobody else has picked up that slack. Not Tabson, not Krimbo. James hybrid electric, too. He could just go for miles. because he feeds on the life source of his enemies. Mm. Fame has too much late round information at long. They're coming in to try to do something to dissuade him from peeking, but he's already confirmed this, I think. I mean, they're walking back up now to commit to A, maybe? It's too late, guys. It's too... This is one of the rounds where it's so it's messy. 10-10. You cannot be taking it down to the wire like this. Ugh. Bigger going to try. Stack sight as well. He just saw the shadow fame. It's an easy pickup, and then he can just tuck oh, in. He did his seconds. job. Ten he got seconds. his kill. He can just pin in here. He can go for long, getting the other side. They literally cannot plant. They didn't even step on this bomb site, and they're still trying. But there's no point unless they get all the kills with the D... Really fine. Still down towards site. B. Have the sight. It's good. There, there was not the option to go A, and as we could see from the map, it's not as if they were Ugh. running into a five-player stack on the B site. There was no difference in terms of what they were going up against. So that's a problem of either leadership or the organization. I don't know who to blame, but it's a tense moment after a great map, and it's usual things here for Big as they beat themselves, essentially. No one pushed them back. There wasn't anything that tricky from, from Virtus Pro to dissuade them, but they were clearly in their heads. And now Virtus Pro have a lead. That's what VP do. Like a brain worm, they burrow in. You're afraid of them and you pay the price. Now James takes a deeper angle right back to dominating the front of this A site. Sits in bathrooms. Unfortunately, for a night where Big play better than ever this week, we get a glimpse 
of the problematic decision making that got them here. The struggles versus heroic, based on that. What a gut wrenching feeling it must be to have had rounds up on Virtus Pro within their map pick. A huge performance from Prosis, and nobody else can seem to catch up. Montu's op started hot but cooled off. They could have needed that. Just polishes one or two elements of the play and then they manage to succeed with it. Krimbo down towards B solo. Just saw Norbert, but 30 seconds he'll get mollied. Bomb, of course, towards bathrooms. James, stoic as ever, awaits. What feels like VP's inevitable 12th. It's a little faith in the low numbers conversion. That last round, they got lots of kills at the end. They just didn't do it with time. So we'll Same see thing. if they give it a shot. But we're, wait, 15 seconds, are they committing? Same thing. 15 seconds, they're going to try again. But this site is once again stacked. Process did come through with kills last time. Taps and cut down on long. Jame locked into the corner. Crimbo can go for the plant, but oh, he misses the know. timing. They can rush him down. The kill? Too late. There's ah. two. It's good. I can't believe they even tried that. VP, five in a row on fire. I thought they were already done with the round. They should have saved. What? They, they should have. They should have. Like, best case, you get the 1v2 clutch potential with that bomb going down, but still going to get run down. You can't beat. No time to fake. You can't beat VP at their own at game. Their own game. And I don't think you should even try. No, definitely shouldn't. That's frustrating, but no one to be mad at but yourself. Yeah. He's shut them down every time these last five rounds. He really is the eye of Sauron. He's just staring at you. And they're going to try it again. Getting closer with smoke front sight. This is going to allow for them to get dangerously close. But then all of VP come upwards to stack it. We've got three defenders in the A site and big hard headed as they will try to listen, break through again. Listen, they got the trades. They just did it too late last time. Now they have the same space and a lot more time. And will that time make a difference? Uh-oh, another front side smoke. Fame afforded a bit more room to play around the dice. CT's no long control. That's a plus for big, 32 seconds. Just don't repeat the exact same thing as last time. T's juggling you till Fame's gonna go peeking in. Oh no! Oh no. Two kills. Fame felt like he had enough space to take the risk, and sure enough, again, this A site is rock solid. Six in a row from Virtus Pro. You could try your damnedest to play their game, but there's a reason. Jame is the master of this version of CS. That A site did not fall. No matter how much time, no matter how much util, Big could simply not break through. Big looked so impressive on the CT side when they started. They had five rounds on the trot uncontested, but Big Brain Jame, he changed that all when his team moved over. And what is there to say about this gent that hasn't been said already? He just understands this game. It's almost alien-like. Yeah, we started to get a little bit nervous going into that overpass. We saw Process taking over the map, and we were almost afraid that they're going to lose their map streak on overpass for this tournament at the, the overpass against Big here. 
When you take a look at that round history, of course, again, it, it was just VP dominating on the CT side in the end, and Big didn't have any answers for them whatsoever. What is it about Jame that just makes him so damn good, Bubski? Rotations. His rotations is always on point. And I also think that nobody questions when he wants to make a play, he makes the play. Nobody's going to be like, but I also want to, it's just, shh, I do it. I think Jame is the sole leader of the team, but he's also one of the best individually, and he shows it time and time again, especially on the overpass CT side. We've got some some highlights of Jame when he was here on overpass. You've said that Virtus Pro is arguably the best team on overpass in the world. Do you still stand by that? Because, I mean, Big got quite a few rounds on the board. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Kerrigan said yesterday, uh, a, a win is a win, and I also think what Virtus Pro is going to be looking at today is that they won their map, and they don't really care if it was 13 11 or it's gonna be 13-0. I don't think they mind. Obviously, they would have liked to play a bit more convincing, but I don't think they're gonna think too much about it. A win is a win, but tomorrow the mistakes that you made that might have just got you over the line could come back and bite you. So you do need to still analyze what you've done, figure out where the holes are in your game plan. And I think that Big was able to show that there are some holes in Virtus Pro's over overpass. Yeah, I think they had some great plays and I think we have a, a couple of rounds where they actually do stuff well. And I think it started early in the game where we are also gonna dive into what is it exactly? We keep speaking about they have these gimmick plays. The gimmick plays is these small boosts. Many people in this round would probably just have a rifle somewhere, try to do something, boost or maybe like strafe, but they have a plan from the get-go. They do all these smart things and nobody pushes here together. They stay back and wait for the timing to go at the exact same timing. Nobody's just running through and set unless at the last time. However, there's also been some errors in Big's play, which is ultimately what Virtus Pro was able to, to utilize. Yeah, I mean, they tried to use Virtus Pro weapon against them, right, with the slow methodical play, but they aren't really able to do it in the same way that Jame and, and the rest of Virtus Pro are doing. I think we see two buy rounds towards the end where they're not really able to execute in the right amount of time. What was it, though? Why were they struggling with this particular style of play? I think it's because they're good at saving nades. We can see on the CT side, especially the last round, where they have so much, and they also stack correctly because they somewhat... I'm not sure if it's due to anti strat or the information they received earlier in the round, that they know they're going to come A. They have three players lined up on the side, and there's still no time for Big to go. At the end of the day, Virtus Pro, they were able to take it. Is it, it. Are you surprised, though, by Big's performance here? Because it is a team that I think was... You know, they didn't even qualify for the RMRs, never mind the major. Yeah. There was a lot of talk around them coming into this. We were pretty critical of them when we got to see them play. We were critical of them yesterday against Cloud9. But they are getting rounds against these Tier 1 teams. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've been very critical of, of both Sin and Process, but Process today really delivered. Like, he was, in my opinion, the reason why it even got close at, so, at this point. He had so many rounds where he would constantly go in their face and take those initial entry kills. For me, if he can perform to a level, then all of a sudden we have an interesting team that could potentially punch a little bit above what we're seeing right now. But we just see it so rarely from him. How much time do they need? Because this is something that you've brought up numerous mm. times. They need a little bit more time. I think you've said it about Liquid. You've said it about Heroic. From a big standpoint, do they need more time? I feel like for them, it's just maybe more time on LAN. Yeah, yes and no, because they've also played for a long time. Sin and Process is not no new prospects to this team. They've been a part of it for quite a bit now. So I don't think the excuse of needing time and lane experience is relevant at this point, because they need to start delivering results. You're not going to get that lane experience if you're not good enough to qualify for the events. I do think that Big is really good when you put them in these situations when they get to play against these top teams. So giving them, finding a way for them to have more opportunity to do that could potentially lead to more victory. So maybe yeah. the opportunity is still there to qualify for land then maybe that's exactly what they need. Yeah, I mean, when you lose that armor, I failed a couple of major qualifiers myself. Um, so when you fail those, your just focus is just going to have to be on other tournaments, right? Everybody goes into the year and be like, okay, we want the first major and the second. Once you fail that first, everybody goes into a meeting room and be like, okay, so what is the goal now? For Big, it's 100% this event, because this is one where they can get a free invite and potentially go into the stadium of Wembley. We also heard Carrigan earlier where he said it's nice to know that you have a, a big stadium event down the line in six months' time. It's a, a good thing to have in your back pocket. Probably what Big wants as well. I'm sure Tapson, he wants to be able to rally the guys. It's going to give them a lot more confidence coming out of this event, not being able uh, to go to the major, missing the opportunity to qualify yet again. Yeah, they've missed many lane events in a row. I don't think Big is a team we expect to go into the playoffs, but for them to do it once in a while would, would be a gift to the German scene. I think they would love to see their team play especially in Cologne, but we've seen them time and time again actually fail delivering in front of the home fans. Virtus Pro, though, to me, it just looks like uh, job's done. Different game, but that's what it was feeling like because they, they're just very methodical. They've got this down. They waited till they were on the CT side, cleared it up. 
I don't think that they look very concerned about what they're up against. No, and it's kind of cool to see that they're not stressing, even though they are behind on many rounds in a row on an overpass, they still keep their head down. They lose a couple of stupid rounds on the T side. Get only gets five. Normally they aim around the seven, eight mark, which is quite impressive considering it's the T side. But yeah, they're just a team who never leaves their principles. They never leave their principles and it could potentially lead them to, to victory. I'm just curious, do you not think when you've taken a look at all the teams here that are at Blast Groups, is there teams that you think will be able to take Virtus Pro down pretty easily? I think no team wants to play Virtus Pro. I think they are expected to beat Virtus Pro, but internally on the teams, I think it's one of the worst teams you can draw because from the public's eye, people are going to be like, okay, if you're Phase Vitality or whoever, you need to beat Virtus Pro. But internally inside the teams, they're going to be, this is going to be really tough and mostly also free maps because that overpass is just keep coming in. Babs, you remember when we met on Monday? Yeah. Right here in this Blast studio. And we had some, some joking banter about uh, fantasy. And do you remember what you said to me about the fantasy teams? Something along the lines, if I failed the pickums below you, I wouldn't have a career in this segment anymore. It was about the picks. Uh, the, the best team that, that you can pick is currently on your screens right now. Uh, that, that's the one that you want. But I thought it might be fun, because uh, you've just said that, for, for us to pull out the, the talent scoreboard to see how the talent's doing. And I, I don't know if you can see there, Bobski, um, but, but it would seem that, that I am currently sitting in second place and yeah. you are bottom from last. I mean, I had a short playing career. Maybe it's also going to be short here because that ninth place is not looking too shabby. Maybe we could switch out you and Banks to be the analyst. We can do some interviewing. And I just want to be clear. Mathematically, you can't beat me now. Yeah. I've also seen your picks, so I have won. Yeah, if, if Astralis would have won today, I think I would have been able to. But, but they, they didn't win, they, that. they They didn't win, they which means that, I win. Especially, and congratulations, you also win on something. I've not won so much in my career, so you should have given it to me. I didn't actually win, though. Banks won. So we can celebrate together. Neither of us have won much in our career. How does that sound? If we check eSport earnings, I think I still won a bit more than you. Wow, that actually hurt my soul. We have to go to break. I'm going to cry.
Dustin, I want to start off with a not really game related question, but a coach question. When you have your timeouts, you put your hand over your mouth. Why is that? I don't know. I think it's in my mind because we are playing against a CIS team. Okay. <laughs> and maybe some words can be too precise to understand. Ah. Maybe too understandable. <laughs> I don't know. It's like in my mind. Obviously, lip reading is a very serious thing. I found out about this recently because there was some sort of Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez drama. Most teenage girls know about it. I found out about it because Launders was following all of that information. Yeah, I mean, you guys can talk about drama and, and influencer stuff, but I'm going to be focusing on the CS. I'm going to be looking at the <laughs> movies and I'm going to be looking at Virtus Pro and the guy in the picture. Is he going to be able to focus the troops once again? Because it's going to be a hard task. How do you rate, uh, rate him as a coach? He's on the screen right now. I'm curious. Yeah, it's hard because we don't actually hear that many interviews from Jame. Uh, he's not really doing too many English ones and I'm not really following him on other channels. But I would assume that since he's been around for so long that he's really valuable for some reason. Um, I could have imagined that he's a very tactical coach. I don't think he's that hype, but I hope that he brings a lot of their style and really buys into the, the way of playing. I think with Destin, the thing that I, I enjoy watching, I do think there's a, a tactical level to him. I think he does a lot of the strategy talk alongside Jame. So possibly playing a big role in figuring out what the opposition is going to do and how best to accommodate Jame's particular style. I kind of think that's the role he plays. Whatever role it is, it's working right now. Virtus Pro is looking very strong since we've transitioned to CS2. It reminds me a little bit of a, a, a young Sonic coming into the, the hands of Glaive in Astralis, right? Sonic coming into the team, he up, under, didn't really understand CSGO at that point. He came in, he was taught all the tools, and after one to two years, he was one of the best coaches in the world. Destin can surely also learn a lot with Jame, and I think they're going to be having a very nice team going for the future. I think Jame can learn a lot from him as well. Yeah. Mm, I, I would actually challenge that. I think James has gotten to a point where he's so much experience. And I think he, if you have to be the coach of James, you have to buy into the way he plays. If you're going to challenge it, I don't think it's going to work. If you bought in Zeus or Blade or someone else, they're going to be like, what the hell is going on? But he plays this way, and I don't think he's going to compromise on it. Babski, the way you fangle over James yeah. is something else. You are like, you just hype him up so much. There is, There are surely... There are flaws in this armor yes. that you can find. He's obviously a big beta. Like, he saves way <laughs> too much. I, I agree on that. And sometimes he's becoming irrelevant in rounds because he doesn't try to go for the easy kills or the at least 50-50 duels. He's the type of guy who only takes a duel if it's above 50%. He never goes for anything out of the ordinary. This team fell off after the major and it looked really bad. And they seem to have risen again when we've moved into the new iteration of Counter-Strike. What is it about the change that just seemed to revitalize them? I think it's a question about which teams are willing to adapt and play the hours needed. I think we saw Cloud9 talking about it. They came into the CS2 and new season with a lot of hours on the, their accounts. I think Virtus Pro is also that type of team who's really putting their head in the game and focusing on the challenge of Blast Pro. It's time to get into the game. So here's Scrawny and the Swifty. <laughs> that's true. I, I only know about it because of the football, so... Yeah, that's definitely it. <laughs> Get it off your chest, Mo. I have a girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> uh, here we go. Maybe the last map for Virtus Pro at the Blast Premier Spring Groups. The GG Bet odds have VP as our favorites as they were coming into the series. It felt like there was promise there for Big, but unfortunately we are going to have to ask ourselves, did Big just throw away a golden ticket with that performance from Process, with the lead that they had going at certain moments? You know, those fundamentally flawed late A plays that just left them looking a bit foolish. Man, that's got to take the wind out of the sails. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's hard to, like, not remember what just happened. But that's Big's job, not ours. So they must. And I think the question as well from Sam there to Bubski at the end of the death segment, you know, how did VP come back from their major fall off? I'd say it's because of Newbert. His reinvented <laughs> play style and improvements has taken the floor of this team would and that, arisen it. Would that, make his, <laughs> would that make his nickname Newbie? It might. <laughs> It might. You're onto something. <laughs> but with Mir as well, replacing Kickert, I think it's just it's a winning formula. And on top of that, as Bubsky said, absolute grinders of the game. Every online cup they can possibly get their hands on, every game of Counter-Strike, every round of CS, they are down to party. They waited for that taps and push. 
And they didn't get the kill from it, but they've also got Crimbo down in water on the fallback. He doesn't want to float around like Prosis. Yeah, it's, uh, oh my god, that is insane from Norbert. Prosis has got something to work with. Luckily, Sin has a bomb at his feet. He's going to keep on trying to fight. Insta swaps the USP. Yeah, he should go for it, honestly. He's got a player behind him, Montu helping out, but they nope. both die. Ooh, they just get outgunned. But it's an honest game right there. They they can they tried to stop that bomb from being picked up. I think they should have fought. They just didn't hit their shots. And now it's all on Tapson. Man to make first contact, ready for this 1v3, but the bomb is now starting to extract. Flit's taken um, this one. Yeah, but it's a perfect counter. I mean, Ooh. okay, Tapson's coming back. Maybe there's a chance. Ooh. Oh, maybe so if cool. fame wasn't so sharp. We didn't get this, like, lights-out performance from... Notorious this week for just kind of hitting the ground running each and every time. But if we do get Flit and Fame popping heads here onto Nubis, I mean, I think nobody would even argue, really, that coming into this series, categorically, Virtus Pro just have way higher firepower. They're just a better team. They are better at, at Anubis as well. And I think that bit like the map right now, but they, on CT side especially, they really see, can really see how exper inexperienced some players are. So they they won a, a war over Heroic yes. uh, on this map at the hand of, with Montu. I think there's still a question. Level, but there's still so much you can see that they need to improve. Whereas I never feel like that after a Virtus Pro okay. win. I don't go, wow, they can just get so much better. And wow. I just know they're always going to win 13 to 11, yeah. no matter how hard the opponent is. <laughs> it's just a very weird progression of scaling with them. And But in terms of their CS, they play off meta CS. No one plays like them, never has. My question mark still resides above, you know, this sin slash process two man B setup. I think some of the issues we've seen from the CT side, like you're talking about, yeah, yeah. was kind of their coupling in this bomb site. It's kind of this right here. One side of the map is strong because they have Krimbo. The other side can have four players, but they don't know how to complement each other perfectly mm. to get the trades. Yeah, even when taps in or even when Montu comes over to bolster it, you know, we see Montu show up and I think he looks a little bit awkward in this bomb site as well. Yes, and I'll say that this is why I'm excited for this map because Overpass looked like improved CT side. Okay when we those first few rounds so maybe so, they can bring some of that crap maybe they've made some work on anubis because they were picking right. this one yep yep overpasses is the expected pick german fingers crossed norbert gonna find tapson and it's all good there's a team kill in the middle of all this james turning on his troops mohan mm. he's just drinking their blood but because he's the cult leader you can't really say anything about it no you can take your life you can take your wife, <laughs> and there's nothing you can do but say, thank you, James. That's your John Anik moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much to GG Bat. There's fun. Same <laughs> <laughs> uh, going through a custody battle right uh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to have to keep waiting. I was singing the praise of Krimbo for his utility on the A side. I think that's something even before you try to execute into the bomb site, Krimbo's going to soften you up. He's going to flash you. He's going to make you feel uncomfortable. He's really good at kind of like feigning presence and applying pressure. But that's all over at the A site. And if VP continue to sink their teeth into B, well, it's nothing but soft flesh. <sighs> yeah, just tears away right off the bone. All the muscles over here. The A walk up from Krimbo and Montu. Montu definitely had some op frags across overpass, but uh, nothing in comparison to what he did versus Cloud9. But he's not the only person we can put under the microscope in a negative light. Krimbo's supposed to be the star. Tapson's numbers had been improving on land. Hey, I was going to push that. Still could. But they don't. It is kind of telling that in the pregame interview with Dostan, he's like, yeah, we completely expected Anubis. It's been a few times they'll take us there. We're going to probably play it again. And we don't really, you know, worry too much about it. 
Like, it felt like he, in his mind, in that interview, it felt like he was speaking with the confidence of a 2-0 prediction in this series. Not in a cocky way. Like, it, nope. like a, it's a foregone conclusion. Yes. So Almost in a very oh, humble I, way, actually. Actually, you mentioned that, like, the UMPs are being bought on the CT side, but MAC-10's on the T side, but they even bought one here on, on T side where it costs more. And that's even that's even curious for me. And I'm okay with the umps. Because, just because the price, like, MAC-10s are so good and so cheap. Yeah. At least with uh, the you know MP9s, it's like oh it's around the same price range, so maybe just like like one more. Yep. But uh, something about these umps right now, they're, they're catching people's attention. It was Gamer Legion, right? Who also had a few. I think so. What do they know that we don't? And I don't have a PC in my hotel room, Launder, so I can't even find out for myself. Yeah, you do. We've all seen your setup. Well, yeah, but you made fun of it the other night, so... It doesn't exist anymore. I threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you sat down, you're like, it's not 120 hertz. <laughs> you need to definitely optimize something on that setup. I don't know what's going on with it. Sorry, my 13-inch laptop's not good enough. <laughs> Smoke outside of dark. Flit's just kind of doing his own thing down here. Sometimes you see, like, entire teams approach this. Two, three players kind of getting into this util fight. Flitz just kind of puffing his chest and doing it all alone. Yeah. So, like, the, you know, if this was, like, phase on the CT side, you would see Rain taking a deep end angle inside of E-Box and playing it by himself. Whereas you get big sort of hover-handing it. Like, they've got lots of people around it. They're sort of peeking into it, but they never go deep into canals. And uh, Flitz throwing all the usual utility. They're just not getting much of a response. I think they know exactly... Either that Montu's here or Prosis is here standing in front of this, because they always are. They get kind of friend zoned in this setup. Mm. That ain't fun. They know he's they're here, but they get ignored. Molly lands on him, disassembles oh. the setup. They lose their anchor. Sin trying to recover it. Three players to press out from long on VP's end. And they catch one jumping in the smoke. Oh. Sorry, bud. You're not getting out of dodge. Okay, there's three things that went wrong there. Standing back default, jumping through that smoke late and committing, and then also the setup um, inside E-Box. They got mollied out, missed their first trade. So that's pretty much VP with, like, um, prescient about knowing exactly what was going to happen each step of the way, and then, like, seeing it actually go that way, and then getting the kill. First one pretty much topples everything. It's hard to hold this site. I mean, it, it really is, even with a lot of CTs. And it's also hard to find CT options to defend it. So I do feel for teams, but if uh, you're you're exploitable here, this is where you'll lose the whole half. What's the change? What's demanded of big? What's the change? is that it's, uh, What's demanded of... So one thing that you can go for is look for picks instead of defend from the site. Because if you have high numbers, any setup is fine. And then that way, it takes pressure off the late round where it comes to a full exec. It's essentially, CS is a game of delaying and insinuating, right? The, the T is constantly trying to say, we're taking this part of the map, and the CT is saying, you can't, you can't come here, or we're here defending it. And so, that's why you'll see that a lot of the nades that Krimbo throws, for example, to soften people up while they're in the default is a way to defend as prophylaxis. Uh, pushing out of E-Box for the pick with Montu, instead of standing in the site, holding it passively and waiting, getting out into the areas the T's are early in creative ways, like the baskets pushes that we see sometimes, that's demanded of the CT side. Just because you live as a CT until 40 seconds doesn't mean you've won the round in any meaningful sense. VP will still have a full exec, they'll have a two site, uh, two choke point split, and you'll have the same weak CT spots that lose better teams the same rounds. But this is pretty much all process will do here. And this time with lesser weapons, MP9, 5.7s. Very little mid-attention following through from the bridge. A very hopeful Montu. Like three five seven bullets through a smoke isn't going to turn Mir away. Mm -hmm. A lot of power over on A with Krimbo and Montu. A lot of power that hasn't really seen much action yet so far this map. 
We see them getting closer to B yet once more. So it's taps in towards Temple to support. Smoke going down at the right moment. Process. They're going to need this. He's in the danger zone. Does the smoke bounce back? What happens there? Process just stuck. It's actually a late rotation in through camera. Instant execution on Montu. And then into the psych goes oh, Mir. Beautiful. God. But Farm, does it have time? Gets picked back up. Oh, boy. He's wow. got it. Oh, Mir literally won the round. Whew. Having perfectly into two full kills. Like, no help whatsoever. That was, um... That was VP magic. And Flit slides out, so they're just gonna try to go save. And Tapson's gonna get blindsided by this. That's one M4 down, and... Potential for another. Virtus Pro down to the second, but like I had was saying kind of at the start of the series, mm -hmm. we've seen all the teams in this group, Heroic, Big, Cloud9, and VP run it down to the final second, and VP seemingly always get away with <laughs> the it. The only ones who can, yeah, consistently. So, whether, and to nobody's surprise. Whether or not in, in uh, isolation you can explain why that round was bad and won't work again, VP are the only ones that can break your logic in half and win the round again in a new way that didn't make sense every single time so it's just it feels like mob mentality you know if, if you have enough people who have a certain opinion you'll start to sway others in a certain direction mm. feels that way with with Virtus pro if oh they're in your God. group they've just got you kind of now that pre-clear on crimbo i'll say yeah like crimbo does just stand right there so there's a there's something to it where he could have been behind the cake it was, no, no, I mean, it was, like, a very nice, I would just say, to give Mir some credit here. Okay. Like, he only had basically the time to clear one angle, but that would be the most common spot for Krimbo to be in. So, very tough stuff. Flit farming last round, killed three at the end, and now Process just seemingly fine to hold on his own. All right. You give him enough chances, he's gonna stick the oh, landing, uh -oh. but now Montu peeks into James' scope, and the door has been reopened. Still a man disadvantage to deal with, but when you have VP with a minute on the clock, everybody should be stressed. It's like the moment Montu finally decides to swing into something, and it's like the moment where he actually didn't need to. They had the 5v3 to chill and wait. And now it gets a touch scary. This spot is definitely very good. And you, oh yeah, peeking up and flashing over it is awesome. Shot missed here from Jame. He goes back and gets a glance that Jame is gonna stick around as the clock bleeds down. This should be one. Looking likely, all is good. So it takes six rounds, but we've got big on the board by way of process 2K down in dark. Not bad. Seemed easy as far as he's concerned. Yeah, a round like that's going to happen every once in a while. I've seen him get that exact same frag on an early smoke when they run through. Just good job watching it and not just smoking it and going back into the site. Um, it's the fault of VP to not molly on the other side. But if they did, then they wouldn't have been able to push through. So, Counter -terrorists win. Dup, done. James saves so much money still on Virtus Pro. Just cheesing on the oh, side that of the was so clean, though. He didn't yep. even see him. Mm -hmm. All Kept audio. his head down. That second player looking for the trade ends up just being the end of VP's winning streak. First one's the hardest. First one's the hardest. First timeout called here from Destan. I say his name differently every time, so I'm not sure. Destan, Destan, Dastan, Dastan, Destan, Destan. Saw him and the boys prowling the hotel last night after the big game. Mm -hmm. Still, uh, Burning the midnight oil, making sure that they were well prepped for this matchup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it feels like they know what to expect out of Big. Feels like they've got a good read on him. Felt like we saw that on Overpass, despite Process's individuals causing a problem for Virtus Pro at the start of the series. Jame gonna come at dark from the opposite end. 
After Montu takes his first shot, then Jame gets on the angle. Yeah, it would have looked like it would have got him killed if he peeked too early. That extra layer of cautiousness. The player Damn. jumping? Yeah, having the player mm -hmm. jump out first. Sets up a great chance for Jame to just peek in and catch him if the CT op goes for a second shot, but Montu disciplined. Fires once and now finds himself inside of A. I still worry about crack spots like this just because of sick. And he does games. this a lot. It's every, mostly every round, yeah. This is pretty much the game plan. Bit of a bit of a read here, big hoping that it's gonna be A this round. They've got Tabson going to feel out middle. Oh oh. They just walk through smoke. No wow, announcement. That is crazy. It's just man. timing. It's literally timing. Did they? Did they, yeah? They is they poor Crimbo. How do they know? Zero and five now. Every other round has gone to the B site. The one round that comes to A, and they walk through a smoke. They just and unannounced. I, I think what they were looking for, if we watch the replay, they were actually looking to to punish a re smoke, not the nade. So I I think as they come through. It would be great to, to watch that back to, to confirm. But uh, I think they're just like, all right. Our timing is while the smoke is still up, right when someone potentially is going to throw down another smoke. They caught Krimbo throwing a nade. They were hoping it wasn't going to be that, but that was just fine. I think it's the same effect, essentially. Last time we saw all of Big get cleared by Flit. Three kills. Denying the saves this time. Oh, Very important they hold on to these guns, and they will. That's at least three standing out of big. An unfortunate round for Krimbo that he is going to hate having to rewatch. Mm -hmm. Timing yeah, couldn't look, have been better. I think that, so. I think the nade blows open the smoke, but it's also fading at the same time. Just got to take that on the chin. Nothing you can really do about that. Easier said than done, man. Yeah. That one's gonna sting. Virtus Pro. Right back to winning ways. It's a one-off round win from Big. Six rounds deep. But Mirrors flushed off the bridge. And Tabson's getting flashbang supported from B. Oof. Flit. There's half his health gone. So, Prosis and Flit just in this, like, eternal battle of utility and dark. I'm glad to see, though, some of the CT utility coming back, because there's just almost no pressure back from the CT side. It's just this crack spot into re-molly, re-smoke. It's very basic. So, sometimes you don't get to kill your targets, and you have to deal with an exec, but at least you can try to soften them with unconfirmed damage. Putting the AWP in, okay. There's nobody at the distance. Problem is for Montu in some of these spots. If he if he just sits and they wait long enough, they, he'll he'll get flashed. Also, if he peeks deep enough to kill Fame, that's when Flit can peek out and trade right away. They actually don't have a flash though, and that's confirmed tag, so that's good. Well timed Molly. Bomb floating outside of B long. It's Montu inside dark room. It's Process on platform. Good shot from Montu. No immediate trade out of Flit, and an incendiary lets him turn that off to the other entry point. 15 on the clock. They can flush out the player towards platform. Five seconds to spare. Jame dies. Oh. That's a perfect frag grenade, but they have to call it a save, and they're not going to get away with this. Only Norbert can run for the hills, and no guarantees with T-Spawn already occupied here by Tabson. Yeah, nice one. James op cleared, Ooh. and that's money lost by Norbert. Okay. B site. Holds. That's nice. They'll make it competitive. I was like, man, are they going to get caught off by this? But they they did a good job of, I mean, Process used his molly deeper this time instead of waiting and just preemptively doing it uh, in response to utility. And they, again, it's a game of insinuation between both sides. But it's important not to just close your eyes and just react to everything that happens and instead just double check. So the deep molly is very good. He gets a tag damage off. There's an upper that's on a deeper angle and they force Virtus Pro's hand to come in and try to push. They, uh... It's not every day you get a little frustration out of Jame like that. Did you see that? Yeah, Upset that's... that that grenade came and found him. I'd be pissed too. Yeah. <laughs> that nade just landed on his forehead.
Hunt has actually got some good nade kills, eh? Yep, true. Off shot, missed. Repeak, off the mark. Now, usually there's this, like, affinity for Montu to fire and reposition, but it looks like he's going to stay in A site. Uh-oh, there's a big gap. Fame's actually disrespecting this completely. The double shot comes in, and he just started walking. Will Fame take it into his own hands, though? He's half health, locked in on A long. Crimbo in heaven. Does this become a B fake? I don't know. The bomb's out here, but I think James is also throwing utility. Oh, oh, they caught him. Oh, no. Sin jumped up as they naded the smoke. That was a CT smoke. CT nade. A CT what? frag grenade. And then he tries to jump up and he gets caught on it. I'm like 90% sure. And this could go back to A site. I mean, again, they've got an... Okay. He gets into the corner. No way, dude. Oh, James. They can't chase him because the molly. That's insane. And this just keeps Prosis so preoccupied at the 22nd mark. They're going to nade open the smoke. Crimbo's playing the fountain pillar. Crimbo could go huge here. Needs to turn it on Norbert. The camera peak comes out. Beautiful 2K. Bomb's got to get picked back up, but a plant seems like a tall order. Flit into the site. Fakes once. Gets the kill. Needs to plant. Doesn't. Misses it. Oh. For once, VP run out of time. Okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, it actually happened in the last round, too, when they tried to get into the B side. I mean, they just got crushed, but it was down to the wire. Right there, of course, Flit could have planted after his last kill. But finally, they do get punished for playing with the clock. And uh, Krimbo finally just has a regular round to take action. 2K on the hold as the only person here for this time. Nice reaction, too. Peels off the first player, has two fights. Target selection, chooses Norbert, nails the headshot. Yeah. A couple body shots there, not enough. That's Flit holds camera, Norbert plants bomb, all's good. That's why it's such a thankless role sometimes to be the anchor, because you get one or you know one or two chances for regular rounds like that, where if someone runs through your smoke, you're in a really good position that's not getting mollied, and you have to get two kills. Like You yep. have to do it, otherwise you're just a regular average Joe who's by himself, and you'll lose the round, but he gets both. Crimbo ain't no Joe. Big. Can they do more? God be forcing the timeout before action continues. Finally, the money of Virtus Pro starting to get low. That's three rounds won by the clock. All of Bigs based on time. And usually, that's James' secret weapon. Waiting for the peak on dark. As Montu has been very mobile throughout this CT side, we've seen him on both bomb sites and now here on bridge. Jame opens up. Peaks. Oh, man, that's, that's the, the jiggle. That yep. jiggle, yeah. Yep, that's exactly what we're talking about. A consistency in Process's defense is him just jiggling that corner, and Jame is quick to the trigger. Montu going to burn quite a bit. Half health before seeing anything. Now, Fame's still working with the Tech 9. B site banks on taps and towards Temple. Sin picks up the incendiary and just does the same thing process was. Yeah. They both kind of have been instructed that this is like their job. It's two mice in the same trap. But that op has moved back around towards Long instead. As Molly's going to get them control of Dark. Smokes go down on site as well. It's going to delay the split because of the Molly, but at least it guaranteed oh, them control. Damn back default. Got to be careful. Tapson gonna pop the smoke open. No fight there towards Jail. Will peel one off long. Bomb dropped again. Plenty of time to pick it up. And Fame running rampant through the site. Virtus Pro straight back to winning rounds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, we know exactly what happens right there. Uh, it's Jame this time. His off pick is just, okay, hopefully Montu's not starting E-Box. Let's see if we can just duel this crack spot that we see in every single demo from Big in this position on E-Box and... Well, eventually, of course, process goes down. Haven't seen Jame go to peel him off that position until yeah. now. So round 10, he pulls it out. Great way to reopen the T side for a very dominant half. Seven guaranteed, two to go. Terrorists win. It's 
just, I mean, it's crazy how someone can have so much impact without actually being in the fight. Jame, 10 rounds into this game, is 4-2. and two. Yeah. Like, 4-2, and two, that's a score you have when there's three rounds played. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's, like he, what's he doing? He's just, he's just walking around winning. Must be nice. It's really just that easy for Jame. Yeah. I remember after the Rio Major, he said that he was just exhausted after, you know, doing each of the stages and then winning. Yes. Um, which he always makes it look easy by the look on his face, but he's burning calories. Processing all the information at light speed. Yep. Just really does play a different game than everybody else. We're lucky to have him. Uh-oh. That's a lot of noise. Norbert leaning back, peak by oh, process. Oh, that's a... Was looking for the jump up, not the wide swing. 5v4 plus damage on Mir. Great chance for Big to pick up their fourth. They're taking their talents to A, though. It'll be Krimbo and Montu tested yet again. Last time they just walked around. Oh, oh what? Wait, did it? Maybe a flash? Oh, maybe no, a smoke? It. I think they threw their nades into the back of the site. Oh, and, and that didn't Molotov. Get pop flashed. It puts Krimbo back on storage. That's all they end up getting. Blink and you'll miss it. VP, just teleport into your bomb site and a post plant to boot. Think he just heard a can land in heaven. And fidgeted. Oh, did they save? Oh, man. Did they save this? Are they? Yeah. Oh, they're, no, they're two. He's going to snapshot. Oh! oh. oh. Wow. He's just oh. nice, too, like on you a, like a very, like on feel a. It. Yeah, on a primordial level, he's mm. just nice with it. You know, those flicks. You know, he's got like. He's got that, like, Einstein prefrontal cortex, but then also just the, the sharpest little lizard stem. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Both sides. James got it. Counter-Strike is a theory. And is a mechanical masterpiece. But, I mean, Montu looking away from that angle. He was sitting on it. That is, that is a crazy shot. I could just feel it. I could just feel it coming. You just know when yeah, James yeah. going to hit them. He's so good at hard shots. He really is. You just you just know when it's going to happen. So VP from a 4v5 into a potential nine-round T-side. A-site completely oh. open. Poor Tabson. He did no wrong. No one in A. Not a single person. It's just the perfect call at the perfect moment after a pretty perfect half. It's a quick scramble back over to the site. We didn't see them go for the retake the round prior, and by the time they get there, oh, Mir even coming through timing on middle as well. He gets that kill on Tabson through smoke, catching Krimbo on the camera. Montu's gonna blindside him to at least keep the hopes and dreams of a A site retake alive. But again, there's just so much utility here in the face of Big, and Fame, he's happy to chase Process, who jumps back up into his own coffin. Big looking behind them like, can we just save? But it's the last round of the half. They're met by more smokes. This is literal desperation. And in contrast, a masterclass from Virtus Blow Pro. A ninth round guaranteed. There's no entry. Sorry, boys. A site's closed. B site's always open. And VP, a mere four rounds from locking in London.
been a while since we called them Virtus Plow, but this squad is just clearing the roads of this German blockade. Big thinking they had a chance after running it back versus Heroic after dispatching of Cloud9 off of the Montu overperformance. We have unfortunately met their maker. And VP, not going to eliminate all of Big's dreams, but very, very close to getting themselves to London and doing it in convincing fashion as well. Definitely just setting themselves apart from the rest of the pack in Group D. VP show up at their first ever blast groups with eyes on finals. But T-side Anubis, anything can happen. Very true. We get two kills both ways. Taps in down to 40. Watch this Crimbo lurk. It's coming in from behind. Fame running back. Ooh, gets into cover now. Knows every single position, so VP can play accordingly. Flanks upon flanks. <laughs> Look at Fame. He's actually running around through spawn just to get back to mid. Oh, They're going to be pretty fast. concerned. The other players start to move forward. Flit, it's a pretty quick trade. And honestly, Fame gets there relatively quick. Tapson's going to be exposed to this. Fame trying to serve up the distraction. Flit's looking for the trades. Managing damage, but that's it. Sin puts down two, and Big's chance alive. And they immediately get loud because they can get closer to trying to tie this up. And on T side, I know I had problems with their CT side. I don't have those same problems with T side, and I think Krimbo's a gem, um, especially when it comes to opening up the A site, which Virtus Pro didn't even try to do that much in the same way, like in the classical way, where Krimbo will in the classical tier one way of lurking into baskets and taking control that way. So he'll put on a lot of pressure. I think everyone will look a little bit better. And we should get a much more competitive second half. Hopefully so. Not going to get a force by win from VP. Not with a buy like this, surely. That A site's about to crumble. Sorry, Tapson. <laughs> At least you win the round. At least you didn't see it. Just close your eyes. <laughs> Feels like dying to USPs when you have Kevlar is like getting beat to death by sticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so unsatisfying sometimes you're shooting the USP. It's just the bolts aren't like loud enough, the hit's not loud enough, so you just like click harder. Yeah. You know? Come on, come on! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Die, would you? P250, though. That's a different story. It is, yeah, that's satisfying. It's like an alligator snap. It's like Hungry Hungry Hippo. That's what a, that's what a P250 reminds me of. Okay. I think it's Sponge, who's always called the 5'7", the snapping turtle. And I agree with that. Oh, okay, yeah. But more so because the actually, sound it makes. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. That sounded like a dolphin, actually, but the snapping turtle makes more sense. You're right. So, you know, snapping turtles hiss? Did you know turtles hiss? Turtles, the snapping they, turtles hiss. They hiss, yeah, yeah. yeah. They hiss. That's pretty scary. Yeah, wow. Look out for that. Nature is scary. So I've been told, when you got James out there in the world, you never know what he's up to. James is just a reflection of our deepest thoughts. He's just brave enough to act him out in real life. Oof, I like that. Oof. James knows no fear. All right, let's see if he can play any tricks here on fame. Sneak into baskets. Oh! Whoa, he's alive. No oh, way! Wow, that was... Dude, he pulls that gun out and kills Krimbo? Come oh. on! At least Prosis... Yeah, he'll pick it up, and this one falls to big. Let's go. Okay, thank <laughs> God they get that. Jesus, that was so nice from Fame. Like, I can't, can't, can't even believe he got that. But just equally as good and even better from Prosis to get the trade and the second frag denied. Dude, just the way he jumps out of the like, like a jackrabbit, yeah. just pops. M4 is up, gets the kill. I feel bad for Krimbo. Poor guy's five and ten off that. Yeah, it was a very scary way to spot though, and uh, it wasn't perfect either. And that's why Krimbo snuck up to the baskets position in the first place. Fame didn't do that exactly but, right. You know, I'm going to criticize Prosis and Sin sitting over on that B site doing little jiggles with incendiaries. I feel like that one's even more dangerous. That's what I'm saying, yeah. It was super dangerous. 
Don't want to see more of that. It was super dangerous, and he had a blind spot. I think he just didn't realize how shallow the, uh, the spot was. So, can't do that again. Spot like that with an op is fine. Fair. Ah! That's so Dude. nuts, though. It has to be a pre-fire on the head, double dink. I'd be pissed yeah. if I was Crimbo. Crimbo will stomach it for the sake of big. Three rounds away from tying this up, but we've got guns in the hands of VP now. Do they shut down big quick? Also looking forward to seeing how Norbert contrasts his B defense on Dark Room in comparison to the one that we kind of saw repeated over and over. Right now he's leaning back on platform. We got four VP members leaning into B, so if Big think they're gonna find something uh -oh. easily, doesn't look likely. Jame even finding a smoke shot. As if Big needed something worse to deal with. Smoke start to fade. Vision on the jail player, Norbert. Oh no, Molly. Yeah, he just catches Vision of Tabson. Oh, they should have mollied that. On the approach, they don't have one though, actually. So stuck with a smoke on Crimbo. Ooh, there's enough time for this. There is enough time for this. And they can even come back. This this ties up the CTs. They've got someone behind enemy lines who can cause a distraction. The CTs start to filter out. And Prosis doesn't know that exactly. So could end up just getting caught off guard, but draws their attention back. The CTs A's all open. looking in this direction. A is open. Every kill here is big. Every member that he pulls off of this round is one less for what feels like the inevitable A retake. You can still see the hesitation of Sin. They're terrified. Look, I mean, they're flanking the wrong site right now. Bomb is on the other side of the map. Yep. This is uh, all wrong for Virtus Pro. Big have tricked them. They start just run over to the A play. You still got to be worried about pushing, though, because they were there now for so long they could be anywhere. Oh, my God, that was close. We've got no kit on these CTs. We've got an incendiary for Mir. That is all. Nade goes too deep on camera. They're already ahead of the pack. Sin, good snapshot. Mir, oh, no way he gets those both. Wow. Krimbo, it's a clutch attempt, but he gets blindsided from Flit, and all that repositioning so smooth from Big, and it all boils down to nothing. Yeah, Mir does the amazing right there. That's actually pretty selfless from James just walking in first with the op, but he is uh, Willing to less be likely to trade, yeah, so better to have Mir come out to refrag him. Trusted him right there. I know it was his opening shot that made Damn. this easier, too. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Montu. But th that's the kind of unconfirmed damage that's the only way that you win rounds on this site because it's an unfair site for CTs. you got to find new ways to get kills in. Big, big love to fight towards main. They don't spend as much time trying to split out of E-Box. This round is actually a great start, though. They got E-Box fast, and they put pressure on main. So maybe they can recreate some of that, but time's limited. They've already given up a 10th round here to Virtus Pro. We're now three away from London completely. Yes, sir. And looking good across the board. And this is the guy who wants to be in London more than anyone else. We already locked in Mezzi. Montu has called London home. But unfortunately, we are not getting the Montu of yesterday. Nor the Crimbo. Vying for control of top middle, Tabson just shooting some bullets through. We get this alien VP. Willing to leave Norbert solo B. For now. Definitely looks like they're just going to play retake, seeing as he has all that utility as well. Tabson's looking at his teammate's screen. Careful, fame's coming. Fame's real close to this. Tabson not ready at all. Oh, hunted down. Never suspected that they would get so aggressive. He did not put up a fight whatsoever. Never rest on your laurels. They are watching your demos. And with it, it's man advantage. 30 seconds left over. We get this stacking of the B site right at the perfect moment. Mir challenged mid, loses his head. Bomb starting to lean over A. This is big. Nice one for Sin. They have a full split. Just Jame by himself. Little old Jame. Just little old Jame. Just one guy and his trusty op. Oh, Flash does nothing. A single shot and Crimbo's dead. Concerned about the mid split. 
let them have the bomb site. He banks on the retake. Seven to the clock. Three seconds left, and the plant is guaranteed. Montu uncontested. James giving them a little wiggle room, but it's a fast flank coming out from Fame. Montu on the angle. Missed shot critically at this point. Nade moves forward. M4 from mid. Hits the damage, but Sin still stands. Oh, it's Montu. another missed shot. And then Process empty handed. Fame just chewing through this retake. All three kills are his. And VP two away. I can see why you'd get a little bit rocked by the fact that they're just running the entire flank to miss one, but you got to hit one of two right there. Sin does a good job of getting the middle kill as well as getting into E-Box without dying to Jame. Jame does a good job of getting his one kill and staying alive, but uh, that was definitely big with more advantages than VP had all the way up until those closing moments. Just one or two easy shots to lock that in, and uh, maybe Big can continue to play. But instead it's this, another toppled over B site on a quick retake. And Big are running low on a different kind of clock. It's not the round clock, it's the match clock. It's the opportunity clock. The doomsday clock. Flit feels the pressure, falls back, and we've got Process in Dark. Oh, but they have to fall out of it for a second, and that just gives the right amount of time for James to get onto the platform. Do they take the chance of pressing through this smoke? James ready for them if they try. He's gonna pop it open. Oh, oh he kills Tapson Ooh. with the nade, and 82 health off Ooh. Sin. Then he comes in with oh. two shots. Dude, you can't beat him. Montu finally puts him down to reopen this door. It's a prolonged Galil spray that's just good for two. And Krimbo, we've been waiting for his moment. This could be the big one. Swapping to the AWP with three players around, but it's the bomb that's out in the open. And two players ready to peek him as he stands here. They've got this. Oh. VP6, map and match points. Oh, man, that was really painful to watch. Just everything going right there for VP. Small advantages for big disappearing at the drop of a hat. Every moment, they just crush him out of it. They don't get a swing out. Jesus. This kill on Sin feels like a robbery. Yeah, could it buy a trade? He's got him pinned against the obelisk. Galil spraying into him. But Jame is like Zaiwu sometimes in that regard. When he's like getting flashed, getting fragged, getting mollied. Two of the offers that really just seem to still be able to control the pressure of it. We get an all out rush towards top mid. It's just desperation at this point. Big, the dream of oh. London will have to be reborn tomorrow because Virtus Pro have taken the highway to the spring finals. They drop one map versus Cloud9 yesterday, but none of these. Really a challenge versus Big. Their first run out of Blast Groups and VP go straight to the season finals. We talk about how these upcoming teams need more opportunities, how a closed circuit keeps these guys out of it. Look at this. Give them one chance and they dominate their group. Poor Krimbo, who, I mean, we have sang his praise as of late after the difficult closed qualifier. We saw a flash in the pan last night. The individual potential of a player like Krimbo or Montu or Tabson. And they'll go to bed tonight with the hope of taking down their opposition tomorrow. Because I'm sorry, Krimbo, but you don't have a damn chance. It's VP, baby. Every step of the way, VP. James' system, James' individual level. James' team from top to bottom put forth good performances in this run. Five days since we started the groups and VP locks in London. Their faces might not show it, but I know how excited Virtus Pro was to potentially go to London. Datsun actually spoke to Banks before, right at the start of Blast, and he said how important it was for this team to be part of the circuit and how desperately he wanted to get to the UK. And now they've done just that. Their first outing here in the Blast groups, 
And they're going to London, Babski. Yeah, they did it with style. A convincing 2-0 against Big. Big hasn't looked the greatest, but it's still a good result. We all had that discussion in this group. We had two teams who was a little bit above the rest of them, and I think it showed today. It was a masterclass from Virtus Pro in the end. They just knew exactly what they needed to do on Anubis, and they shut Big down quick and fast, and they were able to take the victory. What was it about their particular play style that you enjoyed? Yeah, I'm a James Sucker. For some reason, you called me call me out on it, but uh, I think he shows it why I am. I think he dominates a lot of the games, and I think when we see him in those after plans in so many, many situations, he plays it so well, he buys time for his team. They stack a lot, they gamble a lot, but they're so good on the retake. We also see Big doing the same thing, but I don't feel they have nearly the same execution. Big, however, is not out of the competition just yet. Yep. They will play again tomorrow because there are two spots in London still up for grabs. Virtus Pro, though, they get to celebrate, they get to be happy. When you're taking a look at them, do you think now, looking at what they've done, that the, the VP that was able to win a major is starting to rise up again? Or am I taking it too far? I think you're taking it a little bit too far. I think they're a very good team and they will for sure be a part of the top six, seven conversation instantly, they already are. But are they able to push it to the top one into a Vitality, Astralis face type of thing? I'll need to wait and see them play the better teams. Which they'll be able to do in London. Banks has got not one, but two VP players. So let's find out how they're feeling after that victory. Virtus Pro have done it and they will be going off to London. I've got Fame and Jane because I wanted to make sure we try and speak to this man. So if I need some help, Fame, you'll be the one to do it. I want to first ask for, for Jane for grinding out so many events, right, for fighting so hard, coming to Blast, the first partner event for you guys, and getting the win here to go all the way to spring finals. What does it mean to him? Well, yeah, it's mean for me a lot. Uh, it's, uh, it's my first blast yeah. in Copenhagen. I'm very happy. Nice, nice. But you didn't look so excited when you won. You got up and just, okay, job done. There was no emotion? Uh, all emotion inside me. Uh -huh, okay. We just haven't seen it come out yet. We're waiting for another big win. Uh, tomorrow, yesterday, yesterday, I thought uh, it's it's not it's like disrespectful when you win and you, when you won and you oh nice fame <laughs> and like uh, after five seconds good game good game yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like so you don't want to do yeah. it that way okay well vp's got their own way of doing things for you fame right this is a journey you guys have been on you played a really good series here but were you guys worried at all with anubis because you'd lost the last three games against other teams and then big obviously tried to use it as a way to get in Actually, I was surprised when I saw our, uh, when I see our, uh, like, winning percentage on Anubis <laughs> because it's like 25 or something. Uh, we lost the last three games, but they were so close and uh, they were in our hands. We did some crucial mistakes. That's mm -hmm. why our win rate is so bad. Uh, but I think it's just fine. We're playing fine. Uh, we just need to fix some little mistakes and uh, our Anubis is good, yeah. And right now, this Virtus Pro seems to be constantly getting better. Do you feel like you guys can be one of these world-beating teams, these contender teams, when you get further into events and leagues, RMR, major, big events coming up? Yeah, of course. Uh, we are a top five team and we want to compete on the best uh, tier one events. We want to play against tier one teams and uh, yeah, we want to just win everything and uh, to be the best in the world. That's our goal. And James, finally, I want to ask you, just on this Virtus Pro, the team you have with you, the players you have within this lineup, do you feel like this is the best you can be? Do you think this is be the most success you can have? Maybe another major? Yes. To be, uh, we, we want to show our best. <laughs> well, let's see if they do show it. They've made it to London. Let's see how far they can go. Thank you very much, guys. One, I just think that it is so incredible to see James doing that interview. It is so hard to, to have to do an interview in English when you don't speak a lot of English. Uh, but two, also, I really found that interesting, that the point of uh, we don't celebrate and we don't make a big noise because we think it's disrespectful. That's something that I'd never actually thought of. And, and it just shows the big brain is also, he's got big heart. He's a nice guy. Yeah, it says a lot about his character, even though he only threw in a, a couple of words, but I think we get to know Jim very much in this interview. He's a very calm type of guy. He's very respectful of his opponents, but he's also a very great player at the same time. He is a great player, and now we get to see him in London against those top teams, Babski. This is another team that gets to join the groups. Of course, today was all about the winning teams, making sure that they could get to London, and here they are now. Four spots have been claimed 
four teams and I'd argue that, that we pretty much saw all of these ones coming. Maybe some people didn't expect Na'Vi, I did. I really love that new roster. I think that there's there's so much potential there. Yeah, I think it's been a, a predictable amount of teams we see in this playoffs. Um, tomorrow it's going to be the easiest chance for, to fill those two spots. We know how hard that showdown can be. Two spots remaining, of course. Tomorrow we will find out who will be claiming them. But first, let's take a look now at the groups, just in case you've missed a lot of it. First up, you had Group A. Of course, the the rematch today, Vitality versus Astralis. The Astralis lineup looks very impressive for the future. We'll see them tomorrow as well, but hot damn, what is happening there? I mean, this was the story of the Danes, right? I think Falcons played actually pretty well, considering they were a brand new team. Boros surprised me in some moments, and then all, of course, the Vitality winning the group, but Astralis really pushed them to the limit. They really did. And I think we can get excited about what might come during the course of the year. This is what I love, though, about Spring Groups, is that we get to see all these teams for the first time as the season begins. The Liquid Phase matchup. Again, Liquid, the potential that I was seeing there, I, I really think a little bit more time, a little bit more synergy. That 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 is the dreams of North America are resting on their shoulders. I agree, and it's so face-like for some reason. They lose to Gamer Legion, actually pretty convincing in their first match, 2-0, and then they go down the lower braid and they just show why they're one of the best teams to fear still. For sure, and of course, then you got to see the last two games today, and we will start it out with Group C, jumping up there, Na'Vi. Again, I think that that Na'Vi roster looks phenomenal, and I, I think there's so much potential. I feel like a stuck record. I've now said that about three teams, Babski. Yeah, but I think they had time to practice with one of the best in-game leaders in the world at some point, Alexi B, and I also think Blade is going to help him define his style so much more, so it just seems like a very good duo for now. And then finally, of course, what you just saw was Group D. This was the big upset, right? No one thought that Big was going to be going through. They lost to Virtus Pro on the first day, and then they proceeded to beat Heroic, beat Cloud9, and bam, they're in the group final. And they put up a really good showing against Virtus Pro, and they'll get to do another job tomorrow and hopefully show us what they've got. Yeah, I think everybody except Virtus Pro was kind of a mess in this, in this bracket, I think. Heroic disappointed me a lot. Big played a good couple of games, and then we see Cloud9 as the biggest disappointer in the entire tournament, if you ask me. I think they had a relatively easy bracket to go through, but they didn't manage to do it. We now have four teams confirmed. Some of the favorites are in the mix, and we'll get to see even more Counter-Strike action tomorrow. But before we do that, let us celebrate some of the fun moments we had today. It's the Traded Player of the Day. We got three clips for you, and we're going to showcase some of the performances that we've had a chance to see. Yeah, I mean, Spinks, he always delivers. He reminds me a lot of Rob's situations. He's so good in these moments where he just gets to play for himself. And yeah, his aim is undoubtedly one of the best. My favorite player of all time. I was an Astralis fangirl way before Babski was fame girling all over. James Device. Yeah, Mr. Tom Cruise, he never... This is just such a defining moment for Device, right? He's just so consistent. He hits the easy shots. I don't think we see the hero plays too often, but I just think this clip particularly says a lot about him. And then, of course, Rain. We spoke a lot about him during that FaZe Liquid game, and we had to because he is the difference maker for FaZe. Yeah, and Kerrigan said earlier today he had one of the two best yard players on Nuke in the world. He had Frozen and Rain, and I think Rain shows why he gets an ace against the full fire round. Really impressive. So we had stacks of fun. We had great, great Counter-Strike. And we are obviously also celebrating some of the fantastic players that we get to see. So Banks is going to give us a quick check-in on the Mask MVP. That's right, I'm back for the Mask MVP checking and just for you guys to know at home, right here on Blast.TV, you'll be able to go and vote for one of these players. These are the guys who have a chance of winning it. Zyru, okay, right at the top with a rating. Munasi, not far after him. Flitz now find himself in there. Twist and Bit, kind of equal at the moment. Remember, Twist is still going to play a bit tomorrow as well. But it's down to you guys to decide who could be taking the trophy tomorrow. Get voting, get deciding, because just the numbers won't tell it. You guys get to have your input on this, and that's what it's all about. Thank you so much, Banks. And now, the, the most important part of the end of the show, uh, if you've stuck around for this long, thank you. I gave you a, a huge amount of, of hassles, Babski, around your, your fantasy team, but how do you think your predictions have been paying off? For today, or generally, are we speaking here? Generally, I think we've done okay. I think I've been happy with Banks going for the Na'Vi every single time because it's paid out in the end. I think they were surprising, but he obviously had a third sense. Obviously, the, the GGB predictions, you can follow all of that action on the Blast Twitter or you can head on over to Blast.tv. But I think you'll be surprised tomorrow. Our team of, of bench warmers 
We're, we're going in strong. We may just take the victory. And talking about tomorrow, there's also a lot of epic Counter-Strike up for grabs. So this is what you can expect. Kickstarting the day, Astralis up against Big, and then G2 Esports facing off against Liquid. A must win for Astralis for some reason, because if they go through that Spring Showdown, it's going to be so much more difficult. They're going to be so not embarrassed of themselves, but they're going to be sleeping and having a nightmare before Katowice if they miss that game against Big. It's going to be tons of fun. It's going to be an, an incredibly entertaining day. But unfortunately, Bubski, today is your last day. We don't get to see you tomorrow. I heard that you insisted on being able to watch Astralis from home. You wanted the comfort of that and you didn't want to work. Yeah, the bias was too strong, simply. So uh, it's going to be fine. Pimp is also going to throw them under the bus a couple of times. He will do the, the dirty stuff and I'll be clear of it. Thank you so much, Bubski, for giving all your analysis this week. It's been tons of fun having you here on the group stages. Tomorrow, I will be back with Maniac and Pimp as we bring you those final two games and we find out which two teams will be heading to London. We'll see you then.